I crossed into a parallel world and became a dragon, but I am thinking of hugging the country's thigh and handing myself over to the country. The next day, I went to the police station to apply for my ID card and pass, and the policewoman was stunned when she saw me. Oh my god, dragons do exist in this world. The reason I came to the police station to register myself is all because after I came to this world, I found that it is so difficult to grow up independently. I can't even maintain the minimum living security by myself. Although I am now a young dragon of 18 centimeters, the material energy needed for life is too high end. Despite my efforts to go hunting, the energy consumed is more than the energy replenished by food, leading to a serious deficit. In just a few days, I am starving and feel like I'm going to starve to death. When I first crossed over, even though I was a young dragon, I could breathe thunder and fire, control the wind, and manipulate water with extraordinary abilities. But now, I can only breathe out a small smoke ring due to hunger. So, in order to eat and keep warm, after a minute of contemplation, I made a major decision, I will hand myself over to the country, as long as I don't have to draw blood, I'm fine with everything else. So this time I came to the police station to report. Although I actively sought to be taken care of, as a divine dragon, I must not lose in terms of temperament. I saw myself standing tall and proud like a lord, speaking confidently. This dragon has been cultivating in the deep mountains for thousands of years, and now it is time to experience the various aspects of the world. In order to avoid misunderstandings with humans, I came specifically to apply for an ID card and a pass, but I don't know the process. The policewoman looked puzzled. She had processed many ID cards and passes before, but she had never encountered one for a dragon. She was not familiar with this procedure. However, seeing that I didn't seem to be causing trouble, she politely said to me, Mr. Shenlong, the procedures for dragon ID cards and passes were not covered in my training when I started this job. Would you mind waiting a moment while I call my superior to ask? Before long, the police chief came over cursing. How dare this little girl play such a joke on me? Where is the dragon? Just then, a somewhat childish voice sounded behind him. Are you looking for me? When the police chief turned around, he was so scared that he sat down paralyzed. He saw me staring at him with those golden eyes like Kazilan. It took a long time for the police chief to calm down and really believe that there was a dragon coming to handle business. However, the police chief had never issued an ID card for a dragon, so he quickly contacted his superiors. In order to make the superiors believe him, he directly made a video call. The superiors didn't know what to do, so a similar scene happened again, and they could only report to higher authorities. At this moment, in a heavily guarded building in Kyoto, many national elders are having a meeting. Suddenly, the secretary walks over and whispers a few words in Elder Zhao's ear. Is this true? The secretary takes out a phone and opens a video to show Elder Zhao. In the video, there is a golden dragon hovering in the air, spitting out flames. Elder Zhao immediately shows excitement and then says to everyone, Everyone, calm down. We have a new turning point in the issue we are facing. After speaking, he projects the video onto a large screen, and the solemn expressions of everyone immediately become lively. Ha ha, it's really a dragon. This is definitely an extraordinary species. With it, we will have more confidence in developing and exploring the ruins. Three years ago, a major event occurred on the Blue Star. An alternate space named the Ruins engulfed the Blue Star, and even many extraterrestrial civilizations. Since then, the world has been plagued by earthquakes, floods, and almost completely destroyed human civilization. Fortunately, at a critical moment, the consciousness of the Blue Star manifested and protected everything on the planet. To protect itself, the Blue Star temporarily blocked the spatial connections to other dangerous secret realms around it, leaving only some lower-risk secret realms for human development to cope with possible future crises. However, the danger level of the low-risk secret realm is still very dangerous for humans. Inside are all fierce and brutal alien beasts. Humans call these alien beasts transcendent species. According to their strength, transcendent species can be divided into five levels, soldier, general, king, disaster, and calamity. When facing soldier-level alien beasts, humans need dozens of elite soldiers and advanced combat weapons to cope. Other levels and transcendent species above the king level are simply not something that humans can contend with. Now the elders have heard that a divine dragon has appeared, and they are all extremely excited. The divine dragon is a mythical divine beast, absolutely comparable to the transcendent species calamity level. They are discussing eagerly, expressing that they must cooperate with me with a sincere attitude. After the meeting adjourned, Elder Zhao immediately boarded a special plane and flew to the city where I was located. In order to prevent me from being known by other countries and attracting the competition of other countries, I was settled in the military base of Dongxia. At this moment, I had just eaten 10 cows and was leisurely picking my teeth with a toothpick. Suddenly, there was a hurried sound of footsteps outside the door. 
the visitor turned out to be Elder Zhao, a high-ranking official of Dongxia. When he saw me, his eyes involuntarily narrowed fiercely, feeling an inexplicable pressure overwhelming him. His heart suddenly started beating wildly, and his body felt a bit weak. Is this dragon's might? After taking a deep breath for a long time to regain composure, he first introduced himself to me, and then went straight to the point to inquire about me. Shen Long, what are your plans for traveling to Dongxia this time? Elder Jian is a straightforward person, so I told him all the resources I need for growth. In addition to my huge daily diet, I also need the elemental energy of wind, rain, thunder, and lightning for the growth of the dragon clan. Elder Zhao hesitated and then said firmly, Yes, but we hope to slice and draw blood from Lord Shenlong. In an instant, my whole dragon was not calm, but fortunately the elder just said to extract a drop of my blood for the study of extraordinary power as a condition to provide me with a huge diet back to normal. Damn, I am a noble Shenlong. Do you want to dismiss me with this little thing? No, I must also provide the energy of wind, rain, thunder, and lightning for my growth. Elder Zhao hesitated for a moment, saying that these things only exist in the ruins. Unless Lord Shenlong can help us explore the ruins together, we can distribute them evenly based on our contributions at that time. Really? I used to think that with my noble temperament, I could live off by just acting cute. But thinking back, I almost starved to death relying on my own efforts. In the end, I agreed to cooperate with the country and rested in the base for a day. The next day, Elder Zhao found me again and said he could give me the only remaining fire attribute energy in the national treasury. However, before that, he needed to extract my dragon scales and blood for preliminary experiments. I immediately wanted to breathe out a fireball to burn that old guy to death. The next moment, Elder Zhao said the energy he was providing me was called nuclear energy. He was worried that I might suffer from side effects of nuclear radiation during the absorption process, so he proposed to extract my dragon scales and blood for testing first. After all, the country now regards me as the highest level national treasure, so they can't let me fart without doing anything first. Hearing this, I awkwardly scratched my dragon head, he was quite considerate, so I readily agreed, because I dare not joke with my own life. After testing, my dragon scales can withstand high temperatures, reaching 4000 degrees Celsius comparable to diamonds, and the strength and hardness can fully withstand nuclear impact. This has aroused the hunger of experts in the materials field, eager to snatch the dragon scales for research, while the results of my blood test will come out later. At the same time, Elder Zhao decided to introduce me to some extraordinary individuals, and in the future, as the captain, I will lead them to explore the ruins. I am very satisfied with this, and I also want to know the talents I possess. Comparing who is stronger and weaker with those who possess extraordinary powers. Those so-called extraordinary individuals are actually humans who extract energy from the fur of monsters in the ruins, then transform themselves to gain extraordinary powers. Each of them has the strength to fight hundreds of enemies. At this moment, on the soldier training ground, the eleven extraordinary individuals heard that a mysterious figure would parachute in soon to become their captain and lead them to explore the ruins, and they all seemed very dissatisfied. Seeing this, the instructor just smiled faintly. I knew you troublemakers would be dissatisfied. You are welcome to challenge him. As long as you can defeat him, you can become the captain. The troublemaker's eyes lit up instantly, bursting with amazing fighting spirit. However, the next moment, they were struck hard. They saw Elder Zhao walking over with a smile, and through Elder Zhao's gaze, a small, golden creature that was both delicate and majestic came into their sight, followed by a strong sense of oppression from the level of life. In an instant, the burly youth and the others, felt their bodies soften and almost fell to the ground. There was even a strong shock and incredulity in their eyes. They hadn't seen it wrong. Dragon. It was actually a dragon. Snake body. Fish scales. Horse face. Deer horns. Cow ears. Eagle claws. Tiger paws. Combining the characteristics of all kinds of creatures in one, but without the slightest bit of confusion and incongruity. Instead, it was filled with unimaginable nobility and majesty. This was clearly the legendary divine dragon. The divine beast of legend actually did exist. For a time, the burly youth and the others were like being in a dream in the clouds. However, after experiencing the ruins realm fey beast, the baptism of blue star's consciousness, their receptivity had improved a lot. Even the fey beasts existed, and the blue star consciousness was able to manifest itself, and it was not unacceptable for divine beasts such as dragons and phoenixes to truly exist. Rather, it was the pressure emanating from Qin Shi's body that shocked them. Such a terrifying pressure was in no way weaker than those beast generals and beast kings. There was also a mighty pressure present on foreign beasts. The more powerful the foreign beast, the more terrifying the sense of pressure was. The first time the Eastern Xia army entered the market realm and faced the Fey beasts, they suffered a great loss because of it. 
Numerous soldiers felt the pressure of the beasts for the first time and lost the ability to move in a short period of time, resulting in heavy casualties. Later on, the Eastern Xia Military Department also specialized in this point and conducted a lot of training for the soldiers to avoid similar situations. The burly youth and the others, being the carefully selected elites of Eastern Xia, had experienced transcendent training and had a strong resistance to the Fei Beast pressure. Basically, they were immune to the alien beast pressure below the Beast King. Unexpectedly, they were still affected by the mighty pressure emanating from Qin Shi's body. Fortunately, Qin Shi did not specifically target them. This naturally emanating aura of dragon might quickly dissipated. The burly youth and the others did not make any fools of themselves as a result. Military governor, the mysterious existence you told us about. Could it be this divine dragon? The burly youth swallowed his saliva and asked Lu Yongjiao with wide eyes. He looked left and right. And behind Professor Tang, there was no one else besides Qin Shi. The other 11 elites also looked towards Lu Yongjiao with shocked and confused faces. They thought that what Lu Yongjiao said, parachuted over to be their captain, would be someone secretly trained by the state? Who knew that it was actually a dragon? That's right, this Mr. Shen Long, is the character I'm going to introduce to you? He's also our East Xia's highest secret. You should know very well that the existence of Shen Long is of great importance to East Xia, Lu Yongjiao solemnly said towards the burly youth and the others. In the future, you will form the country's secret team together with Mr. Divine Dragon, going into battle to kill the enemy and fight against the foreign beasts, while also being responsible for Mr. Divine Dragon's safety and security. The burly youth and the others' faces were solemn, their eyes exploding with essence. They certainly understood. As the country's elites, those who were burdened with transcendent power, they had fought against foreign beasts more than once. It was also clear that the country had researched transcendent power. Ever since Blue Star crashed into the ruins realm, all countries were vigorously researching transcendent powers, wanting to allow humans to master transcendent powers as well. And the Fey beasts that possessed various transcendent abilities naturally became the target of the countries. It was just a pity that the Fey beasts were too powerful. Moreover, they are unruly, and would rather die than become prisoners. So far, no country had ever captured a living Fey beast. All that everyone could obtain were the corpses, fur, and flesh of the beasts, and also basically some beast soldiers and beast generals. The fur and flesh of beast king level beasts had yet to be captured by any country. Eastern Xia had actually gotten the help of a living foreign beast without God realizing it. The significance of this was simply too great. No wonder the military governor would personally lead the team and summon them to secretly come here. At the same time, Qin Shi also flew over curiously, sizing up the burly youth and the others, saying, Professor Tang, are they what you said, my companions from now on? That's right, these are the elites selected by our battle groups from all over Eastern Xia. Those who have received transcendent training can be called transcendents, and have rich experience in fighting against fey beasts. Next you will be trained with them to understand fey beasts. In order to prepare for entering the market realm to fight against fey beasts in the future, Professor Tang said, Dong Xia divided those who had mastered transcendent powers into five levels according to their division against foreign beasts. The burly youth and the others were all first level transcendents. Well, weren't you guys upset just now that someone parachuted in and became your captain? You guys can try to challenge Divine Dragon. And you can become captains if you beat him. Lu Yongjiao flirted towards the burly youth and the others. Oh, you guys want to challenge me? Xin Shi came to be interested and looked over towards the burly youth and the others. The burly youth and the others immediately blushed, somewhat embarrassed. Damn it, you didn't say that the ones parachuted over were people. Let them fight a dragon. How is this going to be a fight? They almost couldn't stand just the pressure emanating from Qin Shi's body. Don't worry, although the divine dragon has a high potential and may reach the heavenly calamity level when he grows up, the current him is only in the hatchling stage. You guys may not have no hope of beating him. If you can win, you guys can have a divine dragon as a henchman. Aren't you guys heartbroken? Lu Yongjiao winked and continued to flirt, tempting the burly youth and the others. Lu Yongjiao's words made the burly youth and the others, whose already extinguished battle intent had burned up once again. The burly youth looked at Qin Shi with a burning gaze. The pressure that emanated from Qin Shi just now was no weaker than the beast general or beast king pressure that he had once felt, making him think that Qin Shi was a beast general or beast king level transcendent species, although he was a first rank transcendent. But it was just someone who had fused some transcendent powers and whose body had gained a transformation, not a true transcendent species that hadn't mastered transcendent abilities. The foreign beasts he could deal with were also those beast soldiers that had not mastered transcendent abilities. It was the beast soldiers that had mastered transcendent abilities that he couldn't even deal with. Not to mention the even more powerful beast generals and beast kings. If Qin Shi only possessed the potential of the heavenly tribulation level, and his strength had not yet reached the level of a beast general or beast king, 
then he might not be without a chance to defeat Qin Shi. The others thought similarly to the burly youth. Moreover, Lu Yangjia's words were indeed inciting. Having a divine dragon as a henchman, what a racy thing it was. Looking at the entire blue star, it would be the only one of its kind. Thinking about it made their blood run cold. Qin Shi's eyes looked towards Lu Yangjia with dissatisfaction. What does this guy mean? Is he deliberately stirring up conflict? Lu Yongjia noticed Qin Shi's gaze, smiled and said, Mr. Shenlong, our military department has always been able to the top. We only serve those who have the ability and strength. Although they are your future partners, but whoever has the final say amongst the team still has to rely on the strength to speak. Of course, if Shenlong does not want to accept the challenge, this matter can be put to rest. We will not force you to do so. Qin Shi rolled his eyes. The words were said this way. But wasn't Lu Yangjiao's meaning inside and outside his words mocking him for being timid and not daring to accept the challenge? To actually use provocation on him. This old man. Wilting. However, he did want to compete with these so-called transcendentals as well. Divine dragon. Fearless of any challenge. Xin Shi raised his head, unconcernedly looking over towards the burly youth and the others, saying, I accept your challenge. Who will go first? I'll go first. The burly youth stepped out first. Rubbing his fists together and looking over towards Qin Shi, his eyes revealing an exuberant will to fight, an expression of eagerness to try. Lu Yangjiao saw this and smiled faintly. He urged everyone to challenge Qin Shi, but of course, he was not just being idle. This group of pricks were high-minded and proud, and it was not an easy thing to subdue them and make them obedient. They had tested Qin Shi's abilities. On Qin Shi's body, apart from the dragon might, his strength did not reach the level of a beast general or beast king, and at most, he could only compare to a medium beast soldier. Right now, he just suddenly appeared and used his dragon might to shock the burly youth and the others. Once everyone had been in contact for a long time and knew Qin Shi's true strength, this group of pricks would definitely be unconvinced by Qin Shi. Instead of creating conflicts at that time, it would be better to take this opportunity to resolve so troubles at once. This was both a test for Qin Shi and a test of his ability. Tests were tests, and there was still a big gap between them and actual combat. Lu Yongjiao was also curious as to how strong the legendary divine dragon could be in actual combat. Everyone stepped back towards the surroundings, giving Qin Shi and the burly youth enough space to spar. This is just a sparring session. You can only fight with your respective abilities. No other weapons are allowed. Point blank. Lu Yongjiao acted as the referee and said towards Qin Shi and the burly youth. Qin Shi and the burly youth nodded. My name is Ying Di. I have a nickname in the battle group called Stormfist. Watch out. The burly youth's eyes rounded and stared at Qin Shi. His arms swung up and his feet stepped apart, forming an offensive and defensive stance as he introduced himself towards Qin Shi. My name is Qin Shi. Of course, I prefer you guys to call me Mr. Divine Dragon. Well, it's fine to call me Team Dragon from now on. Qin Shi hovered in the air, looking at Ying Di across from him with a relaxed expression. The current you is not a captain yet. Ying Di shouted explosively, his body instantly moved and swung his fist towards Qin Shi. The high-speed movement made his entire person seem to elongate into a phantom. Startling Qin Shi. Fast. It was too fast. Between the two of them, there was a distance of about three meters. As a result, Ying Di's body moved as if it had crashed through space. Qin Shi's eyes blinked, and Ying Di's huge fist had already driven the wild air and smashed towards his head. This guy's speed, it's gotten faster again. The other selected elites around them could not help but raise their eyebrows slightly in some surprise when they saw the scene. Although they and Ying Di were in different battle teams, they were all elites who had been selected to participate in transcendent training and fight against foreign beasts in the market realm. So naturally, they had heard of each other's great names. They had even fought against each other. Dong Xiao's current transcendent research could only produce changes to their bodies, giving them greater strength, speed, and neural responses. Nonetheless, it also gave them the powerful strength that could tear tigers and leopards alive, chase sports cars, and dodge bullets at a certain distance. Ying Di was known as Stormfist. After receiving transcendent training, he specialized in going into all types of boxing, battle team fighting techniques, and fought like a raging storm. His style was to use high intensity, high frequency attacks to suppress the enemy in a short period of time and produce. Divine Dragon is a bit careless, being robbed by Ying Di. He's going to suffer. Someone laughed with a relaxed face. The others also laughed. They knew Ying Di's fighting style. When Qin Shi was bullied in front of him by Ying Di, he would have to deal with Ying Di's ferocious attacks like a raging storm next. What happened next was indeed similar to what they expected. Qin Shi did not expect Ying Di's speed is so fast, although in time to swing the body to dodge, but can dodge the first punch, but cannot dodge the second punch. A storm of fists and shadows were blasting towards him from all directions, blocking his path of retreat. He was traveling on the wind. 
His speed was no slower than Ying Di's, and he even had the advantage of a small body. However, within such a short distance, Ying Di's high-speed fist shadows were like a heavenly net enveloping him. In no time, he was hit by several punches on his body, and was knocked straight into the air. What a strong power. Ying Di's punch strength also surprised Jin Shi greatly. One had to know that although he looked small, what was concentrated could be the essence. Just the quality of the food he ate every day accumulated in his body was a huge number. His body, comparable to a dense piece of metal, was heavier than an adult elephant, plus the dragon scales that could withstand machine gunfire. Normal attacks that hit his body were just like a hair's breadth. Ying Di was actually able to knock him back and cause him to feel pain, worthy of being a transcendent. However, just this, could not win him. Just when Ying Di wanted to beat Qin Shi with a single blow, an accident happened. Wordlessly, the air flowed, water vapor condensed, and a misty fog enveloped Ying Di. Qin Shi's figure, on the other hand, disappeared before his eyes. Ying Di, who was about to take advantage of the situation, froze for a moment, his spirit tightened, and he had to give up the chase, standing in place to vigilantly observe his surroundings and defend himself. What's going on? Where's the divine dragon? Seeing this, the crowd watching the battle couldn't help but freeze as well. Looking around, Qin Shi's figure not only disappeared from Ying Di's view, they likewise could not see Qin Shi. There was only an ethereal mist that wandered in the field. Lu Yang Zhao's eyes flickered as he said in a deep voice, A dragon can be big or small, rising or hidden, if it is big, it will rise up and spit out mist, if it is small, it will hide its shape, if it rises, it will soar between the universes, and if it is hidden, it will lurk within the waves. This is the divine dragon's natural ability. He's going to get real. When the crowd heard this, their hearts couldn't help but be moved. They then remembered that Qin Shi was a divine dragon, a transcendent species with transcendent abilities. Just now, although Qin Shi had been careless for a moment, he was attacked furiously by Ying Di as he was bullied close to his body first. However, he had not yet exerted his transcendent ability. Unexpectedly, as soon as he moved into action, he actually easily got rid of Ying Di's entanglement. Legend has it that dragons are good at changing, able to take off clouds and ride in the mist. Could it be that the divine dragon turns into mist, or hides in the mist? Among the remaining eleven elites, a tall woman with a heroic face speculated as her eyes surveyed the mist billowing in the field. The rest of them were also pondering. After all, the appearance of this mist was too sudden and coincidental. As soon as the mist appeared, Qin Shi disappeared. It was hard not to let people associate it with Qin Shi. Is it some sort of ability that utilizes light refraction to become invisible? Professor Tang's eyes were glowing as he looked at the mist floating in the field and made a guess in his heart. He was responsible for cultivating Qin Shi, but not just acting as a pitcher of food. He also had to study Qin Shi's ability to see if he could learn anything from Qin Shi and apply the Divine Dragon's ability to technological research and development. Qin Shi's ability to be invisible intrigued him. If he could study the principles of it, the research department would be able to develop stealth suits and stealth weapons. Divine Dragon Stealth. This is going to be difficult for Ying Di. Everyone looked at the field with unblinking eyes. Just now, Ying Di grabbed the lead and caught Qin Shi off guard. Now that Qin Shi had unleashed the Divine Dragon's innate ability, the situation was instantly reversed. It was Ying Di's turn to be passive. Although everyone could guess that Qin Shi should be hidden in the mist floating around. However, unable to determine Qin Shi's exact location, Ying Di did not dare to gamble. Once he guessed wrongly and attacked the wrong location, it would be his turn to face Qin Shi's raging storm. He could only firmly defend and wait for an opportunity. At the same time, everyone was aghast in their hearts, secretly pondering what they should do if they were the ones to face this situation. The advantage of this stealthy ability was too great, although it didn't add anything to the battle power. Once they were invisible and lurking around, the enemy would have to be on guard against a secret attack at any time. It could be said that it was godly. The opponent would only be able to take a beating, worthy of being a divine dragon. In one fell swoop, he has equalized the situation and putting D in a passive position. Someone exclaimed, putting away their contempt for Qin Shi. Lu Yongzhao had just said that Qin Shi was only a juvenile stage transcendent species, which made everyone, more or less, despise him in their hearts. An adult transcendent species, they couldn't defeat. A hatchling, couldn't they still defeat it? Qin Shi's performance forced them to come to their senses and once again realize the power of the transcendent species. Even a transcendent species cub was not something they could take lightly. That's not all. The divine dragon's natural ability is not just creating mist. Lu Yongzhao looked at the field with an expected expression on his face. Whether Ying Di and the others would be abused or not, he didn't really care. This group of pricks had gone through transcendent training, and after their strength had increased, their minds were a bit fluttering, so it would be good to strike a timely blow and let them sober up a bit. Compared to that, 
Being able to see Qin Shi and exert more of the Divine Dragon's natural abilities was the most important thing. The stronger Qin Shi was, the happier he was. Qin Shi naturally did not know what was in everyone's mind. At this moment, he was hiding in the mist, looking for an opportunity to strike. The ability he performed was called Tong Yun Driving Mist. This was a recluse technique, belonging to one of the basic abilities of the dragon race, which allowed one to utilize the feng shui in the surroundings to create clouds and mist, thus traveling the heavens and earth. At the same time, it was also possible to utilize the clouds and mist to confuse the enemy's vision and conceal his figure. Whoosh! Ying Di was gazing at his guard. His ears perked up to catch the wind and grass around him. Suddenly, a mist flowed over from the left side, and Qin Shi's golden body flashed out, as if a golden lightning bolt had split out of the clouds. The two raised antlers on the top of his head, which were as exquisite as a laurel, turned into sharp blades and stabbed towards Ying Di. Ying Di quickly reacted, a flinging hand single whip, broad palm in the air to draw an arc, and crashed over the Qin Shi ruthlessly bombarded together. The powerful collision of forces caused the air to emit an unbearable popping sound. A layer of white air waves spread out in all directions. However, just as Ying Di quickly turned around, wanting to execute a violent fist to catch Qin Shi's combo, Qin Shi's figure disappeared once again. In the next moment, Qin Shi emerged from behind Ying Di and slammed into Ying Di's back. Ying Di sensed the sound of wind at his back and sidestepped in time to dodge it. However, if he could dodge it once, he could not dodge it twice or three times. Qin Shi used his ability to ride on clouds and fog to make a godly appearance. Soon, Ying Di felt a bit exhausted physically. His spirit was highly concentrated, and he appeared tired. Bang, bang, bang. Qin Shi slammed into Ying Di one after another knocking him around like a leather ball and shaking him around in the field. How about it? Want to admit defeat? Qin Shi once again knocked Ying Di away, and instead of performing Tang Yun Diao Mist to hide himself, he hovered in the air and asked towards Ying Di. Right now, Ying Di was only getting beaten in front of him, and the winner of this battle was already obvious. Ying Di shook his body and looked up at Qin Shi, his face somewhat unwilling. The ability of the transcendent species is indeed very strong, but if you can only rely on this kind of stealthy sneak attack, you can't convince me yet. Ying Di stared at Qin Shi with an unconvinced expression, his face suffocating. Qin Shi's size was too small. There was no way for him to swing his fists and kicks like a human. He could only muster the strength of his entire body to impact. Although with Qin Shi's weight, every time he crashed, the impact generated would not be weaker than the force of the punches he blasted out. However, a transcendence body's ability to withstand it was equally not weak. This was not enough to deal a sufficient blow to him. Surely Qin Shi could boil a frog in warm water and slowly wear him down. But if it was a head-on blast, Ying Di felt that he might not lose to Qin Shi. The other elites nodded in agreement when they heard this. They similarly could not think of a good way to crack Qin Shi's tongue in Diamist. If they were to face Qin Shi, they would definitely lose as well. However, Qin Shi could not convince them by only relying on dodging and consuming their strength to win. Instead of defeating them with absolute strength, Qin Shi sniffed and raised his eyebrows. Losing is losing. Winning is winning. Where did so many excuses come from? What? Doesn't take his cloud writing ability as an ability. Does he? Very well. You won't give in. Right? Want to see my true ability? Then I'll fulfill your wish. Qin Shi twisted his waist and moved his muscles. And his two golden dragon pupils exuded a powerful majesty as he looked down at Ying Di. Originally, the competition was just a test. It wasn't a life and death battle. Everyone was point blank. Friendship first. He also did not want to let Ying Di too humiliated. After all, in the future, we are all companions. Head up, head down. However, since Ying Di was so provocative, it seemed like he couldn't do it without showing his hand. Come on, let me see the true strength of a divine dragon. As long as you can defeat me head on, I have nothing to say and will look up to you and the team from now on. Ying Di met Qin Shi's gaze and said with a firm expression. Both fists were clenched tightly, and the muscles on his body bulged, ready to go all out. And then, his legs stomped fiercely on the ground and his entire body transformed into a sharp arrow that shot into the sky, crashing through the air and slamming his fist towards Qin Shi. The sturdy body, the fierce force, crashed the invisible air and compressed it. The fist that gathered the strength of the whole body was like a meteor falling from the sky, with the determination to break through the earth, locking Qin Shi to death. Is this a move to determine the winner? Seeing this, the crowd became even more energized, watching intently for fear of missing the next exciting scene. Ying Di was known as the tyrannical fist. Usually in normal battles, the power of the fist he wielded was enough to shatter rocks. And now, a punch that gathered the strength of his entire body and went all out would only be more powerful. The impact force of this punch can only reach 2,000 kilograms, 
Even if the divine dragon scales can withstand machine gunfire and are invulnerable to knives and spears, I'm afraid that they may not be able to withstand the shock brought about by the forcefulness of it, someone said in a deep voice. A normal adult could punch out around 50 kilograms of force, while a professionally trained boxer could punch out more than 100, or even more than 200 kilograms of force. And after they were transcendents and received transcendent training, the power of the punches they wielded could basically reach more than 10 times that of a normal adult man. The instantaneous outburst of power, if they struck out at full strength, could also double on top of that. This was the impact force that could kill a bison with a single punch and smash a steel reinforced wall. It was comparable to a high speed car crashing head on straight into the ground. Sheen sure was a divine beast. It was true that swords and spears were invulnerable, but dragon scales could block external injuries, but they might not be able to block internal injuries. The faces of Lu Yongjiao and Professor Tang couldn't help but stare. They wanted to see Qin Shi's ability, but they didn't want Qin Shi to get hurt. Qin Shi was the treasure of Dongxia. If he was really injured, they would not be distressed, and the other elders and deacons would have to scold them to death. However, thinking of the various miraculous abilities that Qin Shi had displayed during the previous test of Qin Shi's abilities, they still chose to believe Qin Shi and did not open their mouths to stop him. Instead, they looked on with both apprehension and anticipation. In the face of such a furious strike, Qin Shi did not dodge, since Ying Di felt that he was winning by dodging the attack. Then he would use his absolute power to crush Ying Di head on, sending him to an unforgettable defeat. Just as everyone was staring, holding their breaths, wondering how Qin Shi was going to deal with this strike, Qin Shi slowly opened his mouth as he faced the explosively rushing Ying Di. Roar! A sound like a cow moo, like a tiger's whistle, rang out from Qin Shi's mouth. Immediately afterward, it transformed into a rigid and incomparable sound wave, sweeping towards Ying Di who was explosively rushing over. Evil Dragon Roar, one of the basic skills of the dragon race, a true dragon's roar could shock the demons, subdue 10,000 beasts, and roar down the stars in the sky, although he was still a child, just a young dragon of 18 centimeters. However, the dragon's roar spat out at full strength had the terrifying power of shocking people's hearts and destroying rocks and wood. The strong and powerful sound wave was condensed into a beam under the dragon race's natural ability, like a beam of light enveloping Ying Di head on. Ying Di's face changed wildly. The oncoming sound wave was like substance, before it hit his body. It made his body tremble and his eardrums were about to explode. In the next moment, Ying Di's fist collided with the substantial dragon whistle sound wave. There wasn't even a second's pause. The rigid sound wave, destroying everything, lifted Ying Di out. Ying Di's sturdy body, instantly turned into a flatboat in the waves. All the muscles and bones of his body were going to be shaken apart by the high-frequency sound wave, and he fell helplessly to the ground, smashing out a bang with a violent sound. The other elites next to him, Lu Yongjiao and Professor Tang, were all shocked by the sound waves that spread out and fell back. Their faces shocked. If it wasn't for the fact that most of the power of the sound waves were mobilized and condensed into a beam to blast towards Ying Di, they would not have ended up much better than Ying Di. Too terrifying. Is this the strength of a divine dragon? No wonder the military governor said that divine dragons have the potential to grow into heavenly disasters. Everyone was shocked in their hearts. Qin Shi's evil dragon roar had completely convinced them. Just look at Ying Di's miserable end. He was hit head on by the dragon's roaring sound wave, and his body was shaken so much that he couldn't get up for half a day. On the surface, he didn't look injured, but inside, he didn't know how he was going to be turned upside down. The power of a roar was as terrifying as it was. Come on people. Helping Di up and check his injuries, Lu Yongjiao commanded the soldiers escorting next to him. Immediately, a soldier went over to helping Di up. Professor Tang personally went over to help him check him out. It's alright, although he received a considerable shock. He can be repaired after resting for a while. Nothing serious, Professor Tang said. Ying Di and the others' transcendent training was presided over by him, and he had a clear understanding of these transcendents' physical qualities. Although Qin Shi's dragon whistle just now was fierce. It was still within the range that the transcendent mortal's physique could withstand. Lu Yongjiao let go of his heart when he heard this, looked at the half-dead Ying Di and laughed. How is it? Are you convinced now? Convinced? Ying Di was paralyzed and said with a bitter smile. Qin Shi had struck him head-on with a dragon whistle. It gave him a feeling as if he had been charged head-on by a medium beast soldier. He would truly be ungrateful if he didn't give in. What about you guys? Lu Yongjiao turned his head and looked over towards the other eleven elites. Convinced? Convinced? The crowd said one after another. It was impossible not to be convinced. Their strength, at most, was similar to Ying Di's. Qin Shi could yell at Ying Di with a single breath, and they would end up the same way. The people in the military department recognized strength and ability. Qin Shi was so strong that everyone had nothing to say about making him the captain. 
although this guy is a bit pocket-sized, but at least he was a divine dragon. Not being able to have a divine dragon as a subordinate was a bit of a pity, but having a divine dragon captain, it was also quite dignified to say so. Very well, since that's the case, then the matter is settled. From now on, you will form a team with the divine dragons, with the divine dragons as the leader, and this team will be called the divine dragons. Lu Yongjiao sealed the deal. No more rebuttals were raised. Everyone's eyes carried marvel as they looked towards Qinshir, worthy of being a divine dragon. Awesome. All right, today is mainly for you guys to meet with the divine dragons and get to know each other. Next you will also train with the divine dragons to hone your teamwork. You can disperse first, Lu Yongjiao said. Qinshir held his head high and followed Professor Tang to leave the training ground under everyone's awe-inspiring gazes. After leaving the training ground and confirming that there was no one else around, Qinshir landed on Professor Tang's shoulder, drooped his head, and called out breathlessly. Where's the magic? I can't. I need to replenish my magic. Pretending was a momentary pleasure. Just now, he let out an evil dragon roar, destroying and defeating Ying Di. Pulling off the wind is pulling off the wind. However, he knew his own family's business. He was still too young to utilize this kind of high-intensity natural ability, consuming a bit too much energy. An evil dragon roar made his stomach croak with hunger. Who told you to show off? Professor Tang couldn't help but shake his head. He was responsible for cultivating Qin Shi and testing his abilities, so he naturally knew all about Qin Shi's lack of endurance. Qin Shi's various natural abilities were indeed very powerful. In addition to the Dragon Tsunami, there were also the Dragon Flame and Dragon Thunder, all of which were very powerful attacks. From the data obtained from the test, Qin Shi's Dragon Flame and Dragon Thunder, the strength of their attacks could even be compared to that of a top-grade beast soldier. It was only a pity that due to the issue of range. His comprehensive battle power was currently only medium. The road to raising a divine dragon is a long way to go. Being handsome is a lifelong matter. How can you leak in front of my little brother? Qin Shi said with a straight face. He had only just defeated Ying Di with a single move. What a racy thing this was. If he wilted in the next moment, wouldn't he be smashing his own reputation? Speaking of which, when will the cell's anti-nuclear radiation test be ready? I can't wait to absorb nuclear energy. Qin Shi asked. As long as I absorb the nuclear energy, my endurance can definitely be boosted quite a bit. At least not so much that I won't be out of stock after spitting two or three dragon flames. I don't want to be a three-second true dragon. The cell's anti-nuclear radiation test. It takes longer, at least a month to get the results. During this time you can first rub shoulders with Ying Di and the others to understand the situation of the market realm and the foreign beasts. Professor Tang said back. All right. Xin Shi nodded helplessly. He understood the truth that he couldn't eat hot tofu in a hurry. After eating a large meal prepared by Professor Tang's order and recovering his strength, Qin Shi went to the research base's data room and began to learn about the market realm and fey beasts. On his way to the transcendent base, he had heard Elder Zhao and the others talk about the matters of the market realm and fey beasts. However, they had only given a cursory introduction, and Qin Shi did not yet understand the specifics. When he arrived at the transcendent research base, he had to undergo various tests again, and he hadn't yet had time to consult the relevant information. The data room was an oversized library with meeting rooms where one could directly computerize all sorts of information. Ying Di and the others happened to be there as well. Captain, did you also come to the resource room to study? Ying Di stood up from his seat and greeted Qin Shi who flew in. After the doctor's treatment, he had regained his mobility, and his appearance was to look as good as nothing. Good day captain, good day captain. Everyone else also greeted and said hello. After the previous competition and confirming Qin Shi's strength, they had already recognized Qin Shi's position as captain. This group of pricks were high-minded and proud, but there was one advantage. That was that they would be very obedient after recognizing Qin Shi. Oh, you guys are here too. What is this studying? Qin Shi asked curiously. It's information on the latest research findings on foreign beasts and how to deal with them more effectively. The tall and heroic woman next to her spoke back. She was the only female among the twelve elites. Named Tong Zhao. Humans were just an ordinary species and most of the various physical qualities were reflected in their physical abilities. Even if they went through transcendent training, the current transcendent research in Eastern Xiao was only enough for everyone to undergo physical strengthening, and could not help them master transcendent abilities. Women were at a disadvantage in this regard. It was a miracle that Tong Jiao, being a woman, was able to stand out amongst the crowd of East Xiao warriors. Exotic beast information? Xin Shi came to be interested, as a divine dragon. He was also considered an exotic beast and was naturally curious about other exotic beasts. There are many different types of foreign beasts in the market realm, and there are currently a total of 157 types of foreign beasts that have been discovered by human beings and have mastered the relevant biological characteristics and abilities. 
Tang Jiao introduced towards Qinshu, countries exploring in the market realm, once they discover new foreign beasts and obtain relevant intelligence, they can upload it to the blue network to obtain a certain amount of points, and other countries need a certain amount of points to purchase the intelligence, as soon as new intelligence appears, each country will download it at the first opportunity for all warriors to learn, so that they won't know how to deal with that type of foreign beast when they encounter it in the future. The Blue Network was a network that was established with the Blue Star Consciousness as the core after the Blue Star crashed into the Ruins Realm and the Blue Star Consciousness manifested itself. The Blue Star Consciousness could be said to be a unique existence born from the spiritual imprint of human civilization, combined with the planet's magnetic field. In order for Blue Star to survive in the market realm, Blue Star Consciousness called on everyone to explore the market realm together and raise the level of Blue Star's civilization. The Blue Star would not intervene in the fights between countries, but when it came to the fight against the foreign beasts in the market realm, which was related to the survival of all mankind and the Blue Star, the Blue Star Consciousness was extremely strict in its requirements. Anyone who obtained information about the foreign beasts had to upload it to the Blue Network and share it with all of humanity. Of course, it wasn't free. The Blue Star Consciousness had formulated a point system, and depending on the value of the intelligence, the person who provided it would be rewarded with corresponding points. The points could be used to buy things, or even allow Blue Star Consciousness to help to do certain research and assist in transforming the body. Nowadays, the points system had replaced the original currency system of various countries. Those who contributed enough information and had high enough points could even receive preferential treatment from the Blue Star Consciousness. As countries explored the ruins realm and fought against the foreign beasts, there was one very important task, and that was to earn points to raise their country's ranking in the mind of the Blue Star Consciousness. After all, the Blue Star Consciousness could be said to be the mother of all humanity. Whichever country was able to gain the love of the Blue Star's mother would definitely soar. It wasn't impossible to become the only hegemon on the Blue Star in the future and rule the whole world. Captain what information do you want? I'll pull it out for you. The corresponding points Blue Star will deduct from your personal account. You should have a Blue Bonnet Identity Account, right? Tong Zhao asked. I have a Blue Bonnet Identity Account. The day I came to the Transcendent Research Base, I already did it. Sheen sure nodded. The so-called Blue Net Identity Account was actually the Blue Star Biological Certificate. The Blue Star Consciousness would use genes and various other information to confirm the origin of the creature and distinguish it from the alien beasts inside the market realm. Everyone could also contact the Blue Net anytime, anywhere within the range that the Blue Star Consciousness could encompass through special instruments, communicating with each other and obtaining all sorts of help. I intend to learn about the foreign beasts in the ruins realm first, so help me pull out the corresponding information. Sheen sure said, as for the points, on the day he opened his identity account, the officials allocated a large sum of money to him. Sheen sure took a slight glance and there were at least six zeros following the one. Professor Tang had told him that he could approach him to continue the allocation when the points were spent. Moreover, he was now the captain of the Eastern Xia secret team and had a fixed salary every month. One can only say, the country's rice, just smells good. Soon, Tong Jiao helped Sheen sure pull up the information he needed. After Qin Shi paid his points, he found a seat and looked carefully at the screen. Fire-tailed wolf, inferior beast soldier, shaped like a black wolf, it's as big as an ox, tail fluffy as a flame, has tens of times the speed and bite force than ordinary wolves, often in groups of three or five. The threat level is comparable to that of a medium beast soldier, and needs to be pulled away from it at a certain distance, and suppressed with machine gun fire in order to be killed. Green-faced lords, medium beast soldiers, shaped like owls, with green and black faces, their bodies will erupt with green-colored wild arrows when they feed, and they can withstand machine gunfire, requiring a team of more than 10 people equipped with high lethality laser guns in order to kill them. Black Cloud Panther, superior beast soldier, can harness transcendent abilities to hunt and fight, able to resist tank bombardment head-on, need to set up traps in advance in order to deal with it. Sheen sure looked over one beast at a time, most of the ones recorded in the information were beast soldiers. Beast soldiers were also divided into three, six, nine classes, lower class beast soldiers, although they possess transcendent powers, their transcendent powers could basically only act on flesh and blood to enhance their physical strength, speed, power, reflexes, and increase their vitality. Ying Di and Tong Jiao's strength was at the level of a lower grade beast soldier, medium beast soldiers, possessing even more powerful transcendent powers, were even able to manifest transcendent powers while hunting and fighting. However, they were not yet able to apply their transcendent powers freely. The way they attacked and fought was still stuck in physical combat. For example, the green-faced lords, the superior beast soldiers, were able to use their transcendent powers to fight and hunt. For example, the black cloud panther, 
not only the quality of all aspects of the body, crushing the lower and middle class beast soldiers, but also able to activate the black cloud ability on the body, obscuring the prey's vision, defense, corrosion of the enemy and so on. There was very little information on beast generals and beast kings, apart from the fact that beast soldiers were the most common in the market realm. Another reason was that it was difficult for humans to deal with beast generals and beast kings for the time being. Even to deal with a beast general, one would need to mobilize a large number of people and use a large number of modern weapons to have a chance of success. It was naturally extremely difficult to obtain information on the specific habits and abilities of beast generals. What concerned Qin Shi the most was that at the very end of the information, three extremely powerful alien beasts appeared. There wasn't much information about them, only three videos. Qin Shi clicked on the first video. In it, a giant bird with a golden red flame burning all over its body appeared. Its wings were suspended high above the sky, its body surrounded by blazing flames, as if a small round of sun was hanging in the air. Around it, there were countless pieces of meteorites suspended, seemingly in the middle of the starry sky. Below the flame giant bird was the azure planet. One could even see countless humans who were panicking and shouting at the top of their lungs. Even through the video, looking at the flame giant bird, Qin Shi had a feeling that his body was so hot that it looked like it was about to burn up. Heavenly calamity grade foreign beast, burning bird, Qin Shi averted his eyes and murmured in a deep voice, unable to help but feel a little shocked in his heart. These three videos, each recorded three heavenly calamity grade foreign beasts. They were the alien beasts that had rushed over from amongst the other secret realms shortly after Blue Star had just crashed into the market realm back then. Each of them had the terrifying strength to up in 10,000 miles of rivers and mountains and change the heavens. If it wasn't for the Blue Star consciousness manifesting at that time and blocking the spatial connection between Blue Star and the other secret realms in time, and these three heavenly calamity level foreign beasts had entered Blue Star to wreak havoc, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Just seeing the burning sparrow through the video recorded by the Blue Star consciousness made him feel as if his body was about to burst into flames. He really didn't know how powerful the real burning sparrow should be. Luckily, he wasn't bad either. As a divine dragon, once he grew up, he would definitely be able to compete with these heavenly calamity level foreign beasts. Shin Shi smiled to himself in his heart and clicked on the other two videos. The other two heavenly calamity level foreign beasts were a huge ape with a body size comparable to a mountain peak, and a strange creature with a greenish black body that was shaped like a human infant. The giant ape was huge, with a handful of white hairs on top of its head, emitting an aura of biting coldness like a sword, and Blue Star realized that it had been named the soldier ape, shaped like a human baby of strange creatures where the green and black air flow filled, although I do not know what power, but reveals a deep sense of calamity and uncertainty, Blue Star Consciousness named it Early Infant, these three heavenly calamity level beasts had been wandering around the surrounding secret realm, wanting to break the spatial blockade and enter the space where Blue Star was, it could be said that they were the greatest threat that Blue Star was about to face, nowadays, it was all thanks to the Blue Star Consciousness maintaining the spatial blockade that the humans on Blue Star were able to live and work in peace and happiness, once the spatial blockade was opened, it was feared that Blue Star would immediately have to face the ravages of the three heavenly tribulation level alien beasts. This was why the East Summer's senior management was so nervous, seeing Qin Shi appear. They were ecstatic and placed all their bets on him. It was unknown how long the blockade of the Blue Star's consciousness would last. Relying on Dong Xia's own exploration and research, the hope of having the power to be able to defend itself in front of a heavenly calamity level alien beast was just too slim and Qin Shi possessed the potential to grow into a heavenly calamity. If Qin Shi could be cultivated before the Blue Star's space blockade was broken, then Dongxia would have a hope of survival. Seeing this information, Qin Shi couldn't help but feel a little heavy in his heart. The current him was also a member of the Blue Star. He might not be spared once these three heavenly calamity level foreign beasts entered the Blue Star to wreak havoc. Qin Shi put away the slight smugness of being a divine dragon, being held in such high regard by Dongxia during this period of time. His heart could not help but feel some pride and complacency. The information on these three heavenly tribulation grade foreign beasts was a sort of sobering soup for him, making him realize that he didn't have anything to be complacent about. Although he was a divine dragon and had the potential of a heavenly tribulation, but he hadn't grown up yet, and in front of a heavenly calamity level foreign beast, he was still just scum. I want to evolve. I want to work hard. I must have the power to defend myself before the blue star space blockade is broken. A sense of urgency rose in Qin Shi's heart. How is it? Captain, are you feeling the pressure? Tang Jia was sitting not far from Qin Shi. Qin Shi was small and delicate looking, and as a young dragon, she was majestic yet cute, which was very lethal to females. She had been observing Qin Shi from the side, her hands moving stupidly. If it wasn't for the fear of upsetting Qin Shi, she would have wanted to give Qin Shi a good caress to experience the feel of her hands. 
Seeing a grave expression on Qin Shi's face, she guessed that Qin Shi should have seen the information about the heavenly tribulation level alien beasts and opened her mouth to ask. Indeed, before listening to Professor Tang's narration, I still don't know much about the heavenly calamity level alien beasts. After seeing the video, I realized the terrifying nature of the heavenly calamity level alien beasts. I'm afraid that this level of alien beasts, even if nuclear weapons are used, they may not be able to injure them, right? Qin Shi said in a deep voice. He recalled the blazing flames burning on the burning sparrow's body in the video. Every feather there seemed to be a nuclear energy device, constantly releasing high temperatures comparable to the nuclear explosion of the sun, burning the sky and steaming the earth. There is also that standing in the starry sky, mountain peak like towering soldier ape. Its body was like indestructible steel, coming across the void channel. Even the most petite looking early infant was filled with a strong sense of uncertainty. These several heavenly calamity grade beasts all had the ability to affect space. Calling them natural disasters was indeed true to their name. Even though the nuclear weapons of humans could not be said to be scratching an itch to them, they were only about as good as ordinary machine gun bullets. Indeed, heavenly calamity level alien beasts are not something that humans can fight against. Even the next level of earthly calamity level alien beasts are capable of triggering earthquakes and tsunamis. And unless they are struck with the precision of a nuclear weapon, it is simply impossible to injure them. Tong Jiao nodded and said, However, I believe that we can definitely research a way to evolve from an ordinary species, to a transcendent species, and possess the strength to resist these alien beasts. Xin Shi nodded. It was good to have confidence. Let's not talk about this. Too much pressure is not good. I'd better be realistic and start surpassing the beast soldiers first. That said, how did you guys fight against the beast soldiers? Are there any relevant records for me to study and learn? Xin Shi changed the topic and said, one bite could not make a fat man. He could only hope that the blue star consciousness could buy him enough time to rise. What he had to do was to wait for the results of the cell's anti-nuclear radiation test to come out, absorb the nuclear energy to evolve, and go to the ruins realm to hunt foreign beasts, strive to evolve to the heavenly tribulation level earlier. Of course, Tong Zhao nodded. It was still early for the results of the cell's anti-nuclear radiation test. Next, Xin Shi followed Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others to train. Understanding the information of the alien beasts, the weaknesses, learning how to work as a team to deal with the alien beasts. Of course, there was another task, which was to act as a training equipment and conduct anti-stress training for Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others. Wanting to deal with fey beasts, the life pressure of fey beasts on ordinary species was a problem that everyone could not avoid. It just so happened that Qin Shi, as a divine dragon, possessed a life pressure that was enough to compare to that of a heavenly disaster level foreign beast. Allowing Qin Shi to unleash his might against Di and Tong Zhao could improve their ability to resist the pressure of the foreign beasts. If it wasn't for the fact that Qin Shi's existence was classified and couldn't be exposed, Lu Yongzhao would have wanted to take Qin Shi on a tour of the various battle groups around the world, so that every Dongxia warrior would be baptized with dragon might. Of course, in turn, Qin Shi would have to receive siege training from Ying Di, Tong Zhao, and the others to enhance his combat abilities and his use of various natural abilities. Everyone promoted each other. A month's time quickly passed. The results of Qin Shi's cellular resistance to nuclear radiation test finally came out. Heavens, it's too incredible. Divine Dragon's cells actually didn't change at all under the nuclear radiation. In the research room, numerous researchers let out an incredulous exclamation. They got Qin Shi's blood and placed it under the nuclear radiation environment to observe the changes in the cells. Normally, cells should mutate under nuclear radiation. Nuclear radiation may cause errors in the replication of DNA during cell division loss of certain genes on chromosomes, induced cell cancer, etc. In an environment of short-term extreme radiation, nuclear radiation can lead to cell death. However, they gradually enhanced the nuclear radiation dose to Qin Shi's cells, which had exceeded the safe limit of 5,000 millirem that a normal adult can withstand, reaching millions of millirem. Qin Shi's cells still produced no obvious changes and remained highly active. This result was just too incredible. It was equivalent to saying that even nuclear weapons might not be able to kill Qin Shi. Of course, apart from nuclear radiation, real nuclear weapons also had powerful explosions, high temperatures, impacts, etc., which Qin Shi might not be able to resist. But even so, it was amazing enough. At least according to the results of the experiments, Qin Shi could definitely grow to a level where even nuclear weapons could not help him in the future. Not only that, the other researchers targeting Qin Shi's blood also had numerous miraculous results. For example, when they fused Qin Shi's blood with the blood of other creatures, they found that the blood of other creatures was actually influenced by the dragon's blood, showing signs of transforming towards it. 
Dropping Qin Shi's blood on certain non-living minerals and metal materials would cause those materials to develop certain magical properties. For example, it was more resistant to high temperatures, more resilient, and so on. It was just a pity that the blood they had gotten was too little, and they couldn't start a more in-depth research for the time being. This made the many researchers in the research lab look at Qin Shi with a gaze as green as that of a hungry wolf. Every time Qin Shi encountered them, he felt a chill at his back. It was as if he was being stared at by some sinister evil creature. So, I can start absorbing nuclear energy? Qin Shi, who had learned the results of the test, was invigorated in spirit. He was longing for a long time to absorb nuclear energy, grow further, and get rid of his three-second true dragon state. After checking the information of the heavenly calamity grade foreign beasts, a strong sense of urgency surged in his heart. He couldn't wait to start absorbing nuclear energy right away and master a more powerful force. Of course you can. Your dragon scales are invulnerable to water and fire, able to withstand the high temperatures brought about by nuclear radiation, and your cells are not affected by nuclear radiation. So there is no problem at all with absorbing nuclear energy, Professor Tang said. However, for safety's sake, it's best for us to start trying with a small dose of nuclear energy, and then subsequently enhance the amount of nuclear energy depending on the situation. After all, if one wanted to absorb nuclear energy, one would have to face the power of nuclear reactions head on. Only the energy produced by the nuclear reaction could meet the demand of allowing Qinshir to evolve. As for the energy that was converted into other electrical and chemical energy and stored after the reaction, it was actually degraded. These energies could not reach Qin Shi's requirements. Qin Shi nodded. After all, it was a nuclear reaction. When he was a human being, people were talking about nuclear contamination, not to mention facing nuclear reactions head on. Even now that he had been reincarnated as a divine dragon, he had no bottom in his heart when faced with a nuclear reaction. It was better to be cautious. Let's start trying with the miniature nuclear reactor. Professor Tang led Qin Shi to a nuclear reaction laboratory. Blue Star's nuclear energy research was much more advanced than Qin Shi's previous life. Various miniature nuclear reactors had already been researched, and it was not far from applying nuclear reactions to all types of battle armor. The reaction of a nuclear reactor, although not as violent as a nuclear bomb, did not reach the design conditions of a nuclear bomb. But the energy produced by nuclear reactions was equally amazing. To absorb the nuclear energy, Qin Shi would have to enter the reactor and face the environment of the nuclear reaction head-on. After the researcher's preparation, the conditions were met. Qin Shi came to the nuclear reactor under the guidance of the researchers. It was a miniature nuclear reactor with a diameter of about 2 meters. Of course, Qin Shi wasn't really entering the reactor and facing the power of the nuclear reaction head-on. Although his dragon scales could withstand high temperature and high pressure impacts, and his cells were able to withstand the damage of nuclear radiation. However, the temperature generated by the nuclear reaction was too high, far exceeding the upper limit of what his dragon scales could withstand nowadays. Therefore, ways had to be found to further reduce the raging destructiveness of the energy produced by the nuclear reaction in order for Qin Shi to better absorb it. The research department's personnel had already researched a device that could temporarily take the energy produced by the reactor and converge it. After the buffering of the device, although the energy produced by the reactor was still very violent, the destructive force would undoubtedly be weakened by a lot. Moreover, the energy gathered in this way, which was not converted into other electrical and chemical energies, could still satisfy Qin Shi's evolutionary needs. Qin Shi came into the energy collection device. Layers of protective gates fell down, isolating him from the crowd. On the other side, in the control room, after confirming that all the prerequisite preparations were ready, Professor Tang nodded towards the operator responsible for starting the nuclear reaction. Ready, 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, start. Along with the start of the program, the nuclear reactor instantly lit up, the raw materials in it generating unimaginably terrifying energy under the chain reaction of fission. All of this energy, in turn, was guided by the energy collection device, converging together and enveloping Qin Shi. Within the energy collection device, Qin Shi was fully concentrated, waiting for the arrival of nuclear energy. After the reactor was activated, an unprecedented sense of crisis quickly enveloped Qin Shi's entire body. This was the sense of crisis belonging to divine beasts. Qin Shi felt that there was a powerful, enough to push him into the abyss of death, energy converging in all directions. It made him tremble with fear. Is it a nuclear reaction? Starting to activate? Qin Shi's face was gloomy as he twisted his body. His 18 centimeter long dragon body coiled up, his body vibrating with dragon scales. On the golden dragon scales, there was a golden luster flowing. A defensive stance was made. The next moment, 
Boom! The energy from the nuclear reaction was picked up by the energy collection device. In an instant, Xinxiu felt endless fiery flames rushing in all directions. He was instantly plunged into a raging ocean of flames. The blazing flames, which were close to the great sun of the sky, drowned him out. The terrifyingly high temperatures that could scorch lakes and burn steel caused the defensive dragon scales he had erected to instantly show signs of melting. What a terrifying energy. My dragon scales can't actually withstand it. They're going to be burned. Xinxiu was shocked in his heart. He had thought that with the strength of his dragon scale, resisting the energy generated by the nuclear reaction should be fine for a while. Unexpectedly, it was only less than two seconds before his dragon scale showed signs of not being able to withstand it and was about to be burned. The energy generated by the nuclear reaction was too huge. The temperature was too high. Even after the cooling of the energy collection device, it was still nearly 10. 000 degrees Celsius. This was far beyond the upper limit of what the dragon scales could withstand. The intense pain drowned Sheen Shur. The burning sensation made him feel like he was going to be roasted the next moment. However, Sheen Shur was mentally prepared for this situation. Not waiting for the high temperature to burn through the dragon scales, he gathered enough breath, opened his mouth, and swallowed it towards the flames that pounced in all directions. Boom! The 18 centimeter pocket dragon body, along with Sheen Shur's swallowing and sucking action, instantly seemed to have transformed into a deep space black hole that swallowed everything. The flames that surged wildly in the surroundings all drilled into Qin Shi's body. The high temperature energy generated by the nuclear reaction. Dragon Scale was unable to defend against all of it. He hadn't placed all his hopes on the Dragon Scale. After all, what he wanted to do was not to test the defense level of his Dragon Scale. Rather, he was absorbing nuclear energy and turning it into nutrients for his own evolution. The high temperature energy produced by nuclear reactions was already enough to rival the flames on the sun. This raging heat had completely reached the level of transcendent energy. It could be said that this was the only transcendent power that mankind had mastered. And for Qin Shi, this energy was the essence of the sun and the moon. As a divine beast, or one of the countless divine beasts, the divine dragon wanted to evolve. And naturally, what it needed was the essence of the sun and the moon, star energy, and other high-end energies. Although this energy produced by the nuclear reaction that was comparable to the essence of the great sun was not like the normal sun and moon essences, which were full of vitality, but instead favored destruction. However, this was already the only transcendent energy that Qin Shi could obtain. At the moment, he could only utilize the powerful potential body of the divine beast to resist the destructive force in this energy and transform it into his own nourishment. The nuclear reaction has been activated. I wonder what the situation is like. Can the divine dragon block the high temperature energy produced by the nuclear reaction and successfully evolve? At this moment, Professor Tang and the many researchers in the control room were even more nervous than Qin Shi in their hearts. Even after heavy calculations, the dosage of the nuclear reaction was adjusted so that the energy it produced was within Qin Shi's tolerance. But this was, after all, the energy produced by the nuclear reaction. No one could guarantee that the outcome would definitely happen as they had envisioned. Once an accident occurred, it would be a disaster that they could not afford. Everyone was in an apprehensive mood. For a while, there was a feeling that the days felt like years. We have already tested the divine dragon's dragon scales, cells, and body's resistance to pressure. And after heavy calculations, the large amount of nuclear reactors and the dosage of fuel have also been adjusted. This nuclear energy absorption experiment has a high success rate. Divine dragon will definitely be able to succeed. He's a dragon, a legendary great being. Everyone's faces were tense. You said with a glance and I said with a word, easing their emotions and cheering for Qin Shi. Right now, they could do nothing but wait patiently and pray for Qin Shi. Everything could only rely on Qin Shi himself. Make sure you succeed. You're a divine dragon. The hope of Eastern Xia. This is just a small hurdle on your way to future greatness. It will definitely not be difficult for you. At the same moment, in Kyoto, Eastern Xia, numerous elders who knew of Qin Shi's existence were also nervously following the experiment. The success or failure of the nuclear energy absorption experiment was not only related to Qin Shi's life and death, it was also related to the future of Eastern Xia. There was no way for them not to be worried. Qin Shi didn't know that many of East Xia's high and mighty elders, who were accustomed to seeing great storms, were not thinking or eating because of him. Even Rare put down the official business at hand, pay full attention to the experiment. Before the results of the experiment came out, no one could rest assured. Energy collection device. Under the steaming and burning of the intense heat, Qin Shi was faced with an unprecedented crisis. The energy coming from all around him in an endless stream drowned him. Even if he gulped down the energy, he couldn't keep up with the speed of the energy coming in. The high temperature scorched his dragon scales and boiled his blood. The golden dragon body, all of it, began to turn crimson. 
On the golden dragon scales, a little bit of ruddy light flared up and quickly spread towards the surroundings. The blood in his body, like magma, boiled violently and couldn't wait to break through his veins. Any other creature, faced with such a dire situation, would have already died. Only a divine beast's incredibly powerful and exuberant vitality could retain a shred of life in such an extreme environment. And in the midst of the boundless severe pain, a magical change gradually arose within Qin Shi's body. Along with the influx of nuclear energy, every single one of his cells became active. The cells of a divine dragon had unlimited potential and were extremely powerful. However, it was also for this reason that trying to make the cells divide and grow was a very difficult thing to do. Previously, Professor Tang and other researchers had placed Qin Shi's cells in a nuclear radiation environment of millions of millirems. Qin Shi's cells did not even mutate. It was important to realize that biological cells in a nuclear radiation environment would begin to show fatal damage at 300 rem, with DNA molecular bonds and molecular strands being destroyed. Although most could be repaired, the mortality rate is 50% at 450 rem, and there are essentially no survivors at 1, 0, 0, 0 rem, and the dose of nuclear radiation suffered by the Chinshir cells was more than 1, 0, 0, 0 rems. Such intense nuclear radiation did not even cause Chinshir cells to mutate. Wanting to rely on a normal diet and ingesting energy to grow was something almost impossible. And now, under the stimulation of the huge nuclear energy, the cells in Qin Shi's body, finally began to divide and grow. It was as if a group of salted fish, stimulated, finally gave up moving. One by one, the cells rapidly split and grew. It was as if they had transformed into miniature abyssal black holes, hungrily devouring the nuclear energy that fell into Qin Shi's body. Along with the rapid division and growth of the cells, Qin Shi's dragon body also underwent a drastic change. Under the burning of the nuclear energy flames, his dragon scales melted rapidly. It was then quickly replenished amidst the division and growth of the cells, becoming even more powerful. In the midst of destruction, creation was nurtured. Qin Shi's 18-centimeter dragon body also grew rapidly under the nourishment of a large amount of nuclear energy. The scales on his body became larger. The delicate and beautiful dragon horn like a laurel on top of his head branched out into more branches. The dragon body was slowly elongating. Good good good, sure enough, only energy like nuclear energy, which has reached the transcendent level, can help me evolve. This feeling of fullness and satisfaction is truly pleasurable. Shinshir stretched his body and danced amidst the fiery torrents of flames, unable to help but let out an unrestrained dragon roar. Eating on weekdays was only able to maintain his normal consumption of life activities, although Dong Xia gave him a package of food and shelter, so that he wouldn't go hungry again like the days when he had just crossed over. However, this feeling of satiety, compared to the feeling of obtaining the nourishment of transcendent energy and realizing the evolution of his life nowadays, was simply a heaven and a hell. Shinshir could clearly feel that the power in his body was growing rapidly. The current him would once again unleash large energy consuming abilities such as evil dragon roar and dragon flame attack, and would definitely no longer be capable of only one or two strikes. And what surprised him even more was, along with the evolution of his life, there seemed to be some sort of inherited memory activated within his bloodline. The number of divine beasts was extremely rare, and not even one could necessarily appear in billions of years. This was especially true of dragons, an existence that stood at the top when looking at the vastness of the universe. Therefore, most divine beasts possessed an inherited memory. This kind of memory is imprinted in the bloodline, and will gradually appear as the evolutionary level of life rises. And right now, the inheritance memory within Qin Shi's body had awakened partially due to the absorption of nuclear energy. Dragon flame. Hell spit. Starburst spit. Tai dragon spitting breath. Qin Shi's eyes shone and his blood pulsed. Dragons could harness wind, thunder, water and fire, gulp down the essence of the sun and moon, and roam the endless universe. This part of his memory that he had awakened was clearly a chapter about mastering the power of the fire attribute. He already possessed several natural abilities such as spitting out thunder and fire and controlling wind and water. The dragon flames he spat out were even more deadly. A mouthful of it was able to melt 100 refined steel into iron. And this part of the memory of controlling the power of the fire attribute was able to allow him to master an even more powerful attack on top of the ordinary dragon flame. Inferno spit, dragon flame enveloped the surrounding area, forming an environment like purgatory, as if hell had descended to earth. The bearish inferno dragon flame burned the sky and boiled the sea. A wide-range lethal attack secret method. Starburst breath. High-intensity dragon flames coalesce into a beam, like a supernova outburst, stimulating a terrifying beam of light that pierces through everything, allowing its own attack power to explode several times dozens of times in an instant. Dragon spitting, as around the world, devouring space and time of the dragon, breathing and gulping between the energy tides surging, can form a big bang comparable to the birth of the universe. 
Of course, when these secret techniques were practiced to the extreme degree, they were naturally incomparably powerful. For example, the hell spit. If Qin Shi was strong enough, he could completely spit out red lotus flames and envelop the blue star. It wouldn't be weaker than the heavenly calamity level foreign beast burning sparrow that he had seen. However, it needed to be strong enough to do so. With Qin Shi's current strength, it would be considered good if he could utilize one ten thousandth of the power of these secret techniques. But even so, it was a huge surprise for Qin Shi. After all, after he absorbed the nuclear energy evolution, he would soon have to enter the market realm to deal with the foreign beasts. Although the various natural abilities he had originally mastered were equally powerful, having an enhanced version of the fire spitting ability would undoubtedly greatly increase his battle power. In particular, the tight dragon spitting breath was not only a powerful attack secret technique, it could also be used for cultivation. Even if he didn't absorb nuclear energy, Shinshir could still absorb the transcendent energies wandering in the void through the tight dragon spitting breath. Ha ha ha, great! Shinshir swam in the middle of the nuclear energy flames letting out an excited and unrestrained laugh while devouring the nuclear energy in large mouthfuls. Of course, once in a while, he would also let out one or two pig-killing wailing screams. The feeling of dragon scales being burned and blood boiling was so damn painful, he was still just a child, and he actually had to endure such unbearable pain of life. Shinshir's mouth cursed and cried and laughed. From time to time, he let out ghostly cries and howls, venting out to transfer the painful feelings on his body, just like a madman. The crowd of people waiting nervously outside were all a bit messed up. What's going on? What's wrong with the divine dragon? Why does it sound so strange? Professor Tang and the others had discussed this with Qin Shi in advance. They would keep an eye on the movements of the energy collection device. Once Qin Shi couldn't withstand the impact of nuclear energy, he could signal them. They would promptly cut off the nuclear reaction and save Qin Shi. However, right now, Qin Shi's voice came out from the energy collection device leaving them confused and unable to figure out what was happening. The divine dragon was inside the energy collection device, crying and laughing, screaming so maniacally. What was this situation? Could it be that their divine dragon couldn't stand the impact of nuclear energy and went crazy? Outside, the researchers who were paying attention to this experiment looked at each other for a while. Strange, why is the divine dragon laughing, wailing, and cursing like a neurotic? Professor Tang, could something have happened? A researcher, worried said towards Professor Tang. Should we pause the nuclear reaction first and see how the divine dragon is doing? Someone suggested towards Professor Tang. Qin Shi's situation was really worrying them. They were not worried about Qin Shi's life right now. After all, if he could be so lively and energetic, how could he not be dying and half dead when he was crying like a ghost in the middle of the night? However, Qin Shi's mental condition made them very worried. Professor Tang, we have gone through a large number of tests and calculations. And this nuclear energy absorption experiment has a high success rate and will not pose a life threat to the divine dragon. However, we have overlooked one point. An expert who had done some research on psychology seemed to have thought of something. His face turned ugly as he said in a deep voice towards Professor Tang, Shenlong is still young. I'm afraid his mental age is similar to that of a human toddler. I'm afraid that he may not be able to withstand the pain that he will have to face during the process of absorbing nuclear energy. As these words fell, the faces of the crowd abruptly changed. Oh no. This was indeed something they had neglected. They were not psychologists, and when they had done various experiments before, they had rarely used their psychological knowledge. Everyone was only concerned with testing whether Qin Shi could survive the impact of the nuclear reaction energy, and had never considered his psychological endurance. Facing the impact of nuclear energy was no less than being plunged into a flaming inferno. This kind of life and death pressure and purgatory-like torture. Even a strong-willed warrior might not be able to survive it. Although Qin Shi was a divine beast, but he was still just a child. Could he withstand the pain brought about by this kind of purgatory-like torture? No one dared to guarantee it. Right now, Qin Shi was ghostly crying inside the energy collection device. Could it be that he couldn't withstand the pressure and had a mental breakdown? Everyone's hearts couldn't help but sink when they thought of this. If this was really the case, then the problem would be serious. Everyone looked over towards Professor Tang. He was the person in charge of this experiment. Whether or not to suspend the experiment, he needed to be the one to make the decision. Professor Tang's face was grave. His hands clenched. Faced with such a possibility, there was a lot of pressure in his heart. This was indeed a great negligence. It could be said to be a very serious blunder. If he really played up the divine dragon, then he would be the country's sinner. This is indeed my fault. I didn't think it through in advance. But right now, there's no point in suspending it for now. Suddenly, Professor Tang said with a bitter smile. He suddenly remembered. This nuclear energy absorption experiment was just an attempt to use a nuclear reactor that wasn't very big and didn't have much fuel. 
The experiment had been going on until now, and the fuel was already about to run out. It was already too late for them to think about Qinshir's mental endurance problem. Now, they could only pray that Qinshir, being a divine dragon, had a strong enough willpower. After half an hour or so, the nuclear reactor ran out of fuel. With the cessation of the nuclear reaction, Professor Tang and the many researchers all came outside the energy collection device with nervous expressions, looking apprehensively at the device that was isolated by heavy protection. The nuclear reaction had stopped. How was Qi Inshur's situation? Did he succeed? Prof. Tang and the many researchers suffered in their hearts. Click. With the protective door opening layer by layer, everyone looked towards the energy collection device. Immediately, their faces changed slightly. Within the energy collection device, there was no figure of Qin Shi. There was only a pile of unknown crystals. Professor Tang's body went limp and almost collapsed to the ground. Where was the dragon? Where was their family dragon? This pile of unknown crystals was obviously the product of something being burned and extruded under the high temperature and pressure of nuclear energy. Could it be that the divine dragon? Bad guesses welled up in everyone's hearts. Impossible. The voice of the divine dragon just now was still so lively. Full of vigor. How could it suddenly be burned into a pile of unknown crystals? A few researchers wearing protective suits. One step at a time. Their faces shaking like their dead parents. Trembled as they walked towards the energy collection device. Just then. The unknown crystal trembled. A small dragon with a golden red body poked its head out of it. It's the divine dragon. Great. The divine dragon is fine. Seeing Qin Shi poking his head out. Breaking out of the ground and shaking off the crystal fragments on his body. The crowd. Who had been as bereft as a mother. Were instantly energized. The researchers wearing protective suits hurriedly came forward to approach and took out various instruments to check Qin Shi's condition. Seeing this. Professor Tang and the others. Although they had a whole lot of questions they wanted to ask, they could only wait patiently first. Qin Shi had just come out of the energy collection device, and it was not known whether there was any residual nuclear radiation on his body. Only after ensuring that it was safe could they come into close contact. Nuclear radiation residue. Zero. Heartbeat. Breathing rate. Normal. Body size. Growth of 2 centimeters. Weight. No significant change. A large group of researchers gathered around Qin Shi for various tests occasionally letting out sounds of amazement. Qin Shi had just experienced the impact of nuclear energy, and logically speaking, he should be carrying a large amount of nuclear radiation on his body. However, after testing, Qin Shi did not have a single bit of radiation residue on his body. Not only that, his various vital functions were several times stronger than the last test. His body had also grown a bit. The most obvious change was that the color of the dragon scales on his body had turned a little redder. This was because Qin Shi had awakened the memory of mastering the power of the fire attribute, and mastered a more powerful secret method of controlling fire. The nuclear energy that he had absorbed also belonged to the fire attribute energy. His dragon scales naturally took on the color of flames under the effect of nuclear energy. However, this crimson color was not the color of his body, and was fading away after he stopped absorbing nuclear energy. It was estimated that it wouldn't take long for him to return to his golden appearance. It was only when he cast a fire attribute secret technique that the color of his body would change again. In that case, am I awakening the ability of the fire dragon transformation? Qin Shi could not help but mutter. After learning that there was no nuclear radiation residue on Qin Shi's body, Professor Tang and the others immediately swarmed to check on his condition. Accompanying them was also a group of psychologists who had been urgently enlisted. Mr. Shen Long, how do you feel now? Is there anywhere uncomfortable? With Prof. Tang as the leader. Everyone surrounded Qin Shi and shushed him. No, I'm fine. What's wrong? Looking at each and every expert in white coats, who were kindly and gently inquiring towards him. Honestly speaking, Qin Shi was a bit confused. Didn't they check him just now? What? What else is wrong? This group of people, why did they look a bit off? Ahem, it's like this. For this experiment, we had a very serious oversight. Forgetting to count your psychological stress. I wonder how you felt just now when you were in the energy collection device and encountered the impact of nuclear energy. Did any discomfort appear? Professor Tang coughed awkwardly and inquired carefully, fearing that he would irritate Qin Shi. They were not worried about Qin Shi's physical condition now. They were just afraid that Qin Shi had some problems with his psyche. So it's this. Don't worry. I'm fine. Qin Shi waved his paw with full concern, looking as if the nuclear energy shock was just a trivial matter. The nuclear energy shock just now was indeed terrifying. That feeling of falling into a fiery hell was just too painful. However, what goes around comes around. The pain was agonizing. He had gained quite a lot as well. That feeling of satisfaction from absorbing transcendent energy and evolving his life offset a large portion of the pain. Is it really alright? 
Professor Tang had an uneasy look on his face and asked suspiciously, Then why did you scream so? Just now? Cam. Xinxia then realized why Professor Tang had called in so many psychologists. It turned out that he had just given vent to transferring his pain in the energy collection device and screamed in excitement because of the evolution of his life level, and was mistakenly thought by Prof. Tying in the others that he couldn't withstand the pressure and had a mental breakdown. This caused his face to darken. There was a sense of shame of having his black history revealed to his face. The soundproofing of the energy collection device was actually that bad. A misstep ah. Don't worry. I'm really fine. The will of a divine dragon would not be that weak. Illusions? What you guys are hearing are all illusions. Shinshur's dragon claw waved. Don't look away. Categorically denied it. And changed the topic. By the way. Is there a place to test your battle strength in our research base? I want to measure my current strength. After absorbing nuclear energy, his life level was evolved. He was now bursting with confidence. There was a feeling that with one breath, he could blow up Blue Star. He couldn't wait to find out what level of strength he had reached. Of course it has. Professor Tang nodded, confirming that there was no problem with Qin Shi's mental state made him relieved. Qin Shi followed Professor Tang to the grounds of the research base where he tested his battle strength. The transcendent research base not only researched on transcendent powers, life evolution, and the like, but also on various high-tech weapons. In the base, there were places that specialized in testing various weapons. In addition to Professor Tang and the others, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and other teammates had also come. They naturally knew that Qin Shi was going to conduct an experiment on absorbing nuclear energy. Everyone was curious about how Qin Shi's strength would change after absorbing nuclear energy. We have a field specialized in testing the speed and penetration of bullets, the lethality and killing range of bombs, etc. I wonder which one you want to test. Professor Tang asked towards Qin Shi. Let's test my dragon flame first. Qin Shi said. This time, after absorbing nuclear energy and evolving his life, the ability that had changed the most in him was dragon flame. Currently, the only transcendent energy that Dong Xia could provide him with was nuclear energy. Other transcendent energies, it was estimated that he would have to wait for him to grow to a certain level and absorb and refine them on his own. Developing the power of dragon flame would be his focus for a long time. The first thing he wanted to test was naturally the power of dragon flame. Professor Tang called for someone to fetch a large chunk of specially made alloy material. Mr. Shenlong, you can use the dragon flame to incinerate the alloy, and we will measure the temperature of the alloy with an optical thermometer to measure the high temperature that the dragon flame can produce. The professional explained towards Qin Shi, then pushed away afterward and walked towards the temperature measuring instrument on the side, making room for Qin Shi to play. Bang! Qin Shi flew on the wind, hovering in front of the alloy material that was as tall as an adult, and opened his mouth to spray. Blazing golden red dragon flame erupted from his mouth. The intense high temperature and explosive power instantly heated the air in front of him to an astonishing degree. The air directly expanded and exploded, making a sound like a bomb exploding. Afterward, it fell onto the alloy material like magma. The alloy material turned red at a speed visible to the naked eye. Within a short period of more than 10 seconds, it showed signs of melting. 500, 1200, 2800, 3600. It's unbelievable. The temperature of the dragon flame actually reached 3650 degrees celsius precisely doubling the previous test the researcher in charge of testing the temperature standing behind the temperature measuring instrument let out a shout of amazement previously sheen sure had done an ability test although his dragon flame was powerful it was only over a thousand degrees celsius and now it had skyrocketed by a full double no it's more than that this alloy material which is synthesized by mixing various mineral metals is sufficiently resistant to high temperatures of 5, 000 degrees Celsius, and now it's only 3, 650 degrees Celsius. How could it show signs of melting? A nearby expert in the field of materials immediately discovered the blind spot and called out in confusion. High performance materials were an essential foundation for the development of modern technology. This piece of alloy material was one of the latest achievements researched by the Transcendent Research Base. Materials Research Department. It possessed a super high melting point and hardness. The temperature of the dragon flame was amazing though, with a high temperature of 3, 650 degrees Celsius. It could truly be described as being able to melt gold and scintillate iron. Most of the steel and iron could not block the burning of the dragon flame. Even in the military arsenals of various countries, the aluminum thermal incendiary bombs with great lethality, which were called death fireworks, in addition to the lethal range, the power was inferior to the dragon flame. However, the melting point of this alloy was nearly 5,000 degrees Celsius. It didn't make sense that it would melt under a mere 3, 650 degrees Celsius of dragon flame. 
It's transcendent power. Professor Tang, who was observing from the side, his eyes shone as he gave an explanation. Dragon flame is not an ordinary flame. The high temperature is only the foundation of dragon flame. It also contains transcendent power that we have not been able to decipher so far, which is the real reason why the alloy material melted. I see. The crowd suddenly realized. Indeed, they had all forgotten that Qin Shi was a divine dragon, and the flames spewed out were naturally vastly different from ordinary flames. Worthy of being a divine dragon, a simple flame has such power. It's enough to kill and injure medium beast soldiers. Everyone couldn't help but marvel. With a high temperature of 5000 degrees Celsius, even those medium beast soldiers who were known for their defense would not be able to withstand it. It's more than that. Qin Shi smiled proudly. What he had cast was nothing more than an ordinary fire spitting ability. Even though the dragon flame spat out had increased in power, it was still an ordinary dragon flame that had not utilized the secret method additions. Having obtained the inherited memories, he had mastered the dragon race's fire attribute secret method. This kind of tactic that was originally treated as his bottom card and could kill half of his life if he spat out a mouthful was no longer in his sights. Let's show you guys what it means to be truly powerful. Sheen sure had the intention to show off. Not returning to one's hometown when one is rich and powerful is like traveling in brocade clothes at night. From ancient times to the present, how many dignitaries, rich and powerful people, couldn't get rid of such a temptation? He, the divine dragon, just obtained the inherited secret method of fire control. How could it be justified without showing off? Sheen sure opened his mouth once again, and the nuclear energy absorbed in his body revolved under the mobilization of the secret method, condensing into a blazing ball of light in his mouth. At the next moment, the ball of light seemed to disintegrate like a star, erupting into a bright beam of light that tore through the darkness and shone through the universe. It shot towards the red-hot alloy material. Starburst spit, one of the three major fire control secret techniques in Sheen Shur's awakened memories. The awakened memories were like instincts. Sheen Shur did not need to specifically cultivate it before he had already mastered it. Of course, mastery was mastery. How powerful it could be utilized still depended on Sheen Shur himself. These three secret techniques were actually the development and utilization of the dragon flame. Hell spitting breath was a wide range killing attack, and the energy consumed was too huge. Even if Qin Shi absorbed nuclear energy and grew a lot, it was probably not enough to cast hell spitting breath a few times. Even if it was cast, the range covered by hell spitting breath wouldn't be large. At most, it would be a range of one or two meters around the body. It was a bit of a chicken rib. Starburst breath was different. Compress and condense the dragon flames and shoot it out at a point. High temperature and high speed bombardment. Tens of meters of thick steel plate can be sliced by it. Bang! The golden red beam that condensed into a line, like thunderbolt lightning, shot on the alloy material. The alloy material, whose hardness was comparable to that of diamonds, emitted a violent vibration and was sent flying backward. The sudden outburst of sound shook everyone's ears and almost deafened them. What kind of ability is this? The numerous researchers around them had shocked looks on their faces. They hadn't seen Qin Shi perform this kind of ability before. Could it be that a new ability had been born after Qin Shi's evolution? There were already people running over towards the metal material that had been sent flying, observing the situation. This, hiss, it actually pierced through the alloy material. The researcher who ran over to check it out sucked in a cold breath. The beam spat out by Qin Shi actually pierced through the alloy material. Only a round hole emerged on the alloy material. The surrounding area was surrounded by molten metal juice that had formed because of the high temperature and high speed strike. This piece of alloy material was more than half a meter thick, and its hardness could be compared to diamonds. The brittleness was small again, unlike diamonds which were hard but could be smashed with a hammer. It was the Gatling machine gun that was able to shoot through several meters of thick steel plates that could not even penetrate this alloy material. Sheen sure merely spat out a beam of light and shot through the alloy material. It even looked like it was swimming with ease. It was really too astonishing. With this kind of attack power, even a superior beast soldier? No, even a beast general wouldn't be able to block it. It might even be able to injure a beast king. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the other members of the divine dragons couldn't help but shrink their pupils at the sight. Their complexion shaking. They had fought against foreign beasts in the market realm and had seen the power of beast generals and beast kings. This starburst spit of Qin Shi's was definitely not yet comparable to those powerful beast generals and beast kings in terms of sound, but in terms of power. It was definitely not weaker than a beast general or beast king. Professor Tang's eyes shone as he looked towards Qin Shi, and he couldn't wait to ask, Mr. Divine Dragon, is this your newly born ability? How many times can you use an attack of this level? They had spent a great deal of effort to cultivate Qin Shi in order for him to help the country and deal with the foreign beasts. Originally, they thought it would take a while to see the results. They didn't expect that so soon. They could see the hope of fighting against the fey beasts from Qin Shi. 
Jin Shi was all surprised by the power of his starburst spit. It was worthy of being a secret technique of the Dragon Clan, compressing the dragon flames drastically. It condensed into a ray-like attack. This was powerful. Unfortunately, the consumption seemed to be a bit high. Jin Shi greeted the excited, expectant gazes of Professor Tang and the others and said, "This is not a new ability that I gave birth to, but rather, it's the Dragon Race's development and application of Dragonitis, condensing Dragonitis into a ray and striking it out." With my current strength, I estimate that I can only release it up to three times in one go, and after three times, I will run out of strength. As for how long it will take for it to cool down, I'm not sure. Feeling the energy in his body, which had instantly consumed most of it, as well as his body that had fallen into atrophy and fatigue, Jin Shi was slightly disappointed. He had thought that the consumption of Inferno Spitting Breath was too great for the current him to use. Starburst Spitting Breath condenses Dragon Flame into a single point, hitting the killing power. The consumption should be much less. Unexpectedly, even with the starburst spit, he couldn't use it several times. Every time he used starburst breath, not only did he need to consume a large amount of dragon flame, it was also a considerable burden on his body. The effects of force were mutual. Even machine guns had recoil. While highly compressing the dragon flame, his body naturally had to withstand the corresponding pressure, as well as the recoil of firing the starburst spit out. Three times? It's enough. If it's applied well. We can completely hunt beast generals and even collect the beast king's flesh and blood materials, Professor Tung sniffed, but there was nothing disappointing about it. Instead, he analyzed it in high spirits. With the speed and lethality presented by the starburst spit just now, once it hit the vitals, it could definitely deal a fatal blow to the beast general. Furthermore, this is only the first time nuclear energy absorption has evolved such battle power. With a few more nuclear energy absorptions, the number of times you're able to unleash this kind of attack will definitely increase as well. Professor Tang said, the other researchers around them nodded in deep sympathy. Even in their minds, they were already thinking about whether to increase the dosage and give Qin Shi a nuclear energy shock every day. Although the amount of money consumed for each activation of the nuclear reactor was huge. With Eastern Xia's national volume, consuming so much every day wouldn't be able to supply it for long at all. However, as long as Qin Shi was able to grow up and possess a battle power that rivaled that of a beast general, then sooner or later, the resources invested could be made up a hundred times a thousand times over. You have a point. I am very interested in foreign beasts. I hope that you can arrange for me to enter the market realm as soon as possible. As for the matter of absorbing nuclear energy it will have to be put off for a while until I finish digesting this wave of nuclear energy that I ate. Sheen sure nodded. Nuclear energy could indeed satisfy his evolution yes. But things like evolution, just like eating and drinking, had a saturation level. His body, his cells, needed to have an adaptation period to digest and absorb the energy. If he absorbed nuclear energy every day, he should not die. However, I'm afraid that any excess nuclear energy absorbed would be wasted. Upon hearing this, the few researchers who had the idea of feeding Qin Shi to the pigs had to regretfully give up their intentions. How wonderful it would be if they could feed the divine dragon all the time. They had a knack for raising pigs. The dozen or so pounds of orange seeds at home were the best proof. But then, they perked up again. Qin Shi was finally going to enter the market realm and deal with the foreign beasts. They had been looking forward to this day for a long time. With Qin Shi's current battle power, together with Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, they could completely hunt medium and superior beast soldiers, and even beast generals. At that time, they would obtain a large amount of research materials. Thinking about it made them excited. It just so happens that it's time for us to return to the market realm to fight. Let's set off together. Ying Di said with a burning gaze, his eyes filled with anticipation. He, along with Tong Jiao and the others, were the main force of Eastern Xia in dealing with the foreign beasts. This time, they came back. Firstly because of what happened to Qin Shi. The second was to come back to study and supplement the information on the newly discovered Fei beasts, and to do a checkup on their bodies. It was impossible for them to stay at the Transcendent Research Base for long. Originally, as planned, they were going to return to the market realm to fight in a few days. Qin Shi's strength which had increased so quickly, was an unexpected blessing. With Qin Shi joining them, they were bound to have greater gains in the market realm. Next, Qin Shi did some tests on speed and strength. All of his physical functions had grown rapidly. After doing the tests, it was natural to have a full meal. The strength test consumed a lot. After evolving, Qin Shi's appetite had also grown a lot. Although his body had only grown by 2 centimeters, but the meal size had increased by at least 2 times. A dozen roasted whole cows were eaten without blinking an eye. Seeing Professor Tang that was worrying. Although Qin Shi's meal size was large, it was only a hair's breadth to the Eastern Xia officials, growing another ten times the meal size. 
they could afford to feed him, however, it was only 20 centimeters, and he had to eat a dozen roasted cows in one meal. If we wait for Qingxi to grow to one meter or two meters, mom, it's frightening to think about it. The country shouldn't really be eaten poor, right? Professor Tang wiped his cold sweat. The next day, Xin Shi followed Ying Di, Tang Jiao, and the others to leave the transcendent research base and head towards the market realm. They arrived at a mountain forest on the border of eastern Xia. The entrance to the market realm is inside the mountain forest. Ying Di explained towards Qin Shi. The ruin realm was an assemblage of countless cosmic drifting spaces, star wrecks, and remnants of extra universal civilizations. After Blue Star crashed into the market realm, it naturally bordered the surrounding secret spaces. In order to protect itself, Blue Star consciousness temporarily blocked these spatial passages that bordered other secret realms, especially those secret space passages where there were Earth Scourge and Heavenly Calamity level foreign beasts that were enough to wipe out Blue Star civilization. Some relatively weaker secret realm space passages were left behind. Blue Star consciousness located these secret spatial passages in the borderlands of each country, with the military ministries of each country sending large armies to guard them. From there, the countries could enter the market realm to fight against the foreign beasts and obtain resources that could enhance their technology and strength. The environment inside the ruins realm is complicated and dangerous. Our country has only set up some protection near the ruins realm space passage, and most of the weapon supplies have to be replenished from the camps on this side of the blue star. Ying Di and the others brought Qin Shi to the camp. This camp, it could be said to be a collection of the best weapons and resources in eastern Xia. Even the nuclear bombs were equipped with one. Once an alien beast discovered the spatial passageway and wanted to counter-invade Blue Star, it was a large army that pressed on and fought to the death. Why don't we build a base on the opposite side of the passageway? Don't we want to gradually explore and develop the market realm? Sheen sure asked. If a base was constructed only on this side of the Blue Star, it would undoubtedly be inconvenient to hunt foreign beasts and collect various resources. Just going back and forth from the spatial passageway and carrying all sorts of supplies would waste a lot of time and energy. Ying Di shook his head and said, It's not that we don't want to, but with East Xia's strength, there's no way to do it for now. Dong Xia naturally wanted to build a base on the opposite side of the passageway and gradually advance to occupy the territory of the market realm. The Blue Star Consciousness had promised the countries in order to encourage them to explore and develop the market realm and enhance the Blue Star civilization. The places that each country captured in the market realm would become that country's territory. As long as the country occupied the market territory for a certain period of time, the Blue Star Consciousness would have a way to incorporate it into the Blue Star's territory. However, there were simply too many alien beasts in the market realm. Once a base was constructed, it would inevitably be infested by foreign beasts. So far, only the five major hegemonic countries had managed to build bases in the market realm. For that matter, they had paid an unimaginable price. It was unknown how many weapons, resources, and even human lives had been filled in. Other than that, it had yet to be heard of any country that had succeeded in capturing the market realm's territory. However, now with your help, Captain, perhaps we can achieve this one feat as well. Tong Jiao, who was at the side, had a sparkling gaze that was filled with hope. The other team members were also in high spirits, full of hope for the future. It wasn't as if they were aiming for nothing. The biggest problem that made it difficult to build a market realm base was that it had to face the infestation of foreign beasts. Only those big, dominant countries had enough strategic weapons and strong military power to defend against the attacks of the alien beasts. If this problem could be solved, other infrastructures and such, there was no difficulty at all. Qinshir might not be able to compete with the military power those great, hegemonic countries possessed in terms of battle power. However as a divine dragon, a divine beast that possessed the potential of a heavenly calamity level, once Qinshir had grown to a sufficient level, his deterrent power against foreign beasts could be much stronger than modernized weapons. As long as he gave off the aura of a divine dragon, he would be able to deter the foreign beasts in the vicinity. At that time, the place where Qin Shi was was the safest place. They could get rid of the interference from the foreign beasts and fully build a base to open up territory in the market realm. It would be too significant if East Xia could also station themselves in the market realm and occupy the land of the market realm. Perhaps Dong Xia could even use this opportunity to become a great power or even equal to those few hegemonic countries. Of course, these were all beautiful fantasies. At least the current Qin Shi was not yet able to use his own strength to deter many foreign beasts. Qin Shi's identity was currently still kept secret, and he performed the stealth ability of Tang Yun Diao Mist, coiled on Tong Jiao's shoulder, and followed the crowd to the camp's transcendent battle zone. This camp concentrated most of the military forces of Eastern Xia, and among them, the transcendent war zone was an extremely important piece. Only the best warriors from each team could hope to be selected to enter the transcendent war zone and receive various trainings to become transcendents. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, 
and the others, were selected up in this way. Entering the middle of the camp, the surroundings were bustling. Countless warriors were patrolling around. One could also see warriors burying their heads in training. Although they had yet to receive transcendent training and obtain transcendent transformation, each one of them was dragon and tiger, and their various physical qualities were extremely amazing. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, you guys are finally back. Along the way, from time to time, people stopped their training and greeted Ying Di and Tong Jiao. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others were the star figures of the transcendent battle region. The twelve of them symbolized the strongest strength of the transcendent battle region. Seeing them, the surrounding warriors were naturally enthusiastic. Ying Di, the military governor summoned you all back. Is there something big going on? Or is there another breakthrough in transcendent research? You guys came back just in time. We are preparing to go to the market realm to hunt foreign beasts. Do you want to form a team? The crowd inquired towards them in a chorus of voices. Go go go. Military secrets. Is it something you can just ask? Ying Di did not have the good sense to say. As for the matter of forming a team, I may have to disappoint you all. The next few of us are going to form a team. There's no way we can form a team with you. Ying Di's words caused the surroundings to be quiet for a split second. Immediately afterward, the crowd exploded. What? You guys are going to form a team. What is the higher-ups trying to do? Hunt a superior beast soldier or a beast general? Everyone was a bit surprised. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, as the most powerful transcendents in Eastern Xia, were considered to be the sharpest blades in dealing with foreign beasts. Basically, every time they went on a mission, everyone worked with one of them to form a team. With the others assisting from the side, the firepower suppressed the Fey Beasts, while they carried out decapitation operations on the Fey Beasts from close range. Now, the military governor actually wanted to gather them together to form a team. This kind of move to gather the top combatants of the Transcendent War region was not something that the crowd could afford not to think about more. Are you all idle? You dare to pry blindly into the strategic secrets of the Ministry of War. Hurry up and go get your equipment. Soon we will be entering the market realm again to fight against the alien beasts. Lu Yong Zhao, as the military governor, returned to the combat zone against the market realm with Qin Shi and the others, and came over from the back, rebuking loudly. Yes, military governor. Everyone was startled when they saw Lu Yong Zhao, and they hurriedly stood upright and gave a military salute, quickly dispersing. Only then did Lu Yong Zhao turn his head to look at Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, especially where Tong Jiao's shoulders were. You guys come with me and draw up a battle plan first. Qin Shi and the others followed Lu Yongzhao to the secret meeting room in the war zone. After everyone took their seats, Qin Shi lifted his invisibility. Divine Dragon it's your first time to enter the market realm and face the foreign beasts. Tomorrow we will organize a hunting operation. First let you see how we usually deal with the foreign beasts. And then you, the Divine Dragon team, will act on your own. Lu Yongzhao looked towards Qin Shi. Qin Shi had seen the video of the Eastern Xia military department dealing with the alien beasts. When he was at the Transcendent Research Base, he had studied and trained with Ying Di and Tong Zhao, and it was no joke. However, observing videos could only increase insight. The only way to enrich experience was to experience it firsthand. It just so happened that the military department had planned to organize a hunt for foreign beasts. It could allow Qin Shi to follow and experience it. In addition, this is Professor Tang and them, specially designed for you to communicate. You can use it to log on to the Blue Net, contact with us and so on. The Blue Net is a network composed of the Blue Star Consciousness as the core. Even in the marketplace realm there is also a signal. There is something you can contact me in time. Lu Yongzhao took out a beautifully packaged box and handed it to Qin Shi. Qin Shi took it and opened it. The box contained a miniature device. It was less than the size of a fingernail cap, just enough to be tied around his neck. This was the specialized Blue Bonnet Lander. Not only did it involve a lot of black technology, there was also the involvement of Blue Star Consciousness. Every Blue Star human could bind a logger, wear it on their body, and be able to operate the login through their consciousness. Since Qin Shi was a bit pocket-sized, he couldn't wear a normal communicator. This instrument, which was specially customized for Qin Shi by the experts of the research base, Qin Shi picked up the lander and followed the instructions, and quickly bound his identity with his Blue Net account. This thing is good. Not only can you surf the internet and relax, but also during combat, it allows the team members to realize timely intercommunication. Qin Shi said in his heart, the reason why the various countries' battle teams were able to fight against the transcendent species' exotic beasts with the identity of ordinary species. The login device occupied no small amount of credit. The other weapons? You can't use them, and they are not as powerful as your natural ability. So we didn't configure them for you. So it's up to you to deal with the Fey Beasts when the time comes. Lu Yongzhao said, but I hope, you can discuss more with Ying Di and the others before you act. 
although they made Qin Shi the captain of the Divine Dragon Team, but in reality, it was only because of Qin Shi's special status that they made him the captain. There was not much hope for Qin Shi's combat command ability. Don't worry, I'm clear about that. Qin Shi nodded in understanding. Although he was a young dragon, he was not really a fledgling. As a traveler who had experienced the vicissitudes of the workplace and the pressures of life, he knew the way of steadiness. He wouldn't go pointing fingers at something that wasn't his specialty. The team's actions were related to his own life safety. He was crazy to direct blindly. It's okay if he pits others. What if he gets himself screwed? As a mature traveler, this kind of mistake would not be made. If you guys, what equipment you should be equipped with? You know yourselves well. I won't talk too much. Fix up at night, and we'll start the operation early tomorrow morning. Lu Yongzhao looked over toward Xing Di and Tong Zhao. Everyone nodded, indicating that they understood. The next day, the well-equipped crowd marched towards the market realm in great numbers. As usual, Qin Shi utilized the invisibility effect of Tang Yin Diao Mist and adorned Tong Zhao's body. Passing through the spatial passage, the immediate environment instantly changed. This place was still the structure of a campground. It was a hidden place created by the military department near the spatial passageway, hidden inside a mountain. Around the entrance of the cave, there were all sorts of heavy heat weapons lined up. Through the cave, one could see. The outside was also a mountainous forest area. However, the mountainous environment and the lushness of the plants here were far beyond Blue Star. Surrounding them was a giant tree that was tens of meters high, or even hundreds of meters high. From time to time, the cries of birds resounded overhead. Xin Shi stepped out of the cave and saw that overhead, the leaves trembled and clattered down, accompanied by a chirping sound. A large group of gray and black birds soared up from among the branches and leaves of the giant tree. This group of birds, each one has the size of an ordinary eagle on the blue star, covered with gray-black, steel-like feathers. They flew up in a single piece, as if dark clouds were covering the earth, looking very spectacular. Qin Shi recognized this group of birds at a glance. It was an exotic bird called the Gang Bird. Transcendent species were divided into beasts, beasts, insects, and fish, but the ranks were all according to Beast Soldier, Beast General, Beast King, Earthly Scourge, and Heavenly Plague. The rigid finch was an inferior beast soldier. However, it was one of the few transcendent species in the market realm that was not harmful to humans. The Gundark mainly fed on insects and plant seeds, and was a vegetarian transcendent species. It was also for this reason that Dong Xia dared to set up the simple camp here. This was the home base of the Gundark. Between transcendent species, there was a strong sense of territory. In the vicinity of this mountain forest, no other powerful transcendent species existed. Occasionally, there were some exotic beasts that entered the range of the mountain forest, and they would cause the hostility and counterattacks of the Gundarks. It could be said that this group of Gundarks was equal to the natural barrier of the Eastern Xia military department in the market realm. Of course, this was also because humans were an ordinary species that couldn't threaten the Gundarks. The Eastern Xia military department was also very careful, never using a wide range of high-intensity weapons in the vicinity, enough to cause serious injuries to the Gundarks, so that the two could temporarily live in peace with each other. Once the military department wanted to expand and was judged to be a threat by the Gundarks, it was feared that it would immediately attract the siege of the Gundarks. 7th Battle Group, bring in incendiary tanks, incendiary bombs, and impact cannons, target, 10 kilometers away to the southwest, medium beast soldiers, tooth swine. This was Qin Shi's first time to enter the market realm and personally experience fighting with alien beasts. Lu Yongzhao wore his combat uniform and followed in to personally command. In the camp, a battle team of a dozen or so people immediately came out in response. At the forefront, were two giant tanks. This was a weapon developed by Dong Xia specifically to restrain beast soldiers with high defenses and large body sizes such as tooth swine. Beasts like the tooth swine were so large and thick-skinned that even machine gun fire might not be able to break through their skin and injure them. Even if they were shot at their abdomen and other relatively soft places, they could only cause ordinary injuries and could not be fatal. Burning tanks, on the other hand, could send out special incendiary bombs. Not only did they possess powerful blasting power, but the liquid fuel in them, when blown up, was able to attach to the target and produce persistent and intense high-temperature burns. It was the upper-class beast soldiers that might be burned to ashes if they were covered by enough incendiary bombs. Xin Shi and the others, followed behind the tank squad, a group of people, in great numbers, rushed towards the tooth swine found by the detectors. Soon, the target appeared, a giant alien beast with a height of 2 to 3 meters, covered with spiky bristles, as if it was one story tall, came into everyone's eyes. Is this the tooth swine? Qin Shi coiled around Tong Zhao's shoulders, sitting on the chariot behind the burning tank, and saw the tooth swine's looming huge body from hundreds of meters away. 
the iconic huge fangs, their tips glowing with a black and red color, looked like two giant bayonets mounted on either side of their mouths. In the sunlight projected through the branches and leaves, it emitted a chilling cold light that sent chills down one's spine. Even the evolved Chien sure felt a hint of pressure from the tooth swine. After evolution, the Dragon Clan's secret fire control method that Chien sure had mastered was enough to inflict fatal damage on top grade beast soldiers and even beast generals. However, in other aspects, there was still a considerable gap with these powerful beasts. Right now, he was like a swordsman who had mastered the nine swords of Dokoroku, but his defense and internal strength were not working. Swordsmanship could break all laws, but once someone fought with him in terms of internal strength, they could immediately rub him on the ground. If he was hit head-on by a tooth swine, even with his dragon body, he would only be scattered all over, unable to move for a moment. Tooth swine, wind wolves, steel-toothed rats, and shadow cats are the common beasts in the area we are responsible for in the east and west, especially the tooth swine and wind wolves, which are the biggest resistance to our exploration of the ruins realm. Tong Jiao watched the battle while explaining to Qin Shi. The spatial passages left behind by the Blue Star Consciousness in the borderlands of various countries were not aimless, but had their own judgment. He had divided the areas for the countries to explore based on their strengths. The area that Eastern Xiao was responsible for did not account for a large percentage of the market realms bordering the Blue Star, and the level of danger was relatively low. The most powerful foreign beast that East Xia had encountered so far was a superior beast general, the Black Cloud Tiger. Most of them were beast soldiers. Of course, this did not mean that Dong Xia's exploration of the market realm would be less difficult. This was because the lower the level of the transcendent species, the more likely they were to form groups, with a single beast soldier alone, basically equipped with targeted weapons. A battle team of a dozen or so people could deal with it. However, when faced with hordes of beast soldiers, unless a large-scale army was mobilized to bombard them with hot weapons at any cost, they would basically just go over there and give them away. Dong Xiao's current strategic approach was to first sweep the beast soldiers around the ruins realm's spatial passages. As long as the beast soldiers enter a certain range, they will resolutely send out troops to eliminate them, slowly form a forbidden area for the beast soldiers before plotting the construction of the ruins realm base. The target has appeared. Snipers stand by. Aim for the target's eyes. Tanks stand by. Incendiary bomb number one. Lu Yongzhao stood at the back of the tank, commanding methodically through the images coming from the detector. Immediately, Someone in the battle group carried a sniper rifle and looked around, searching for a suitable sniper location. The warriors in the tanks also immediately operated and prepared incendiary bombs, aiming at the tooth swine ready to go. The tooth swine was still walking in the forest, sniffing around, looking for food, unaware of the crisis. Bang! Soon, two sharp bullets, from different directions, pierced through the wind and broke through the air. Immediately afterward, a mist of blood exploded from the tooth swine's face emitting a miserable howl. Success! Qin Shi's spirit lifted. With his eyesight, he could clearly see that both of the tooth swine's eyes had been exploded by the sniper. Two lines of blood flowed down from the tooth swine's eye sockets. It's still early. Tong Jiao shook his head. Eyes, no matter what kind of creature they were for, were one of the weakest places. Even if it was a foreign beast, it would not be an exception. A normal creature, hit in the eye by a sniper rifle, with the bullet entering the skull and destroying the brain structure would instantly die violently, however, the life force of a foreign beast was extraordinary, even though both of the tooth swine's eyes had been shot out, they were still alive and kicking, not only that, the loss of its eyes only caused it to lose its vision, but did not take away its ability to perceive, the injured tooth swine's breath became even more furious, its mouth let out a howl of agonized rage as it turned its head and dashed wildly in the direction where the bullets had come from, humans, as ordinary species, were small things that were not threatening in the eyes of most fey, as long as they weren't hit head-on, most of the fey beasts wouldn't pay attention to the humans. However, right now, this group of weak things actually dared to make a move against it. It even shot out its eyes. The anger in the heart of the tooth swine could be imagined. The intense pain, and the wildly burning anger, urged it to rush towards where the snipers were hiding, wanting to trample them into mush to vent its heart. For a while, the ground shook. The tooth swine rushed all the way regardless, destroying trees wherever it passed. Giant trees tens of meters high could not stop its violent impact. The spiky bristles on its body, even more so, stood up one by one, exuding a dark aura, covering the surface of its body, forming a powerful defense. Snipers once again, successive bullets shot at the body of the tooth swine, were blocked by this layer of pitch black aura. Looking at the tooth swine that trampled on the mountains and forests, and came in a rampage, even if he had long been psychologically prepared. The sniper who was targeted couldn't help but have his heart beat wildly, and his hands and feet trembled a little. 
It wasn't that his mental quality wasn't up to scratch. Rather, a normal person facing a one-story high, in the rage of the giant creature, the heart will inevitably be nervous. Not to mention, as a transcendent species, the tooth swine's breath was released after its rage, and it also exerted a life-level oppression on him. Incendiary bomb. Fire. Right at this moment, Liu Yongzhao decisively ordered. Bang. 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 Accompanied by the roaring sound of several shells being discharged, the incendiary bombs that had been prepared long ago were shot out from the tanks and smashed down towards the tooth swine. The tooth swine's sensing ability was indeed very strong. Even if their eyesight was destroyed, they could still detect the location of hostile targets by virtue of the wind and grass around them, thus launching counterattacks. However, these two snipers were scattered on both sides of the burning tank, sniping from different positions, which in itself served the purpose of interfering with the tooth swine's judgment. The tooth swine made an error in judgment and counterattacked in the wrong direction. A few incendiary bombs blasted onto its body with a powerful impact. The black transcendent power that was defending its body was blasted apart for a bit. Not only that, the next moment, the incendiary bombs exploded, accompanied by a powerful blasting force, and the special fuel inside was sprinkled on the tooth swine's body, which burned like a bone dust, instantly generating a high temperature of thousands of degrees Celsius. The temperature was still increasing. The impact of the blasting made the skin of the tooth swine split open. The burning flames added to it. The power of the incendiary bomb explosion was not considered too serious for the thick-skinned tooth swine. At most, it was a superficial wound. However, the fuel attached to its body, which produced a constant stream of high-temperature heat, had a fatal effect on it. Ow ow ow. The tooth swine couldn't care less about the sniper, howling in agony as its body fell to the ground and rolled frantically on the ground, trying to extinguish the flames. Unfortunately, this special fuel was simply not something that could be extinguished by unusual means. Even if it fell into the water, it could continue to burn for a long time. Its frantic rolling was useless except for triggering vibrations on the ground and stirring up a sky of dead leaves and dust. What a poisonous incendiary bomb. It's simply the nemesis of stacked armor type alien beasts with high blood defense. Sheen sure was somewhat alarmed. Humans are worthy of being intelligent beings. Although their individual strength is not comparable to that of the alien beasts, but their endless tricks are able to beat the alien beasts by many streets. Retreat. Just when Qin Shi thought that this operation was about to come to an end, he heard Liu Yongzhao issue a new command. Be careful. The tooth swine is going crazy. Everyone quickly spread out and look for cover. Ha. Huh? Qin Shi was a bit puzzled. Hadn't the tooth swine already been hit by incendiary bombs and was about to turn into a roasted whole pig? At this time, shouldn't they be falling down and riding the wave of victory? Why retreat? Fey beasts have strong vitality especially a huge beast like the tooth swine, it doesn't die so easily, and a frantic counterattack on its deathbed would be even more dangerous than just now. Tong Jiao explained to Qin Shi while spreading out with the others as instructed to interfere with the tooth swine senses. Her words were not yet finished. The tooth swine, which had fallen to the ground and rolled around frantically, suddenly stopped continuing to struggle and got back up, covered in fiery black smoke, sensed in the air and rushed towards the burning tank. The aura was more violent than at any moment just now a posture that was going to die with the burning tank. Shit. Sheen sure couldn't help but curse. It was worthy of being a beast known for its thick skin and flesh, and after all this, it actually still had the power to counterattack. Fey beasts were really hard to kill. No wonder the Eastern Xia military department's exploration of the market realm was so difficult. On the other side, Lu Yongzhao quickly commanded towards Ying Di. Ying Di, the tooth swine is going to make its last struggle. Getting it now is more dangerous than ever. Continuing to attack it with ammunitions doesn't make much sense. You'll be in charge of executing a decapitation operation on it. The tooth swine had been hit with incendiary bombs and was already terminally ill. Continuing to bombard it with incendiary bombs would not deal a more fatal blow to it. Good. A rare opportunity to decapitate a medium alien beast. Ying Di's eyes lit up and he responded loudly. Without the nervousness of being about to face a dying and crazed alien beast. Instead, he drew his body-equipped combat knife with a sense of wariness. Humanity had yet to research a way to apply transcendent power to modernized weapons, and currently, transcendence basically fought with all types of cold weapons. Of course, when it was said to be cold weapons, it was actually very different from the cold weapons of ancient times. These cold weapons were all carefully developed by the transcendent research departments of various countries to be able to produce effective kills on foreign beasts, the unique minerals collected in the market realm, and even the blood, flesh, and bones of foreign beasts were utilized in them. The battle knife in Ying Di's hand was crafted from a metal material unique to the market realm, and was able to break through the protective layer of transcendent power on the foreign beasts in melee combat. Xin lay on Tong Zhao's shoulder and looked over with interest. 
When he was training at the Transcendent Research Base, he had fought against Ying Di a few times, and had seen the melee sword techniques that Ying Di and the others had practiced specifically and painstakingly. However, the Divine Dragon's various natural abilities were just too buggy for Ying Di and the others. When Qin Shi was controlling the wind and water, they didn't have a chance to perform at all. Divine Dragons cultivated both law and martial arts, and their physique was equally powerful. With the sturdiness of the dragon scales, ordinary attacks simply couldn't break his defense. However, if one could use spells to strike remotely, why would one need to get up close and fight ferociously? Thus, during training, Qin Shi basically used his natural ability to completely abuse Ying Di and the others. Their melee abilities were useless against Qin Shi. Of course, just because they couldn't do anything against Qin Shi, it didn't mean that they couldn't do anything against the other beasts. After all, the other beasts weren't as perverse as Qin Shi, who was able to master all the natural abilities at the hatchling stage. Each talent was also very skillful. However, even a beast with only one natural ability was not that easy to deal with. Qin Shi was very interested in how Ying Di would deal with the Tooth Swine. The Tooth Swine came barreling in. Its hooves trampled on the mountains and forests, stirring up a cloud of dust from dead branches and fallen leaves, and its huge size was like a heavy truck crashing into it head on. Ying Di was not afraid. Pulling out his nearly one meter long battle sword that was specially built for him, he rushed towards the Tooth Swine with great strides. Ha ha! Sensing Ying Di who was killing him, the Tooth Swine's mouth corners grinned and its already hideous huge pig face showed an even more ferocious expression. Its mouth spewed out white airflow, and its two bayonet-like tusks slammed fiercely towards Ying Di. With the size of the tusked swine, coupled with the transcendent strength, under this collision, even heavy trucks and armored tanks, I'm afraid that its tusks would be pierced through. However, Ying Di moved his body, quickly dodged to the side, stomped his feet on the ground, and came to the side of the toothy swine's head, and then, not waiting for the tooth swine to react, a cold aura exploded in his eyes, his arm muscles bulged, his whole body's strength surged into the battle sword, and he slashed fiercely at the tooth swine's neck, ow, blood splattered and entered the flesh three times, the tooth swine once again let out a terrifying scream, the bristles that could withstand a sniper's rifle along with the black transcendent power were actually instantly broken under the chopping of the battle knife, half of his neck was sliced off, however, even so, the tooth swine didn't die, its neck hung crookedly and its body slammed towards Ying Di and the bristles on its body even shook, bursting out like sharp arrows. Ying Di had expected this, and after the slash, he no longer stayed and pursued the attack, but quickly dodged towards the back. The bristles on a tooth swine's body were originally extremely powerful hunting weapons. When encountering a strong enemy, the bristles could be shed to form sharp arrows to shoot the enemy. This was something that the Eastern Xia military department had initially paid a heavy price for. Now, Ying Di, who had already grasped the various habits and abilities of the tooth swine, naturally would not fall victim to it again. Facing the bristly arrows shooting all over the sky, he quickly dodged while using the huge wood next to him for cover. Unharmed, only after the arrows dissipated did he once again dash towards the tooth swine like lightning to make up for it. This was repeated three times before Ying Di successfully chopped off the tooth swine's head. The tooth swine's huge body collapsed to the ground with blood pouring out. Good, finally killed the tooth swine. Only then did everyone's faces relax and gather over from their respective hiding places. How about it? Any realization? Lu Yongjiao walked to Tong Jiao's side and opened his mouth to ask, seemingly talking to Tong Jiao, but actually chatting with the stealthy Qin Shi. The foreign beasts are very bad to kill, Qin Shi said, although this operation went smoothly without any twists and turns. However, this was the experience that the military department had figured out after countless failures. The battle plan was customized specifically for the tooth swine. It was only then that this tooth swine could be killed so smoothly. Just like that, the process was not even overwhelming. Before completely killing the tooth swine, no one dared to let their guard down, not to mention the time and energy consumed in the preliminary preparations. And this, dealing with just one tooth swine. In the huge market realm, this tooth swine was just a drop in the ocean amongst the many foreign beasts. It can't be helped. Humans are too weak compared to the fey beasts, and can only make up for this gap by collaborating, as well as consuming a large number of weapons. Lu Yongjiao shook his head. Ha, don't worry. With the help of this divine dragon, this situation will soon improve. Qin Shi raised an eyebrow towards Lu Yongjiao. I hope so. Lu Yongjiao laughed and said, This operation is to let you experience firsthand how we fight against the foreign beasts, and you'll have to rely on yourself next. Alright, pack up the loot and retreat quickly in case the other fey beasts arrive by sniffing around. Lu Yongjiao called out towards the others. Not good. Traces of wind wolves have been spotted 10 kilometers ahead, and one of them is coming in our direction. Lu Yongjiao had just finished speaking when the scouting soldiers sent an alert. What? 
Lu Yangzhou's face changed slightly. He had only just issued a warning and ordered a retreat when he detected other alien beasts. It gave him the feeling that he was a crow's foot. However, they had experienced similar situations before, so they weren't so disorganized by it. Are you sure that there is only one wind wolf advancing towards here? Lu Yongjiao hurriedly asked. Only one has been spotted so far. The scouting soldier returned. One. That's okay. Lu Yongjiao was relieved. Wind wolves were pack animals. Usually 512 in a pack. If it was a wind wolf pack, that would be bad. Since there was only one, it wasn't a big problem. Although the burning tanks they had for this operation couldn't play the same role against the wind wolves as they could against the tooth swine. But suppressing the wind wolves and successfully retreating back to the camp should not be a problem. All troops gather and retreat quickly. Lu Yongjiao decisively issued an order towards everyone. The soldiers under his command rushed to the tooth swine side and cut off the more important parts of the tooth swine's body, such as the heart and lungs, which had research value, while the remaining corpses could only be abandoned for the time being. It was possible that the wind wolves had smelled the scent of the tooth swine and tracked it over to hunt. Taking away the carcasses of the tooth swine would attract the wind wolves in hot pursuit. Giving up most of the tooth swine corpses would attract the attention of the wind wolves and buy them time to retreat. Wind wolves. Qin Shi lay on Tong Jiao's shoulder, his eyes pondering. The wind wolf was a medium beast soldier, shaped like an enlarged gray wolf, but moving like the wind. When it ran, a green colored airflow would emanate from its body, allowing its speed to increase several times in a short period of time. Moreover, its biting power and claws were sharp enough to cause damage to a thick skinned beast like a tooth swine. In terms of overall strength, the wind wolf would not be stronger than the tooth swine, but the degree of difficulty was definitely several times more powerful than the tooth swine, because its speed was too fast and its alertness was high, it was difficult to surround it with a battle group, to deal with this highly mobile beast, one could only set up traps in advance, and then use special bullets to sweep and strong vigor to continuously cover it, the weaponry that the battle team had at this point in time, it was difficult to produce a sufficiently lethal threat to the wind wolves, soon, the group cut the needed body parts of the tooth swine and quickly evacuated the place. Not long after Qin Shi and the others withdrew, a huge wolf that was only a circle smaller than the tooth swine, covered in greenish-gray hair, and with nails that looked like they were cast from steel arrived. Seeing the corpse of the tooth swine, the wind wolf immediately pounced on it and opened its bloody mouth to tear it apart, feasting on it. However, after only a few bites, the wind wolf suddenly stopped and sniffed its nose in the air. Immediately afterward, its gaze landed on the bloodstains on the ground and looked over towards the direction Qin Shi and the others had retreated. From this direction, it smelled the sweet odor of blood, the white female ticket to a meal of tooth swine. The wind wolf was in a pleasant mood. However, how could one tooth swine be enough to fill its ravenous hunger? There seemed to be other prey in this direction. Wind wolf decided to chase after them to have a look. Report, military governor, the wind wolf didn't linger and chase towards us. The scouting soldier summoned Lu Yongzhao. HM, the wind wolves actually weren't attracted by the tooth swine meat, so it looks like we'll have to go through another bitter battle. Lu Yongjiao frowned. All of you stay alert, prepare your guns and bullets, and prepare to deal with the wind wolves. This kind of situation was not rare. There were battle teams that had encountered it before. After killing the fey beasts, some fey beasts that smelled blood rushed in to take food, and they abandoned the blood and flesh of the fey beasts they hunted to buy time for themselves to retreat. As a result, they asked the rushing beasts, not knowing whether they were greedy or they thought that the abandoned beast's flesh and blood was too little, they didn't stay and continued to chase after them. In the face of this situation, they had no better way. Either they would give up all of the alien beast blood and flesh that they had, which was equal to working for nothing. Either that or they could only fight with the foreign beast that was catching up. Since this wind wolf refused to give up and insisted on catching up, they could only use their guns, medicine and cannons to give it a good treat. The speed of the wind wolf was very fast. Although Qin Shi and the others had retreated in time, and the two were still separated by a distance of 10 kilometers before, they were still caught up by it within 10 minutes. Fire. Bang. 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 Everyone had long been prepared for battle, and as soon as the wind wolf ventured out, countless bullets were immediately fired towards it. Whoosh. The wind wolf's speed and agility was very high, its body was very flexible, and it dodged the machine gun fire with a gentle leap. It was like it had transformed into a shadow in the wind weaving in and out of the rain of bullets without being affected in the slightest. Occasionally, bullets hit it, but they were also blocked by the green-colored transcendent power emerging from its circumference, and couldn't hurt it at all. Don't stop. Fire suppression. Incendiary bombs aiming. Lu Yangzhao's face remained unchanged as he continued to order. Burst. A few warriors carrying machine guns, without stopping for a moment, attacked fiercely at the wind wolves that were dodging left and right. 
Dense bullets swept past like a torrential downpour. Under such intensive bullet fire, although the Wind Wolf was able to comfortably avoid most of the attacks without being injured, its forward momentum was also blocked. Immediately thereafter, bang, with a roar, the incendiary bullet that had just caused the Tooth Swine to suffer and take a fatal blow, shot out from the tank. The Wind Wolf sensed the danger, and with a stomp of its limbs on the ground, it avoided the incendiary bomb that blasted past. Most of the impact from the incendiary bomb's explosion was blocked by the transcendent power condensed on its body, only blowing it backward and flipping it over, and did not produce enough damage. It was dodged. Qin Shi couldn't help but frown. He could see that Lu Yangzhou's strategy was to utilize fire suppression to hold back the Wind Wolf's movement so that it could only dodge within a certain range, creating opportunities for incendiary bombs to hit. But now, the plan seemed to have failed. No, it succeeded. It can't dodge. Lu Yongjiao smiled with success as he sniffed. Ow. In the next moment, the sound of the wind wolf screaming miserably rang out. Xin Shi fixed his eyes to look over, only to see a large flame emerge from the wind wolf that had dodged the incendiary bomb. I see. It's fuel. Xin Shi suddenly realized. That's right. I didn't have the idea of hitting the wind wolf with incendiary bombs. Lu Yongjiao said. Facing a highly maneuverable beast with high speed like the wind wolf, normal ammunition strikes were simply useless. The wind wolf's telltale movement was able to easily dodge most attacks, but incendiary bombs were different. The strongest part of incendiary bombs was not originally the blasting power, but the fuel stored in them. Although the wind wolf had dodged the incendiary bomb in time, the fuel that accompanied the explosion of the incendiary bomb and spread over a wide area, it could not dodge. The fuel attached to its body produced a deadly high temperature, causing it to follow in the footsteps of the tooth swine. Ha ha ha, this operation. Maybe we're going to harvest two alien beasts. Someone laughed loudly. Ing D, the tooth swine was decapitated by you. This wind wolf will be our turn. Someone from the divine dragon team joked towards Ing D. Ing D shrugged helplessly. Just now, beheading the tooth swine had consumed a lot of his physical strength. Facing the wind wolf, whose agility was even better than the tooth swine's, he didn't dare to continue. It was a pity that he should have let the others do it earlier. Compared to the tooth swine, Beheading the wind wolf with a higher threat level was undoubtedly more fulfilling. Military governor, something's not right. Right at this moment, the scouting soldier's face changed drastically as he raised the alarm. Be careful. The wind wolves aren't attached to the fuel. The scout soldier's alarm was like a bucket of cold water poured on everyone. How is that possible? The crowd didn't believe it and looked towards the wind wolf. Immediately, everyone's pupils shrank, only to see that on the wind wolf's body, a large area of thick smoke and flames had indeed emerged. However, as its body shook, the smoke and flames were actually falling down piece by piece. Soon, only a few flames remained on the wind wolf's body, although it still emitted high temperature flames, causing burns to the wind wolf. However, it was no longer possible to cause fatal injuries. The wind wolf actually really isn't attached to the fuel. A shocked cry escaped Tong Zhao's mouth. Xin Shi, who was coiled around her shoulder, looked over with his head raised. In an instant, he understood the reason. It's wind power. Qin Shi said in a deep voice, the green-colored transcendent power condensed from the wind wolf was actually wind power. This light and agile power surrounded the wind wolf's body surface and floated at high speeds, just like putting on an air insulation suit for it. It isolated its body from contact with external dust and debris. It was true that the wind wolf did not escape the fuel spread in the incendiary bomb. However, along with the flow of the green-colored astral wind on its body, these fuels were quickly repelled away, and only a small portion of them stained its body. Even the fuel that splashed away along with the explosion and spilled onto the wind wolf's body was blocked by the transcendent power on its body, and there was no way for a large amount of it to attach itself to it. The small portion of fuel attached to it caused the wind wolf to let out a howl as it was burned by the heat, but the damage was limited, and instead, it aroused the ferocity of the wind wolf. Ow dash. The wind wolf let out a murderous roar, and its body transformed into a green shadow as it lunged towards the tank. Fire. Fire suppression. Everyone retreat. Lu Yangzhao's face changed wildly and hurriedly ordered. However, the furious wind wolf no longer dodged bullets, but charged forward against the rain of gunfire. Greenish-gray hair flowed in the wind, and its huge head, comparable to the head of a heavy truck, poked over, its mouth spewing out white airstreams with a strong fury, and the fishy smell hit the face. You guys fire suppression assist, we'll come out and surround. Seeing such a thrilling scene, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, decisively pulled out their body-equipped combat knives, roared at the ordinary warriors around them, and were about to take on the wind wolf head-on. In a one-on-one -on -one frontal battle, their combat power could only be compared to that of an inferior beast soldier. Only with the cooperation of their teammates, 
sitting in advance and preparing accordingly. Could they threaten the medium beast soldiers and upper class beast soldiers? However, now that the situation was urgent, they couldn't care less. They could only stand up to meet the battle first. Fortunately, this time, several of their top ranked transcendents in the transcendent war zone were present, and with everyone joining hands, they might not be unable to resist the wind wolves. Good. You guys be careful. Lu Yongjiao nodded with a gloomy face. Wait. Leave this wind wolf to me. Right at this moment, Qing Shi raised his head from Tong Jiao's shoulder and sent a message towards Lu Yongjiao. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others. Can this? You do it? Lu Yongjiao sniffed with a somewhat hesitant expression. For this operation, originally, Lu Yongjiao had no intention of letting Qin Shi take action. It just wanted to let Qin Shi experience how the military department fought against the foreign beasts, increasing his understanding of the foreign beasts. After all, although Qin Shi had evolved and his battle power had increased a lot, however, it was only the killing power of the various abilities that had been enhanced. In terms of physical ability and combat experience, there was still a huge gap compared to these battle-hardened fey beasts. His output was strong then, but the fey beasts weren't test alloy materials. They wouldn't just stand there and let him fight. Just how to hit the fey beasts in a telltale mobile battle with them was a matter that required a lot of energy to hone for him. How can a male dragon say no? With a wave of his claws, Xin Shi said flatly, Sooner or later, we'll have to fight with the fey beasts anyway, so choosing a day is better than hitting it. So it's a good time to practice with this wind wolf. Besides, our divine dragon team is all out, although we are unprepared. But how is it not so bad that we can't even deal with a wind wolf? No matter what, we can always retreat in one piece. Good, then you be careful. Lu Yongjiao nodded solemnly. Afterwards, he shouted towards the other warriors around him. Everyone retreat. Leave this wind wolf doing D and the others to deal with. Scouts, from now on, the scouting equipment is under my full authority. You can take a break for now, before every action. The battle team would place scouting equipment near the battlefield, which was used to check the surrounding movements, record the details of the battle, and prevent other foreign beasts from coming over to disturb the battle. Qin Shi's existence was a secret of Eastern Xia. Since Qin Shi was preparing to fight against the Wind Wolves, the relevant scouting records must be kept strictly confidential and could not be known by others. The scout was uncertain. Faced with Lu Yangzhao's order, he could only put down the equipment in his hands in confusion. At the same time, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the other twelve transcendents had already held their special combat knives and blocked in front of the wind wolf. Each of them looked grave as if they were facing a great enemy. The wind wolf was a medium beast soldier. Their strength, on the other hand, was only equivalent to an inferior beast soldier. Without prior preparation, their teammates used firepower to cover and suppress them. Facing a medium beast soldier head-on, the pressure was just too great. The huge difference in each other's size alone made everyone's mood sink. Qin Shi performed his ability to soar into the clouds and float in the air like a white cloud of smoke, his eyes gazing at the wind wolf. This was his first battle. The first time he faced this kind of huge-sized foreign beast, his heart was also a little nervous. However, more than anything else, he was excited. As a divine dragon, he was not so afraid of a mere wolf. Even if this wolf was hundreds of times larger than him, you guys don't rush into action first. Let me try to see if I can deal with the wind wolf. Qin Shi sent a message towards Zing Di. Tong Jiao, and the others. In a head-on fight, he was definitely no match for Wind Wolf, unless Wind Wolf was willing to stand against him against Wave. However, he possessed multiple natural abilities. Qin Shi was curious to know how his natural abilities compared to the Fey Beasts. Alright, don't worry about making your move. We will back up as soon as there is a situation. Ying Di nodded his head. The Wind Wolves on the opposite side, didn't know about their secret transmission. This group of little things dared to burn it with fire and it was furious in its heart. Facing Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others in front of him, the wind wolf directly waved its right paw, and the ten centimeters or so of fingernails, which looked like steel and were as sharp as blades, sliced horizontally down towards them. Ying Di, Tong Jiao several people, quickly backward to avoid. At the same time, Qin Shi withdrew his invisibility, and the thick fog dispersed, revealing a golden dragon body that surfaced in front of the wind wolf. Dragon might. The first thing Qin Shi tested was his own might. A strong pressure spread out from his body, fiercely pressing over towards the wind wolf. The wind wolf that was about to swing its claws and slice down. Its pupils instantly widened, staring at the Qin Shi that suddenly appeared in front of him, and a strong color of fear appeared in its eyes. The action of waving its claws directly froze in midair. The pressure of life from the divine dragon instantly knocked it dumbfounded. The wind wolf was dumbfounded. It didn't recognize Qin Shi. It had never seen a creature that looked like this. However, 
A subconsciousness originating from the depths of its genes filled it with awe towards the little guy in front of it, who wasn't enough for it to stuff its teeth. It seemed that tracing back the source of its bloodline, its ancestors of a certain generation had once seen similar creatures. They were honorable and majestic, like gods perched in the vault of heaven, looking down on the insects, fish, and beasts of the earth. In front of such creatures, its ancestors could only shiver from their hearts. Other than that, there is no other way. This feeling that was like facing a god directly was engraved in the depths of its ancestors' bloodline and passed down from generation to generation. Now, a similar aura appeared. This feeling surged out uncontrollably, causing the wind wolf to be at a loss for words, unable to control the scent of few, and on the opposite side of the wind wolf, take advantage of his illness, seeing the wind wolf being intimidated by the dragon's might. When Sheen Shur opened his mouth, he spat over a dragon flame, the red golden dragon flame, spewed out from Qin Shur's mouth instantly enlarged in the air, transforming into a piece of blazing flames that was strong enough to cover the wind wolf's head, and shrouded towards it, roar, at the critical moment, the wind wolf let out a wild roar and actually got rid of its inner fear, regained control of its body and dodged over, Qin sure frowned, it seems that although dragon might is useful to the foreign beasts, it's impossible to completely deter them and make them draw on their necks to be killed, after dodging the dragon flame attack, the wind wolf's guts were obviously much greater, Although it was still full of scorn for Chinshur who was emitting the dragon's might, its eyes were very fierce, its claws pressed tightly on the ground, its nails sunk deep into the earth, and its hair stood up all over its body, revealing an appearance that it would pounce at any time. The oppression of the life level was originally just a kind of chi oppression, a psychological effect. Once this layer was broken, the dragon's might would hardly work anymore. Try my tongue in Diao mist again. Chinshur was not amused, he was just testing his ability against the wind wolf just now and hadn't thought of killing the wind wolf immediately. Facing the wind wolf that had collected its anger and was filled with vigilance, Shinshur's dragon body twisted in the air, and his ability to control wind and water was unleashed, summoning the water vapor in the surroundings to form a white mist that spread out. And then, with the help of the cover of the cloud, he quickly rushed towards the wind wolf in a topsy-turvy collision. The moon tree-like exquisite dragon horn, emitting a sense of sharpness, stabbed towards the side of the wind wolf's waist. Ordinary wild wolves had a copper head, iron bones, and tofu waist. The waist was their weak point. Wind wolves also had a similar weakness. It really needed to be hit head on by Chinshur. With Chinshur's body mass, the impact force that could be generated, death was not a certainty, but bursting a kidney was still possible. Chinshur's collision could be said to be quite tricky. However, the wind wolf's perception was very sharp. Even though it was covered by the clouds and could not see Chinshur's figure, it still sensed the danger and with a prancing leap, its body quickly twisted, narrowly avoiding Qin Shur's impact. Eh? Qin Shur was somewhat surprised. His ability to prancing clouds could not only accelerate the speed at which he was running, but could also confuse the enemy's perception. When he fought against Ying Di at the Transcendent Research Base, he had used this means to render Ying Di impotent. Unexpectedly, the Wind Wolf was able to break through the confusion of the Tempest and sense his attack. Somewhat interesting, worthy of being a medium beast soldier. Shinshur's eyes flickered as he pondered in his mind. It seemed that his various innate abilities would be of limited use to the more powerful foreign beasts. I'd like to see how many times you can dodge. With a twist of his body, Shinshur once again dashed towards the wind wolf on his cloud. The wind wolf dodged left and right. However, its size was too huge. With such a large target, Shinshur was just a blind head but that wouldn't hit empty. After some dodging and chasing, Shinshur charged at the wind wolf several times. With his size, the force of the charge was no less than a heavy truck's furious impact, and even though the wind wolf was huge, it was knocked down and swayed from side to side. Awesome, the wind wolf is actually defenseless under the captain, worthy of being a divine dragon. It seems like we were worried for nothing. Seeing this scene, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, were relieved. This was Qin Shi's first battle, and they were originally a bit worried that he would be injured due to his lack of experience. Now, it seemed that they were overly worried. Qin Shi's mood was not so good. It was because his attack, that was all that was left. Even the incendiary bomb explosion couldn't hurt the wind wolf. This amount of strength of his charge was, at best, like being hit by a wobbling sandbag to the wind wolf. Qin Shi tried to attack while spitting out dragon flame and lightning. The dragon flame and dragon lightning, on the contrary, produced some damage. The flames burned and the lightning blasted, dispersing all the green colored wind power from the wind wolf. However, the wind wolf was not a vegetarian shaking its body to dodge, the wind power flowing on its body, resisting most of the damage from the dragon flames and dragon lightning. For a while, 
Sheen sure couldn't do anything with it. It looks like we can only use the starburst spit to kill the wind wolf with a single blow. Sheen sure pondered in his heart. After the short confrontation, he had a rough judgment of his strength. He was, right now, much stronger than a medium exotic beast like the wind wolves. However, if he wanted to completely kill them, I'm afraid it would still be a bit difficult. Ordinary dragon flames and dragon thunder. It was difficult to inflict a fatal kill on the wind wolf in an instant, so he could only utilize time to wear out with it. There might still be a chance that the other party would slip away. Starburst spit was powerful enough. Even if a top grade beast soldier was hit in the vitals, there was only a chance of dying. But the hit rate was a big problem. He tried to kill the wind wolf with starburst breath several times, but the wind wolf sensed the danger and dodged away. With the wind wolf's huge size, there was no way to completely dodge the starburst spit. But if it didn't hit the vitals, with the powerful life force of the foreign beast, it was equal to doing nothing. With my current strength, when facing the fey beasts, I can only manage to tangle and defend myself, I can't crush and kill them, if I want to kill the fey beasts, I can only rely on teamwork, letting the others help me hold the fey beasts back, and create an opportunity for me to cast starburst breath spit shot, Sheen sure made a summary, and then, without wasting any more time, he transmitted towards Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, you guys make a move, help me hold the wind wolves back, and create opportunities for me to use the starburst spitting breath, Good. Ying Di and Tong Jiao's eyes lit up, and without hesitation, they rushed up and surrounded the wind wolf from all sides. They had seen the power of Qin Shi's starburst spitting breath. Normal attacks could not injure the wind wolf, but the starburst spitting breath definitely could. Immediately, Qin Shi once again performed Tong Yin Diao Mist to hide his figure and flew high up in the sky, staring at the wind wolf, looking for a time to strike. The wind wolf seemed to have sensed the crisis. His eyes swept towards the surroundings vigilantly. His mouth let out a whimpering sound, no longer thinking of killing these small things in front of him, his body slowly moved back, wanting to leave. When they first arrived, the wind wolves were raging and murderous, a look of looking down on everyone, treating everyone as if they were chickens and ducks that could be slaughtered wantonly. After Qin Shi's severe beating, it finally realized that something was wrong. This group of little things that it usually didn't even bother to look at, didn't seem to be easy to deal with, especially Qin Shi. This creature that didn't know what the hell was going on was less than the length of one of its paws, yet its strength was unexpectedly strong. That out of this world stealth ability was even more disgusting to the wolf. Now this contraption had disappeared again, obviously hiding and trying to mess with it. Withdrawal withdrew. The wind wolf turned around and left without a care in the world. It's too late to run now. Seeing this, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others immediately waved their battle swords and surrounded them, slashing and hacking. Although their strength, they were no match for the wind wolf. However, the specially made battle knives in their hands were enough to pose a threat to the wind wolf. Twelve people surrounded up together, encircling and entangling. Wind wolf had just avoided the attack in front of him, when a knife light came from the left side. After avoiding the left side, someone behind him viciously thrust a knife at his juju, wanting to sweep everyone with one claw. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others retreated in time and did not meet it head on. For a while, the wind wolf was unable to get away from the left and right. Sheen Shur, who was hidden in the clouds, had already chosen a good angle and opened his mouth at the wind wolf's head. The energy in his body revolved, generating a large amount of dragon flame like an oven, compressing and condensing it. Boom! Accompanied by an explosive sound, dragon flame spit that looked like a star falling from the nine heavens was emitted from Qin Shur's mouth. The dragon flame, which had condensed into a line, flickered in the air, leaving behind a stunning trailing light that shot into the wind wolf's skull like a small needle sticking into tofu. Even penetrating the wind wolf's head, it shot through its body from the back, unable to walk away. The wind wolf, whose demeanor grew more and more manic, was just about to go berserk when the greenish-gray hairs that had been erected on its body drooped. Bang! The huge body fell to the dust. Awesome! Tong Jiao took a step backward and couldn't help but shout, a trace of palpitating feeling showing on his heroic face. Even though she had seen the power of the starburst spit, and saw that the wind wolf, which normally required dozens of battle teams, equipped with all sorts of weapons to prepare in advance and set up traps, to deal with, was killed with a single blow like this. In her heart, a sense of shock still inevitably surged up. Just now, the starburst spitting breath flickered, and the energy fluctuation that erupted out in a flash made her feel a strong and deadly threat, and the hairs on her body stood up. Good. Lu Yong Zhao, who was remotely observing this scene through his scouting equipment, couldn't help but shout out. Xin Shi's performance was much better than he had expected. With the Divine Dragon Team's overall cooperation, a foreign beast that required a dozen or so battle teams equipped with elite weaponry to hunt was resolved so quickly. 
This was much more efficient than the military department's original efficiency. Ha ha ha, fate. This trip out. Not only did I hunt a tooth swine, but I also harvested an additional wind wolf. This is a big credit. Ying Di put away his battle sword and walked over to the wind wolf's corpse, stroking the wind wolf's thick fur and shouting excitedly. Every foreign beast was a good research material. The fur and bones, etc., were all useful. For example, the blood of the fey beasts, from which transcendent power could be extracted, could be used to physically transform the military warriors. Internationally, the value of a beast soldier could be sold for tens of millions of points. If a private research institute was interested, the price could be speculated even higher. Of course, the beasts hunted by the military ministries of various countries basically wouldn't be taken out for sale. It was too much for their own research. At most, they would take them out and trade with other countries for some alien beast materials that they didn't have. However, for transcendents like them, every time they went on a mission and hunted down a fey beast, they would get credit for it. It wasn't just an honor. The military department would also reward points accordingly. If you want to be excited until you go back, first lift up the wind wolf corpse and hurry to retreat, so as not to have other alien beasts running out later. Xin Zhi landed on Tong Jiao's shoulder and reminded him. This starburst spit consumed a lot of his energy. If a few more wind wolves jumped out, it would be troublesome. I know. Ying Di responded. Everyone gathered around the body of the wind wolf with nimble hands and feet. One person lifted up a corner. Twelve people teamed up and easily lifted up the body of the wind wolf. In front, Lu Yongzhao also had the retreating battle group come back to meet them. Seeing wind wolf's corpse, the warriors of this battle group were very surprised. Just now, the wind wolf was alive and well, forcing them into a dangerous situation. So quickly, it had actually turned into a corpse. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others were so powerful. Twelve of them joined hands and actually managed to kill even a highly maneuverable beast like the wind wolf? The eyes of the warriors were filled with shock, admiration, and longing as they looked towards Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others who were carrying the corpse of the wind wolf. In response, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others were somewhat embarrassed. Just now, they hadn't put in much effort at all, and had only helped Qin Shi to restrain the wind wolf for a bit. The greatest credit for killing the wind wolf was given to Qin Shi. However, Qin Shi's existence could not be divulged, and they could only acquiesce to everyone's speculations. Qin Shi was unimpressed. He was more interested in hunting the beast tooth swine and the meat of the wind wolf than the attention and applause of the crowd. The only transcendent energy that Dongxia could provide him with was nuclear energy, and the flesh and blood of the fey beasts contained a variety of different transcendent energies. He was curious to know if the fey beast meat would help his evolution. Returning to the warzone camp, Qin Shi made a request towards Lu Yongzhao to eat fey beast meat. In response, Lu Yongzhao naturally wouldn't refuse. This was originally within the Treaty of Qin Shi's cooperation with Eastern Xia. Qin Shi had come to the Ruins Realm to fight against the Fey Beasts, and the real purpose was to find more resources that could help him evolve. Fey Beast Meat was one of them. In fact, at the Transcendent Research Base, Qin Shi had consumed some of the Fey Beast Meat. It was only that the Fey Beast Meat in the Transcendent Research Base was all useful and it was impossible to feed it to Qin Shi in large quantities. Coupled with the fact that the transcendent energy in the flesh and blood would be rapidly lost after the death of the foreign beasts, Xin Shi did not feel anything from eating it. That small bit of meat could not be eaten with any effect either. Only in the war zone could one obtain a large amount of fresh alien beast meat. Lu Yongzhao instructed the war zone kitchen to simply cook some of the cut down tooth swine meat and send it over to Xin Shi. Fiend meat is difficult to cook. We have not conducted any research in this area for the time being, so we can only simply roast it. Lu Yongzhao said towards Xin Shi. The foreign beasts contain transcendent power in their bodies, able to withstand the high temperature and cold. Although after death, the transcendental power was lost, and the ability of the flesh and blood to resist the high temperature and cold would rapidly diminish. It was not something that could be cooked by ordinary flames. Adding to the fact that the meat of exotic beasts was originally very small, and it was a bit shy to use it for research, Dongxia temporarily did not have the luxury to the point of being able to use it as food. Only to Qin Shi was an exception made. Xin Shi nodded in understanding. He turned to the tooth swine meat on the dinner plate and swallowed it in one big gulp. Honestly speaking, the tooth swine meat was not delicious. It was too chewy. If it wasn't for the fact that he was a divine dragon with good teeth, he wouldn't even be able to chew it. Moreover, the meat was rough, far less tasty than ordinary cow, sheep, and pork. However, for the sake of evolution, Xin Shi could only reluctantly put his mouth on it. In a short while, Enough tooth swine meat to fill the stomachs of dozens of people was wiped out by him. How is it? Did it work? Lu Yongzhao asked with a face full of anticipation. Cultivating Qin Shi was the center of gravity for Dongxia nowadays. 
If the Fey beast meat was helpful to Qin Shi's evolution, even if it smashed the pot and consumed even more, he would have the military department hunt in enough Fey beasts for Qin Shi. As long as Qin Shi could grow, all the costs could be made up for hundreds or thousands of times in the future. Well, it's somewhat useful, but the effect isn't very good. Qin Shi finished eating and closed his eyes to feel it carefully. Dragons had a strong digestive ability. The tooth swine meat had been digested by him only a short while after it had been consumed. There were wisps of transcendent power being absorbed by him, allowing him to recover a lot of the energy he had consumed from killing the wind wolf. But that was as far as it went. It's true that fey beast meat is a bit better than ordinary meat, but beast soldier's meat is just a bit more top hungry, and it's still not as useful to me as nuclear energy. Qin Shi smacked his lips. Lu Yongjiao frowned slightly, looking somewhat disappointed, but after a little thought, it was actually normal. Although the tooth swine was an exotic beast, its blood and flesh were rich in transcendent energy, but compared to nuclear energy, it was definitely not enough. Qin Shi needed to absorb nuclear energy in order to grow significantly. It was only normal for the tooth swine's flesh to have a weak effect on Qin Shi. Since it's useful, this means that by consuming the meat of a foreign beast, it can indeed help you evolve. Only that perhaps the tooth swine is only a beast soldier, and the transcendent energy contained in its flesh and blood is not enough. Lu Yang Zhao guessed. That should be it. Qin Shi nodded. It seems like I need to hunt down some higher grade exotic beasts to have a taste. Lu Yong Zhao smiled bitterly, beast soldier ranked fey beasts, we can help hunt them, even if the price we pay is relatively high, but fey beasts above beast generals, we only can't do anything about it for the time being. It wasn't that the strength of the East Summer Military Department couldn't deal with a beast general, with the weapons that humans had at their disposal, it only required hundreds of elite warriors equipped with advanced weapons to pay a certain price to be able to deal with beast generals. But let's not forget that there were so many foreign beasts in the market realm. It was impossible for the beast generals to stand dumbly and let them surround them. For every beast general, there would be numerous low-grade beast soldiers as henchmen beside them. To deal with a beast general, one would need to take the beast soldiers near the beast general into consideration as well. In terms of strength, hundreds of elite warriors equipped with advanced weapons would be enough to pose a threat to the beast general. However, from a practical point of view, if one wanted to hunt the beast general, it was impossible to do so without deploying a large-scale army, and the casualties during the battle with the fey beasts were bound to be heavy. Just let me take care of the matter of the fey beasts myself. Qin Shi waved his paw, making the military department pay such a huge price just to provide him with food. Qin Shi didn't think it was necessary. After the test of this battle, our divine dragon team is fully capable of killing foreign beasts independently without the help of other people, so we'll be acting on our own next. I'm going to go deep into the market realm to see if I can hunt other kinds of foreign beasts. Qin Shi said, As for you guys, just help me prepare nuclear energy at regular intervals. Even if the blood and flesh of the fey beasts were helpful to his evolution, it was still not as good as nuclear energy in terms of quantity. The nutrients he needed for evolution for a long time to come would probably only be taken from nuclear energy. Good. I'll convey this to Professor Tang and set up a good nuclear energy supply base here in the war zone as soon as possible. Lu Yongjiao nodded solemnly. The next day, Qin Shi brought Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others to enter the market realm once again. They didn't have the other ordinary battle teams equipped with weapons to follow. Instead, they acted alone. With the experience of killing the wind wolves, everyone was much bolder. However, Qin Shi did not immediately go deeper into the area where the other Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others had not set foot. Instead, he followed them and moved around the areas that the military department had already explored continuing to hunt tooth swine, wind wolves, and other lower middle class beast soldiers as practice. Their teamwork was enough to kill medium beast soldiers. Even against the upper class beast soldiers, they should still have enough strength to deal with them. However, given the problem of Qin Shi's battle energy consumption, they had to sharpen their team and try to make Qin Shi's every strike able to hit the vitals of the beasts, so as not to waste energy. Bang! In a dense forest in the market realm, the sound of a fierce battle resounded. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, armed with battle swords, formed a group and surrounded a foreign beast with a flaming tail, shaped like a hound, tailed flame mastiff, this was also one of the common beasts in the market realm, the size of this beast was similar to that of a wind wolf, but its body was stronger and more ferocious, and its tail was coalesced with green flames, and when it pounced and killed, a faint flame would emerge from its body, however, they were not as good as wind wolves in terms of stamina, speed and agility, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, according to the designated plan, encircled on the left and right, besieging the tailed flame mastiff, Qin Shi, on the other hand, was flying in the clouds and stealthily stepped aside, looking for a time to strike,
Facing the siege of Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, the tail flame mastiff was initially disdainful. A group of ordinary species were not even in its sights. This kind of small upright walking monkey, it could bite dozens of them to death in one breath. However, when Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, erupted with the battle power of a transcendent mortal, their speed steeply accelerated, and twelve battle blades slashed towards it from all sides, the tail flame mastiff's hair instantly stood up, realizing the crisis. Ow. The tail flame mastiff let out a huge roar from its mouth, its eyes filled with blood, sending out a warning towards Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others. Both claws swung, and the claws with faint green-colored flames swept across the air. The strange green-colored flames, with a low temperature, caused the surrounding air to emit a popping sound, as if it had been instantly detonated. A group of ordinary species actually posed a sufficiently deadly threat to it. This caused the tail flame mastiff to become infuriated. It put away its contempt and intended to strike seriously, killing this group of upright little monkeys and letting them know what would happen if they offended it. However, just as the tail flame mastiff was about to explode to establish its authority, wordlessly, a long, golden-colored creature that was less than the size of its palm surfaced in front of its eyes. Roar! Xin Shi withdrew his stealth and sent a dragon might shock at the tail flame mastiff. The bloodline memory from its ancient ancestor caused the tail flame mastiff to be confused for a moment. In the next moment, a beam of radiant golden red dragon flame ray shot out from Qin Shi's mouth. Ow dash! The extreme crisis of death awakened the tail flame mastiff and twisted its head in time. However, the starburst ray still shot at its body, entering from its left cheek and piercing through its skull. The tail flame mastiff let out a terrifying scream. Seeing this, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others immediately stepped forward, exploding their entire body's strength as their battle blades slashed at the tail flame mastiff, inflicting another wave of damage on it. Qin Shi once again puffed up his mouth and spat. This time, the tail flame mastiff, which was severely injured and its battle power was severely weakened, didn't dodge it and was hit by the starburst spitting breath in the heart's vitals. The huge body fell to the ground. Oi! Successfully killed another foreign beast. There's progress. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, put away their battle swords and surrounded towards the tail flame mastiff, with uplifting looks on their faces. Qin Shi flew over and stopped at the corpse of the tail flame mastiff. Not bad. There is indeed a bit of progress. I reckon that if I sharpen it a few more times, I should be able to cooperate with Long Wei and utilize the starburst spit to kill medium beast soldiers at once. Xin Shi was in a happy mood. In the past few days, they hunted foreign beasts near the passageway as a way to sharpen themselves. The goal Xin Shi set for himself was to combine the starburst spitting breath with dragon might shock, and to execute the starburst spitting breath during the time period when the foreign beasts were shocked. With his dragon might, he could shock the foreign beasts causing foreign beasts whose life levels were inferior to his to fall into a state of confusion for a short period of time. If he could successfully execute the starburst spitting breath within this short period of time, that fey beast would be like a standing unintelligent target in front of him. He could hit it any way he wanted. After several days of fighting, Qin Shi's speed of executing the starburst spitting breath had indeed increased quite a bit. Previously, even when he was facing an alien beast like the Tooth Swine, which was huge in size and weak in speed and agility among medium beast soldiers, he didn't even have the chance to execute the starburst spitting breath. When facing the wind wolf, he even dodged even casting ordinary dragon flame. And now, facing the tailed flame mastiff, which had a small range of explosive power and an agility that was only a little worse than that of the wind wolf, he was able to cast starburst vomit during the time period in which the dragon might deterrent was in effect, inflicting serious damage on it. It was believed that after a few more training sessions, the speed of his starburst breath would continue to improve. It wasn't a dream to kill a foreign beast with a single shot. It wasn't just Qin Shi, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others had also made complete progress during the several days of fighting. Whether it was sword techniques, body techniques, all types of combat skills, or their mental state when facing a head-on charge from a foreign beast, they were incomparable. Facing a medium beast soldier, they could already be more flexible in pestering and even injuring them. Although they were still unable to fight the medium beast soldiers head-on, compared to before, it could already be said to be a sea change. One must know that before. They could only use the assistance of other battle teams to first use heavy heat weapons to wound the foreign beast before they could strike out to kill it. Faced with an intact fey beast, they simply didn't dare to get too close, not to mention making a move against it. And now, even if they were to go one-on-one, -on -one, they would still be enough to surround themselves with medium beast soldiers for a while. The reason for this was that previously, they had never wrestled with a foreign beast in its intact state. And under Qin Shi's leadership, they had to face the oppressive feeling brought about by the foreign beasts head-on. Under the huge pressure, if they didn't want to die and get injured, they had to desperately squeeze their potential, make themselves stronger. 
Of course, the blood and flesh of the fey beasts obtained from hunting was also an important factor. The bodies of the fey beasts were too huge. After they finished hunting the alien beasts, other than taking some of the vital organs and sending them back to the war zone as research materials, the remaining flesh and blood couldn't be taken away. So they had to settle for localized solutions. Most of the alien beast blood and meat went into Qin Shi's stomach. The rest of the alien beast meat should be shared by D. Tong Jiao and the others. The transcendent power contained in the alien beast's blood and flesh had little effect on Qin Shi. However, it seemed to have a not insignificant effect on Ying D. Tong Jiao and the others. They could clearly feel that their strength was increasing and all their physical qualities had improved significantly. Professor Tang's and their research is correct. Consuming the meat of exotic beasts is indeed beneficial to the ordinary species, able to subconsciously improve the physical qualities of the ordinary species, and may even allow the ordinary species to evolve into a transcendent species, Ying Di said. That's true, but the absorption efficiency of consuming fey beast meat is too low. So many fey beast blood and flesh. If the research department is allowed to extract it, it can be enough to extract hundreds of transcendent potion. I'm afraid that no country can afford to evolve through consuming fey beast meat. A team member laughed bitterly. The transcendent research department had researched a variety of methods to allow ordinary species to evolve into transcendent species. Most of them didn't work, but there were a few that were theoretically feasible. For example, extracting the transcendent energy contained in the blood and flesh of exotic beasts and injecting it into ordinary people. For example, consuming the blood and flesh of exotic beasts and through the method of dietary supplementation, ordinary people could also absorb transcendent energy. It was through the first method that they became transcendents. As for the second method, it was theoretically feasible and less dangerous. The first method had high requirements for one's physical quality. People whose physical quality did not meet the standard, who rashly injected transcendent potion, could easily not withstand it and risk their lives. With dietary supplements, as long as they were not poisoned, the risk was definitely lower but the efficiency was too low. God knows how much exotic beast meat one would have to consume to become a transcendent. Those rich bigwigs and plutocrat heads of the hegemonic countries, I don't know if they can buy so much exotic beast meat. Anyway, the East Summer officials did not have the capital to be so extravagant. Before Qin Shi appeared, even a single hair or drop of blood from the exotic beasts hunted by the military department was strictly controlled. Don't worry, following this divine dragon will definitely allow you to eat and drink without worrying. When the next time we finish absorbing nuclear energy, we'll go deeper into the market realm and hunt deeper, to see if we can kill stronger foreign beasts, Qin Shi said with a wave of his claws and bravado. Professor Tang and the others were already urgently setting up a nuclear energy supply base in the war zone. By absorbing another wave of nuclear energy, the power of his starburst spit could definitely be taken to the next level. The number of times it could be cast could also increase. In conjunction with the progress of Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others. There should be no problem with the team hunting upper class beast soldiers. Good. Captain is domineering. There's meat to eat following the captain. Charge. The crowd laughed and shouted cheerfully. And while Qin Shi and the others were training themselves and improving their strength. Outside. There were dark currents. East Xia used the wind wolf heart and part of the tail flame mastiff's corpse to exchange a batch of nuclear fuel to Shang Nong. Has this matter been confirmed? In the intelligence bureau of East Xia's neighboring country. Dolly. The director of intelligence received a report from a spy lurking in East Xia. East Xia didn't know what was going on and had suddenly acquired a large number of alien beast corpses. And recently, there was a huge demand for nuclear energy related materials. The Dali intelligence chief. From this, smelled a hint of abnormality. The countries of the Blue Planet were in a forest, and their relationship with each other was not amicable. Before the Blue Planet fell into ruins, conflicts had erupted between countries over territory, resources, and other issues. Dali shared a border with Eastern Xia, and there were as many nasties and disputes between them as there were people. Every year, there were dozens of large and small border conflicts. Moreover, due to some historical reasons, the relationship between Dali and Eastern Xia was almost as bad as fire and water. After Blue Star crashed into the ruins realm, the disputes between the countries didn't slow down because of this, but instead shifted to another level. That was the exploration and development of the market realm. This was the call of the Blue Star consciousness. Although the Blue Star Consciousness didn't force countries to, necessarily, explore and develop the market realm, but who dared to disobey their mother? After the Blue Star Consciousness manifested, after a short and intense discussion, the various countries quickly and unanimously formed a consensus. That is, in the future, whichever country could please the Blue Star Consciousness and gain its favor, that country would be able to become the unique hegemon on the Blue Planet and lead the future of the Blue Planet. Therefore, 
It could be said that countries had spared no effort in exploring and developing the market realm. Between each other, there was always a rivalry. As a rival country and competitor to East Xia, Dali naturally did not want to be overpowered by East Xia. They were very concerned about East Xia's market realm exploration process. East Xia's sudden acquisition of a large number of alien beast corpses had caused them to become alarmed. It's been confirmed. The person in charge of delivering the intelligence returned. Although Dong Xia has done a good job of keeping the information secret, it's impossible for the content of this kind of transaction to not leak out at all. And we've also confirmed it by connecting with the relevant people from Shang Nong. Shang Nong was one of the hegemonic countries of the current generation. The deal between Dong Xia and Saint Nun was just a small matter to Saint Nun. They had merely thrown themselves at the relevant people in charge of this matter in Saint Nong, and they had obtained enough information right in the middle of the hobnobbing. That's strange. Where did Eastern Xia get so much fame eat? The director of intelligence couldn't help but frown. Based on what they had probed before, East Xia and Dali, the level of exploration of the market realm should be about the same. The number of foreign beasts that could be hunted was very limited. It wasn't even enough for their own research. So how could they possibly take it out and trade it with other countries? East Xia seems to be acquiring a large amount of nuclear fuel. All kinds of nuclear energy manufacturing machines. Could it be that they are using nuclear weapons to hunt alien beasts? The intelligence officer guessed. Nuclear weapons, as the strongest power humans had at their disposal, still had a powerful killing power for fey beasts. Even if it was a beast king, taking a nuclear weapon head on, it was estimated that he would be finished. Impossible. The director of intelligence immediately shook his head in rebuttal. The killing power of a nuclear weapon was too powerful. If one really wanted to use a nuclear weapon to deal with a foreign beast, how could one possibly leave a corpse intact? Not to mention that using nuclear weapons to deal with beast soldiers and beast generals would not be worth the loss. Nuclear weapons were strategic weapons that threatened beast kings and even earth scourge level beasts. To use it against beast soldiers and generals was tantamount to killing a chicken with a bull's knife. Although Dali held strong hostility towards Dongxia, and had always regarded Dongxia as an inferior race, with all sorts of contempt and disparagement. However, it was believed that those people in the East Xia Elder Council would not be so stupid as to go this far. Then, it can only be that East Xia has developed a new type of weapon that possesses a high lethality against the foreign beasts. It's always impossible that the foreign beasts themselves ran to the entrance of the East Xia's war zone to crash to death. The intelligence officer shrugged. The director of intelligence's face sank as he heard this. This was also his guess. At the same time, it was the guess he was most unwilling to make. If Dongxia really had made new advances in the weapons against the alien beasts, it would be unfavorable to Dali. It would cause Dali's level of exploration of the market realm to be left behind by Dongxia by a large distance. And in the future, the extent to which each country explored the ruins realm would determine everyone's position in the international arena. No, this matter must be clarified. The director of intelligence snapped to his feet. He reported this news and speculation and it quickly drew the attention of Dali's top management. This matter cannot be taken lightly. East Xia's points on the Blue Bonnet's country points ranking list has indeed seen a large increase in points recently, a high-ranking member of Dali said in a deep voice. The so-called national points ranking list was an incentive introduced by the Blue Star consciousness. Countries would earn a certain amount of points for the extent of their exploration of the ruins realm, their technological advancements, and so on, when uploaded onto the Blue Network. This was again different from personal points. Countries with high points would receive more care from Blue Star Consciousness. This included, but was not limited to, the Blue Star Consciousness personally helping the country to assist in the research of transcendent powers, providing other facilities for the country's exploration of the ruins realm, and so on. The reason why the five dominant countries were able to build bases in the market realm and gradually advance to occupy the market realm territory under the circumstances of being surrounded by foreign beasts, it had to do with the help of the Blue Star Consciousness. They enlisted the help of Blue Star Consciousness to utilize spatial technology to incorporate the occupied market realm territories into Blue Star's territory, using the spatial channel with the market realm as a barrier to advance into the market realm. Otherwise, with the power currently held by the human race, even a stronger base wouldn't be able to stop the tidal wave of foreign beasts. On the Blue Bonnet's country points ranking, there wasn't much of a gap between Dali and East Xia. However, recently, East Xia's country points had risen greatly. This was worth pondering over. As a hostile country, Dali had even created a strong sense of urgency. We must find out what means East Xia is using to hunt and kill foreign beasts with such a sudden surge in efficiency. This kind of means, which only our great Dalia is qualified to possess, falling into the hands of East Xia is just too much of a waste. The Dali executives shouted arrogantly, then send the Inferno Demon team into the area of the market realm that East Xia is responsible for to check it out. And by the way, give East Xia a little warning as well. 
The Dali Prime Minister quickly made a decision. The Inferno Demon Squad was Dali's transcendent warrior squad. The members inside were about as strong as Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others. Of course, that was before. That might not be the case now. Hey, Eastern Xia, looks like we're going to meet up with those old rivals. In the Dali Warzone, the leader of the Inferno team, Kim Wanpyong, received the mission notification and laughed at his teammates. Dali and East Xia were bitter rivals, and as a transcendent from their respective countries, Jin Huanping had naturally dealt with Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others quite a bit. He also had an understanding of their strength. I hope they won't be too surprised. Another member of the Inferno team, Park Yu Chi, let out an impish laugh from his mouth. There had been confrontational exchanges in terms of transcendence between Dali and Eastern Xia. He had suffered a loss at the hands of Ying Di, and had always held a grudge about it. This time, he might have a chance to get his revenge. We obtained the blood and flesh extract of the Inferno Tiger from Shang Nong, and through genetic fusion, we have mastered part of the Inferno Tiger's ability. Even if we encountered a superior beast soldier, we can fight against it, or even kill it. How could that group of people from East Xia be our opponents? Another Inferno member said disdainfully, East Xia is probably still holding on to that outdated idea of what humanitarianism and human-centeredness would be, rejecting genetic modification of the human body. How could they possibly imagine how powerful we are after genetic modification? Another person said with a condescending posture. In their words, they were full of overlooking towards the transcendence of Eastern Xia. Genetic modification was a technology that had already existed before Blue Star had fallen into the ruins realm. Only, due to factors involving ethics and morality, genetic modification was basically banned from human experimentation by all countries. At least on the surface, no country dared to openly conduct related human experiments. And after Blue Star crashed into the realm of ruins and the appearance of foreign beasts, this technology once became a global hot topic. This technology once became a global hot topic. Genetic modification could allow humans to have better physical qualities, and if it was applied to transcendental research, could it allow humans to fuse the genes of the fey beasts and master the transcendental power of the fey beasts? At that time, genetic modification could be said to be a major mainstream of transcendent research. Only later did the research discover that genetic modification produced many problems. The first was the problem of the success rate. Humans were an ordinary species, and it was difficult for them to withstand the genetic information of a transcendent species. Secondly, even if a genetically modified human succeeded in mastering the transcendent power of a fae, there was a high chance that he or she would be infected by the fae's genetic information in the future and show signs of bestialization. Can a genetically modified human still be called a human? All sorts of questions erupted. And in the end, all countries gave up on this aspect of research. But how could this kind of thing be banned? There were countless countries that researched privately. They obtained the new generation of genetic modification technology researched by Saint Farmer and incorporated the genes of the beast general Yen Guanghu into their bodies. Genetic modification did not allow a transcendent to obtain all the transcendent powers of a foreign beast. But even just obtaining some of these abilities would be an extremely amazing change for humans. Beast generals were powerful alien beasts that required the use of an army of hundreds of people, equipped with all sorts of heavy and hot weapons, in order to deal with them. Moreover, unlike beast soldiers, Beast generals could already flexibly utilize the transcendent powers in their bodies to make all sorts of delicate maneuvers. Unlike beast soldiers, although the upper grade beast soldiers also had the ability to harness transcendent power to attack and hunt, they could only roughly harness their transcendent power to bomb indiscriminately. It was extremely mechanical and dull. For example, the same beasts that mastered the ability of flame. A superior beast soldier could only drive a fiery flame attack when hunting and pouncing to enhance its combat power. Beast generals can go even further. Harnessing the flames to form all sorts of different attacks, fireballs, firewire entanglements, and so on. The Inferno Tiger was a beast shaped like a northeastern tiger and covered in flames. It can harness flames to fight, and the flames it spits out are comparable to volcanic lava. After fusing the genes of the Inferno Tiger, the transcendence of the Inferno Demon Team gained some of the Inferno Tiger's transcendent power. It was possible to harness the fiery flames to attack. Holding on to the past is destined to be abandoned by the times. Jean Huanping said with a calm face, he reached out his hand and gently clenched it, and a blaze of fire immediately emerged from his fist. This scene, if Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others had seen it, would definitely have shaken them very much. The transcendent transformation that they had obtained was only the transcendent energy extracted from the blood and flesh of the foreign beasts and injected into the body for slow absorption. The body could surpass the limits of the human body under the subtle transformation of the transcendental energy, but no matter how much it surpassed, it was still within the range of ordinary species. 
Ordinary species couldn't freely convert all kinds of energy and could only obtain energy through the reaction of matter. Kim Wanpian was able to convert flame energy without going through the chemical reaction of matter. This was no longer an ordinary species. Rather, it possessed the characteristics of a transcendental species, possessing the means to harness transcendent power to fight. Even if they were to face a superior beast soldier, they would have the power to fight. Let's go. Enter the market realm. It's time to make the Eastern Xia people understand the gap between them and us Dili people. With a wave of his hand, Kim Wanpian led his team into the market realm and stalked towards the area that the Eastern Xia was responsible for. The market realm explored by each country was actually the same secret realm. Only, the Blue Star Consciousness divided the corresponding area for everyone based on the strength of each country. The stronger the strength of the country, the wider the area it was responsible for. Of course, the level of danger was also higher. The area that Dali was responsible for with Eastern Xia was just adjacent to each other. As long as one crossed over a hundred kilometers, one could enter within the area that East Xia was responsible for. And as the Inferno team moved to sneak into the market realm area that East Xia was responsible for, the Eastern Xia war zone, Qin Shi and the others returned to the war zone with the foreign beasts they had hunted. Divine Dragon, you've come back just in time. We've already prepared the nuclear energy reaction equipment, so we can start a new round of nuclear energy absorption. As soon as Qin Shi returned, he heard good news. Professor Tang had personally come to the war zone with a team from the research department, ready to conduct a new round of evolutionary experiments for him. Has the nuclear energy supply base finally been constructed? Qin Shi's eyes lit up. During this period of time, he had fought against alien beasts in the market realm and trained himself to perform the starburst spit in Dragon Inferno, and had made great progress. Nowadays, he could unleash five starburst spitting breaths at once without affecting his combat power. With ordinary Dragonitis, it was even more. Casting a dozen times was no problem at all. However, his range had always been regarded as his shortcoming, limiting his further play. Despite having Thai Dragon Spit, he could already not completely rely on food and was able to replenish his consumption by breathing in the transcendent energy that was free in the air. However, every time he consumed the energy in his body, he would need at least half a day to return to his full strength. The skill cooldown time was too long. Absorbing nuclear energy once more might solve this problem. Well, it will take some time for the base to be completely built, but there shouldn't be any problem in providing you with a nuclear reaction experiment and supplying nuclear energy. I don't know when you would like to carry it out. Divine Dragon? Professor Tang asked towards Qin Shi. It's not too late. We can start right away. Qin Shi said. Good then. I'll have someone prepare. And we can conduct the experiment at night. Professor Tang returned, looking somewhat expectant. During this period of time, Qin Shi had hunted and killed many foreign beasts in the war zone and had made rapid progress. And he was very curious about Qin Shi's physical condition nowadays. He couldn't wait to find out about it. The experiment would be carried out as soon as possible. And they would also be able to obtain more data on divine dragons from Qin Shi, which would be of great help to their research. In the war zone nuclear energy supply base, a nuclear reactor twice as large as before was erected in front of them. After the last nuclear energy absorption experiment, we have redone an assessment of your tolerance and adjusted the dosage of nuclear fuel this time. Professor Tang led Qin Shi to the outside of the nuclear reactor and explained towards him. Last time, in order to be on the safe side, they had gotten the tiniest nuclear reactor to supply nuclear energy to Qin Shi with the technology that East Xia could master. They were afraid that Qin Shi would not be able to withstand the impact of nuclear energy. And now, Qin Shi's strength had progressed a lot, and his ability to withstand the impact of nuclear energy was much stronger. They could naturally increase the dosage without worry. Qin Shi nodded and entered the nuclear energy collection device. It was still the same process. Having had the experience from last time. This time, Qin Shi absorbed up nuclear energy faster and more efficiently. Especially since he had awakened the Thai dragon spitting breath. A secret technique used by the dragon race to control fire. Which involved the field of breathing in and out the transcendent energy of the outside world. Under the effect of the Thai dragon spitting breath. The huge heat of nuclear energy was devoured by him before it could overwhelm him. Qin Shi was perched in the middle of the nuclear energy collection device, and his small body looked like it had transformed into a small abyssal black hole. The nuclear energy life flames were like rushing seawater, falling into his body and being absorbed by his cells. Finally, it's grown a little bit more. After absorbing the nuclear energy, Qin Shi's body grew a little bit again. The 20 centimeter dragon body grew to 24 centimeters, although it had only grown by 4 centimeters. The increase in volume and the advancement in strength had doubled. Under the high temperature and light heat of nuclear energy, he also gained a deeper understanding of the dragon race's secret fire control method. Professor Tang did some tests on Qin Shi. The power of the dragon flame hadn't increased too much. 
but the power of the starburst spit had doubled, and the dragon flame rays produced were faster and more lethal. Originally, Sheen Shur's starburst breath, the speed of the dragonitis ray was nothing more than three times the speed of sound effect, roughly compared to a sniper rifle. Now, the speed of the starburst breath can reach five times the speed of sound. In a close range battle, with the dragon might shock, it could basically do a one hit kill on the beast soldiers. Very good. Although I still can't execute a wide range attack like Inferno Spitting Breath, the Starburst Spitting Breath alone is enough to allow me to run rampant in the nearby market realm. And the next step of going deeper into the market realm to hunt the foreign beasts is much more certain. Sheen Shur's heart was overjoyed. He didn't stay in the war zone for long. And after absorbing the nuclear energy, he couldn't wait to bring in D, Tong Jiao and the others, and once again killed his way to the market realm. Market realm. Sheen Shur once again arrived in the mountain forest where foreign beasts were rampant. And this time, he was no longer moving around the warzone spatial passage. Instead, he went deeper into an area that the eastern Xiao warriors had not previously penetrated. How is it? You guys look nervous? Xin Shi perched on Tong Jiao's shoulder and said towards Ying Di and the others who were following behind him. Of course I'm nervous. Ying Di laughed bitterly. This is the first time we've gone deeper in this place. And we're going to face even more powerful and unfamiliar foreign beasts head on later. So how could we not be nervous? In fact, the more powerful foreign beasts in the deeper parts of the market realm were not much more than those near the spatial passage. Although the military department was limited to its strength and couldn't go deeper into the market realm, the various scouting equipment wasn't restricted. The average foreign beasts wouldn't make a point of destroying the flight detection equipment either. As a result, the military department had a general understanding of the alien beasts that survived within hundreds of kilometers of the surrounding area. It was just that understanding was understanding. Other than the vicinity of the spatial passage, the alien beasts in other places, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others had never encountered them, and if they did run into them, their hands would inevitably be tied up in battle due to the lack of intelligence. Don't worry, with this divine dragon here, and having grown up a bit, I will protect you all well. Xin Shi was not nervous at all, his expression was very flamboyant, and he patted his chest and assured, our target this time is a superior beast soldier, or even a beast general, have confidence in your captain. Another wave of nuclear energy was absorbed. Qin Shi was now bursting with confidence. Our target is the flame wolf. This kind of beast is not very fast. It is within the range that you can deal with. Leave the leading flame wolf to me, and you guys will take care of the rest. This is also an exercise for you guys. Qin Shi said, yes, captain. The crowd nodded their heads. The unfamiliar market realm was a much more dangerous environment. They didn't venture in, but cautiously advanced towards the place where the flame wolves were inhabiting. The flame wolf, a pack dwelling exotic beast, an adult flame wolf was about as strong as a wind wolf. The head wolves among them basically had the strength of a top grade beast soldier. After the previous refining, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others had a great increase in their battle strength, and could completely pester them for a long time when facing a medium beast soldier. And Qin Shi, who had evolved again, was already strong enough to slaughter medium beast soldiers in a one-sided battle. His target was the head wolf of the flame wolves. Stop. After walking for some time and about to approach the flame wolf's habitat, in the team, Pang Mao, the team member in charge of detection, transmitted a message towards everyone. He controlled a detection bee that flew in midair, scouting the surroundings from above. The detection bee was a detection device developed by East Xia, disguised as a bee with a tiny body size, providing excellent concealment, and it was not easy to attract the attention of the foreign beasts. The detection of the market realm by the Eastern Xia military ministry basically relied on the detection bees. Pang Mao shared the detected images through the blue net. Qin Shiji realized that he was connected to the blue net and immediately saw a few flame wolves foraging for food about three miles ahead. Everyone be careful approaching. I will use Tang Yun driving mist to help you mask your breath. As soon as we encounter the flame wolves later, we will immediately strike, making sure to kill them in the shortest possible time. Qin Shi said towards everyone. Taking off clouds and driving mist was one of the basic abilities of the dragon race. Previously, Xin Shi could only use tang clouds and mist for himself. And after absorbing nuclear energy to grow, he could already expand the scope of his Tang Yun Diao mist ability. Although due to his current direction of evolutionary growth, which was fire control, he was not very skilled in the application of Tang Yun driving mist, and was unable to making Di and Tang Jiao invisible. However, allowing them to lower their presence and avoid being detected by the foreign beasts was still doable. Concealment was an extremely important ability in the middle of a jungle fight. The strength of Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others were not able to pose a threat to medium-sized alien beasts head-on. However, if they can conceal themselves, invade a certain range and suddenly attack, it may not be impossible to injure them. 
utilizing the clouds to hide and lashing out at close range. This was another set of battle tactics that Qin Shi had developed for the Divine Dragon team. Good. We know. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others, nodded fiercely. Taking off the clouds to conceal one's form was no less helpful to them than the support of a battle team equipped with fine weapons. It was even as if it was superior. Previously, they needed the assistance of a battle team equipped with refined weapons in order to kill medium foreign beasts. And now, with the help of Tang Yunwei, even if the foreign beasts hadn't been depleted of their strength and injured beforehand, and they surprised them by storming out, it might not be impossible to kill them. Stalking all the way. Soon, the divine dragons approached the foraging flame wolves. Very well, five flame wolves, you three in a team, just split four of them, and leave the strongest flame wolf to me. Chinchur said as he looked at the flame wolf in front of him, probing his nose and sniffing left and right in the middle of the jungle. Good, I'll be in a group of three with Tong Jiao and Pang Mao. Tong Jiao and Pang Mao, you two will be the front runners, and I'll be responsible for the fatal blow. Ying Di quickly said. Everyone quickly divided into groups and selected the targets to target. Everyone continued to stay in the cloud created by Qin Shi and carefully approached the flame wolf. The flame wolf in front of them was still unaware that danger was approaching. Suddenly, just when they were only about 10 meters away from the flame wolf, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others stormed out. The clouds could block the line of sight and confuse the enemy, but the flame wolves were very alert, and being able to mask everyone's aura from 10 meters away from them was already the limit of what Qin Shi could do at the moment, and a distance of 10 meters was not too far for Ying Di. Tong Jiao and the others, with their physical qualities, it would only take a second to cross 10 meters with a full outburst. Ow dash, the leading flame wolf was very alert, sensing the crisis coming the moment Ying Di and the others stormed out and raised an alarm. The other four flame wolves, immediately raised their heads and showed their teeth as they looked towards Ying Di and the others, facing the lightning-like rush of enemies. The flame wolves ignited a blazing flame on their bodies and waved their huge claws, sweeping across like a shovel. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and Pang Mao were responsible for dealing with a flame wolf on the left side. Tong Jiao and Pang Mao led the way, holding their battle knives and slashing towards the flaming wolf. The specially made battle knives left shocking scratches on the flame wolf's body before it could even react. Dripping with blood, the flame wolf roared, angrily waving its claws, bringing up a frightening claw shadow laced with red flames in the air. However, Tong Jiao and Pang Mao did not continue their attack, but instead dodged to the side. The flame wolf's attack immediately fell short, instead revealing a huge hole. As Tong Jiao and Pang Mao dodged, behind them, a figure quickly sprang out, holding a pitch black military spike in his hand, and viciously stabbed at the flame wolf's eyes. This figure was clearly Ying Di. The flame wolf was focused on killing Tong Jiao and Pang Mao, and for a moment did not realize Ying Di, who was following closely behind them. Compared to Tong Jiao and Pang Mao, Ying Di had more explosive power. He presided over the fatal strike. Under the fierce outburst, the sharp military spikes thundered through the flame wolf's claws piercing into its eye sockets and hitting its brain. Although the life force of a foreign beast was very strong, if the vitals of the brain were destroyed, there was still only one way to die. The flame wolf let out a wail of pain, swung its claws and swept Ying Di out, and was about to hunt down and counterattack, when its huge body shook twice and collapsed to the ground in a disheveled state. The entire process, not even half a minute, a medium beast soldier that previously required them, with the aid of a battle team equipped with fine weapons, to kill, died just like that. The operation went so smoothly that Ying Di felt dreamy. It worked. We actually killed a medium beast soldier so quickly. Ying Di was sent flying by the flame wolf's claw and fell to the ground, not caring about the severe pain coming from his body. He climbed up and muttered with some disbelief. On the other side, the other groups also came with shortcuts. The target they had chosen was smoothly eliminated with the cooperation of the three transcendents. As for the target Qin Shi chose, it died even faster. Qin Shi quickly scurried in front of it not even needing to execute Starburst Spit. A dragon flame spat out, instantly enveloping the flame wolf. The flame wolf's ability was also to control flames, but the flame ability that they had mastered, compared to the dragon flame, it could only be said that it was a firefly compared to the white moon. The golden red dragon flame, with intense high temperature and the destructive power of burning everything, devastated and submerged the flame wolf, burning it into a piece of charcoal. What's so incredible about this? Xin Shi flew to Tong Jiao's shoulder looked at Ying Di and skimmed his lips. Although the foreign beasts are strong, like the flame wolves this kind of medium beast soldiers, their bodies are even able to condense transcendental power defense, enough to withstand the bombardment of the heavy heat weapons, but it is impossible for them to maintain the defense of transcendental power all the time, and when we suddenly kill them out, they are unable to mobilize the defense of transcendental power in time, 
so they naturally aren't your rivals. Flame wolves were not the thick skin type like tooth swine, without the defense of transcendent power. Their defense was only that much stronger than an inferior beast soldier. If Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao and the others couldn't kill them, they could really quit the team. These flame wolves are just appetizers. The flame head wolves are the next focus. Sheen sure reminded. Everyone put away the excitement in their hearts and nodded solemnly. The flame head wolf was an upper grade beast soldier. They had fought against superior beast soldiers before. There was a huge difference in combat power between a superior beast soldier and a medium beast soldier. A single upper grade beast soldier could be comparable to dozens of medium grade beast soldiers. It was only with Qin Shi's help that they were able to kill the flame wolf so smoothly. There wasn't actually much of a change in battle power. It was simply not enough in front of the superior beast soldiers. If it wasn't for Qin Shi evolving once more, they wouldn't have had the courage to deal with an upper class beast soldier at all. Put some heart blood and take away the wolf claws, heart, eyeballs, and other parts, and leave the rest. Ying Di squatted down, took out a few test tubes from his backpack, and skillfully packed up the loot. Fighting deep into the market realm, they couldn't bring the corpses of the foreign beasts back to the battle zone, so they could only choose the parts of them that were important after all to take away. After packing up the flame wolf's corpse and resting for a while, everyone set off again, traveling towards the flame wolf's habitat. At the same time, on the other direction of the flame wolf's habitat, Dolly's flame wolf's team happened to be traveling in the same direction as Qin Shi and the others. After a few days of trekking, Jin Huangping and the others managed to cross a hundred miles of land and enter the area of the market realm that Dong Xiao was responsible for. TSK TSK TSK, the market realm is really dangerous. It's the first time we've traveled this far into the market realm, and if it wasn't for the fusion of the Inferno Tiger's genes, we might have actually died on this trip. Park Yu Chi patted the dust on his body, looking a bit wretched. After fusing the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger, certain traits of the Fey Beasts appeared on their bodies. Their strength skyrocketed, and with the whole team joining hands, they were able to face the Beast Generals in a battle. But there were too many foreign beasts inside the market realm. Along the way, they had encountered no less than 10 Beast Generals alone. There were even more beast soldiers. After a big battle, each of them had a little bit of color on their bodies to a greater or lesser extent. Finally, we've come to the area that Eastern Xia is responsible for. I'd like to see what that group of people from Eastern Xia have come up with. To be able to suddenly hunt down so many alien beasts, could it be that they have also quietly purchased gene injection liquid from Shangnong, like us, and carried out genetic modification? An Inferno team member said. Regarding the fact that Dong Xia had gone on a buying spree of nuclear fuel and hunted down more alien beasts, there had been all sorts of speculations from the top echelons of Dali, the most likely of which were two. 1. Dong Xia had researched some sort of weapon that could utilize nuclear energy, increasing the efficiency of hunting alien beasts. 2. Dong Xia had also secretly carried out genetic modification of warriors, boosting the strength of the transcendence. I wish that the group of people from East Xia had also undergone genetic modification just like us. Otherwise it would be too boring to deal with without pressure. Kim Wanpyong sneered. Park Yuki. Scout the neighborhood. We need to be a little more careful when we enter the range of East Xia, to avoid being discovered by East Xia's scouting equipment. Kim Wanpyong said towards Park Yuki. I know. Park Yuchi nodded and took out a small box from his backpack and opened it. Inside the ring-sized box, there was a tiny mosquito laid out. Biomimicry detector. Flower Mosquito 1. This was a more advanced detection device than Dong Xia's Dong B detector. The body size was even more tiny and hidden. It was able to reflect a variety of detection rays to avoid local detection. This kind of detector is one of the most advanced devices in the sacred farming country. Dolly had gone to great lengths to purchase five of them from the sacred farming country. Park Yuchi activated the flower mosquito one detector. With a mosquito sound, the flower mosquito no. One flew high into the air, like a real mosquito, flying forward unnoticed. The surroundings, on the other hand, were transmitted to Park Yu Chi through the eyes of Flower Mosquito 1. He he, coincidence. Suddenly, Park Yu Chi let out a surprised voice. What's wrong? Kim Wanpyong asked. Captain, look, a trace of Ying D and the others has been detected a dozen kilometers away. Park Yu Chi immediately shared the detected image to Kim Huanping. When Jin Huanping took a look, he was also happy. They had come to the area in charge of Eastern Xia, precisely because they wanted to probe the situation of the Eastern Xia's military department to see if Ying Di and the others had received genetic modification, or if East Xia had researched any secret weapons. Originally, they had thought that they would still need to go through some secret reconnaissance to find out the truth. I didn't expect to run into the target as soon as I entered the area in charge of East Xia. It was really a no-brainer. The people of the Inferno team had a relaxed look on their faces. The mission had gone too smoothly. 
making them want to be unhappy. This is the edge range of the area East Xia is responsible for. Ying Di and the others actually dare to go deeper into the market realm. It seems like East Xia is indeed hiding a not so small secret, Park Yu Chi said. Eastern Xia was comparable to Dali in terms of national power, and the level of exploration of the ruins realm was about the same. Before fusing the genes of the Infernal Light Tiger, none of them dared to leave the area that Dali was responsible for. The location of the spatial passageway, too far away. Only after fusing the genes of the Yen Guang Tiger did they have the strength to be able to go deeper into the market realm and explore more areas. Ying Di and the others actually dared to leave the location of the spatial passage so far as well, and it didn't take much thought to realize that they were bound to be in possession of some sort of undercard that could fight against even more powerful foreign beasts. Will it be genetic modification just like us? It's not necessarily oh, isn't Don Xia on a big acquisition of nuclear fuel? Maybe they are having a major breakthrough in weapons. A few members of the Inferno team, you and I speculated. Let's go. Let's follow them. Capturing D and the others later. Ask for the information directly from their mouths. Naturally it will be clear. What's the use of guessing? With a wave of his hand, Jean Huanping led the way in the direction where D and the others were traveling. Behind them, Park Yu Chi and the others followed with expectant expressions. They were already a little impatient to know what kind of expression Ying Di and the other East Xia's transcendence would have when they saw them, and they didn't realize that there was a golden creature lying on Tong Jiao's shoulder. Although the flower mosquito detector was stealthy and had a wide detection range, but separated by a distance of more than 10 miles, and Qin Shi's size was too small, lying on Tong Jiao's shoulder, it was like a decoration. Jin Huanping, Park Yu Chi and the others, directly ignored Qin Shi. Qin Shi did not know that a group of transcendents had their eyes on them. He was happily leading the divine dragons towards the location where the flame head wolves were. The flame wolves should have gone out in groups to forage for food. There are only five flame wolves in the habitat aside from the head wolf. What a great opportunity. Captain. Do it? Pang Mao asked towards Qin Shi as he detected the situation of the flame wolves through the eastern bee detector. Normally, the number of flame wolves was maintained at around 2030. Discarding the five flame wolves they had just hunted, there should still be a dozen flame wolves present. And right now, there were only six flame wolves where the flame wolves were inhabiting. This was a good opportunity for a surprise attack. It's the same tactic as just now. Leave the head wolf to me, and you guys will deal with the rest of the flame wolves. Qin Shi calmly ordered. According to the battle power test after absorbing nuclear energy, he definitely had the battle power to hunt and kill a superior beast soldier alone now. He would take the flaming head wolf to test himself. All right, captain, take care of yourself. Ying Di nodded towards Qin Shi. Everyone's faces became grave. They were not worried about Qin Shi dealing with the head wolf alone. Although this was the first time Qin Shi dealt with a superior beast soldier. However, with Qin Shi's ability, even if he couldn't kill the flame head wolf, he was still more than capable of defending himself. Instead, it was them who had to deal with five flame wolves, and the pressure was a bit high. Just now, when dealing with four flame wolves, they had all paid the price of minor injuries before they were able to kill them successfully. And now, to deal with five flame wolves, it was naturally more difficult. Fortunately, they didn't need to kill the flame wolves, they only needed to stall them and prevent them from supporting the head wolf. The final outcome of this battle still depended on the victory or defeat between Qin Shi and the head wolf. Under the shroud of Qin Shi's cloud riding mist, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, smoothly concealed the perception of the flame wolves and sneaked into the depths of the flame wolf's habitat. A giant wolf that was one head larger than an ordinary flame wolf, with a robust body that resembled a large bus, was lying on the grass. The five smaller flame wolves around it were walking back and forth around it, vigilantly paying attention to the changes in the surroundings. There were too many exotic beasts living in the market realm. Although the flame wolves were powerful, they were not without opponents. Therefore, the flame wolf pack was very vigilant, and every day, there were flame wolves taking turns patrolling and standing guard. It was a pity that their alertness was lost in the face of Qin Shi's natural ability. Whoosh! A snowy slash surfaced without a sound. Killing a flame wolf from the dead center of its vision on the left side. The one who struck out was a member of the divine dragon team. With the help of Qin Shi, they managed to get close enough to the flame wolf to strike. Ow oh, dash. This flame wolf sensed the crisis and let out a roar to alert the other flame wolves. The remaining four flame wolves were instantly alert. Their fur standing on end, wanting to run over to help, without waiting for them to move. Beside them, someone similarly stormed out. The twelve divine dragon team members, some in groups of three, some in groups of two, launched themselves into a stalking match against the flame wolves. Whoosh! The flame head wolf, which was lying on the grass, immediately stood up, an aura of biting coldness emanating from its huge body, its gaze vigilantly sweeping over towards the surroundings, 
It opened its thighs and was about to charge towards Zing Di and the others to finish off this group of small things. However, the flame-headed wolf had only just taken a step. A cloud suddenly surfaced. In the surrounding air, water vapor condensed and turned into an ethereal mist that enveloped it. In an instant, the environment in front of the flame-headed wolf changed. The surroundings were plunged into a haze. The other flame wolves with Ying Di, Tong Jiao and their traces all disappeared. The flame-headed wolf had to stop in its tracks. Both paws pressed on the ground. The hairs on its body stood up, and it looked around vigilantly. The strong crisis-sensing ability of the beasts allowed it to detect a threat. Within the mist, there seemed to be something lurking that was deadly enough for it. Xin Shi flew on the wind, lurking in the mists and sizing up the flame-headed wolf. This mist, naturally, was created by him using his Tong Yun driving mist. Xin Shi wanted to deal with the flame-head wolf alone, but didn't think of fighting the flame-head wolf head-on. The dragon race had too many natural abilities allowing him to freely cooperate and choose a more labor-saving battle method. A similar battle method was once used by Qin Shi when he fought against Ying Di. Only, at that time, he hadn't yet absorbed the nuclear energy evolution, and the mist he was able to create was very limited, basically only able to envelop himself in stealth. Now, he was able to create a fog that was sufficient to envelop the flame head wolf, as well as the surrounding range of several meters. Within this range, the flame-headed wolf's perception would be weakened by the fog. He, on the other hand, could comfortably execute his ability and launch an attack on the flame-headed wolf. Ying Di and the others have just gone through a big battle. They won't last long if they have to pester five flame wolves. I have to settle the flame-headed wolves as soon as possible. I'll let you have a taste of my dragon flame first. After observing for a while, Xin Shi flew to the rear of the flame-head wolf and opened his mouth to spit out a piece of dragon flame towards it. Whoosh! A piece of dragon flame spat out from Xin Shi's mouth rapidly enlarging in the air and enveloping towards the flame-headed wolf. After two evolutions, the dragon flame's power had increased by a lot, and it was already enough to deal fatal damage to a top-grade beast soldier. The starburst spitting breath consumed too much. Xin Shi wanted to see if the present day him could deal with the upper-class beast soldier with just the dragon flame. Ow oh, dash! The high temperature generated by the dragon flame, and the power of incineration, caused the hairs of the flame-headed wolf to stand on end, sensing the crisis of death. It threw back its head and roared, its body shaking violently, surging out a stream of green-colored flames. The flames surged against the wind and clashed with Long Yen. Boom! Two very different energies, like water and fire, impacted each other and produced a violent explosion. The surrounding air was squeezed out by the burst of energy into a white wave. At the same time, the flame-head wolf quickly turned around, opened its bloody mouth and bit over in the direction where Long Yen had attacked. Unfortunately, it pounced in vain. After Qin Shi sent out the Dragonitis, he quickly shifted his direction. The flame head wolf had just turned around when a dragon flame came spewing wildly from its left side. The flame headed wolf had no choice but to activate the green flames on its body to defend. The situation was very bad for it. As the saying goes, if you defend for a long time, you will lose. The flame headed wolf was originally not a beast that excelled in defense, and a long period of passive defense was very exhausting for it. Under the bombardment of the dragon flames, the green-colored flames that surfaced on the flame-head wolf's body became weaker and weaker. Finally, bang! A dragon flame broke through the defense of the cyan flame and bombarded the flame-head wolf's body. The intense heat, the power to burn everything, caused the flame-head wolf to let out a miserable scream. It's Ying Di and the others. In the distance, the Inferno team sneaked over and saw the battle taking place in the flame wolf's habitat through the flower mosquito detector. Park Yu Chi was instantly amazed. Captain, come take a look. The situation is a bit off. Park Yuki transmitted the image to Kim Wanpyeong. When Kim Wanpyeong took a look, he was surprised. Ying Di's purpose for them is actually the Flame Head Wolf. How is that possible? The Flame Head Wolf is a superior beast soldier. With Ying Di's strength, they shouldn't be able to deal with it. What is that thing? The other Inferno Demon team members came over. Seeing the battle that took place in the Flame Head Wolf's habitat, one was very surprised. Especially when they saw the Flame Head Wolf, actually surrounded by a dense fog emitting miserable cries one after another. It was even more shocking to them. After fusing the genes of the flame light tiger, they already didn't put superior beast soldiers in their eyes. A flame-headed wolf was just a single one, and they could deal with it with a random shot from one of them. However, no one was seen dealing with the flame-head wolf and the flower mosquito detector. Ying Di and the others were dealing with the other flame-head wolves. The flame-head wolf didn't know what was going on and was caught in a burst of dense fog that it couldn't get out of. It looked like the situation was still bad. It looks like Dong Xia really did research a new weapon that can actually trap even the flame head wolf. No, we must get our hands on it. Jean Wamping's two eyes glowed. Everyone else's eyes flickered as well. After the shock, 
A strong look of greed appeared in their eyes. Dongxia's new weapon was actually able to deal with the flame-head wolf. The flame-headed wolf was a superior beast soldier that required the deployment of an elite battle team to deal with. Under normal circumstances, one would need to pay a great price to hunt a superior beast soldier. Preliminary preparations, specialized weapons, researching weaknesses and setting traps, all of them required a lot of energy and material resources. And this kind of weapon in front of him was actually able to trap the flame-headed wolf. If it could be popularized, wouldn't it be a breeze to hunt and kill superior beast soldiers in the future? Take them for example. Right now, every one of them had the strength to resist an upper-class beast soldier. However, it would be very difficult to fight and kill an upper-class beast soldier head-on. But if they had the aid of this kind of weapon, then it would be almost a one-sided slaughter against the upper-class beast soldiers. Let's go. Let's sneak over there and look for an opportunity to sneak attack. Don't kill them first, just wound and capture them, and decide what to do with them when we torture the information about this weapon out of them. Kim Wanpyong instructed towards Park Yuki and the others. Good. The many members of the Inferno team replied one after another, following behind Kim Wanpyong and cautiously diving towards the Flame Wolves' habitat. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, who were fighting the Flame Wolves, did not realize that they were being watched. Pang Ma worked with Ying Di and Tong Jiao to surround a Flame Wolf. By surprise, they had wounded the flame wolf in the first place, and were now tangling with it, trying to find a way to finish it off once and for all. After a fight, Pang Mao seized the opportunity and managed to kill the flame wolf with a single slash. However, before he could get a smile of victory on his face, suddenly, a deadly feeling enveloped his heart. The hairs on Pang Mao's body stood up in sweat. This feeling, it was sniper fire. Someone was sneaking up on them in the dark. Watch out! Pang Mao let out a roar alerting towards the others before quickly turning to dodge. Transcendence possessed the ability to sense and respond to crises that ordinary people did not have. They had even received bullet dodging training from the transcendent base, and were extremely familiar with this feeling of being targeted. Bang! Accompanied by a gunshot, Pang Mao's right arm exploded into a mist of blood. A sharp bullet pierced through his arm. With the agility of a transcendent, it was enough to dodge most bullets. However, just now, they were fighting the flame wolves and were too late to notice the sneak attack from the shadows. The sniper rifle was too fast again. Even though Pang Mao dodged in time, he was still hit in the right arm. Damn it, who is it? Ying Di, who was on the side, let out a roar and quickly ducked behind the flame wolf's corpse, raising his head to look in the direction from which the bullet had come. Hmm, it's Dolly's people. Seeing the inferno team's crowd hiding on a small hill in the distance, Ying Di's pupils could not help but shrink. How could the people from the Inferno Demon Team appear on the area of the market realm that East Xia was responsible for? But soon, he didn't bother to think about it much. In any case, Dolly's people actually dared to sneak attack them and had to pay the price. Everyone, take cover. Ying Di shouted towards the other Divine Dragon Team members, angrily charging towards the mountain where the Inferno Demon Team's people were hiding. The others had also been attacked just now and were caught off guard. It was good that the remaining few flame wolves were taken care of. Otherwise, with the flame wolves around and having to face a sneak attack from the Inferno Demon team, their situation would be even more dangerous. Have we been spotted? On the hilltop, Jean Huamping snorted as he looked at Ying Di, who was furiously charging in, being discovered. Sniping will hardly work anymore. Let's go and meet these once old rivals. Kim Wanpyong led the way. His face relaxed as he walked towards Ying Di's phase. He hadn't thought of killing Ying Di's class immediately, or else he would have let the sniper aim directly at Pang Mao's head just now. Fei could withstand sniper rifles. First order transcendence didn't have such hard bones. Jean Huanping, you guys actually dared to sneak into my eastern Xia's market realm area, and even made a sneak attack on us. Do you want to start a war between the two countries? Ying Di and the crowd of the Inferno Demon team traveled in opposite directions and met in the forest. Seeing Jean Huanping and the others, Ying Di immediately questioned angrily, although there were no borders in the market realm. However, the Blue Star consciousness divided the area of responsibility for each country and everyone defaulted to it as the borderline of their respective war zones. The Inferno team was Dali's transcendent warrior team, yet it had infiltrated into the area of the market realm that East Xia was responsible for. This was already a taboo offense. Their secret sneak attack just now was even more of a naked provocation to Eastern Xia. Facing Ying Di's angry questioning, Jin Huanping shrugged his shoulders in disbelief. A sneak attack is a sneak attack, even if I kill you guys, so what? A nearby member of the Inferno demon team sneered. This is the market realm. It's full of crises. Whatever accidents happen is normal. Who knows that we did it if we eliminate you guys here? Park Yu Chi said with malice, Dongxia and Dali were mortal rivals, and they wouldn't miss a chance to exterminate the transcendence they were dealing with. Of course, they wouldn't kill Ying Di and the others so quickly. At the very least, 
They would have to torture out from their mouths what that weapon that could deal with the superior beast soldiers was. Seek death. Ying Di already had a belly full of fire. And he was even more furious at those words. Clang. He quickly drew his battle sword. And his entire body transformed into a phantom. Killing towards the leader. Jean Huanping. Ha, your strength has grown a bit. Facing Ying Di's violent attack filled with anger. Jean Huanping raised his eyebrows. Somewhat surprised. Ying Di's speed was fast. Far beyond the last time they met. A normal first rank transcendent would not have such speed. However, he only felt slightly surprised. If it was before he fused the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger, he really didn't dare to be careless in the face of Ying Di's attack. However, after fusing the genes of the Inflamed Light Tiger, Ying Di's attack was nothing more than that in his eyes. Bang! Jin Huan Plain responded to Ying Di's chop by advancing instead of retreating. Stepping out with a single step as light golden light inflammation emerged from his body. The blazing light inflammation was like a wall in front of him. Ying Di's battle sword swiftly chopped and touched the light golden light inflammation, and immediately issued a violent collision sound. Afterwards, a strong rebound force blasted Ying Di backwards several steps, his tiger's mouth was numb, and the battle sword in his hand was almost unsteady. How is this possible? Ying Di's eyes widened as he looked at Jin Huanping with disbelief. Transcendent power. Jin Huanping had actually mastered transcendent power. Ying Di's heart was in shock, although he was also a transcendent. However, just like beast soldiers, First order transcendents were divided into upper, middle, and lower classes. He was only a lower first order transcendent. Said to be a transcendent, he was actually still an ordinary species. It was only with the help of the transcendental energy extracted from the foreign beasts that the body was strengthened. On the other hand, the light golden light inflammation emerging from Jean Huanping's body was genuine transcendent power. How about it? Isn't it unbelievable? As if he could see the shock and doubt in Ying Di's eyes, Jean Huanping stared at Ying Di with interest and asked, he enjoyed this feeling. A former nemesis, who had been left far behind by himself, could only look at himself incredulously. You, Dolly, have actually researched a way to master transcendent power? Ying Di stared at Jean Huanping with dead eyes, still somewhat unwilling to believe it. How to allow ordinary species to master transcendent powers as well was the focus of research in various countries. However, Ying Di had never heard that any country had succeeded. Even those hegemonic countries did not have any success stories rumored. Dali was only a small country. How could it possibly succeed in its research and be more powerful than those hegemonic countries? That's for sure. Our Dali's strength is not something that you lowly people of Dongxia can imagine. Park Yu Chi, who was at the side, said with an arrogant face, shamelessly treating the genetic potion purchased from Shang Nong as the result of his own country's research. Ying Di's eyes were dark and uncertain. This is bad. This group of Dili people had actually grasped transcendent powers. Just based on that collision just now. Ying Di knew that Jin Huangping's strength was probably no weaker than a medium beast soldier. The feeling of the battle sword slashing on the light golden light flames was the same as slashing on a medium beast soldier's transcendent power defense. As for Park Yu Chi and the others beside him, even though their strength was not as good as Jin Huangping's, I'm afraid it wasn't much worse. With their strength, even if he, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao and the others were not injured, they were no match for the Inferno team. Now that Pang Mao and the others had been injured by a sneak attack, they were even less able to resist when facing the Inferno team. TSK TSK, it seems that your transcendent research in Eastern Xia isn't very good. Look at your strength. It hasn't grown much. You can't even break my defense. Jin Huangping looked at Ying Di, his eyes filled with lofty arrogance. At one time, Ying Di was his strong opponent. He had even suffered a few losses at Ying Di's hands. And now, Ying Di couldn't even break his defense. It made him sigh. Suddenly, he had a tasteless feeling when the gap between each other's strengths was too great. Pretending was no longer meaningful. Well, I might as well tell you that we infiltrated the market realm area in charge of Eastern Xia this time just for you guys. So I advise you guys to be honest and tie your hands, and you might be able to suffer a little less. Park Yu Chi walked towards Ying Di, a teasing laugh escaping from his mouth. Ying Di could not help but frown. The Inferno team was actually here for a few of them. What was the purpose of this group of Dili people? He couldn't figure it out. However, how was it possible to want him to tie his hands, knowing that he was not a match for Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki and the others? Ying Di immediately turned around and returned the same way. Dolly's Inferno team had actually grasped transcendent powers. This was indeed very shocking news. However, if this group of people from the Inferno Demon team felt that they had them beat, then they were gravely mistaken. It was true that Eastern Xia had not yet researched a way to master transcendent power. However, it had raised a divine dragon. As long as Qin Shi killed the flame-headed wolf and drew out his hand, it would be as easy as a slap in the face to clean up this group of Inferno Demon team members. Want to run? Seeing this, 
Jean Huanping let out a cold smile from his mouth. Go, follow them, I want to see, where can he run to? Jean Huanping reached out and waved his hand, following Ying Di without haste to catch up. He was not worried about Ying Di running away. Although the attack just now, Ying Di was alerted by Pang Mao and dodged it. However, the other Divine Dragon team members were not so lucky. Several of them had colors on their bodies. The more serious ones had directly lost their ability to move. Looking at Ying Di's appearance, it was obvious that he wanted to join up with the other team members. This was just right. They could kill them all in one go. Park Yu Chi and the other members of the Inferno Demon team had the teasing expression of a cat catching a mouse on their faces. It was too much fun to drive and tease a former nemesis as prey. Ying Di ran away all the way. The Inferno Demon team had infiltrated the market realm area of Eastern Xia, and their strength was unexpectedly strong again. Now, he had no other way but to rendezvous with the others and try to hold out for a while until Qin Shi killed the flame head wolf. Ying Di, how is the situation? Tong Jiao and a few people who had managed to escape the sneak attack moved the other injured to one place, using the flame wolf corpse as a barrier to cover them, and when they saw Ying Di, who was running wildly back, they hurriedly opened their mouths to ask, be careful, everyone take cover, take out your weapons and prepare to fight, Ying Di shouted towards Tong Jiao and the others, making a long story short, Dali's infernal demon team infiltrated into the area of the market realm that we are in charge of, wanting to turn against us, they have already grasped transcendent power, it's not something that we can fight against, a single word was said, fast and furious, when Tong Jiao and the others heard this, their faces changed wildly, and for a while, they were all still a bit stunned, what's going on, Dali had actually researched a way to master transcendent power, this gave them the feeling of dreaming, in the next moment, Kim Wanpyong, Park Yochi, and the others, striding with the pace of six relatives, followed Ying Di, and walked out without haste, seeing Tong Jiao, as well as Pang Mao and the others hiding behind the flame wolf's corpse, a teasing smile immediately appeared on their faces, these few in front of them, they were all acquaintances, Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, it's really you Dali transcendents, Tong Jiao's eyes stared at Kim Huanping and the others with a look of indignation in his eyes, the relationship between Dali and Dongxia was originally bad, and each other's nationals were extremely hostile to each other, and Dali is extremely shameless, the whole country has a very disgusting atmosphere, like to exaggerate, will be other people's research and invention, all kinds of culture for themselves, being a neighboring country of Dongxia, naturally was disgusted several times, Tong Jia was very disgusted by Dali's transcendence, plus, just now, it was the sneak attack of Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, and the others that caused the rest of the Divine Dragon team to suffer heavy injuries, right now, it could be said that it was a case of enemies meeting enemies, Jin Huanping, Park Yu Chi, and the other members of the Inferno Demon team looked at the angry line of sight that Tong Jiao threw over with a relaxed face, not putting it in the slightest bit in their eyes, they even extremely enjoyed this line of sight, and soon, they moved their eyes away from Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, and looked towards the cloud that enveloped the flame-headed wolf, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others were already turtles in a jar in their eyes, if they wanted to concoct them, they could do so at any time, getting the information about this secret weapon was the most important thing, only to see before their eyes, the clouds were misty, it looked gentle and gentle, without any sense of danger, however, the flame-headed wolf was trapped in the clouds and mist, unable to break free in any way, but instead, it let out terrifying screams from time to time, as if it had suffered some kind of terrifying attack, this made Jean Huanping and the others puzzled, what kind of weapon was this that was actually so magical, Jean surely utilized the ability to become invisible with the ability to ride on clouds and mist, hiding in the clouds and mist, even the flame-headed wolf had difficulty detecting him, so it was naturally even more unlikely for Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, and the others to discover him. Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuch and the others only thought that this was a secret weapon researched by Dongxia. They stared at the cloud and analyzed it carefully, trying to see the details of this secret weapon. However, after looking at it for half a day, they couldn't see any results. It was just a puff of clouds. It was just a cloud of mist. Nothing special. As transcendents, they were the elites selected from Dali's military department after layers of selection, and they did not know all kinds of weapons like the back of their hand, but they could at least have a general understanding of them. As a result, looking at this cloud in front of them, they didn't even see what the principle of this weapon was or how it worked. Is this the secret weapon that your Eastern Xia has researched? Jin Huanping turned his head towards Ying Di. Since he couldn't see it, he wasn't going to continue wasting time. A secret weapon that was able to trap a superior beast soldier. The various technologies utilized must be marvelous, and it was normal for him to not be able to see it for a while, this was also fine, 
Wasn't there still these few transcendents from Eastern Xia? Just ask them from their mouths. I'm sure. You should also be able to guess our purpose. I want to know what kind of weapon this is that can actually trap a superior beast soldier. I hope you can cooperate honestly and not force me to do it. Jin Huangping looked at Ying Di and threatened in a calm tone. Ying Di and Tong Jiao froze slightly. Soon, they reacted. It seemed that the flame demon team had infiltrated into Eastern Xia, wanting to probe the intelligence of the Eastern Xia military department. And they just happened to encounter the divine dragon team that had come to deal with the flame wolves. However, the inferno demon team didn't discover Qin Shi's presence. Instead, they took the cloud created by Qin Shi as a secret weapon researched by Eastern Xia. Qin Shi was furious when he saw the tragic situation of Pang Mao and the others. This group of Dali's transcendents were arrogant, actually daring to sneak attack his men. They really didn't know how to write the word death. It was just that he had to deal with the flame-headed wolf right now, and Ying Di and the others' lives were not in danger. After thinking about it, he decided to hold down his anger for the time being and exterminate the flame-head wolf first. Although he could spare his hands to deal with the Inferno team at any time, in that case, he would have to give up killing the flame-headed wolf, which was a bit regrettable. Qin Shi transmitted the decision in his heart to Ying Di and Tong Jiao. Ying Di and Tong Jiao nodded, with Qin Shi around. They had no worries about their lives being in danger. Are you guys talking about the divine dragon? Ying Di raised his eyebrows. He decided to go along with Jin Huangping and tell the truth. Divine dragon? Jin Huangping looked at the clouds and scared. Is this the name you guys gave to this secret weapon? To actually name it after a legendary divine beast? It seems like you guys have high hopes for this weapon. That's for sure. The divine dragon is a secret of our eastern Xia. Ying Di sneered, breathing thunder and spitting fire, controlling wind and water. It possesses all sorts of extraordinary abilities. TSK TSK, you Eastern Xia people, you just like to brag, but you also breathe thunder and spit fire. Control the wind and water. Do you really think that the contraptions you have researched can be compared to the legendary divine beasts? If you don't know, you'd think you're introducing some exotic beasts. But to be able to trap a superior beast soldier, it's not arrogant to name it after a divine dragon. Jin Huangping snorted, although he felt that Ying Di's words were somewhat exaggerated. But this secret weapon in front of him was indeed somewhat magical. Not only did it trap the flame-headed wolf to death, but it also erupted a burst of fiery flames from time to time, causing damage to the flame-headed wolf. Very well, this weapon, from now on, will be our dolly's thing. Kim Wanpion looked at the churning cloud that trapped the flame-headed wolf to death. A look of surprise appeared in his eyes, and he said with an air of entitlement, Tell us everything you know. All the information there is about the divine dragon. Our family's divine dragon capable of exerting all sorts of transcendent powers, can also evolve by absorbing nuclear energy, and the power of a full strength strike is enough to cause fatal injuries to a beast general. The one who opened his mouth was Tong Jiao, hearing Ying Di speak truthfully, without any intention of hiding Qin Shi's existence. She couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Qin Shi's existence was the highest secret in Eastern Xia. Lu Yongzhao had given them three orders, telling them that they must strictly guard this matter and not let anyone else know about it. Was it really okay for Ying Di to say this? However, after a little thought, she understood what Ying Di meant. The Yen Demon team had infiltrated the area of the market realm that Dong Xia was responsible for and found them. It was no longer possible to continue hiding Qin Shi's existence. Sooner or later, it would be known by this group of people. Since that was the case, it would be better to disclose it to them. Anyway, it was impossible for them to return to Dali with the information. Qin Shi's existence was a secret of Eastern Xia, and it was absolutely not allowed to be known by people from other countries. This was not only the official claim of Eastern Xia, it was likewise Qin Shi's claim. After all, a legendary divine dragon, a creature that had the potential to grow into a heavenly tribulation level foreign beast, was actually cooperating with a certain country. This was a huge threat to other countries. God knows what other countries would do if they knew about this matter. Thus, the moment the Inferno team found them, the fate of the Inferno team was already sealed. It was impossible for Qin Shi to let the Inferno team return alive. Since that was the case, there was no harm in telling them the truth. Think of it as a great kindness. Let them be able to die with an understanding. Tong Jiao told what he knew about Qin Shi, the various abilities one by one, being able to absorb nuclear energy to evolve. So that's how it is. No wonder your eastern Xia has been buying nuclear fuel everywhere lately. Jin Huangping had a look of sudden realization on his face. He hadn't believed Ying Di in Tong Jiao's words. These two had recruited too quickly. The people of eastern Xia shouldn't be so soft-hearted. However, after listening to Tong Jiao's words, he became a bit startled. Tong Jiao's answer completely corresponded with the intelligence Dali had gathered. East Xia had recently been acquiring nuclear fuel in a big way. 
Dali had always been curious as to what the purpose of East Xia collecting so much nuclear fuel was. Tong Zhao's words explained it very well. Dong Xia had researched weapons that utilized nuclear energy. It wasn't nuclear bombs, hydrogen bombs, and other nuclear weapons that were too powerful but difficult to control. Rather, it was a more efficient and controllable nuclear weapon. Right on. Jin Huangping nodded. It seemed that Ying Di and Tong Jiao were clear about their situation and knew that they were powerless to struggle and did not intend to resist. This was a smart decision. Otherwise, they would experience what it meant to be truly tortured. Continue. Jin Huangping was very satisfied with Ying Di and Tong Jiao's understanding and nodded, allowing them to continue. A cold smile appeared on Ying Di's face. Let these few people be complacent for a while first. Hopefully, they would be able to keep their minds later. Tong Jiao continued to speak, pouring out all kinds of information about Qin Shi like a bamboo tube. Jin Huangping listened attentively at first, but as he listened, he felt that there was something wrong somewhere. I asked you guys to hand over the information about this weapon, not to make up information about the foreign beasts for me. Jin Huangping looked at Ying Di and Tong Jiao with a dark face. These two, the more they talked, the more outrageous they became. What divine dragons can breathe thunder and spit fire, can be big or small, and go up to the sky to deter all beasts. Those beast generals and beast kings are not this outrageous. This is clearly the ability of all kinds of beasts hole up. Fabricated a powerful beast, with nuclear weapons do not have half a penny relationship. It seems that you too, you don't see the coffin, and you still dare to amuse us even at the end of your lives. Park Yuchi looked at Ying Di and Tong Jiao with cold eyes. Ying Di and Tong Jiao boasted about the divine dragon as if there was nothing in the sky or underground. One could tell that they were deliberately teasing them. Captain, should we make a move and give them a little bit of pain? Someone asked towards Jin Huangping, an unkind gaze in his eyes. There's no rush. Let's first see if this Dongxia secret weapon can kill the flame-headed wolf. Jin Huangping waved his hand dismissively. Anyway, they are just turtles in a jar. There is plenty of time for us to torture them whenever we want. As for their unwillingness to cooperate, when we get this secret weapon later, we will naturally be able to study it enough to find out the secret. This secret weapon of the Eastern Xiao was clearly in the state of being unleashed. Ying Di and Tong Zhao refused to bow down and honestly spit out the information. However, this could not be difficult for them. As long as they got this secret weapon and disassembled and analyzed it, they would naturally be able to get what they wanted. Let them talk tough for a while. These few people are still useful now. When they get the secret weapon, disassemble and analyze enough information they will lose their role. At that time, let's see if their mouths are still hard, then let them languish for a while first. Park Yuki nodded. Jin Huangping, Park Yuqi, and the others, their gazes burned as they looked towards the cloud that enveloped the flame-headed wolf with great anticipation in their eyes. Ying Di and Tong Zhao, on the other hand, looked at each other for a moment when they saw this, feeling somewhat speechless. These days, no one believes in telling the truth anymore? They didn't say half a lie just now. The divine dragons of Eastern Xia were indeed very strong, grasping all sorts of transcendent powers. If it wasn't for its young age, a normal earth scourge or heavenly calamity level foreign beast might not be Qin Shi's opponent. Unfortunately, Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, and the others didn't believe it. However, Jin Huangping was too conceited and looked as if he was eating them up. Ying Di and Tong Jiao were relieved in their hearts. Although they felt stifled, it was good that the Inferno team didn't make an immediate move. So Qin Shi had enough time to deal with the flame-head wolf. Amidst the clouds and mist, Qin Shi's battle with the flame-headed wolf had come to an end. Facing Qin Shi, who was hiding in the clouds and mist and kept releasing dragon flames from dead ends, the flame-head wolf was powerless and could only be passively beaten. Although the defense of the top-grade beast soldier was very strong, it couldn't withstand Qin Shi's wave after wave of dragon flame attacks. On the body of the flame-headed wolf, the green flames used for defense had already been burned by the dragon flames leaving only a faint layer. The thick hair on its body was even burned out by the dragon flames to produce large area scars one after another. Not only that, the power of Long Yan's incineration was even penetrating through the flesh and blood of the flame-headed wolf, invading its body to destroy it. By now, the flame-headed wolf was already exhausted. Bang! After suffering another dragon flame attack, the flame-headed wolf finally couldn't take it anymore and collapsed helplessly on the ground. On its body, a streak of golden red dragon flame emerged and its fur, flesh and blood were all incinerated by the dragon flame, turning into ash and dissipating inch by inch. What a powerful attack. Actually able to break through the flame-headed wolf's transcendent power and inflict fatal damage on it. Seeing the flame-head wolf fall to the ground and die, Jin Huangping's eyes became brighter. The flame-headed wolf was an upper-grade beast soldier. It was difficult to kill a beast of this grade. Even though the Inferno team had fused the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger, and claimed that each and every one of them, 
was enough to fight against an upper-class beast soldier. However, in reality, if they were to really fight against an upper-class beast soldier alone, the probability of defeat would be theirs. In order to truly kill a superior beast soldier, one would have to first break through the transcendent power used for defense on their bodies, and then continuously bombard them with heavy and hot weapons. And now, this secret weapon of Dongxia had actually killed the flame-headed wolf so easily. This was really somewhat beyond Kim Wanpion's expectations. However, the stronger Dongxia's secret weapon was, the happier he was. Because, this weapon would belong to their country next. In the future, this would be Dolly's divine dragon. It was the new generation of nuclear weapons that Dolly had worked hard to develop. The weapon that Dolly had researched. Naturally, the more powerful it was, the better. Park Yuki, prepare yourself and go fetch the divine dragon. I can't wait a little bit to see what the divine dragon actually looks like. Kim Wanpion commanded towards Park Yuki who was at the side. Park Yuchi looked expectant as he walked over towards the corpse of the flame head wolf. He was also curious as to what this weapon that was capable of trapping a superior beast soldier looked like. Park Yuchi walked over to the flame headed wolf's corpse and carefully searched for it. However, after looking left and right, he couldn't find any sign of the weaponry. Eh? Park Yuki couldn't help but frown. How could one not find a secret weapon? That burst of clouds just now was obviously created by Dong Xiao's secret weapon. Because they were worried about accidentally destroying the attack of this secret weapon, causing the flame headed wolf to escape out. They had waited by the side until the flame headed wolf had been killed, and then they had come to collect this secret weapon. However, Around the flame head wolf, the shadow of any weapon could not be seen. Park Yuki, what's the situation? What are you doing with your head down all the time? Kim Wanpion couldn't help but open his mouth to urge Park Yuki when he saw the way he kept looking down to search. Captain, something's not right. I can't find Dongxia's secret weapon. Park Yuchi raised his head towards Kim Wanpion and said back. What's going on? Kim Wanpion frowned and walked over to look together. As a result, he couldn't find any sign of the secret weapon either. Could it be that the secret weapon is some sort of disposable weapon that automatically destroys itself after use? Another Inferno team member came over and frowned as he guessed. It's possible. Nuclear weapons are all powerful disposable weapons that are hard to reuse. Jean Huangping nodded, a little disappointed in his heart. He had thought that the secret weapon that Dongxia had researched would be some sort of unique equipment that could continuously utilize nuclear energy to attack. If it was a disposable consumable, then the value was a bit low. Of course, it was only a bit lower in value compared to the secret weapon he had envisioned in his mind, which still possessed a high strategic value. After all, I'm afraid that a weapon that could kill a first-class beast soldier in one go wouldn't have much inside the arsenals of even those hegemonic powers. Only, in this way, they would have no way to disassemble and study it to come up with the specific parameters of the secret weapon, and would still have to torture it from the mouths of Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the rest of the group. Jin Huangping's gaze looked at Ying Di and Tong Jiao with ill will. Right at this moment, a sudden change occurred. The surrounding temperature plummeted, water vapor condensed, and fog gradually filled the air. How did the fog suddenly start? Jean Huangping and Park Yochi froze slightly. As transcendents, originally Dali's special forces, they often fought in jungles, primitive forests, and other environments, and were no strangers to fogging up in wild forests. Fog was a condensation of water vapor composed of small water droplets or ice crystals floating in the air, generated in the near surface layer of the atmosphere. The trees in the primitive forest are taller and denser, and the humidity of the ground is higher, so the water cannot be emitted instantly, and fog is formed. The ancient trees in the market realm were originally taller and denser than those on the blue planet, and the formation of fog was a normal thing. However, now that the sun was shining in the sky, it should not be forming fog. Wait, something's not right. Suddenly, Jean Huangping's face changed wildly. This mist looked familiar. Wasn't this the mist that enveloped the flame-headed wolf just now? Jean Huangping realized that something was wrong, and with a flash of his body, he immediately burst towards Ying Di and Tong Zhao, wanting to capture the two of them. Careless, Jean Huangping's face was somewhat chagrined. Just now, they were so focused on the clouds and the situation of the flame-headed wolf that they forgot to check if Ying Di and Tong Zhao were carrying any weapons on their bodies. This was not their fault. Rather, for a large-scale thing like the cloud mist to be created, it would inevitably require equipment that wasn't small in size to be able to do so. And Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the rest of them were only equipped with simple cold weapons. They subconsciously thought that the secret weapon that trapped the flame-headed wolf should be arranged around the flame-headed wolf. Now, it seemed that the real weapon should still be in the hands of Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others. After killing the flame-headed wolf, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, took the opportunity to unleash the secret weapon once again, wanting to use it against them. What Jin Huangping could think of, 
Park Yu Chi and the others also realized after a little thought. At that moment, all of their faces were grave as they quickly rushed over towards where Ying Di and Tong Jiao were. They had just seen the power of Dong Xia's secret weapon with their own eyes. Even a superior beast soldier like the flame-headed wolf was trapped inside and could do nothing but wait for death. Although they boasted that they could resist an upper-class beast soldier, they didn't have the confidence that they would be able to break through the cloud that could trap the flame-headed wolf. However, their guesses were wrong from start to finish. Eastern Xia didn't have any secret weapons at all. The so-called Divine Dragon was not a code name for some secret weapon, but a real dragon. This cloud was created by none other than Qin Shi. After killing the flame-headed wolf, he did not choose to appear at the first opportunity to deal with this group of Inferno Demon players. After all, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others were still nearby, and Peng Mao and the other injured Divine Dragon team members were not far away. The Inferno Demon team had fused the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger and had mastered transcendent powers, although Qin Shi had the certainty to deal with them. However, within such a short distance, if they held Ying Di and Tong Jiao as a threat, Qin Shi was only a dragon and would inevitably look passive. Thus, he remained stealthily lurking, taking the opportunity to unleash his Tong Yun Diao mist, enveloping Jin Huan Ping, Park Yu Qi, and the others. It wasn't too late to trap the Inferno Demon team first, so that they couldn't threaten Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, and then slowly clean up after them. By the time Jin Huan Ping, Park Yu Qi and the others realized that something was wrong with the cloud. It was already too late. The thick mist came furiously from all directions, quickly drowning them and blocking their sight. Ying Di and Tong Jiao's figures disappeared before their eyes. Even though they locked their positions and rushed towards the estimated distance, they still pounced. The clouds and mist created by Tang Yun Diao Wu are capable of disorienting vision and even creating various illusions. If you are trapped by my clouds and mist, what you see in front of you may not still be the real situation. In front of Ying Di and Tong Jiao, Qin Shi's figure resurfaced, and his golden dragon eyes, without emotional coloring, stared at Jin Huanping, Park Yu Qi and the others in the cloud mist. A large amount of dragon flame was used, while a strong pressure was emitted from the slightly golden red colored dragon body. The captain's ability is getting stronger and stronger, creating a cloud of mist that even a top grade beast soldier can't break free from. It might even be able to trap a beast general. Ying Di couldn't help but marvel as he looked at the Yin Devil team that was wrapped in clouds and mist, bumping around like headless flies, but always trapped in place. Taking off clouds and fog was the basic ability of the dragon race, but that didn't mean that cloud writing wasn't powerful. One must know that the descriptions of dragons, such as clouds from the dragon, wind from the tiger, the dragon sees the head and doesn't see the tail, and only scales and half claws in the sky, were all inseparable from the ability to ride the clouds and fog. If it is developed to the extreme, Sheena cloud spit out, can create a lifelike illusion. Among the dragons, there is a class of mirage dragons, is extremely good at this aspect of the magical ability. Mirages were a common sight in all kinds of legends. The Inferno Demon team did not know about Qin Shi's existence, and for the first time, they saw the ability to ride on clouds, and like the flame-headed wolf, they fell into the surroundings of the clouds and mist without any resistance. Their perceptions were all mesmerized by the clouds and mist. Everything they saw was very different from reality. For example, seeing that it was the left side, the direction they ended up going was the right side. Damn it! In the middle of the clouds, Kim Wanpyong, Park Yochi, and the others, let out a furious roar of anger. After pouncing towards Ying Di and Tong Jiao's location several times, only to come up empty, they had realized the problem. What they saw before their eyes was all an illusion. Some Inferno Demon members did not believe in the truth and charged all the way across, wanting to break through the encirclement of the clouds and mists. Just now, they had watched the scene where the clouds surrounded the flame-headed wolf. The range covered by the cloud was not very large. So if they charged forward in a straight line, they should be able to break through the cloud very quickly. However after trying, they were quickly disappointed. Without realizing it, they returned to the original point once again. Regardless of which direction they charged in, they were always blindly circling around the clouds. We're confused by the clouds. No matter how we go, we're just going around in circles. We have to break the clouds. Kim Wanpyong said with a gloomy face. This situation reminded him of the experience he once had in the desert. Faced with an endless desert, if there was no direction to guide one, no matter how one walked forward, there was a high chance that one would end up unknowingly veering off course, making a huge circle and returning to the starting point. Only, going around a circle in the desert was a huge range, and they were actually all forced to go around the circle within this small area shrouded by clouds. No wonder the flame-headed wolf was trapped by the clouds just now. It was obvious that it was so huge that it could jump out of the circle of clouds with a slight leap, yet it was always trapped in the clouds and could not break free. They finally felt the same mood as the flame-headed wolf. 
What should we do then? This cloud mist can't be broken at all? An inferno member asked with an anxious expression. He attempted to make a move to expel the cloud. However, this was not an unusual cloud mist, but one formed by the divine dragon's ability. The clouds were blasted apart by the attacks he sent out. And the next moment, they converged again from other directions, scattered and gathered again. It simply couldn't be expelled cleanly. Instead, their power was consumed in large amounts. Roasted with fire, the clouds are condensed from water vapor. We have fused the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger. I don't believe that this cloud can even block the flames of the Inferno Light Tiger. Jean Huamping yelled viciously. He took the lead, and a sheet of light golden flames rose from his body, enveloping it towards the cloud in front of him. The seemingly gentle and harmless cloud mist, as soon as it came into contact with the light golden flames, it immediately emitted a boiling light nuisance sound and quickly dissipated into thin air. Effective. When the others saw this, their eyes immediately lit up. The clouds that were scorched and evaporated by the pale golden flame did not continue to converge, causing the surrounding clouds to lighten a little. Everyone, let's strike together and fully utilize our flame abilities to disperse this cloud. Park Yu Chi's expression was revitalized as he shouted. He followed suit and catalyzed the flames, vaporizing the surrounding cloud. The other Inferno Demon team members followed suit. One by one, the Inferno Demon team members activated the transcendent power in their bodies, transforming into light golden flames that swept in all directions. In an instant, it was as if a sea of fire was burning in the clouds. The white, ethereal clouds instantly turned into a burning cloud. Under the burning of the pale golden flames, the clouds were quickly vaporized. Ha! Seeing this, Shinshur could not help but let out a surprised sound. This group of Inferno Demon teams are really something. Actually able to dispel the clouds that I created with Tang Yunwei. No wonder they dared to cross the Ruins Realm and infiltrate into the Ruins Realm area that East Xia is responsible for. Although because of the absorption of nuclear energy, for a short period of time, the direction of his evolution was fire control. The other abilities did not absorb the corresponding transcendent power, and the increase in power could not be compared to the fire control ability. But even the flame-headed wolf couldn't get out of the siege of the tempest. This group of inferno demons teamed up and were actually able to dispel the clouds and fog, and their battle power was only a little stronger than even the flame-head wolves. Didn't they say that countries currently haven't found a way to master transcendent power? What's going on here? Xin Shi turned his head towards Zing Di and asked. The light golden flames emanating from these few people were clearly not ordinary flames. This, I'm not sure. They themselves said that Dali has researched a way to master transcendent power. Ying Di returned with a gloomy expression. The other divine dragon team members who were walking over next to each other saw this, and their eyes also became incomparably grave. If Dali had truly researched a way to master transcendent power, this would be a huge threat to East Xia. With Dali's hostile relationship with East Xia, Dali would definitely not let go of the opportunity to strike East Xia. Qin Shi raised his eyebrows slightly as he looked at Jin Huamping, who was leading the effort to urge the flames to burn the clouds, and said thoughtfully, the light golden flames on their bodies, why do they give me a feeling of a foreign beast? Hmm, Tong Jiao seemed to have thought of something and hurriedly asked, Captain, you said you felt the aura of a foreign beast on them? That's right. Qin Shi nodded, sizing up Jin Huamping with interest, and said, they gave me a feeling as if they weren't human beings, but rather like foreign beasts. No, I should say half human, half beast. So that's how it is. I see. They must have used genetic modification methods and implanted themselves with the genes of foreign beasts. Receiving Qin Shi's affirmative reply, Tong Jiao's beautiful eyes shone, immediately guessing the method by which Jin Huamping and the others had mastered their transcendent powers. Genetic modification. How dare Dali? Aren't they afraid of losing control again and triggering the reformer rebellion? Ying Di's eyes widened when he heard this. The matter of genetic modification was not unfamiliar to him. The transcendent research base in Eastern Xia had once hit upon this aspect. After all, it was a way to research transcendent power. It was only after a bout of research that East Xia quickly gave it up. Genetic modification could certainly allow humans to master transcendent powers, but there were too many uncertainties. The bodies of ordinary species could hardly withstand the genetic information of transcendent species, even if there were one or two successful cases they would soon fall into a state of genetic collapse, going berserk, or even transforming into a half-orc, losing their minds and wreaking havoc. Not to mention, genetic modification involves experiments on the human body, which goes against certain ethics and morals. Countries have long banned this technology. Dali actually dares to risk universal condemnation and reactivate this technology. Aren't they afraid of being internationally condemned? A Shenlong team member called out with a frown. Dongxia was a staunch opponent of genetic modification technology. The body's hair and skin are the parents. This was a very ancient concept of Dong Xia. Although nowadays, 
Dong Xian no longer held these old and archaic ideas. However, it is still extremely resistant to transforming itself into a monster. Through certain means, to achieve genetic mutation and evolution, everyone was still able to accept it. Incorporating the genes of foreign beasts and turning themselves into half-human, half-beast monsters, this would really be unacceptable. If they did so, could they still be called humans? Genetic modification technology, the biggest difficulty is to let people remain rational and not be engulfed by the beastly nature after undergoing the modification. The other problems aren't too big of a hindrance. As long as this one difficulty is solved, there are plenty of people who are willing to go and modify their bodies. And right now it seems like Dali seems to have succeeded. Tong Zhao said in a deep voice, in the face of life and death, ethics and morality were extremely fragile. If it was possible to master transcendent power, so that humans could fight against the alien beasts, as well as the earthly and heavenly disaster level alien beasts that they would have to face in the future. Then, even if countries resisted, they would have to accept this technology. The reason why genetic modification technology was banned by various countries, ethics and morality was only a very small factor. The real reason was that the people who were transformed could hardly bear the impact of the genes of the beasts, and either their genes collapsed, or they were engulfed by the animal nature and lost their minds. When many countries were researching on genetic modification technology, there were serious accidents where the modified people went berserk and attacked the researchers indiscriminately, causing a large number of deaths and injuries. It was only after the countries learned from the pain that they had to ban the technology. This is really not good news. Ying Di said with gloomy eyes, if Dali had really researched a technology that could stably modify human genes and master the abilities of foreign beasts, it would be too bad for Dongxia. Dongxia and Dali were originally about the same strength. Dali, who had mastered transcendent powers, would quickly overwhelm Dongxia. Make sure to ask for specific information from them. Tan Jiao stared at Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki and the others, his voice cold. This intelligence was very important to Dongxia and would affect Dongxia's next strategy. I'm not good at things like torturing, but I'll leave capturing them to me. Qin sure didn't really care. Genetic modification. It sounded a bit less reliable. They, divine beasts, were all very focused on the purity of their bloodline. The purer the bloodline, the higher the status of the divine beasts among the pack. This was the information he had obtained from the memories of the dragon race. It seemed that the purity of the bloodline was also related to higher levels of evolution. Genetic modification, in his opinion, was a bit skewed. Perhaps it could allow humans to temporarily gain great battle power, but it was at the expense of the potential of the more distant future. The gains and losses of this were really hard to say. Personally, he was not quite in favor of genetic modification anyway. Then, thank you, Captain, Tong Jiao said towards Qin Shi. At this moment, Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, and the others, teaming up to urge the light golden flames, had almost finished vaporizing the clouds. Within their vision, the figures of Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others emerged once again. Damn Eastern Xia Pigs, how dare they sneak attack us? An Inferno Demon team member cursed loudly and angrily. Unfortunately, an Eastern Xia Pig is an Eastern Xia Pig. Even if you have mastered such a powerful secret weapon, you're still no match for us. When we get rid of the clouds, we'll make you all look good later. Another person shouted in a vicious tone. They looked down on Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others with a lofty stance, seeing themselves as superior. As a result, they were caught in the gutter and were instead trapped by a sneak attack by the guys they looked down on. It made them feel a great loss of face. They were seething with anger in their hearts, and it was unbearable not to properly vent their anger. It seems that I'm still a little too lenient with you guys. You won't be able to recognize your situation until I give you some color. Jin Huamping looked at Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others with an icy gaze, and in his heart, he had already thought about how he would torture them later. TSK, are all Dali's transcendents so arrogant? Right at this moment, a slightly teasing voice rang out. Qin Shi rode the wind and flew in front of the clouds that were already on the verge of being vaporized. Seeing Qin Shi, Jin Huangping's eyes couldn't help but widen a bit. This, divine dragon? How could that be possible? This creature in front of him, which was no more than 20 centimeters long, was actually extremely similar to the legendary divine dragon. The myth of the dragon had been circulated all over the blue planet. Jin Huangping naturally wouldn't be unable to recognize it. However, Divine dragons were legendary divine beasts, much more powerful than the various foreign beasts in the market realm. How could a divine dragon exist on the blue star? The other members of the Inferno Demon team, when they saw Qin Shi, all of their hearts thumped, their pupils widened and their breathing was suspended for a moment. Qin Shi's appearance was just too impactful for them. Especially this feeling of oppression from the level of life when they were facing a divine dragon for the first time made their bodies tremble. Even after fusing the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger, 
It was difficult to restrain this life-level oppression. Fake. This must be an illusion. Kim Wonpyong shook his head, his eyes firming down. Everyone be careful. Don't be fooled. This must be an illusion created by Dongxia's secret weapon, just like the one that deceived our senses just now. Kim Wonpyong yelled at the team members next to him. After a short psychic shock, he quickly came back to his senses. It was impossible for a divine dragon to exist on the blue planet in such a creature. Rather, in the market realm, there might exist a legendary divine dragon. This divine dragon in front of him was definitely a fake. This group of Eastern Xia's transcendents also had some heart. Knowing that they couldn't confront them, they actually created an illusion like a divine dragon to scare them. Unfortunately, a mere phantom face could not scare him. Moreover, Dongxia's secret weapon could actually be artificially regulated to create phantom phases? This was out of Kim Wanpyong's expectation. Jin Huanping was somewhat puzzled in his heart, not knowing what kind of black technology was used in this secret weapon of Dongxia, which was actually able to achieve such a degree. However, the more powerful this secret weapon was, the better, and he was determined to win this secret weapon. So it's a fake. When the other Inferno players heard this, their complexions relaxed. They were scared to death. They had thought that a divine dragon had really appeared. Although Qin Shi was small in size, no one dared to belittle him. Although most of the foreign beasts were huge in size, it wasn't as if there were no powerful foreign beasts that were petite in size. The Lightning Sable, for example, was a beast general great alien beast that was a little smaller than the ordinary white sable on the blue star. The pressure of life that passed out from Qin Shi's body was even more frightening to them. This kind of terrifying pressure like that of a Taiku King was just too impactful. Facing Qin Shi, they even had the feeling that they were facing a beast general or a beast king. Luckily, it was fake. This secret weapon of Eastern Xia's is really something. It can actually simulate even this level of foreign beast pressure. It scared the hell out of me. An Inferno team member laughed and cursed loudly. Just now, his legs almost went soft from the impact of Qin Shi's mighty pressure. Indeed, even though it's fake, that aura just now was just like the real thing. Someone else nodded with deep sympathy. When they suddenly saw Qin Shi, their legs all went a little weak as well, and they almost made a fool of themselves by standing unsteadily. If it wasn't for Kim Wanpian reminding them in time that it was fake, it was likely that some of them would have been so frightened that they would have fallen to their knees. To actually be able to simulate such a powerful foreign beast's aura, this secret weapon, it's used for defense and to deter other foreign beasts are of great use. Such a magical weapon. It's really a pity to put it on Dongxia. Only we, Dolly, are qualified to have such a weapon. One by one, the members of the Inferno team opened their mouths to exchange words. They looked relaxed. With an expression of victory, Qin Shi was all rendered somewhat speechless. These few Dolly transcendents were really arrogant, not putting Dongxia in their eyes in the slightest. Obviously, they were the ones who were trapped, but it was as if they could need the divine dragons at will. Of course, in their minds, the ones who had fused the inflamed light tiger gene did have enough strength to crushing Di and Tong Jiao, the few East Xia transcendents, although they were currently trapped. However, they would soon be able to break free from the cloud. As long as they got rid of this cloud, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the several people next to them who were seriously injured and lost their ability to fight, would be the fish on the plate for them to slaughter. However, it is a pity. Their guess was wrong from the beginning. The divine dragon in front of them was not an illusion. It was a real dragon. Put. Qin Shi opened his mouth wide and poured a dragon flame at the crowd of Inferno team who were talking and laughing. He intended to make this group of people sober up. Yo ho. Still pretending. A teasing smile appeared on the face of one of the Inferno Devil team members when he saw Qin Shi spewing out dragon flame. We've seen through all your tricks. And you still want to continue deceiving us? Another Inferno Demon team member said. Kim Wan Piong and Park Yuki. Coldly looked at the pouncing dragon flame with impassive expressions on their faces. Even. There was a bit of a desire to laugh. Although this burst of dragonitis was loud and powerful. Although Qin Shi's action of spewing out dragonitis seemed to be a fuss. However, no matter how much he flared his teeth and claws, it was just an illusion. It had come to this point, and the Eastern Xia Transcendentals were actually still trying to use this phantom face to scare them. Hoomph. He really is at his wit's end. Everyone, break through this layer of clouds with a single effort. Kim Wanpyong shouted loudly towards his teammates. He ignored the dragon flame that was coming at him. The other Inferno team members nodded. They pushed the light golden flames with all their might and burned towards the surrounding clouds. Just then, the golden red dragon flame had parted the clouds and clashed with the light golden flame they had urged. Everyone on the Inferno team didn't take it seriously. It was just an illusion. Just ignore it. However, the next moment, they sensed something was wrong. A power that was even hotter and more incendiary in nature than the pale golden flames on their bodies erupted from the dragon flames and swept towards them. 
Jean Huanping's pupils slammed open, and an unbelievable look appeared in his eyes. How could this be possible? This dragon flame, it was actually real. Such a terrifying temperature and burning power was definitely not an illusion of his. Dong Xia's secret weapon was able to create an illusion, yet it was absolutely unable to affect his body's perception. Otherwise, this was no longer black technology. Rather, it was black hole technology. It was impossible for Dong Xia's technology to be this outrageous. Then this dragon? Jin Huangping's eyes looked towards Qin Shi with disbelief. In the next moment, the raging dragon flames drowned them all. The Inferno players let out miserable cries. They had the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger fused in them. The Inferno Light Tiger was a foreign beast capable of harnessing flames. As such, they had a high resistance to flames. However, it also depended on exactly what kind of flame it was. Ordinary flames, naturally, couldn't hurt them. It was the flames of some beast soldiers, such as the Flaming Wolves, that could only be described as an average level of threat to them. But Dragon Flame was not an ordinary flame. It was the flame spat out by a divine dragon. After two evolutions of absorbing nuclear energy, Qin Shi's dragon flame had a considerable killing power even against ordinary beast generals. Even if an inferno tiger was covered by the dragon flame, it would have to suffer a considerable amount of injuries. This group of inferno devil players were only fusing the genes of the inferno tiger and mastering part of the inferno tiger's ability to harness fire. And they were not real inferno tigers. Facing the burning of the dragon flames, one by one, the inferno demon team members screamed and wailed miserably. They fell to the ground and desperately rolled around, mobilizing the Inferno Tiger's fire harnessing ability to fight against it. Those who heard it shed tears and those who saw it were sad. After some painful struggles, they barely managed to extinguish the dragon flame on their bodies. One by one, they were gray and could no longer see the condescension they had just seen. What kind of flame is this? How come it's so terrifying? It actually can't even resist our Inferno Tiger blaze? An Inferno Demon team member trembled and shouted. They possessed the genes of the Inflamed Light Tiger and were able to enter and exit the sea of fire without any damage. This was proven through experiments. When the fusion of the Inferno Light Tiger gene was successful, they had even tried pouring oil on their bodies and attacking themselves with incendiary bombs. Without exception, these attacks that could cause fatal injuries to ordinary people were useless to them. However, the flames just now made him once again recall the fear of facing a sea of fire when he was an ordinary person. Damn Eastern Xia Pegs, I'm going to kill them. An Inferno member roared through gritted teeth. His body was burnt extensively and his hair was burnt out. Since becoming a transcendent, it was the first time he was in such a sorry state. Even in the past, when he had fought other infernal beasts, he had never been injured this badly. Today, he was made to look like this by the Eastern Xia people he looked down on. It was really too humiliating. With this hatred, there was no way he could think straight without venting it out. How is it possible? This is impossible. Right at this moment, Kim Wanpion's disoriented. Incredulous shout rang out from the side. They turned their heads to look, and the expressions on their faces all froze. A divine dragon with a golden red body and distinct scales and claws was suspended in front of their eyes. The golden eyes of the dragon looked down at them without the slightest hint of emotion. Not right. Hadn't the clouds dissipated? Why does this dragon still exist? The eyes of the Inferno Demon team members whitened and their legs trembled a little. The few people who had clamored just now had terrified faces and could no longer see their arrogant appearance. They had already realized that something was wrong. This dragon did not seem to be a fake. The clouds were able to create illusions and interfere with their perception. But now the cloud and mist, the interfering object, had dissipated. What they were seeing was reality. However, this was too ridiculous. Dragons. How could dragons exist in this world? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. I don't believe it. Kim Wanpion was still there shouting incredulously, his voice getting louder and louder, and he was somewhat hysterical. Fake, it's fake through and through. Die for me. Jean Huanping roared angrily, once again urging the light golden flames, transforming into a long dragon of flames that blasted towards Qin Shi. He didn't believe it, or rather unwilling to believe. Dragons actually did exist in this world. This was a bit unbelievable. But it was not unacceptable in the context of the blue star consciousness manifesting itself and the various exotic beasts rampant in the ruins realm. Many of the foreign beasts in the market realm were extremely similar to the various divine beasts in the legends. However, this divine dragon was related to Eastern Xia. This made it unacceptable to him. Ever since blue star crashed into the ruins realm and countries started researching transcendent powers, it wasn't that there were no countries that attempted to capture exotic beasts or steal exotic beast pups to breed them, but without exception, they all failed. Fey beasts were transcendents, with a higher life level than ordinary species like humans. They simply won't submit to humans. Captured by humans, they would rather die proudly than bow to humans with a lower life level. 
As for stealing fey cubs, it was even harder to do. Fey beasts were very strict in their care of their cubs. Once a cub was stolen, the consequences would be very serious. If it was light, it would lead to the parents of the cubs pursuing them, and if it was heavy, it might lead to the retaliation of a whole group of alien beasts. There was once a country's transcendent who stole a purple gold lion's cub, resulting in the purple gold lion's crazy pursuit of revenge. The spatial passage connecting that country to the market realm was almost broken through by the furious lions. So far, that country didn't dare to open the spatial channel again, and could only borrow another country's spatial channel, sending one or two transcendents into the market realm to hunt foreign beasts, or perhaps research materials, and living a very frustrating life. All in all, the countries on the blue planet have yet to hear of any of them successfully obtaining a living alien beast. Eastern Xia actually smothered and cultivated a divine dragon. This was somewhat shocking. Kim Wanpyong was well aware of how a living exotic beast could be helpful in researching transcendent powers. What's more, this wasn't an ordinary foreign beast. It was a dragon. The legendary dragon. An eastern Xiao with a dragon was a huge threat to Dahlia. That's why he didn't want to believe it. How could this group of lowly pigs from Dongxia gain the favor of a divine dragon? This must be a falsehood. He wanted to shatter this falsehood. The other inferno players, their eyes watched the scene expectantly. They were also unwilling to believe that Qin Shi's existence was real. Hopefully, Jin Huangping would be able to break this falsehood. Bang! The light golden flame, with a scorching heat, burned the air and exploded, and in the blink of an eye, it had submerged Qin Shi, who was more than 20 centimeters away. In response, Qin Shi did not resist. He let this light golden flame submerge him. Jin Huangping's eyes were delighted at the sight. This divine dragon was really too arrogant and cocky. Although Qin Shi was a divine dragon, the power of the flames that he had just spat out was very strong. However, it was not so strong that it exceeded the limits of what he could withstand. Jin Huangping estimated that Qin Shi's strength was only a little stronger than the flame head wolf. It was not yet at the level of a beast general, and his light golden flame was the transcendent power from the beast general Yen Guang Tiger. Qin Shi actually allowed the light golden flame to drown him. One really didn't know whether to call him arrogant or stupid. However, very quickly, the surprise in his eyes froze and his exhilarated demeanor quickly dispersed, turning into disbelief, only to see the light golden flames fall on Qin Shi, drowning him. However, Qin Shi acted as if nothing had happened, gazing at him with an expressionless face. He also shook his body, his scales opening and closing, as if shaking off the dust from his body, shaking away the pale golden flames. The light golden flame that could melt gold and flicker iron and had helped him kill numerous foreign beasts was useless to Qin Shi. When the other Inferno Demon team members saw this, their pupils shrank, and a look of horror appeared in their eyes. How could this be possible? What international joke? The transcendent power that the captain had obtained from the beast generals was actually ineffective against Qin Shi. Unbelievable. Their gazes glanced at Qin Shi's body, hoping to find a little injury. However, reality brought them nothing but despair. There was not a single scar on Qin Shi's body. The flames that had helped them kill numerous beast soldiers, the transcendent power that they were proud of could not even manage to leave a trace of burns on Qin Shi's body. How foolish. I told you guys a long time ago that my family's divine dragon can breathe thunder and spit fire. Do you think that your own flames can be even more powerful than the dragon flames? Tong Jiao laughed in relief when he saw the dumbfounded and creeped out looks of Kim Wanpyong and Park Yuki. Qin Shi was able to absorb nuclear energy, and he could even withstand the high temperature shock from a nuclear reaction. His battle power might only be comparable to that of a top-grade beast soldier, and he was not yet able to threaten a beast general. However, in terms of defense ability, Tong Jiao suspected that even if the Yen Guang Tiger made a move, it might not be able to harm Qin Shi, Jin Huangping and the others, only fused the genes of the Yen Guang Hu, gained a part of the transcendent power of harnessing fire only, and is not the real beast general Yen Guang Hu, trying to deal with Qin Shi with their crippled beast general level transcendent power was tantamount to a fool's dream. What's more, Qin Shi's current direction of evolution was fire control, of all the various transcendent powers, the one he was most unafraid of was fire. The attacks of ordinary flame-attributed exotic beasts would automatically have their damage in front of Qin Shi. This was also the reason why Qin Shi chose to come against the flame-headed wolf. Having just gone through the second nuclear energy evolution, he was unable to confirm his battle power and what level it could reach. To be on the safe side, he first found a foreign beast that was subject to his restraints to try his hand. Not bad flames, powerful enough to melt steel. I'm afraid that even a normal top-grade beast soldier would be severely injured if they were to be dipped in it. But it's a pity that it's useless to me. Qin Shi was just like bathing in hairy rain, feeling the power of the pale golden flame while commenting and speaking. He stood still and allowed the pale golden flames to submerge him. In addition to having confidence in his defense, 
He also wanted to see what the power of the transcendent power mastered by these few Dali transcendents was. The aura of foreign beasts exuding from this group of Inferno Demon crew members was very powerful, and should have reached the level of beast generals. Chinshur was not yet certain that he would be able to fight against a beast general on his own. Taking this opportunity to feel the transcendent power of a beast general in advance would allow him to have a clearer understanding of his own strength. Unfortunately after trying it out, Chinshur was a bit disappointed. The beast general level transcendent power mastered by these few Dali transcendents was too badly crippled. What was strong for a beast soldier would only be considered average for him. Fire attribute transcendent powers would generally contain super high temperatures and heat. However, temperature and heat were only the most basic things of fire attribute transcendent power. Ordinary flames, too, could not be separated from these two things. Transcendent mortal flame power would generally contain other attributes. For example, burning, refining, powerful destructiveness, and so on. With just these two things, temperature and heat, it would be difficult to injure Qin Shi. Unless the temperature of the flame was able to exceed the upper limit of the temperature tolerance of the dragon scale. However, the temperature and heat of a normal transcendent flame power was actually not very exaggerated. What was truly powerful was the other transcendent attributes contained within it. For example, the power of dragon flame to melt everything and burn and disintegrate everything. Therefore, even some materials whose melting point exceeded the temperature of the dragon flame would be destroyed under the burning of the dragon flame. Gene Huangping's fusion of alien beast genes was strong, and the power of the transcendent flame he mastered was not weak. Bathing in the flames, Xin Shi had a slight feeling of being burned, but it was a pity. There was also only a slight feeling. In the light golden flames, there were too few transcendent powers that belonged to the beast general's exclusivity and could threaten Qin Shi. The only remaining high temperature and heat might still have a powerful killing power to other beast soldiers. However, to Qin Shi, it was somewhat insufficient. The fact that the transcendent power obtained from fusing the genes of the beast generals was unable to hurt Qin Shi already made it difficult for Kim Wanpiang, Park Yochi, and the others to accept it, and they felt a deep sense of powerlessness. Qin Shi's words caused even more despair in their hearts. Monster, this divine dragon, was simply a monster. The transcendent power from the beast general actually couldn't even threaten him. Damn it, what should we do now? Their hearts were beating frantically, and an unprecedented sense of crisis covered them like a shadow. Escape, must flee, must send this information back. Run, Kim Wanpyeong made an instant decision and with a roar, he turned around and took the lead to run. It was impossible to fight. The light golden flame was his most powerful means. This transcendent power had once allowed him to face numerous foreign beasts head on, and was the source of all his arrogance. Nowadays, not even the pale golden flame could threaten Qin Shi. The other means at their disposal were even more of a joke in front of Qin Shi. For today's solution, walking away was the best strategy. Trying to run. When Qin Shi saw this, a look of disdain appeared in his eyes. It was a bit too late to think of running now. The prey that was sent to the door. If I let you guys run away, where will my divine dragon's face go? Qin Shi opened his mouth and spat out. A golden lightning bolt split out from his mouth, splitting into tree-like lightning in the air and enveloping towards Kim Wanpian, Park Yochi and the others. The dazzling electric light was like a fire tree growing and spreading in the void. A branch of electric current was like a lance stabbing at the people of the Inferno Demon Team. Lightning Spray, one of the basic abilities of the dragon race. This ability was at the same level as wind control, water control, and cloud driving among Qin Shi's means nowadays and its power was not as powerful as the fire control he had mainly evolved. However, it was sufficient for dealing with these few Dali transcendents. After all, Qin Shi didn't want to kill this group of infernal demons yet. How did Dali master transcendent power? And what level of research on transcendent power had it reached? These questions were important to Dongsha. It would be better to capture this group first and torture them to get the information they wanted. Kim Wanpyeong, Park Yuki and the others were not slow. As transcendents, their speed and agility were already far beyond that of ordinary people, and moving more than a dozen meters a second was no big deal. After fusing the genes of the Inferno Tiger, their speed soared even more. The instantaneous burst of speed was able to reach hundreds of meters. Almost in the blink of an eye, their figures disappeared in front of Qin Shi's eyes. However, how could their speed be faster than lightning? Bursting electric grids, spreading in all directions, like a large net for catching birds flying open, hit them in less than a second. The flickering electric current crackled on their bodies, like a golden rope, binding them firmly. Disperse me, Jean Huangping's pupils widened, and a furious roar escaped his mouth. On his body, light golden flames burned furiously as he fought against the incoming lightning, wanting to break free from the current. With his strength, it was originally not difficult to break free. However, they had only just been incinerated by Qin Shi's dragon flame. 
the transcendent power in their body was severely depleted, and at this moment, they were just focusing on escaping, so it could be said that they were broken. The pale golden flames had only just surged out when they were unceremoniously struck through by the lightning. Ah, 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 one by one, the Inferno Demon team members let out heart-rending screams from their mouths. Soon, their screams became smaller and smaller, and they fell to the ground in convulsions, losing the ability to move. A few with slightly weaker strength directly fainted. All right, I finished cleaning up this group of people. What are you guys going to do? After determining that Jean Huanping, Park Yochi and the others had lost their power to resist, Xinxi then turned his head towards Ying Di and Tong Zhao and asked, Ying Di and Tong Zhao, looking at Kim Lanpyong, Park Yochi and the others who were electrocuted to the point of convulsions, their eyes were very relieved. Dolly being able to grasp transcendent power. This matter is very important. My suggestion is to first bring them back to the base and hand them over to specialized people for interrogation. Tong Zhao said, I agree. Ying Di nodded. Although they also knew a little bit of torturous interrogation and torturing for information, but there was definitely no way to compare with the professionals. The secrets involved in this matter were too important to Eastern Xia. In order to avoid getting incomplete or wrong information, it was better to let the base, the professionals to interrogate. In this regard, Qin Shi naturally didn't have any opinion. It wasn't like he knew anything about interrogation anyway. How are your injuries? Can you still move? Xin Shi turned his head and asked towards Pang Mao and the other team members who were injured by the sneak attack. It's okay, I can't do it for now if I fight, but I have no problem walking normally. Pang Mao covered the wound on his arm and said with his teeth showing, the physical quality of transcendence was originally stronger than ordinary people. The injuries they sustained were serious and could even be fatal to ordinary people. However, with the support of the transcendental strong life force, they were still able to maintain normal activities. The others nodded as well. The Inferno team was too conceited and wanted to capture them alive to torture them for information, so they didn't attack the vitals on their bodies. They were all still able to endure their injuries. In that case, to avoid a long night's sleep, let's immediately pack up and return the same way. Shinshir ordered decisively after sizing them up for a few moments and confirming that they really weren't seriously injured and weren't trying to be brave. This was, after all, the market realm, and the surrounding area was infested with foreign beasts, so it was not a safe place, especially if everyone was injured. The smell of blood on their bodies was more likely to attract the hunters in the market realm. Good. Ying Di and Tong Zhao nodded with grave expressions. They walked over towards the injured team members and quickly bandaged them briefly. And then, the group escorted Jean Wamping, Park Yochi, and the rest of the Inferno Demon team members back in the direction they came from. Eastern Xiao War Zone. After a day of trekking, everyone finally returned to the vicinity of the war zone. Lu Yong Zhao, who had received a summons long ago, personally brought a group of elite warriors to meet them. The Dali transcended infiltrated into the market realm area that East Xiao was responsible for, and was even captured. This matter had to be kept strictly confidential, although Dong Xia was in the right. Even if the news of Kim Wanpiang and the others being captured leaked, Dong Xia would not be afraid in the slightest, but Dalia would definitely not let it go. This was Dali's Inferno team, condensing Dali's transcendent research efforts. If the entire Inferno team was wiped out and became captives of East Xia, it would be strange if Dali didn't go crazy. And because of Qin Shi's existence, East Xia will never let go of this group of Inferno team. At the very least, they would have to be imprisoned until East Xia had the ability to keep Qin Shi and had no fear of Qin Shi's existence coming to light. Thus, the matter of capturing the Inferno Demon team was certainly best if it could be kept secret. Dali really deserves to die. Actually sending people to infiltrate the area we're responsible for, and also attempting to kill East Xia's transcendence. At the East Xia Elders Council, many elders who were informed of the situation were filled with righteous indignation. East Xia and Dali were already at odds. Dali's actions had completely ignited the anger of the East Xia's senior members. If it wasn't for the fact that this time, Dali had failed to steal the chicken and instead lost the rice, they would have already gone to Dali in a rage to seek justice. Luckily, there is a divine dragon. Dali really lifted a stone and smashed its own foot this time. I really want to see what kind of expression would be on Dali's group of people's faces if they knew that their hard-earned inferno team, which they had cultivated, had been completely wiped out. After the outrage, everyone discussed happily. If Dali's plot had succeeded, they definitely wouldn't have been able to endure it. But this time, Dali's plot didn't materialize. And instead, a group of inferno demon members were taken in, which made people's bodies feel good. This matter is pressed beforehand. The focus of our discussion today is the matter of Dali grasping transcendent power. The Grand Elder raised his hand and pressed it, signaling everyone to calm down. Since the one who suffered a defeat this time was Dali, then this matter would just be a matter of everyone stealing a little bit of pleasure in their hearts. 
declaring that the Inferno teen was captured and watching Dolly's jokes would be waived. When everyone heard this, their faces once again became gloomy. The Inferno team actually grasped transcendent power, truly reaching the life level of a transcendent species. When they had just learned of this matter, they were all a bit in disbelief. How could Dolly have researched the method of mastering transcendent power? However, even if they were unwilling to believe it in their hearts, they had to face reality. The captured Kim Wanpyong, Park Yuki, and the rest of the Inferno team members were indeed in possession of transcendent powers. Have the results of the interrogation not come out yet? Someone couldn't wait to ask. After Qin Shi and the others returned to the war zone, Liu Yongzhao had quickly organized manpower to secretly control Kim Wanpyong, Park Yochi and the others, dispatching professional interrogators, psychologists, and making sure to torture Dolly's information out of their mouths. Three days had already passed. Don't be in a hurry. The army inspector has already summoned them. They have asked for a lot of secrets from the mouth of the Inferno Demon Team. They will come over later. The Grand Elder's expression was smooth as he waved his hand to signal everyone to be at ease. Not long after, Lu Yongzhao knocked on the door with a report and walked in. Inspector Lu, how is the situation? Immediately, someone couldn't wait to inquire towards Lu Yongzhao. Lu Yongzhao came to his seat, sat down, raised his head towards the elder who opened his mouth to inquire. His tone carried a hint of relaxation, and said, After our many tortures and analyses, Dali has not researched a way to master transcendental power as we thought. The technology used by the Inferno team to master transcendental power comes from Saint Nong. It's a genetic modification technology. When the crowd heard this, their eyes all lit up, and their expressions all lightened up a lot. It was really great that Dolly hadn't researched a way to master transcendent power. If they really let Dolly research a way to master transcendent power, then the future days of Eastern Xia would be difficult. But soon, everyone's brows furrowed once again. Has Shang Nong actually researched a viable genetic modification technology? Genetic modification technology had long been forbidden for countries to sign a contract. However, for countries, something like a contract was not as binding as one would imagine, especially the hegemonic countries. A contract was only the difference between wanting to abide by it and not wanting to abide by it in their eyes. Genetic modification technology was a very effective direction for mastering transcendent power, although it had various problems and was unanimously opposed by all countries. However, the number of countries that were secretly conducting research behind their backs was unknown. For Saint Nun to secretly conduct related research, the East Summer executives did not find it strange. Rather, it was the fact that Saint Farmer had actually already overcome several of the most criticized problems of genetic modification technology, allowing those who were subjected to the modification to maintain a stable mental state. That made people a bit surprised. Genetic modification technology should not have succeeded for long, Otherwise Saint Nong would have already released the wind in the international arena. But with the maturity of this technology, the era of the transcendent will soon come. And what will be the future of Eastern Xia will require everyone's collective efforts. The Grand Elder looked at the crowd in a deep voice. His words caused everyone's mood to sink. The crowd bowed their heads in contemplation. And for a while the conference room was somewhat silent. Eastern Xia could be said to be the most resolute country against genetic modification technology. For the sake of great strength transforming oneself into a monster and never being a human again. This was an extremely challenging thing for normal people. Not to mention that Dong Xia's tradition extremely valued the identity of a human being. However, once the genetic modification technology was really feasible and was vigorously promoted, when the time came, in order to enhance their own strength, countries would definitely rush towards it. Think about it, when you see other countries, even countries that are not as good as your own, because of the use of genetic modification technology, the overall strength has soared. At that time, which country would still be able to sit still? If Dongxia didn't move forward with the wave, it would be doomed to be left behind by the waves of the times. It might turn into the country at the bottom of the blue planet in terms of strength in the future. At that time, would East Xia still be able to firmly oppose genetic modification technology? Even if they gritted their teeth and insisted, would the people of the country be willing to stand firm with them? When they saw other countries popularize genetic modification technology, even ordinary people were able to master transcendent power through genetic modification. Evolving from ordinary species to transcendent species, would the people of Eastern Xia still be able to endure? Gentlemen, we either have to resolutely oppose genetic modification, or we have to take advantage of the advance information about the maturity of genetic modification technology to preemptively contact Shang Nong and other hegemonic countries. In a bid to obtain the technical support for genetic modification, we're already one step behind Dali. And if we decide to go ahead with genetic modification, we can't continue to be lagging behind. The Grand Elder swept the crowd in a serious tone. The atmosphere in the conference room was heavy. 
In the face of the Grand Elder's words, everyone remained silent for a while, not knowing how to go about answering. This was a very difficult decision. It involved the future direction of Eastern Xia. Everyone did not dare to vote easily. How about this? Do a two-handed preparation. First send someone to contact Shang Nong and seek support for the genetic modification technology, as for using it or not in the future. We'll see what happens. Someone proposed. This kind of decision involving the future direction of Eastern Xia, invariably required careful thinking before making a decision. For a while, everyone's minds were a bit cluttered. They needed time to consider. Seconded. 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 The elders looked at each other and chose to support this decision. Then, we will send someone to contact Holy Farmer first and the others will meet to discuss it later. The Grand Elder thought about it and also felt that this was the best course of action for now. The meeting quickly dispersed. Lu Yongjiao returned to the war zone. How's it going? What was the result of the discussion at this meeting in Kyoto? Qingxi came to Lu Yongjiao's office and asked towards him. Pang Mao and the others were injured by the sneak attack of the Inferno Demon team, so they were temporarily unable to join him in the Market Realm Wave. During this period of time, it was rare for him to relax and wander around the various parts of the war zone. Of course, there was also the wait for another nuclear energy absorption. It's a bit troublesome. Lu Yongjiao sighed. He told Qin Shi what was discussed in the meeting. This kind of high-level meetings were all required to be kept secret. However, Qin Shi was not among those that needed to be kept secret. The East Xia hierarchy had given Qin Shi a very high level of authority. His status was even higher than that of many elders. For this meeting, Lu Yongjiao had originally wanted to bring Qin Shi along. Only Qin Shi refused. He was just a dragon. This kind of decision involving the future destiny of an entire country, tens of millions of people, was too much of a responsibility. He was still young and shouldn't bear such a burden. However, Qin Shi was still very interested in the content of the meeting. Will we contact Saint Farmer first to obtain technical support for genetic modification? After listening to Lu Yangzhao's words, a contemplative look appeared in Qin Shi's eyes. For today's solution, it can only be done first. Lu Yangzhao sighed. As a high-ranking member of Eastern Xia, he had a complicated heart, both extremely repulsed by genetic modification, yet worried that East Xia would lag behind other countries in the future as a result. In the end, it was still because Eastern Xia had no other breakthroughs in transcendent research. If there were other options, they wouldn't need to be so entangled. Shenlong do you have any good suggestions? Suddenly, Lu Yongjiao opened his mouth to ask Qin Shi. Me? Qin Shi raised his paw and pointed at himself. Well, you are a divine beast, and within the transcendent species, you also definitely belong to the upper echelons of existence. Do you have any suggestions for the future direction of transcendence in Eastern Xia? Lu Yongjiao nodded. A group of you guys have a meeting and can't even discuss a suitable strategy. What good advice can I have? Xin Shi shook his head and lost some of his laughter. It seemed that Lu Yongjiao was indeed stumped and would actually ask him, an underage dragon, for a strategy. However, if it's just transcendent evolution, I can give a little opinion. Xin Shi said after thinking for a while, please say, Lu Yongjiao was instantly energized and looked at Qin Shi with two expectant eyes. In fact, you guys are against genetic modification. I am more in favor of it, because in the memories of the dragon race that I awakened, the purity of the bloodline is something very important. The more powerful an existence is, the more importance it attaches to the purity of the bloodline. And genetic modification is tantamount to taking the initiative to pollute one's own original bloodline. And this is not a small impediment to the higher levels of evolution in the future. Qin Shi said, there's actually such a thing. Lu Yangjiao's face changed slightly when he heard this. He did not doubt Qin Shi's words. With the potential of the divine dragon, it was conservatively estimated that it would be able to grow into a heavenly calamity level foreign beast. Coming from the inherited memories of the dragon clan, he had no reason to doubt it. Genetic modification, actually having such hidden dangers, was really something he had not expected. Lu Yangjiao took a deep breath and said with a grave expression, the purer the bloodline, the better, doesn't this mean that the genetic modification technology was the wrong choice, and that the direction of this research was wrong from the start? No. Qin Shi shook his head and corrected Lu Yangzhao, saying, the genetic modification technology only has an impact on more advanced evolution in the future. But if you don't consider the future evolution, and only choose short-term strength enhancement, then this is indeed a good way to quickly enhance strength. In other words, genetic modification is actually sacrificing future potential for short-term results that can be seen in terms of strength. This kind of choice, how to say it, those who are benevolent will see what they want to see. Sacrificing potential for foreseeable strength is not necessarily a wrong choice. After all, time was already tight for humans today. No one knew when the passageway between the blue star and the other market realm spaces would open. 
If the passage between the Blue Star and other market realm spaces opened tomorrow, and a powerful foreign beast invaded the Blue Star, then in the face of life and death, there was no point in considering the potential of the future. Surviving first was the most important thing. What's more, not everyone had strong enough potential. Some people's potential was not as good as genetic modification. For them, gaining strength with genetic modification was more cost-effective than evolving in other ways. Lu Yongjia sniffed and fell into silence. Xin Shi's words made him, who was already in trouble, even more unsure of what to choose in his mind. Personally, he was rather repulsed by genetic modification. Xin Shi's words made him more inclined to research other evolutionary approaches. However, other transcendent research was currently nowhere to be seen. It was really distracting. Someone, invite Professor Tang over. Lu Yongjiao looked towards the soldiers guarding the entrance. This kind of thing was better left to the judgment of a professional. Professor Tang was the person in charge of presiding over transcendent research, and he had a deep understanding of transcendent research and the evolution of life. He needed a professional to help him analyze it so that he could make a more accurate judgment. Soon, Professor Tang arrived. Along with him, there were also a few experts from the research base. They had come over specifically to serve Qin Shi. Regardless of how the international situation changed, cultivating Qin Shi was the most important thing for Dongxia. For this reason, Professor Tang had even suspended some of the transcendent research projects he was originally in charge of. Coming into the office, after listening to Liu Yangzhou's words and his relaying of Qin Shi's words, Prof. Tang and a few experts couldn't help but show a thoughtful look in their eyes. Although I oppose genetic modification and feel that there are great hidden dangers in it, but if the global trend is like this, we have no choice. It's just that nowadays, it seems that the hidden dangers of genetic modification are even greater than what I imagined. Professor Tang frowned and said, he was a staunch opponent of genetic modification. However, if they put aside their personal stance, Prof. Tang believed that things had come to a point of necessity, and even if the safety hazards of genetic modification were even greater, they could only accept it for the time being, and then slowly study it later on to figure out how to solve it. Xin Shi's words gave him one more reason to oppose genetic modification. Of course, if that's all there is to it, the reasons for opposing it are a bit less than sufficient. Shen Long, is there a question that I can ask? Professor Tang turned his head to look at Qin Shi. There was a question in his mind that concerned his final judgment on whether genetic modification was feasible or not. What question? Qin Shi looked up at Professor Tang. Professor Tang looked serious as he said, I want to know if there are any other hidden dangers to genetic modification besides the impurity of the bloodline, which would cause hindrances to the evolution of higher level beings in the future? For example, I've consulted a lot of information and know that amongst the ancient legends, there is a kind of hybrid people who have mutated and possessed greater power because of bathing in the blood of certain exotic beasts. What's the difference between this kind of hybrid people and genetic modification? Legends of mutations due to the blood of exotic beasts had been circulated amongst the countries of the Blue Star. The most famous one was undoubtedly the legend of the Dragon Slayer who eventually changed into an evil dragon. There were heroes who killed evil dragons and dyed the dragon's blood, and as a result, they ended up being affected by the dragon's blood themselves, thus turning into another evil dragon. Bathing in the blood of a foreign beast and creating a mutation is still a bit different from genetic modification. Xin Shi pondered for a moment and returned. After awakening the inherited memories of the dragon race, he was no longer a white boy when it came to life evolution. There was a deep enough understanding of certain hidden secrets. There are two possibilities for bathing in the blood of a foreign beast to produce a mutation. One is that one's own bloodline genes are affected by the bloodline of the foreign beast, thus producing a mutation. And the other is similar to genetic modification, where one's own bloodline is contaminated by the bloodline of the foreign beast, transforming towards the foreign beast. Sheen sure said, these two types of changes, one was the mutation evolution of the genes themselves, and the other was the forced contamination. There was a big difference between active and passive. Didn't you guys take my blood to cultivate other critters? It shouldn't be unfamiliar to this. Xin Shi glanced towards Professor Tang. Those experts at the research base had been craving his body for not a day or two. Seeing as Dong Xia provided him with nuclear energy every so often, Xin Shi would provide them with a little bit of dragon's blood as research material if he was in a good mood. Transcendent research experts had tried cultivating other animals with dragon blood. For example, mice, white rabbits, and so on. Dragon blood had a magical effect that could change the properties of minerals, turning ordinary stones into materials with all sorts of magical and wonderful uses. It could affect the evolution of living things. In the transcendent research base, there was a tank of goldfish that had mutated due to being tainted with dragon blood. Do you mean to say that with genetic modification? Fusing the genes of the fae, it is possible for humans to transform towards the fae in the future? 
Professor Tang's pupils shrunk violently when he heard this. He thought of the goldfish whose appearance had transformed towards a divine dragon. Although Qin Shi was stingy and provided a small portion of dragon blood, and he was still a young dragon, the effects of dragon blood on living things were not as terrifying as the legends. However, after bathing in the clear water mixed with part of the dragon's blood, on those goldfish, quite a few dragon characteristics appeared. Some goldfish grew dragon horns, some goldfish grew dragon claws. Of course, they hadn't turned into alien beasts, only their appearance had changed, somewhat similar to a first order transcendentalist. The physical qualities became stronger, but they were still ordinary species, but even so, it was terrifying. If humans underwent genetic modification and would gradually transform towards fey beasts in the future, wouldn't that be extinction in another sense? Of course, Sheen Shur nodded affirmatively and said, humans are an ordinary species, their level of life is originally inferior to that of a fey beast, and with the fusion of a fey beast's genes, the fey beast's genes will become the dominant genes in a human's body transforming the human towards a fey beast. How was it possible to master transcendent power with the identity of an ordinary species without paying any price at all? Moreover, the transcendent power grasped in this way would most likely be ruthlessly suppressed when faced with a genetically sourced fey beast. Genetic modification could only fuse part of the power of a fey beast. Even if it completely turned into a fey beast, it would only be another fey beast. It was difficult to exceed the upper limit of the bloodline of a foreign beast. For example, the Inferno team, they used the transcendent power of the Inferno Light Tiger. It was fine to face other fey beasts, but if they encountered the Inferno Light Tiger, 99% of the time, they would be hanged. Of course, after genetic modification, there is the possibility of transforming into a fey beast, but it may not really happen. If the fused genes are fewer and less contaminated, the human genes should still be able to suppress this transformation. Sheen sure added. This did not make Professor Tang relax, and his face became even more grave. The words were like this. But who dared to gamble? Once they couldn't suppress it, they could turn into a foreign beast. If that's really the case, then the genetic modification technology, we resolutely can't use it. The risk is too great. Even if there's no such problem for the time being, once it breaks out, it will be an absolute fatal blow to humanity. Lu Yongjiao immediately said. Then if it's only affected and genetically mutated, is there no hidden danger in this regard? Professor Tung continued to ask. That's not necessarily true. Sheen Shur shook his head and said, being affected by the blood of a foreign beast to produce a genetic mutation, because it is an autonomous mutation, there are more options to choose from, but with something like a genetic mutation, who knows if the outcome will be good or bad, it's similar to nuclear radiation, there's a possibility that it could go for the better, there's a possibility that it could become very bad, but of course, overall it's much better than being contaminated, since that's the case, then I'm firmly against genetic modification technology, rather, Using the blood of foreign beasts for induced mutation to produce evolution in the human body might have some feasibility. Professor Tang summarized and stated his suggestion. The other research experts nodded in agreement. All right, I'll give feedback to the elder council on this matter. Lu Yongjiao took a deep breath. It was fortunate that he had a whim of urgency and inquired about Qin Shi's suggestion. Otherwise, he really didn't know that genetic modification actually existed such a big pit. Qin Shi was unimpressed by this and said, In fact, there is no need for you to be so afraid of genetic modification. Only when the gap between the levels of life is too great will there be unstoppable contamination. As I look at the situation of those few Inferno players, the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger did not form unstoppable contamination for them. You can continue to fight for support from Shang Nong to obtain genetic modification technology. Maybe when it it will be useful. Good. I'll bring up your suggestions together. Lu Yongjiao nodded. And then, he hurriedly returned to Kyoto. Sheen sure. On the other hand, followed Prof. Tang and arrived at the Transcendent Research Base in the War Zone. This was his exclusive service area. Professor Tang had stopped his other research projects and concentrated on how to train Qin Shi up faster. There were various Transcendent Power Research, Divine Dragon Diet Research and Development, and Dragon Blood Research Labs in the base. There was also the Dragon Beast Breeding Place. The so-called Dragon Beasts were experimental animals that were contaminated by Qin Shi's Dragon Blood and transformed towards Divine Dragons. Prof. Tang and the others were going to study how to help Qin Shi evolve. There was no way Qin Shi would be their experimental material. He didn't have the fetish of being turned over and toyed with. The appearance of these dragon beasts could be said to have solved a major problem for Professor Tang and the others. Although the dragon beasts were not transcendent species, they possessed certain characteristics of the dragon race. Using them as research objects, one could well explore which energies, substances, had an effect on divine dragons. Although one could not draw the correct conclusions. 
but at least it could be explored from the side and gradually optimized, and compared to directly studying Qinshur, it would be easier to study these dragon beasts, as a divine dragon, Qinshur's life level was too high for East Xia's existing scientific research equipment to study, even the genes of the dragon blood could not be analyzed, the dragon beasts were influenced by the dragon blood and transformed towards the dragon race, although they weren't transcendent species yet, their genes already contained some of the shallow dragon race genes, studying them could be much easier than studying Qin Shi. Qin Shi came to the area where the dragon beasts lived, he was interested in these creatures that were influenced by his blood and produced a dragonization transformation, this place was a self-circulating ecosphere, the entire ecosphere was surrounded by huge tempered glass, which was arranged with various ponds, woods, grass, etc., and several of the most outstanding dragon beasts were transferred to live here. With the help of the blue net monitoring device, Qin Shi could easily see the dragon beasts living in the ecosphere. The number of dragon beasts here was small. Only a few dragon fish, rabbits, rats, and green snakes. Professor Tang and the others didn't dare to use the dragon blood on large beasts such as wolves and tigers. After all, no one knew what kind of changes these dragon beasts would undergo after dragonization. What if they became stronger and more aggressive? Therefore the subjects they chose to experiment on were all relatively tame small animals and the most aggressive ones were only a few non-venomous green snakes. Only after confirming what kind of impact the dragon blood could have on the transformation of living creatures did they dare to apply it to other large animals. Although these few dragon beasts are still just ordinary species, they actually already possess certain characteristics of transcendent power, such as that golden-eyed mouse. Professor Tang walked beside Qin Shi and introduced towards him. Qin Shi followed Professor Tang's pointing and looked over towards a white-furred rat nestled in a tree hole in front of him, constantly chewing nuts in its mouth. This white rat had gone through the infection of dragon blood and did not produce changes such as dragon horns and scales on its body, but its eyes had changed from their original dark brown color to a golden color. Looking closely, its pupils were surrounded by a golden circle of light around the edges, looking very beautiful. Oh, does this golden-eyed mouse have any unique abilities? Qin Shi asked curiously. Professor Tang replied back. This golden-eyed mouse seems to have evolved some kind of unique treasure-seeking ability with its eyes possessing a very strong detection ability for certain rare minerals, and it likes to collect all kinds of rare metals. Treasure-seeking mouse? Qin Shi was somewhat surprised. In the myths and legends of various countries, the dragons all had a hobby of collecting treasures. In Western mythology, all kinds of dragons like to collect gold coins, objects made of gold. And in the mythology of the East, the dragon race were all rich existences, with countless jewels of all kinds in their dragon palaces. It can be seen that the dragon race does have some kind of treasure collection fetish. Of course, Qin Shi did not feel that he had such a fetish for the time being. It was probably because he was still small. Moreover, the various abilities on his body are very complicated. He needs a lot of energy just to develop various abilities. Treasure collection is at best only a small hobby of the dragon race, and he doesn't have the time to pay attention to it for the time being. This golden eyed mouse seemed to have inherited this aspect of the dragon race's potential. Qin Shi's eyes looked towards the golden-eyed rat's burrow. The dragon pupil power, naturally, had the functions of exploring delusion, simple perspective, and so on. The barrier of the soil in the area was no different from air under the gaze of the dragon's eyes. Soon, Qin Shi saw the situation inside the golden-eyed rat's burrow, only to see that inside the golden-eyed rat's burrow, there were all directions, and at the core, there was a block of minerals of unknown materials piled up, and next to it, there were all sorts of nuts peanuts and pine nuts, the golden-eyed mouse is the key object of our research, this treasure hunting ability of its is very useful, if it can be upgraded to develop greater potential, it will be of great help to us in exploring the ruins realm, Professor Tang said, when countries explored the ruins realm, hunting foreign beasts and obtaining materials for researching transcendent evolution was the most important purpose, but it was not the only purpose, the treasures in the ruins realm were not only various alien beasts, but also various plants, minerals, and other resources that were not found on the blue planet. These resources in the market realm were of great help to transcendent research. However, because of the existence of the foreign beasts, trying to find these resources and dig them out smoothly was a difficult challenge. If the golden-eyed mouse's treasure hunting ability could be further developed to detect where various resources in the ruins realm were located, it would undoubtedly be a great surprise to Dong Xia. Not bad. What about the other dragon beasts? Qin Shi's eyes brightened slightly. He didn't expect that these little creatures infected by dragon blood could actually give such a big surprise. The other dragon beasts have not discovered any unique abilities for the time being. Basically all of them have just produced some characteristics of the dragon race and their life strength has grown a bit. Professor Tang returned. Qin Shi followed Professor Tang all the way over. There were a few rabbits hopping in front of them. 
Compared to ordinary rabbits, they had two more tiny dragon horns on their heads, their teeth were sharper, and their bouncing ability was amazing. Noticing Qin Shi and Professor Tang's arrival, the several dragon rabbits were startled, and with a stomp of their legs, they instantly jumped out nearly 10 meters away. This amazing bouncing ability could be compared to that of a first order transcendent. After walking for a while longer, a pond appeared in front. There were several dragon fish swimming around in the pond. Their dragonization transformation was even more peculiar. Some had dragon horns growing out of their heads, and some had tiny dragon claws growing out of their abdomens, and there was an obvious change in body size. When Qin Shi took a look, there were a few dragonfish that were more massive than even him, leaving him speechless. He was only about 20 centimeters long even now, and there were a few dragonfish that had been infected by dragon blood, which were only ornamental fish before and were only about 10 centimeters long, but now they had actually grown to more than half a meter long. It was just a pity that they were empty. Although the various dragonized features were complex, they hadn't evolved any unique abilities. The other dragonized green snake had grown green golden dragon scales on its body, and its speed and defense had both increased by a lot. However, no other unique abilities appeared either. In this regard, Professor Tang and the others were not disappointed. After all, a dragon blood infection was, in the end, a genetic mutation. Only it wasn't an unorganized mutation but rather a mutation that was influenced by the dragon blood in the direction of the dragon race, there would be countless possibilities in it. Being able to obtain a golden-eyed mouse that possessed the ability to find treasure, they were already satisfied. In the next few days, Qin Shi occasionally came to the dragon beast living area to stroll around when he was free. Being idle was also idle. It was quite nice to tease these dragon beasts. On this day, Qin Shi hovered in the air over the golden-eyed mouse, his dragon tail sweeping around, teasing the golden-eyed mouse. Suddenly, he discovered something astonishing. The white gold actually has. On it. Qin Shi's eyes widened. Somewhat surprised as he looked at the golden eye mouse that was swept around by his dragon tail and lay lifelessly on the ground pretending to be dead. This golden eyed mouse was a small white mouse. Because it was infected by his dragon blood, it produced dragonized features and its eyes turned golden. Qin Shi then gave it a name of white gold. Only on the golden eyed mouse's body, there was a faint fluctuation of transcendent power. Although the golden eyed rat had produced dragonized features, it was not a true transcendent creature. It was reasonably impossible to have transcendent power on its body. Surprised, Qin Shi swung his dragon body and leaned down to probe towards the golden-eyed rat, observing it carefully. Faced with Qin Shi's head coming over, the golden-eyed mouse cautiously opened an eye slit, saw the majestic dragon face close at hand, and resolutely closed it quickly, continuing to play dead. This made Qin Shi smile. This golden-eyed mouse was too timid. It was also for this reason that Qin Shi particularly enjoyed coming over to tease it these days. It felt quite fun to bully it. However, as an infected person of dragon blood, possessing part of the dragon bloodline, the golden-eyed mouse was actually so timid that it was scared to death of the slightest breeze. It was really a loss of dragon face. Well, in the future, if I vigorously cultivate platinum, I have to find a way to give it courage. After all, it is my dragon blood infected creature. Being so timid, it's a bit of a disgrace to my face. Qin Shi muttered in his heart, thinking about how to persecute the golden-eyed rat in the future. At the same time, his eyes swept over the golden-eyed rat's body, his huge spiritual power, carefully observing the changes in the golden-eyed rat's body, wanting to find out the reason why it was equipped with transcendent power fluctuations. Soon, Qin Shi knew what was going on. In his eyes, the color of surprise intensified. It's actually traces of the Tai Long spitting breath. How is that possible? Qin Shi's eyes widened as his mental power locked onto the traces of transcendent power fluctuations within the golden-eyed rat's body. Inside the golden-eyed mouse's body, faint transcendent power was flowing, and the traces it passed through were actually overlapping with his Tai Long spitting breath. Or one could say that the fluctuating traces of transcendent power within the golden-eyed mouse's body was the weakened Tao Long spitting breath by a countless number of times. But how could this be possible? The Tai Dragon spitting breath, the fire control ability that he had awakened after experiencing nuclear energy absorption came from the flame chapter of the dragon clan's inheritance. Not only did it possess spitting destruction comparable to a supernova outburst, but it was also capable of devouring the transcendent power that wandered in the void. This was a secret method that attacked and evolved as one. Nowadays, Qin Shi was unable to execute the attack of the Tai Dragon spitting breath. This was because the energy needed to cast the secret method was simply too huge. Even draining his entire dragon wouldn't be able to do it. He could only utilize the Tai Dragon spitting breath. Breathing in and out the evolved parts of his transcendent power to enhance the energy in his body and speed up the speed of energy recovery after each cast of his various abilities. This also helped his evolution to a certain extent. 
Although it was far from the speed of devouring nuclear energy evolution, it was still better than nothing. However, how did the golden-eyed rat learn his Thai dragon spit? Could it be that the golden-eyed mouse had inherited his ability regarding the Thai dragon spitting breath while going through the dragon blood infection? Incorrect. Sheen sure shook his head. The Tai Long spitting breath was a secret technique of the evolutionary direction of the fire dragon lineage of the dragon clan, and was not some sort of natural ability. It was a further development of the dragon flame ability. Even if the golden-eyed mouse was infected by the dragon's blood and inherited some of his abilities, it should still be a fire-breathing ability, not a Tai Long spitting breath. There must be other reasons. Sheen sure looked at the golden-eyed rat, which was belly up and still pretending to be dead, and frowned as he thought hard. Suddenly, he had a flash of light and thought of a certain possibility. Could it be that it's because during this period of time, I've been practicing the Thai dragon spitting breath beside the golden eye mouse, driving the dragon blood cells in its body, causing it to unintentionally learn a tiny bit of the fur of the Thai dragon spitting breath? Sheen Shur's eyes lit up. During this period of time, Sheen Shur came to tease the golden eye mouse when he had nothing to do. After all, this was the only fellow among the dragonized creatures that possessed a unique ability. Sheen Shur naturally paid more attention to it than other dragonized creatures. While teasing the golden eye mouse, he would also cultivate the Thai dragon spitting breath and exhale transcendent power to accumulate energy. The golden eyed mouse was intimidated by his dragon's might and didn't dare to run away at all, so it could only lie down next to him and play dead. And as he practiced Tai Long spitting breath, he would set off a small range of transcendent power fluctuations beside him. The golden eyed mouse might be in this range, and under his influence, the dragon blood in his body was activated and under his drive, it operated according to the frequency of the Tai Long spitting breath. The more Qin Shi thought about it, the more he felt that this speculation had a great possibility. If that's true, doesn't that mean that I can make creatures with dragon blood cultivate the dragon race's techniques and speed up their evolution? Qin Shi took a deep breath, and his eyes became brighter. If that was really the case, then the current dilemma facing Eastern Xia might be solved. East Xia's research in the area of transcendent power was stuck in a bottleneck. It was not like they were willing to carry out genetic modification techniques to turn themselves into xenomorphs. Sheen Shur had once thought that if he could teach them the Dragon Clan's secret method that he had obtained, wouldn't it be possible for East Xia to master the laws of transcendent evolution and embark on the path of transcendent evolution? It was just that this was difficult to do. The dragon race's inheritance was extremely esoteric and did not fall into words. The Thai dragon spitting breath, moreover, involved extremely fine changes in breathing frequency. By regulating the frequency of breathing, it allowed itself to resonate with the transcendent power in the void, thus guiding the transcendent power into the body. Sheen Shur was a divine dragon in order to easily master this Tai Long spitting breath, but for him to describe the exact process and teach it to others, he wouldn't be able to do it. But if his guess was true, then he could make it possible for others to cultivate the Tai Long spitting breath through dragon blood, teaching the dragon plants techniques to Tong Zhao, Ying Di, and the others, truly forming a dragon nation. Qin Shi immediately summoned Professor Tang and told him about his discovery. Professor Tang was doing experiments in his lab when he heard Qin Shi's summons. He was startled for a moment, and then his heart was ecstatic. He was being annoyed by Dong Xia's transcendent research, not knowing where Dong Xia should go in the future. Qin Shi's discovery was simply a timely reign for Dong Xia. All right, I'll go over right away and organize research to confirm if your discovery is true. Professor Tang pressed down the excitement in his heart, and after hanging up the transmission, he immediately summoned all the researchers in the base and rushed towards the Dragon Beast cultivation site in great numbers. Sheen Shur's discovery was just a guess. What exactly? Further experiments were needed to prove it. They took out various instruments and gave the golden-eyed mouse an all-around examination. That's right, on Platinum's body, there are indeed transcendent power fluctuations, and to a certain extent, it has already stepped onto the path of transcendent evolution, and is a transcendent species instead of an ordinary species. The researcher who was responsible for examining the golden-eyed mouse, shouted excitedly, It's actually true? The golden-eyed mouse has really evolved into a transcendent species. This is the first case we've found so far, other than genetic modification technology, of an ordinary species evolving into a transcendent species. This is a major breakthrough. In the lab, the researchers responsible for the tests were all excited. It was almost impossible to resist jumping up and down. Dong Xia had been researching transcendent power for so long, and had never been able to find a direction for ordinary species to master transcendent power. The evolution of the golden-eyed rat was undoubtedly a ray of light for them in the darkness. Simply studying the evolution of the golden-eyed rats could give a huge boost to their transcendent research. Of course, there was no need for them to conduct any more research now. If Qin Shi's guess was correct, then Eastern Xia might soon be able to embark on the path of transcendent evolution. 
Everyone turned their heads and looked towards Qinshir. Professor Tang endured the excitement in his heart and said in a deep voice, The golden-eyed mouse has indeed metamorphosed into a transcendent species, but whether it has anything to do with your cultivation as a divine dragon needs to be further verified. Next, please cultivate near the other dragon beasts and see if you can drive them to embark on the path of evolution as well. Qin Shi nodded. He was also curious if his guess was true. Professor Tang led Qin Shi into the specially opened grounds. Here, other than the golden-eyed rat, all the other dragon beasts in the research base were brought over. In total, there was a green snake, three dragonized carp, and three dragon rabbits. After being infected by dragon blood, these dragon beasts were extremely energetic, much more active than normal experimental animals. With Qin Shi's arrival, the true dragon's pressure spread. The green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit, all revealed a humanized, trembling look of fear in their eyes as if they were facing a natural enemy, and prostrated themselves on the ground, not daring to move. They were only dragon beasts infected by dragon blood and genetically mutated. They are not even dragon descendants. Faced with Qin Shi, the true dragon, they were naturally just like the small scaly dragon that saw the true dragon ancestor, completely unable to be autonomous. Qin Shi didn't bother with them. These few dragon beasts, empty of the characteristics of the dragon race, had not been born with special abilities, so he naturally wouldn't take care of their emotions like he did with the golden-eyed mouse. Qin Shi directly flew over and hovered over the several dragon beasts, clouds and mist around his body. His dragon body coiled up, closed his eyes and operated his secret method of Thai dragon spitting breath. Exhale, inhale, accompanied by the opening and closing of Qin Shi's nostrils, his chest was drumming regularly. The transcendent power that was wandering in the void was driven by this unique frequency, resonating with the breath in his body, and slowly converging towards him, being inhaled into his body and transformed into his own energy. As time passed, the transcendent power that converged around him became more numerous. Several dragon beasts were also enveloped by the transcendent power. They didn't dare to make any movements, just closed their eyes and pretended to be dead. However, under the influence of Qin Shi Tai's dragon spit, inside their bodies, the genes that had been infected by the dragon blood and transformed towards the dragon race seemed to have been affected in some way, and a faint energy surged out, resonating with Qin Shi's breath and trembling along a certain unique frequency. The surrounding transcendent power gathered by Qin Shi's cultivation also had a tiny bit of it integrated into their bodies. After about an hour, Qin Shi stopped cultivating. Cultivating on one's own through the Thai dragon spit was not as efficient as absorbing nuclear energy, and the longer one cultivated, the efficiency would gradually decrease instead. After Qin Shi's many times of cultivation, he found that around an hour was probably the best time frame to cultivate Thai dragon spitting breath, and it was best to rest for more than half a day before proceeding to the next cultivation in order to achieve maximum efficiency. After Qin Shi stopped cultivating, Prof. Tain and a group of other researchers immediately started inspecting the green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit. There isn't much change. It seems that a single experiment cannot reveal the results. Professor Tang mused as he held the inspection report. The green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit were not driven by Qin Shi's cultivation, producing any obvious changes. However, he was not disappointed. This was just the beginning. It was only after a few days that Qin Shi also noticed the changes in the golden-eyed mouse. At a conservative estimate, it would also take four or five days for the green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit to change. And if the differences in different species and the differences in individuals were taken into account, this time might even have to be extended. For the next week, Qin Shi spent it in cultivation. At regular intervals, he would come to the experimental base and call the green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit over to cultivate together. A week later, finally on green snake, fluctuations of transcendent power appeared. Although on the dragon fish and dragon rabbit, no transcendent power fluctuations were detected. However, judging from the changes in the golden-eyed mouse, as well as the changes in the green snake, it was almost confirmed that their metamorphosis into transcendent mortal species was inseparable from Qin Shi. Even if no transcendent power fluctuations appeared on the dragonfish and dragon rabbit, the characteristics of the dragon race deepened quite a bit on them. This was also a proof. It seems that you, divine dragon, can indeed influence those infected by dragon blood through your resonance induction with it, driving them to embark on the path of evolution. Professor Tang said in a tone of unconcealed excitement. Ha ha, that's great, we've finally found a path of transcendent evolution that doesn't require genetic modification. The surrounding researchers were also unable to hide their excitement, and each of them stared at Qin Shi with glowing eyes, as if they were a pack of hungry wolves staring at a beautiful woman, with the same attitude as if they were eager to pounce on him. How to master the transcendental power? 
is stretched in front of the Blue Star Country's researchers, difficult to overcome the mountain. So far, the only way that countries can think of is through genetic modification technology, fusing the genes of foreign beasts. But doing so, the risk was too great. After listening to the hidden dangers of bloodline contamination that Qin Shi had pointed out to them, everyone had already extinguished the idea of mastering transcendent power through genetic modification in their hearts, but other countries would not think this way. Once they chose to liberalize the genetic modification technology, it would undoubtedly be a disaster for Eastern Xia. Eastern Xia, unwilling to go with the flow, would inevitably be abandoned by the times. This was the stone that pressed on the hearts of East Xia's executives and researchers making it difficult for them to catch their breath. Now, they finally saw the light. However, I can only help other creatures embark on the path of evolution through the resonant induction of dragon blood now. Are you willing to accept my dragon blood infection? Sheen sure, however, was not as optimistic as everyone else and asked towards Professor Tang. Although the dragon blood infection was not a genetic modification, it would not make them inhuman. But in this way, Dong Xia's future transcendental evolution would be equal to being in the hands of a dragon like Qin Shi, being subjected to his jaws, maybe even, Qin Shi could control Dong Xia through his control of the dragon's blood, although Dong Xia respected Qin Shi, treating him as the hope for the future, but to have their destiny, manipulated in Qin Shi's hands, everyone just might not be willing, Professor Tang said in a deep voice, the hearts of people were the most difficult to gauge, he understood Qin Shi's concerns, soon, Professor Tang reported the results of the experiment. Gentlemen, everyone should have read the report submitted up by Professor Tang. What are your thoughts on this? In Kyoto, in the heavily guarded elders' conference room, the grand elders sat at the top and looked around at the crowd. It's a good thing that divine dragons can help us evolve and control transcendent powers. I think we can use dragon blood. I'm afraid that's a bit of a problem. Once we use the dragon's blood, won't we be at the mercy of the divine dragon? It's not that I don't respect the divine dragons. But humans and dragons, after all, are different species, we need to look up to the divine dragons, but the defense that should be there is also essential. Numerous elders, you and I argued, some were in favor of it, while others were against it. The main reason for everyone's opposition was that they were worried that after being infected by the dragon's blood, in the future, their lives and deaths could only be manipulated in Qin Shi's hands. It wasn't true that they respected Qin Shi and relied on him but it was unacceptable to hand over their destinies to be manipulated by Qin Shi. Your concerns are very reasonable, but there is one thing I need to remind you all. We have no other options left in Eastern Xia. You have all read the report submitted up by Prof. Tung. You should understand the hidden dangers of genetic modification technology. I don't think anyone is willing to turn into inhuman monsters. What's in front of us is not a matter of choice. At this time, a young elder stood up. He looked around the crowd, his face cold and nonchalant. Everyone has seen how the divine dragon has behaved during this period of time. I believe that he won't take control of Eastern Xia through the dragon's blood, because it's simply not necessary. Nowadays, Eastern Xia can only rely on the divine dragon, hoping that when the more powerful ruins realm passageway opens up, the divine dragon will be able to help us and save us. Sober up gentlemen, don't be reluctant to admit that. In reality, we have long since been the divine dragon's vassals, and right now, it's simply it's not that the divine dragon can't stay away from us but that we can't stay away from the divine dragon. Certain concerns of yours are unnecessary. To put it nicely, Dong Xiao was a partner of Qin Shi. To put it badly, it was actually Qin Shi's pooper scooper. If Qin Shi felt uncomfortable serving Dong Xia, he would pat his ass and walk away from the dragon. They would have no place to cry. The young elder paused and continued. If the divine dragon wants to take control of Dong Xia, with just one word, he can immediately become the most powerful elder in Dong Xia. These words were a bit of a treasonous statement. The Grand Elder was sitting up there. Eastern Xia was a council of elders system, and the Grand Elder had the most power. These words were undoubtedly a serious offense to the Grand Elder. Everyone looked towards the Grand Elder. The Grand Elder did not get angry. His face was as usual, with a kind of Tarzan's immovable demeanor. He nodded his head and said in a deep voice, You're right. The passage to a more powerful ruins realm will be opened at any time. Shenlong is our only hope. As long as he doesn't act recklessly and spoil the country. What's the point of letting him sit in my position? In fact, when they first decided to cooperate with Qin Shi, they had given him a high level of authority. Qin Shi had the right to attend all of the Supreme Elders meetings in Eastern Xia. His status was originally not below any of the elders. Only, Qin Shi did not have a mind for this. Growing, evolving, and grasping a stronger power was what he was pursuing. The fear that the Divine Dragon will control Eastern Xia with its dragon blood can be ruled out by everyone. The Grand Elder sealed the deal. Everyone looked at each other and had a heated discussion. 
If this point was ruled out, then there would be nothing to argue about. Dragon blood infection could be too much better than genetic modification technology. The genetic modification technique, the flaws were too great and the hidden dangers were buried deep. In the future, it was possible that everyone would lose control of their genes and become inhuman aliens. The dragon blood infection, on the other hand, only accepts the influence and induction of dragon blood, allowing their genes to evolve towards the dragon race. They could still maintain their human form. Even if they appeared to have dragonized features, they were still essentially human. Moreover, after Professor Tang's research, as long as they received a portion of the dragon blood infection, it would allow Qin Shi to drive them to cultivate the dragon clan's secret method and embark on the path of transcendent evolution. There was no need to go too deep into dragonization. In the future, they could also improve and create secret methods that could be cultivated without relying on dragon blood infection through the dragon ray secret methods they had mastered through their research. Through cultivation, autonomous evolution, whether it was safety or potential, it was too much stronger than genetic modification techniques. Taking a step back, even if they were too deeply infected by dragon blood and turned into dragon descendants. So what? Since ancient times, Eastern Xia had the belief in divine dragons. Turning into a dragon descendant was much better than turning into other cats and dogs. At least, divine dragons were foreign beasts with the potential for natural disasters. Thinking about it differently, in the future, Eastern Xia would be where everyone would be like a dragon. Since that's the case, then I agree with the dragon blood infection. Seconded. 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 One by one, the elders raised their hands to vote. It was unanimously agreed that Dong Xia could be allowed to step onto the path of transcendent evolution through the method of dragon blood infection. The next focus was how the first batch of people to endure the dragon blood infection should be chosen. Xin Shi was willing to provide dragon blood to help them. However, Xin Shi's blood was not endless, and there was a limited amount of dragon blood that could be provided each time. It was impossible for everyone to gain access to the dragon blood infection and it was better to embark on transcendent evolution sooner rather than later. For something like metamorphosing into a transcendent species, naturally, the earlier it was, the more advantageous it would be. For a while, the conference room once again resounded with heated arguments. Only, this time, people weren't arguing about the feasibility of the dragon blood infection, but rather, they were competing for the dragon blood infection quota. The result of the elders' meeting soon reached Qin Shi's ears. He was not surprised. Eastern Xia didn't have much of a choice in the first place. He was a divine dragon, and his willingness to provide dragon blood and teach them the dragon clan's secret techniques was already a great mercy. If it wasn't for the fact that Dong Xia treated him with respect and had the shadow of his own country from the previous life and its culture, giving him a little sense of belonging and wanting to create a world-dominating dragon nation, he might not have been willing to help. As for the first batch of candidates for the dragon blood infection, what the Council of Elders says doesn't count. Qin Shi directly designated that Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and other divine dragon team members would conduct the first batch of dragon blood infection experiments. Since he was able to pass on the secret methods of his human dragon race so that others could also embark on the path of cultivation and evolution, Qin Shi's first thought was naturally his own teammates. As for those personnel provided by the elders association breaking their heads to compete for the quota, they could only be moved back. It wasn't like he was familiar with these people. When he was in a good mood, he would reward them with some dragon blood down the line. Professor Tang cried and laughed a little. The divine dragon was also too capricious. At the elders meeting, many elders had fought over the first batch of dragon blood infection slots, and it was hard to snatch the slots and gain a head start for their own kinsmen and cronies. As a result, they were beaten back by Qin Shi with a single sentence and could only drag their feet. The depression in their hearts could be imagined if they heard the return. Soon, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, Pang Mao, and the other twelve divine dragon members were summoned over. The matter of Qin Shi being able to help the others master the transcendent evolution method through the dragon blood infection was a supreme secret, and they did not know about it. When Professor Tang told them the news, they all had stunned, shaken, and ecstatic expressions on their faces. Really? Captain you can teach us the secret method of evolution of the dragon race? Captain is mighty. Everyone shouted in surprise. Tong Zhao even looked as if he couldn't wait to jump up and hug Qin Shi and kiss him furiously. This is considered an unintentional surprise. But before that, you guys have to pass the test of the dragon blood infection first. Qin Shi dodged Tong Jiao's pounce with a flash and landed on her shoulder. Dragon blood infection? Ying Di's gaze sank slightly. On the faces of the others, they also revealed a look of gravity. They had experienced similar experiments. In the early stages of East Xia's research on transcendent power, they had engaged in experiments that used the blood of exotic beasts to coat their bodies and promote body strengthening. This was actually quite conservative compared to swallowing alien beast blood raw and injecting it. However, 
there was still a great risk. Fey beasts were transcendent beings, and their blood contained transcendent power that would cause serious erosion to ordinary species, those whose physical qualities were not up to par, who rashly came into contact with the blood of the Fey beasts, might even be corroded to the point where their flesh and blood collapsed, or even develop certain mutations. Moreover, the more powerful the Fey beast, the greater the impact of its blood on the ordinary species. Sheen Shur was a divine dragon, a legendary divine beast, and the effect of its blood on ordinary species was definitely far superior to those fey beasts' blood that Dong Xia used to experiment with before, even if they were transcendents, with physical qualities that were far superior to normal people. There was no guarantee that they could definitely withstand the impact of the dragon's blood. Dragon blood infections are indeed dangerous. We have used dragon blood agents that have been diluted hundreds of times to infect ordinary snakes frogs, rats, rabbits, and other experimental animals, and the death rates are all very high. Professor Tang nodded at the side and said, but there is no need for you guys to be so nervous. After our experimental research, we have a certain understanding of the process of dragon blood infection. We can enhance the success rate of dragon blood infection by regulating the concentration of the dragon blood. For ordinary people, such experiments still possess a powerful danger, but for you guys, it might be a bit painful. The possibility of success is still very high. Then in case it fails, or the infection is too deep, will we be assimilated by the dragon blood and turn into dragon descendants? A team member asked curiously. I think it's okay if we become dragonized. I wouldn't mind growing some dragon horns and scales. Turning into a little dragoness feels super cool. Tong Jiao smiled and said. But in that case, the blood in our bodies becomes dragon blood. So what should we call the captain in the future? Dad? Or big brother? Tong Jiao pondered his eyes glancing at Qin Shi, looking a bit strange, you're thinking too much, Professor Tang rolled his eyes and said, you guys are just having your genes affected by the dragon's blood, producing an autonomous evolution, it's not like you fused the dragon's blood, and bloodwise, there's nothing to do with the divine dragon, to make an analogy, dragon blood infection, genes produce mutation, Qin Shi's dragon blood was like a guide for their genetic mutation, guiding a relatively clear direction for their genetic mutation, that is, in the direction of the evolution of the dragon race. Otherwise, there were too many possibilities of genetic mutation, and it was possible to evolve into any creature. Qin Shi drove the dragon beasts to cultivate through the resonant induction of the dragon blood, and not through controlling the dragon blood. Rather, it was similar to the driving of the superior to the inferior in a pack. As for the dragonization trait, we will try to control the dragon blood dosage to avoid this. Professor Tang said, if it was possible to be like Qin Shi, with dragon scales that could withstand the heat of a machine gun and dragon claws that could tear through alloys, then the appearance of dragonized traits would not be unacceptable. However, ordinary dragonized features were only biased towards the dragon race in appearance, and were actually of little use. It's not like it could possess the abilities of the dragon race. Qin Shi glanced at Tong Jiao speechlessly. This guy, still wants to call him dad? Is it appropriate to treat him like this as a child? He's only a few months old. I'll provide you with the dragon blood. It's better to start the experiment sooner rather than later. Qin Shi waved his dragon claw. Professor Tang immediately took action, arranging the dragon blood infection experiment for them. And while Dong Xia was working feverishly, conducting experiments, the capital of Dali was in a state of sadness. What's going on? The Inferno team has lost contact. What the hell happened? With the strength of the Inferno team, even if they encountered a lower beast general, they would have managed to escape. Could it be that they encountered a middle? or even an upper beast general? Impossible. We have probed. In the area of the market realm that we and Dongxia are responsible for, basically there is no upper beast general. There is only one middle beast general. Jean Huanping and the others aren't fools. If they really encountered a beast general, they wouldn't be so foolish as to dislike it. They would definitely find a way to go around and avoid it. Then what is the situation now? The Inferno team that our Dali spent a huge amount of money to cultivate has just disappeared without a trace? Can anyone tell me what the reason is? Is it hard to believe that they will still be lost in the Eastern Xia territory and captured by the Eastern Xia people? The head of Dali furiously slapped the table at the other senior leaders in front of him. Inside his gloomy eyes, the pent-up anger was on the verge of turning into fire and bubbling out. They had dispatched the Inferno team, traveling to the area of the market realm that East Xia was responsible for wanting to probe East Xia's military secrets. Originally, everything was normal. Every once in a while, the Inferno Demon Team would send a message back to Dali's military headquarters to report on their progress. However, the last time, after the Inferno Demon Team reported that they had successfully stepped into the area of the market realm that Eastern Xia was responsible for, their contact with Dali was cut off. So far, it had been almost half a month. 
No matter how much Dolly signaled their contact, they could not get a reply. They also didn't dare to send ordinary soldiers into the market realm. Even the Yen Devil team was trapped in the market realm. Sending ordinary soldiers would not be sending them to their deaths. In the past few days, the top management of Dolly met every day to discuss this matter. However, no matter how much they discussed it and made all sorts of guesses, it didn't help. There was still no word from the lost Inferno team. Chief, this matter may not be impossible. The Inferno team was lost after setting foot on the market realm area in charge of the Eastern Xia, and the Eastern Xia has been very mysterious for a while now. They don't know what they have researched. Maybe the Inferno team was probing into the secrets of the Eastern Xia, and accidentally leaked the trail, and was persecuted by the Eastern Xia. Dali's military commander, the direct superior of the Inferno demon team, spoke up while breaking out in a cold sweat. It was his order to send the Inferno Demon Team to investigate the secrets in the Market Realm area under the responsibility of Eastern Xia. He was to blame for the disappearance of the Inferno Demon Team. In order to mitigate his own culpability, he could only try his best to shrug off the blame and divert the conflict. The Dali Chief stared sternly at the Army Chief, looking at the cold sweat pouring from his forehead. Of course he could see that the Army Chief was excusing his own culpability. However, the Army Chief's words were not without reason. Moreover, he also needed an excuse to shrug it off. The Inferno team was a team of transcendence that Dolly had worked so hard and spent an unknown amount of resources to pile up. What's more, they had purchased a set of Inferno Tigers genetic modification technology from Saint Farmer, allowing them to master the Inferno Tigers transcendent power and completely metamorphose into a transcendent species. The investment was too great. There were also quite a few Dolly consortiums behind it. If the Inferno team was gone all of a sudden, he, the Dolly chief, was also to blame. Without finding a better excuse, it was hard to explain to the public. Soon, Dali sent a harsh condemnation towards Eastern Xia. Recently, there are transcendents from Dali who have disappeared within the market realm area under the responsibility of East Xia. Dali transcendents have been sparing no effort to guard the Blue Star and resist the foreign beasts, resolutely fighting on the front line of the market realm, yet they met with such an end. It is even possible that they didn't encounter the foreign beasts but rather they were mutilated by their fellow human beings. We are not questioning East Xia but the matter happened under the responsibility of East Xia's ruined realm region. And for this matter, I hope that the Eastern Xia can give a reasonable explanation. The many elders of the Eastern Xia heard this and called out to the good guys. In Dali's speech, every single sentence did not specify that it was Dong Xia that had moved. But every single sentence accused Dong Xia of secretly plotting against the Inferno team. First of all, for Dali's encounter we deeply sympathize. But in the market realm everywhere is a crisis. Any accidents are possible. Trapped in the market realm of the East Xiao warriors are also not a few. For Dali's encounter, we deeply sympathize. I hope that Dali can be saddened. Secondly, we would like to sternly condemn the transcendence of Dali. Why did they sneak into the market realm area in charge of Eastern Xia? The market realm areas that each country is responsible for are uniformly divided by the Blue Star Consciousness. Dali is infringing on the rights of the Eastern Xia. I hope you can give a reasonable explanation. The Eastern Xia vertical and horizontal minister elders stood out to speak directly disliking them while harshly condemning Dali. When they received the notification that Qin Shi had captured the Inferno team, they had already thought of various strategies to deal with it, making different simulations of how Dali was likely to react. Dali's reaction was not unexpected. Anyway, the Inferno team were all captured and were still firmly locked up in a secret base as fodder for Dong Xia's research on transcendent powers. They had metamorphosed into transcendent species through genetic modification though. This tactic was not desirable for Dong Xia. However, the changes in physical qualities after becoming a transcendent had a high research value. It wasn't any worse than capturing a living fae. This was tantamount to delivering a living alien beast to the door. So how could Dong Xia have the reason to abandon it? Unless they could escape East Xia and return to Dali, Dali would never know the truth. At most, they could only guess that the Inferno team might have fallen into the hands of Eastern Xia, but without any evidence. No evidence and still dare to be so arrogant. T-words and slandering East Xia? Do you really think that Dongxia is a soft persimmon? So easy to pinch? For a time, Dongxia and Dali you and I, arguing endlessly. Dali is determined to dump the pot. To East Xia splash dirty water. Transfer Dali internal contradictions. Dongxia, on the other hand, firmly denied it. Damn it, damn Dongxia. It must be them who brutalized our inferno team. This matter can never end. The Dali chief met up with the plutocratic giants from all over the world and shouted in anger. Anyway, he was firmly determined that the loss of the Inferno team had nothing to do with Dongxia. If it wasn't done by Dongxia, it had to be done by Dongxia. Then what do you think? What should we do next? The loss of the Inferno team is a major loss for us. 
Not only will our efficiency in hunting foreign beasts be drastically reduced, but we will also be completely outclassed by East Sia in terms of our military strength against the market realm. A plutocratic giant of Dali looked coldly at the Dali chief and said with a cold gaze, Dali's national power was firmly in the hands of a group of plutocrats, even if the chief in front of these plutocratic giants have to bow down. These plutocratic giants were not stupid and could see that the Dali chief was madly shaking off the pot. However, they didn't dismantle Chief Dali. The current leader was quite obedient. And what happened to the Inferno team was something that no one had expected. So taking the Dali leader to the sword would not help. Now the most important thing is how to save the situation of Dali. Losing the Inferno team. Dali's exploration and development of the market realm will return to the pre-liberation period overnight. And the exploration and development of the market realm concerns the interests of these plutocrats. Every foreign beast hunted in the market realm could bring huge benefits to the plutocrats. They couldn't stand the fact that they used to make money day in and day out, but now they couldn't make a single penny. This, we have already thought of a remedy and decided to vigorously purchase genetic modification potions from Saint Farm to create another batch of transcendence. Chief Dali wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and hurriedly said, although Shang Nong's genetic modification potion is expensive, it's already cheap compared to what we've invested in the Infernal Demon Team, and the effect is immediate. Within a month, we can create transcendent species that have mastered transcendent powers, and we can completely cultivate another infernal demon team in place of Gene Huanping and the rest of them. In addition to this, we can also spend a small price to secretly cooperate with Sacred Farmer to block the channels for East Xia to purchase genetic modification potions. Although we don't know what East Xia has researched, it is definitely not as good as the genetic modification technology that Sacred Farmer has researched. And they, who are unable to purchase the genetic modification potions, will inevitably be left far behind by us, the Dali leader spoke out their conspiracy. Shang Nong was the hegemonic country of the day, and was extremely good at technological research, biotechnological research. Their genetic modification technology had matured and was capable of allowing humans to master transcendent powers. Shang Nong was also a country that strongly advocated for genetic modification research, and was inherently at odds with Dong Xia, who opposed genetic modification. As long as they used a little bit of tactics, they could completely make Shang Nong refuse to cooperate with East Xia. At that time, East Xia would inevitably be abandoned by the tides of the times. A few Zaibatsu giants jointed their ears and exchanged a few words, nodding their heads in favor of this plan. Very well then, let's do it. I hope that in this matter, you won't mess up again. Otherwise we don't mind changing the head. The Zaibatsu giant who had just opened his mouth coldly snorted. Don't worry, this matter will never go wrong. The Dali chief nodded with a serious expression. Immediately after ending the meeting, he dispatched his inner circle to Shang Nong to get in touch with the relevant heads of Shang Nong to discuss cooperation matters. A few days later, a shocking piece of news spread around the world. Sacred Farmer had researched a genetic modification technology that could allow people to master transcendent powers, realizing the evolution from ordinary species to transcendent species, and it didn't have the drawbacks of those previous genetic technologies. In a week's time, Saint Farmer will hold a genetic modification technology cooperation and exchange conference in the capital city of Columbus, and all countries are cordially invited to send representatives to participate. The world was in an uproar. This announcement from Saint Farmer had caused intense discussions among all countries. How to allow humans to master transcendent power had always been the focus of research in various countries. However, prior to this, none of the countries had made any great progress. At least on the surface, there was no progress. Saint Nong's announcement was undoubtedly a bomb thrown into the Blue Star countries, startling everyone. Even the other hegemonic countries all cast concerned gazes towards Saint Nong. Saint Farmer actually researched a mature genetic modification technology. Hasn't genetic modification technology long been banned by all countries signing a contract? Saint Farmer is actually still secretly researching it. Really? Year after year, people say that they have researched a way to master transcendent power, but it turns out to be a front and a lie. On the blue net, there was even more public outcry. There were a large number of netizens from all over the world discussing it passionately. Some people condemned Saint Farmer for being inhumane and secretly conducting human experiments. Some people raised their hands in favor of it, hoping that genetic modification technology could be popularized as soon as possible so that they too could master transcendent powers. But whether it was positive or negative, it couldn't change the fact that genetic modification technology would lead the trend of the times. Countries had sent their representatives to SA. Nunkelin to participate in this conference. Once it was confirmed that genetic modification technology could indeed allow ordinary people to master transcendent powers, this technology would definitely become popular around the world. No one could resist the temptation of mastering transcendent power. This was because it not only represented greater strength, 
but also meant that everyone could have a stronger body and a longer lifespan. In the era of the market realm advent, a strong strength was even more essential to ensure one's survival. Eastern Xia had also sent someone over. Although Dong Xia had received guidance from Qin Shi and knew that the genetic modification technology had a great deal of flaws. After discussing the matter, it was unanimously decided to abandon the use of genetic modification technology. However, this technology was not without its merits. Not using it didn't mean it couldn't be used for research. Referring to Shang Nong's genetic modification technology might be a better inspiration for Dong Xia's research direction. This time, Dong Xia sent a group of elders from the Ministry of Heavenly Works. The Ministry of Celestial Engineering was the East Xia's department responsible for scientific and technological research and development, which included the research of transcendent powers. Since it was the Genetic Modification Technology Cooperation and Exchange Conference, it was definitely necessary for the elders of the Ministry of Heavenly Engineering to go over and negotiate. It was only after the Genetic Modification Technology Cooperation and Exchange Conference was over. When discussing the matter of technology introduction, East Xia was rejected by Shang Nong. This made the elder of the Ministry of Heavenly Works very surprised. He hurriedly inquired about the reason. The person in charge of Saint Nong's negotiations with him said with extreme arrogance, You, East Xia, haven't you always been against genetic modification? I don't think this technology is suitable for Eastern Xia. Such a reason did not satisfy the elder of the Ministry of Heavenly Works. Between countries, interests had always been the main focus. It was normal for them to attack each other while maintaining cooperation. This time, Sheng Nong convened the Genetic Modification Technology Exchange and Cooperation Conference with the purpose of promoting genetic modification technology and obtaining a large amount of benefits, while also firmly occupying the advantage in the research of transcendent powers. They had all taken the genetic modification technology and authorized it to other countries. There was cooperation with all the other hegemonic countries. It was unreasonable to not authorize East Xia's genetic modification technology simply because they had opposed Saint Farmer's genetic modification. There must be other reasons. Not having obtained the genetic modification technology, the elder of the Ministry of Heavenly Works didn't really care. Dongxia wasn't going to trip into this pit anyway. However, it was necessary to figure out why Sacred Farmer was specifically targeting Eastern Xia. Being targeted by a hegemonic country was a very bad sign that would affect Dongxia's position in the international arena and cause Dongxia to be ostracized. The elder of the Ministry of Heavenly Works secretly investigated and searched for connections, and finally asked for the truth from one of Shang Nong's officials. It turned out that the reason why Shang Nong targeted Dongxia was that Dali was behind it. Dali spent a huge amount of money to bribe the official in charge of the promotion of genetic modification technology of the Holy Farmer, to give Dongxia an eye drop, blocking the channels of Dongxia to obtain genetic modification technology. For Saint Farmer, East Xia was just a small country. Even if they authorized East Xia with genetic modification technology, they would not be able to obtain much benefit. East Xia had even sung the opposite of Saint Farmer. In front of Saint Nong, Dali was completely the fawning appearance of a little brother complimenting his big brother. Licked Saint Nong very comfortable. Compared to that, Dong Xia was very high-strung and disobedient. Now, Dali, the little brother, requested his big brother to cut off the cooperation with Dong Xia, and was also willing to give up a lot of benefits, and only looked up to Saint Nong. Saint Nong simply had no reason to refuse. Both can suppress suppress disobedient East Xia, but also can harvest a licking dog little brother. Why not? Thus, Saint Farmer simply agreed to Dali's request and removed Dongxia from the partners. It's actually Dali who's behind this. Damn it. No wonder that during the exchange conference, those few people from Dali were always whispering in our ears, provoking and causing trouble of all sorts. The elders of Eastern Xia were filled with righteous indignation. It was unthinkable that Dali was actually so vicious. It would rather pay a huge price, sell out its national dignity, and worship Saint Nong as its elder brother, but also suppress East Xia. What should we do now? Although we originally never wanted to implement genetic modification technology in the country, the existence of the divine dragon cannot be exposed yet, and the dragon blood infection program can only be implemented in secret. Right now, genetic modification technology is the only way for humans to master transcendent powers in the bright light of Blue Star, and we are unable to introduce this technology, and when the news is spread back to the country, it will surely trigger the discontent of the people, an elder said with worry. After Saint Farmer released the announcement of the genetic modification technology, people around the globe were looking forward to the fact that they too could use this technology and become a transcendent species. Within Eastern Xia, the number of people who were eagerly awaiting this was simply too many. If it was known that Eastern Xia had fallen out with Saint Farmer and was unable to introduce this technology, the people would definitely become dissatisfied with the Elder Council. At that time, it would definitely be a public opinion crisis. 
There would be a huge upheaval within Eastern Xia, and it was certain that Dali would definitely not let go of this opportunity, and would use the situation to drive public opinion and lead the people of Eastern Xia to condemn the Elder Council. We can only send the news back first, so that the Grand Elders and the others can discuss it and sit down for a good response. Another elder said helplessly, with Dali's meddling, Sacred Farmer was adamantly unwilling to sell the genetic modification technology to East Xia, and there was nothing they could do about it, and that was exactly what had happened. Along with the end of the genetic modification exchange and cooperation conference, the matter of Dongxia being kicked out of the partnership by Sacred Farmer spread back to Dongxia, instantly attracting the consternation of countless people. On the East Xia Blue Network, all sorts of comments questioning, condemning, and questioning the Elder Council came pouring out from all over the place. Sheng Nong refused to cooperate with East Xia, unwilling to provide East Xia with technical support for genetic modification. Why? We also want genetic modification. We also want to master transcendent power. What the hell is going on here? Please ask the Elder Council to give us a reasonable explanation. Ha ha ha. Haven't you Eastern Xia people always rejected genetic modification? Sheng Nong is respecting your wishes. Die laughing. It seems like Eastern Xia is the only one in the world that has been refused cooperation. Say no more. Brother Catch, I'm going to go declare my genetic modification quota. When I master transcendent power, I can have mercy and go to East Xia to make you guys grow some eyes. In Eastern Xia, the crowd was seething, and there were even dailies arching their fires in an unkind manner. This made the populace even more agitated. The people of Eastern Xia were actually very repulsed by genetic modification. But times are different nowadays. If it was the kind of genetic modification that was highly flawed in the past, people would definitely not be willing to accept it. But at the Genetic Modification Technology Cooperation and Exchange Conference, Sacred Farmer had sent out their modified transcendence. After a joint inspection by several national research teams, it was confirmed. That transcendent was in a very stable condition, without any demented insanity, genetic defects, and a series of other genetic modification problems. The body was very healthy. Saint Farmer's genetic modification technology was indeed very mature and possessed a leap forward. Looking at that Saint Farmer transcendent, he waved his hand to invoke the green-colored wild erisher, and his gentle grasp on the high hardness alloy that was comparable to diamond left deep scratches. How could everyone not be envious in their hearts? Moreover, in this era of the market realm descending, no one knew when those foreign beasts would invade the blue star. Possessing a strong strength was the only way to safeguard one's survival. Looking at other countries, the introduction of genetic modification technology, originally the same as their own ordinary people, may be able to obtain genetic modification a leap into the transcendent. Everyone was immediately unbalanced in their hearts. This move of Dali is really damaging. In the transcendent base, Sheenshur was eating melon online. Indeed it's underhanded. They're creating international conflicts in Eastern Xia and want to trigger chaos in Eastern Xia. Professor Tang and the others, their moods were not so wonderful. This melon was on their side. Does the Elder Council's side have any strategies to deal with it? Sheenshur asked curiously. Professor Tang said in a grave tone, Yes. We have decided to release some of the news and tell the people that East Xia also possesses a way to enable people to master transcendent powers, to stabilize the hearts of the people. The main reason why the people of Eastern Xia were so agitated was because of the imbalance. People from other countries had the opportunity to be able to master transcendent powers, but not East Xia. If East Xia also had a way to be able to master transcendent powers, then everyone would stop being so agitated. Although this would reveal some of the secrets of Eastern Xia, but as long as Qin Shi's existence wasn't leaked out, it wouldn't hurt. The Eastern Xia officials quickly stepped forward to speak and stabilize the people's minds, releasing the news that Eastern Xia had also researched the method of transcendent power mastery. Because of a certain country's covert obstruction, East Xia was unable to start cooperation with Shang Nong regarding genetic modification technology, for which we deeply regret. But please rest assured that the general public, we have already researched and developed our own transcendent power mastery method, and when the time is ripe, we will promote it to the general public. The official response surprised everyone for a moment. Other countries that were concerned about East Summer's public opinion were also slightly taken aback. Eastern Xia had actually researched the method of mastering transcendent power? How was this possible? They were all a bit disbelieving. How could it be so easy to research the method of mastering transcendent power? Putting aside the undercards that each country might be hiding, there was only one genetic modification technology so far. It's not like Eastern Xia is a great power in the field of transcendental research. The Dali official even unapologetically issued a taunt. East Xia really dares to brag. What do you think? You are the holy farmer? You even researched the method of mastering transcendent power. Please make a draft before you talk big. If you really have one, then show it. 
It was naturally impossible for Dong Xia to reveal the specific secrets. This made Dali even more convinced that Dong Xia was just bragging. Ha, Dong Xia is in a hurry, finding a random excuse to try to settle the hearts of the people. The Dali foreign ministry official sneered. This is a good opportunity to strike East Xia. We can't just let it go. Another official said. They quickly put out a new notice. We, Dali, have always loved our people as our children, and have spent a huge amount of money to introduce genetic modification technology, and are committed to letting each and every one of our nationals embark on the path of transcendent evolution. But anyone of Dali nationality can apply to take part in genetic modification. This notice triggered an even greater shock. As long as one is of Dali nationality, they can obtain genetic modification? If I change my nationality, will that also work? Someone anonymously asked under the official Dali speech. Of course it's possible. Only with Dali nationality, no matter if it will be now or later, there is a chance to participate in genetic modification. The Dali official replied. This move was clearly targeting Eastern Xia. Many East Xia people were moved. Although the Eastern Xia elder council stepped in to dispel the rumors and stabilize the people's hearts. However, no substantial proof had been produced and many people were questioning whether or not East Xia really possessed the method of mastering transcendent power. Moreover, even if East Summer had really researched such a method, could it be stronger than Shang Nong's genetic modification technology? Under such concerns, the number of people changing their nationality in Eastern Xia skyrocketed. This was especially true of some businessmen, tycoons, and certain foreign admiring nationals. For them, their own interests were the most important. Since East Xia couldn't give them what they wanted, they would go to a country that could give them what they wanted. This made the elder council helpless. They tried to persuade as much as they could. But unfortunately, these people were adamant about changing their nationality. Changing nationality was the freedom of the people. And Dongxia couldn't force them to stay. Dali is shaking the foundation of Dongxia. Xin Shi frowned while eating melon. The people were the foundation of a country. Without people, where is the country? Dali's series of maneuvers had indeed dealt a considerable blow to Eastern Xia. Just the number of businessmen and tycoons who had changed their nationality and transferred their properties during this period of time had caused a considerable impact on Dongxia's economy. There was even a massive loss of talent in various industries. In the transcendent base, countless warriors were filled with righteous indignation. The patriotic feelings of warriors were the strongest. Seeing so many people actually choosing a better nationality and betraying their country, they were all furious. Professor Tang and the rest of the research team, who were responsible for taking care of Qinshir, were all in a bad mood as well. Unexpectedly, they had just captured the Inferno team in the front foot and dealt a heavy blow to Dolly, and then Dolly gave them such a show in the back foot. Sheen sure was indifferent, and was even somewhat happy about it. Actually, thinking about it, this is also a good thing. Sheen sure's eyes twinkled as he said, Dolly helped us weed out so many people with questionable loyalties. And in the future, when we implement the dragon blood infection and teach the dragon clan secret methods, we won't need to worry about what we're taught. Of course, it was not possible for all of the Eastern Xia people who remained to be loyal and patriotic, but the percentage of people with wolf hearts and lungs would definitely be drastically reduced. Xin Shi had cooperated with Dongxia, wanting to make Dongxia a country where everyone was like a dragon. He didn't want what he had cultivated to be a bunch of white-eyed wolves. You have a point, Professor Tang, who was still feeling righteous indignation on the side, nodded thoughtfully when he heard Xin Shi's words. If one looked at it from this perspective, Dali was still considered to have done a good thing for Dongxia. It had removed a lot of trash for Dongxia. Our method of dragonization is much stronger than genetic modification technology. These people don't want it themselves. They have to go for some genetic modification. It's their loss. There will be a time for them to regret it in the future. A young researcher next to him said in relief. He was also furious. But after hearing Qin Shi's words, he immediately felt enlightened. His mood was instantly better. Dragonization which was the evolution of dragon blood infection, was the name Dong Xia had given to this method of mastering transcendent power. By the way, how is the dragonization of Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others going? Xin Shi asked towards Professor Tang. Professor Tang said, the experiment is going well. There is no adverse rejection reaction out of their bodies, and they will probably be able to complete their dragonization in three more days. Dragonization had no small risk. Previously, they had only conducted it on test animals and this was the first time it had been used on people. So the experimentation process was careful, and the speed would inevitably slow down. Plus, the more powerful the creature, the more resistant it was to dragon blood infection. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others were transcendents, and their resistance to dragon blood was naturally much stronger than ordinary experimental animals. This also caused their dragonization to be a little slower. Professor Tang predicted that in two or three more days, 
the dragonization experiment would be over. The genes in their bodies would evolve towards the dragons. Three days later, Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others, ended their dragonization experiment. The cells in their bodies were successfully infected by the dragon blood and produced dragonization. I feel like my power has doubled. Tong Jiao said. She raised her hand and made a fist, her white face filled with surprise. Dragonization was originally capable of enhancing a creature's physical quality. Dragon beasts such as the golden-eyed mouse and the green snake were much more powerful than ordinary animals, with a more vigorous life force. And after they went through the dragonization experiment, all of their body's indicators were significantly enhanced. Just the dragonization experiment alone had brought about such great benefits. The experiment, however, was merely a precondition for the entire method of dragonization. The real key to the method of dragonization lay in the fact that Qin Shi had driven them to practice the secret methods of the dragon race. This made Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the rest of them, look forward to it even more. Very well, all the other countries have begun genetic modification, and a number of transcendent species will soon emerge on the blue planet, so we can't lag behind. So we'll carry out the final step of the method of dragonization right away. Qin Shi hovered and swam in the air, and with a wave of his dragon claw, he brought Tong Jiao and Ying Di with him as they traveled towards the training grounds of the transcendent base. Arriving at the field, Qin Shi had Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the other divine dragon team members scatter around him and sit down. He, on the other hand, was perched in the center and began to operate the Tai Dragon spitting breath to swallow transcendent energy. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, Pang Mao and the others, sitting cross-legged, closed their eyes and carefully felt the changes in their bodies and surroundings. Soon, they sensed that there was a warm, Warm current in their bodies that emerged from their limbs and bones. This warm current was very weak, and it was only because they were transcendentals, with stronger perceptions than ordinary people, along with closing their eyes and gazing carefully to feel it, that they were able to notice it. If they were ordinary people, they would have directly ignored it. Along with the appearance of this warm current, the rhythm of their breathing followed suit and produced a faint change. Between the rising and falling of their chests, the rhythm was slowly approaching towards Qin Shi's breathing frequency. Qin Shi breathed and exhaled, running the Tai Dragon spitting breath while observing the physical changes of Tong Zhao, Ying Di and the others. His perception ability was much stronger, and he soon sensed the faint fluctuations of transcendent power emanating from Tong Zhao, Ying Di and the others. Transcendent power fluctuations have arisen so quickly? Qin Shi was somewhat surprised, when he had driven the green snake, dragon fish, and dragon rabbit, to perform the Tai Dragon spitting breath. It had taken them an entire week to master the slight Thai dragon spitting breath rhythm. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the others were learning a bit too fast. It seems that this is the difference between intelligent creatures and ordinary animals. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others, after all, are transcendents and possess advanced intelligence, knowing how to think, adjust, and learn, unlike those dragon beasts, which can only be passively influenced by me. Qin Shi was pondering in his heart. This was a good thing. The faster Tong Jiao and Ying Di mastered the dragon spit, the faster they evolved, and their strength growth would naturally follow. Now that Shang Nong had gone on a rampage to promote genetic modification technology, Dong Xia did not have the time to develop slowly. Although in his opinion, the genetic modification technology was highly flawed, and there were deep pits. In case the human genes were eroded by the genes of foreign beasts in the future, they would turn into incestuous monsters. However, it was undeniable that genetic modification technology also had a great advantage. That was that it was extremely crude and quick to see results. Anyone, as long as they could withstand the genetic modification, could instantly grasp transcendent power and turn into a transcendent species. It could be called a step to heaven, and relying on one's own evolution, the speed was definitely not as fast as the simple and crude transformation. However, with him around, this dilemma was not insurmountable. He was a divine dragon, and as long as he had enough energy, he could evolve very quickly. Right now, he possessed a combat power comparable to that of a lower level beast general, and if he absorbed a few more times of nuclear energy, he wouldn't be afraid to fight with a beast king. With him as the divine dragon, one dragon gets rich first and drives all the way. The future of Eastern Xia is bright. After an hour had passed, Qin Shi stopped cultivating. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the others opened their eyes, all of their faces showing surprise. They had already mastered part of the rhythm of the Thai dragon spitting breath, and could absorb the transcendent power wandering in the void. Professor Tang came over with a group of researchers and took out various instruments to examine them. Soon, the results came out. Professor Tang said in surprise, there is a faint fluctuation of transcendent power in your bodies, and along with your breathing, you are able to absorb transcendent power extremely slowly to improve your bodies. And although this amount is very small, 
you can already be considered a transcendent species by definition. The difference between ordinary species and transcendent species was simple. It depended on one, whether or not they could get rid of inefficient material changes and freely absorb and transform all kinds of energy. Ordinary species could only obtain energy through changes in matter. Transcendent species, on the other hand, directly from the matter and emptiness, extract and absorb all kinds of energy. The most powerful nuclear weapons of mankind all only stayed at the level of material transformation, generating energy through the transformation of matter, only because the quantity was too large. A qualitative change was produced, reaching the level of transcendental energy. Transcendental species on the operation of energy is simply a descending blow to the human race. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others, now that they could absorb the transcendental energy in the void, it meant that they had metamorphosed into a transcendental species from the biological definition. This was an extremely significant thing. Although they were able to absorb very little transcendent energy, they had only just completed their dragonization and had mastered a very rudimentary rhythm of dragon spitting. When they performed a few more dragon transformations and mastered a more complete Thai dragon spitting rhythm, the efficiency of absorbing transcendent energy would inevitably rise. At the same time, all over the globe, sensational transcendent evolution operations were launched. The genetic modification technology from Saint Farmer was put to use by various countries, spawning numerous transcendentals. Humanity's strength produced a leap forward. Accompanying this was the great exploitation of the market realm. The only difficulty countries had in exploring the market realm was that the number of transcendents was too small. The environment of the market realm was too complex, and the terrain was unfavorable to the armies of various countries. The mobility of modern weapons was again far inferior to that of the transcendents. Even if those heavy and hot weapons could threaten the alien beasts, the hit rate was a big problem. Genetic modification technology was implemented in various countries, and transcendents emerged in large numbers. The progress of the country's exploration of the market realm rapidly climbed. The foreign beasts in the market realm ushered in a disaster. Genetic modification technology was just like steam, gunpowder, electricity, and magnetism in the beginning. The emergence of steam and electricity pushed forward the development of technology and promoted changes in human culture and society. However, after a short period of rapid development, human science and technology had fallen into a state of near stagnation. Genetic modification technology has allowed mankind to once again usher in a surge in technology. This change was extremely astonishing. One day, humans still had to be careful in the middle of the market realm, avoiding those foreign beasts. The next day, it was already possible to whisk the foreign beasts around. The exploration and development of the market realm by various countries could be described as a great success. Humans are still really scary creatures. Sheen sure couldn't help but be alarmed as he logged onto the Blue Bonnet and looked at the Blue Bonnet news on the shortcuts coming out of various countries on their respective ruins realm raids. During this period of time, he had the feeling of being in a historical slideshow, watching the times rapidly flicker and rush by his side. The battle power of each country, driven by genetic modification technology, could be said to be changing rapidly. In just less than two months' time, the human battle power had turned upside down. Even the beast generals that had once made the countries fearful had been hunted down several times. Beast soldiers were even more numerous. With technological development keeping up, humanity had exploded with amazing potential. All the countries are feverishly developing the market realm. We can't lag behind either. We must start the market realm exploration operation as soon as possible. Otherwise we're bound to be left far behind by the other countries. In the transcendent base. Lu Yongzhou said in a deep voice, Xi Yinshur, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Professor Tang were all present. Not only that, the next dragonization plan will also require resource support from the market realm, Professor Tang added. During this period of time, other countries had launched genetic modification promotion programs, producing a large number of transcendents. Eastern Xia had likewise made considerable progress. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the other Divine Dragon team members had managed to master some of the rhythms of the Thai Dragon spitting breath with the help of Qin Shi. Their strength had increased several times. Of course, this alone was not enough to meet Dong Xia's expectations. Evolving on their own by absorbing the transcendent energy that was free in the void was not as fast as genetic modification. Thus, Professor Tang and the others had done multiple experiments and invested a large amount of resources in cultivation, confirming that the blood and flesh of foreign beasts, the transcendent power extracted from their blood, and so on, could assist them and accelerate their cultivation. Under Dong Xia's unrelenting support, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and their battle power had changed drastically. Nowadays, they all possessed the battle power to independently kill medium beast soldiers, and even if they encountered a superior beast soldier, they were still able to fight against it head-on. Compared to genetic modification, there was still a considerable gap. Genetic modification, 
the direct fusion of the genes of the beast generals. Ordinary people as long as they can withstand genetic modification, can immediately have the power to fight against the upper beast soldiers, and even face the lower beast generals can protect themselves. However, with genetic modification, the potential was basically limited to death by the fused genes. Unless one replaced the genes of a more powerful foreign beast, it would be difficult to make any progress. The method of dragonization, which could evolve on its own, had no limitations in this regard. Although the speed of evolution was slower, the upper limit was higher. Moreover, as long as the evolutionary resources provided kept up, in a short period of time, the evolutionary speed of Tong Zhao and Ying Di might not be much slower than genetic modification. Therefore, Dong Xia needed more resources. The resources on the Blue Planet could hardly provide them with help in transcendent evolution, and only the development of the market realm would allow them to evolve quickly, then immediately prepare to enter the market realm. After cultivating for so long, it's time for us to enter the market realm again, and even prepare a plan to attack the market realm and establish a market realm base, Xin Shi said with a wave of his dragon claw in a domineering manner. During this period of time, it wasn't just Tong Zhao, Ying Di, and the others who had made progress. Xin Shi had also absorbed nuclear energy once more, and his battle power had steadily reached the level of a beast general. The number of beast generals in the area of the market realm that Dong Xia was responsible for was very small and most of them were lower and middle level beast generals. He was fully equipped with the battle power to sweep away the foreign beasts within the market realm region that Dong Xia was responsible for. For the resources in the market realm, Qin Shi was also eager. After another nuclear energy absorption, he felt that the nuclear energy he was currently able to absorb had reached a saturation point. If he continued to absorb nuclear energy, I'm afraid that there was no way to gain as much progress as before. The reason for this was something Qin Shi guessed within himself. He was a divine dragon that could breathe thunder and spit fire, call the wind and rain, and mastered all sorts of abilities. The energy needed for growth was not just one fire attribute transcendent power either. Nuclear energy, on the other hand, was only the fire attribute transcendent energy. He had been absorbing nuclear energy, and from a growth perspective, it was a bit of a partial diet, leading to malnutrition. Next, it was necessary to absorb energy of other attributes in order to continue growing rapidly and transcendent energies of other attributes were not as easy to obtain as fire attribute transcendent energies. Fire attribute transcendent energy, Dong Xia could still cobble it together for him through nuclear reactions. As for thunder, wind, water, earth and other transcendent energies, Dong Xia could only scratch his head. Ordinary thunder and lightning energies could not reach the standard Qin Shi needed. Actually, I now have the strength to extract various transcendent energies such as thunder, water, and gold from a large amount of lightning water resources, and minerals, but slowly extracting them on my own is a bit slow in terms of efficiency, so it's better to go inside the ruins realm first to see if there's any ready-made ones. Qin Shi pondered in his mind, transcendent species all possess the ability to extract and transform transcendent energies, and as a divine dragon, he naturally would not be an exception. It was only that when he had just crossed over, as a young dragon, his strength was still too weak, he could only seek out Dong Xia for help. Nowadays, after a few nuclear energy absorptions, he was able to extract all kinds of transcendent energies through autonomous transformations and stand on his own two feet. However, with a country willing to fully support him and serve him, he wouldn't be foolish enough to be a lone wolf. Compared to his own pathetic and slow extraction and transformation of transcendent energies, wouldn't someone feeding him ready-made food smell good? Good. Regarding the preparation of the ruins realm base, I'll ask people to prepare it as soon as possible. Lu Yongzhao nodded solemnly. Once they were able to establish a base in the ruins realm, the benefits to Eastern Xia would be immeasurable. They could more easily and efficiently develop the resources of the market realm. Professor Tang, on the other hand, they left and went back to study the promotion of the method of dragonization. Dong Xia definitely wanted to promote the method of dragonization to all parts of the country. However, with such a large population in Eastern Xia, it was impossible for all of them to use Qin Shi's dragon blood. For one of his dragons, even if he bled every day, it wouldn't be enough for so many people to use it. Not to mention that Qin Shi couldn't be happy about it. The dragon blood he gave to the research base was all about being in a good mood and releasing a bit of waste blood to promote blood circulation. The metabolized waste blood was given to Professor Tang for research. Like Tong Zhao and Ying Di, Qin Shi was still able to send some fresh dragon blood to help them evolve. Everyone else, want to use dragon blood? Thinking of farts to eat? Prof. Tang had to find a way to see how he could research reagents that had the effect of infecting dragon blood. Qin Shi, along with Tong Zhao, Ying Di and the others, entered the market realm once again. Only this time, the situation was different. They were no longer being careful and acting alone. 
but instead, they were cooperating with a large-scale army, preparing for a raider war against the Ruins Realm. Outside the eastern Xia Ruin Realm passageway, rows and rows of large armies were assembling. Countless tanks and cannons drove over from the transcendent bases. Before today, eastern Xia simply didn't dare to send its army into the Ruins Realm in a big way. The inside of the Market Realm was too dangerous. There were alien beasts everywhere. The most the military could do was to use the cover of the Gundam Sparrow Flock to create a hidden place near the Spatial Passage. As for creating a military base on this side of the Ruins Realm and capturing territory, that could only be thought about. Now, along with Jin Shi's battle power evolving to the level of a beast general, Tang Jiao and Ying Di's strength had also changed drastically. Dong Xia did not say that it would push across the Market Realm, at least eliminating the foreign beasts near the Spatial Passageway, clearing the way for the construction of military bases and gradually developing the resources inside the market realm was no longer impossible. Xinxia led Tong Jiao, Ying Di, Pang Mao, and the other members of the Divine Dragons, rushing at the forefront. He was still in a state of stealth. The dragon body, which had already grown to 30 centimeters, had brilliant scales and armor, and rode the clouds to look far ahead. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, the two of you will work in groups and lead a team each, using this place as the center, sweeping and expelling the surrounding foreign beasts. Qin Shi instructed towards Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others. Originally, with their strength, they were unable to fight against the Fei Beasts on their own, and could only kill the inferior Fei Beasts and medium Fei Beasts with the cooperation of the army's heavy and hot weapons. But now, after the dragonization experiment and the cultivation of Dali in Eastern Xia, they already possessed the strength to kill the lower and middle class alien beasts on their own, combined with the army's heavy heat weapons. Even if they encountered a large-scale group of alien beasts, they possessed the strength to fight against them. Around the spatial passageway, there weren't two powerful alien beasts. With their strength, coupled with the army's cooperation, sweeping the surroundings wasn't a difficult task. Yes, Captain, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the others, nodded their heads with solemn faces, and in groups of two, they led a group of well-trained troops and drove their tanks forward in six directions. As for Qin Shi, he stayed in place to hold down the fort, guarding against some threats that might appear around him. Around the spatial passage, there weren't two powerful alien beasts. However, Dong Xia had decided to sweep the surroundings to prepare for the construction of the market realm base. So naturally, he had to eliminate all hidden dangers. Without mentioning anything else, the flock of Gundarks in the nearby mountains and forests was a not so small trouble. The Gang Finch was a group living inferior beast soldier. Individually one wasn't very strong, and it was also a vegetarian exotic beast. But with flocks of steel finches, all the upper class beast soldiers would have to look down on them when they encountered them. It is the beast general, angry with the flock of steel finches, accidentally surrounded, all have the possibility of falling. The eastern Xia army had previously looked at this very point, which was why they had established hiding places in the nearby mountain peaks, utilizing the flock of rigid finches to act as a barrier. However, now, when Dong Xia decided to raid the market realm and build a market realm base, the flocks of gunlarks that were originally used as a defense barrier by Dong Xia had instead turned into an obstacle. Once Dong Xia went on an infrastructure spree in the vicinity, it would inevitably attract the attention of the gundark flock and be attacked as an aggressor. My current strength should be enough to spread the dragon might to a 30 mile radius, deterring the surrounding foreign beasts. Qin Shi pondered in his mind. He stealthily stood up in the clouds, his golden dragon body standing up humanly, with his two dragon eyes standing tall looking around at the rigid sparrows that flew up from time to time in the mountains and forests. Suddenly, a dragon's might spread out from Qin Shi's body. It was as if the pressure came from the ancient floodplains, relentlessly suppressing it. The rigid finches in the mountains and forests, as well as insects of various colors, and other hidden exotics, instantly fell into a stupor. Qin Shi's life level was too high. The dragon's might was able to act as an instant deterrent to beast generals, let alone a group of inferior beast soldiers. Noticing the dragon's unbridled might sweeping across, the group of Gundarks shrank their wings and trembled like white rabbits seeing lions and tigers. Some of the less courageous sparrows were even so scared that they directly fell down from the trees. Not to mention the sparrows, even the surrounding East Xia warriors who were ready for duty were all startled by the sudden appearance of the dragon's might, and their bodies were covered with hair. Fortunately, they had long since learned from Lu Yongzhao that the military department had gotten hold of a secret weapon that could deter many foreign beasts allowing them to be mentally prepared. Qin Shi had also once stealthily released a burst of dragon might as a preview at the transcendent base, so everyone quickly came back to their senses after being shocked. The dragon might of the divine dragon. No matter how many times I've felt it, it's still so shocking. Inside the spatial channel, Lu Yongjiao was personally leading the troops, channeling all sorts of machines and equipment. 
And when he sensed the dragon Mike released by Chinchur, he couldn't help but feel solemn in his heart. Of course, more than anything else, it was a surprise. Originally, Dragon Mike could only be used as a piece of ability to deter other foreign beasts and create a time for sneak attacks for Chinchur. And now, as Chinchur's strength increased, the Dragon Mike was able to encompass a larger area and its role became greater. Utilizing Dragon Mike to deter low-level beast soldiers, it was entirely possible to subdue the beast soldiers without a fight. However, any beast soldiers that sensed the presence of the dragons might simply didn't dare to come over and encroach. They all thought that this place was occupied by a powerful foreign beast, and they all made a detour. Quickly, transport all the equipment and materials needed to build the market realm base over, and build the base up as soon as possible. Lu Yongzhao turned his head and commanded the team behind him that was responsible for escorting the equipment and materials. One by one, large trucks, transporting all sorts of equipment, steel bars, cement, alloys, and so on, entered the market realm, with the cooperation of the Divine Dragon team and the large-scale army. Inside the ruins realm, the obstacles that had originally constrained the construction of the base were all smoothly removed. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others, in cooperation with the army, expelled all the foreign beasts within a hundred miles of the neighborhood. Qinshur also released his dragon might and patrolled the surrounding area from time to time. Noticing the dragon might, as well as Qinshur's battle power at the beast general level, no foreign beasts dared to come looking for trouble at all. The construction of the market realm base in eastern Xiao went smoothly. Along with the construction of the market realm base, Dong Xia's development of the market realm had also been further strengthened. In the past, Dong Xia could only hunt and kill foreign beasts and occasionally pick some of the special plants produced inside the market realm. As for other resources such as minerals, there was no chance to develop them at all. Now, with the establishment of the market realm's base and the influx of large numbers of warriors, these resources were all released towards them. With an ample supply of resources, Eastern Xia had also cultivated more transcendence. In just two short months of work, Dong Xia had stabilized itself in the market realm, developing from being suppressed by the foreign beasts to the point where it could easily suppress them. Fully half of the market realm's area had fallen under the control of Dong Xia. However, just as the East Summer was flourishing, an accident occurred. On this day, at the border of the market realm area that East Xia and Dali were responsible for, the East Xia army encountered Dali's team of transcendence, and clashes erupted between the two. Damn it! Dali actually violated the market realm area we are responsible for once again. In the market realm base, Lu Yongzhao and a group of generals were discussing important matters when they suddenly received an urgent report of military intelligence, and were immediately shaken with rage. What? Dali is so bold. How dare they? The attending generals were equally shocked and furious, and they all opened their mouths to condemn. At the same time, everyone was puzzled. Why was Dali violating the area of the market realm that Dongxia was responsible for? It should be that Dali is eyeing the resources in the area we are responsible for, Lu Yongjia said in a deep voice. During this period of time, the countries were developing rapidly, along with the massive emergence of transcendence. Aside from those beast generals and beast kings, humans had already caught up with the fey beasts in terms of battle power. The progress of the country's raids on the market realm increased with each passing day. Other than those hegemonic countries and great powers, because of the large number of beast generals and even beast kings present in the market realm area they were responsible for, the other countries, almost all of them, had already completely conquered the market realm area they were responsible for. Along with the massive development of resources, transcendence emerged in greater numbers, and the countries whose strengths had swelled, their demand for resources had become even greater. Some countries with greater ambitions had already bared their fangs towards the market realm regions that neighboring countries were responsible for. Dali was undoubtedly one of them. Dali and Dongxia's market area were adjacent to each other, and since they didn't see eye to eye with each other, the first target of aggression that came to their mind was Dongxia. The competition for resources is between countries, eternal and immortal struggle theme. The senior management of Dongxia had long been expected, knowing that with the development of the market realm by various countries, there would be a day when such a situation would arise. It was just that they didn't expect that this day would come so early. Could it be that Dali has already finished developing the resources within the area they are responsible for? Some people were puzzled. According to their prediction, even if there was an outbreak of resource competition between various countries, it would only occur when the resources in the region they were responsible for were almost developed. And right now, it was still far from that date. Although the countries had captured quite a lot of market realm territories, it had only been half a year of the world, and it was the gold swallowing beast, which only went in and out, devouring all the time. That couldn't have consumed the resources inside the market realm so quickly. What's so strange about this, Dali has always had this greedy face. With their relationship with us, 
It's more than normal that they would do something like this, someone said with narrowed eyes. All right, Lu Yongjiao said loudly, stopping the discussion, no matter what the reason is, anyway, it's a fact that Dali is infringing on our Eastern Xia's interests. We must find a way to repel them. Hurry up and send people to support them. I'll convey this message to Shenlong and ask for his help to assist. Inside one of the research bases specially opened up for Qin Shi in the market realm base. Qin Shi was lying on a high platform made up of countless metal ores. He was absorbing the gold energy contained in these metal ores. After East Xia had captured the market realm territory and explored and developed its resources, it had managed to help him find ores that contained gold energy. These ores, which contained transcendent power, were extremely sturdy, and after being fused into various cold weapons, they were unimaginably sharp. When held in the hands of a transcendent, they could also increase transcendent power, allowing transcendents to utilize more powerful combat strength. This kind of attribute of transcendental energy was exactly what Qin Shi needed. Gold, wood, water, fire, earth, wind, thunder and so on, all kinds of attribute energies he needed. From ordinary metals, extracting gold energy was inefficient, and the amount of metal ore needed was too great. It was much better to draw the gold energy from the metal ores that were the specialty of these market realms. During this period of time, Qin Shi had been staying in the market realm, devouring the gold energy energy contained in these metal ores. All the metal ore deposits found in Eastern Xia were also supplied to him at the first opportunity. My guess was right. Absorbing nuclear energy all the time has caused me to have some nutritional imbalance. Continuing to absorb nuclear energy won't help my evolution much. I need to absorb energy of other attributes to make it work. Qin Shi lay on the pile of metal ore, his dragon body twisting, his body glittering with a dazzling golden color. Under the pile of huge resources, he had grown another inch. Now, his body had reached half a meter long. His dragon horns were even more beautiful and delicate, and his dragon scales were even broader and glossier, becoming more and more like the majesty of a true dragon of the ancient times. After obtaining enough gold energy, his battle power had also increased by several times, and now it had all reached the level of an upper beast general. And just like when he absorbed nuclear energy, he awakened the secret techniques of the Dragon Clan's Fire Dragon lineage such as Starburst Spit, Hell Spit, and Tai Dragon Spit. He awakened the secret techniques of the Golden Dragon lineage after absorbing enough Golden Energy, Golden Armor Shroud, Heaven Tearing Dragon Claw, and Golden Light Slash, Golden Armor Shroud, a means of defense that could catalyze Golden Energy to form a layer of Golden Armor on the surface of the body that was invulnerable to swords and spears, and water and fire. The Heaven Tearing Dragon Claw, was a battle technique of the dragon clan for fighting and killing, the dragon battle Xianuang, tearing the heaven and the earth, the golden light chopping strike, on the other hand, was a means of taking the energy of gold and condensing it into golden blades to chop down enemies, these golden dragon secret techniques greatly enriched Qin Shi's means of attack, the golden energy has absorbed enough, next, it's time to change to a different kind of energy, Qin Shi shook his body and climbed up, unfortunately, Within the area of the ruins realm that Dong Xia is responsible for, only ores rich in gold sexual energy have been found, and no other transcendent energy resources have been discovered. Qin Shi muttered to himself in his heart. Right at this moment, the blue web page jumped out and transmitted Lu Yangzhao's words. Shen Long, Dali has sent troops to invade the market realm area that our eastern Xia is responsible for. I've already sent Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others over to support them, but I'm afraid that they're not a match for the eastern Xia transcendents. Can you help go over and assist? Dali used genetic modification technology, directly implanting the genes of a beast general into a warrior's body, mastering the transcendent power of a beast general. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others, although they had made rapid progress during this period of time, nowadays, even if they were to face up to a superior beast soldier head-on, they would be able to fight it off. However, the probability was still that they couldn't defeat a transcendent implanted with the genes of a beast general. Whom? Dali has sent people to pick a fight again? All right, I'll go over and take a look. Qin Shi frowned. During this period of time, all countries were busy developing the market realm. Everyone didn't have the time to look for trouble from other countries. The pair of enemies, Dali and Eastern Xia, were both keeping peace in a very rare manner. Unexpectedly, Dali would actually take the initiative to break this peace. However, Dali's constant tawdry maneuvers compared to East Xia, they should be stealing joy if East Xia didn't go looking for trouble from them. It actually dared to take the initiative to stir up trouble. Qin Shi's gaze was icy cold. Dong Xia was his pooper scooper, serving him comfortably during this period of time. Dali was so ungrateful that she actually dared to bully even his poop shoveling officer. Didn't know that Dong Xia was under his cover? It just so happens that my divine power has come to fruition. I'd like to see who gave you the guts? Qin Shi sneered in a domineering manner. 
shook the golden dragon scales on his body, pranced into the clouds, transformed into a golden light, and flew towards the location given by Lu Yongzhao, the area where the market realm area in charge of Eastern Xia and Dali met. Two teams of people were facing each other. In Dali's team, several transcendents were surrounded by stars. The person at the head was a tall young man named Han Guangji, the second generation captain of the Inferno team that Dali had introduced after Jean Huanping. Captain, the Eastern Xia's transcendents are here. What should we do? Do we still have to continue into the market realm area that the Eastern Xia is responsible for? A Dali transcendent asked towards Han Guangji. If we continued deeper, I'm afraid it would trigger a conflict between Dali and East Xia. Of course, Han Guangji looked in the direction of the East Xia ruins realm with an arrogant face in his combat uniform. So what if an East Xia transcendent comes? Can he block us? East Xia was denied cooperation by Shang Nong and was unable to obtain genetic modification technology. Their transcendents, in front of us, are nothing? Some other Dali transcendents called out from the side. The words were filled with contempt and disdain for Eastern Xia. They had all been genetically modified and fused with the genes of the beast general. Each and every one of them, possessed the battle power to kill a superior beast soldier. The captain, Han Guangji, had even been vigorously cultivated. The Dali military ministry, specially spent a large price from the sacred farmer to purchase a copy of the genetic modification liquid of the medium beast general Thunder Lightning Falcon, and fused the genes of a medium beast general for him. Thunder Falcon has the ability to manipulate lightning, and very fast, is extremely difficult to deal with avian beasts. Avian fey beasts were able to fly, occupying the advantage of the sky, and were often more difficult to deal with than other fey beasts. Shang Nong all happened to find a thunder lightning falcon with injured wings and paid several transcendent casualties before killing it and obtaining the thunder lightning falcon's blood. Han Guangji, who had fused the thunder light falcon's genes, was not only able to harness violent thunder, but was also strangely fast, which meant that he was able to battle against the lower beast generals. Rejected by the sacred farmer, abandoned by the era of genetic modification, the backward eastern Xia, what was there to stop them? Keep moving forward, such a large piece of market realm territory, it's too wasteful to put it in the hands of eastern Xia, the backward eastern Xia is not qualified to develop it, it still needs our Dali's help, Han Guangji said with a wave of his hand, the large group continued to advance towards the area of the market realm that east Xia was responsible for, stop, right at this moment, a chorus came from the eastern Xia market realm area, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and Peng Mao arrived with their teams, Seeing the Dali team advancing towards the eastern Xia region, Ying Di immediately erupted into a furious shout, and a fierce sound wave shook out, as if a monster was roaring. Everyone in the Dali team, except for the transcendents of the Inferno team, had their hearts shaken. This is the area of the market realm under the responsibility of eastern Xia. You are not welcome. Leave this place immediately. Ying Di's lanky body, like an iron tower rushed in. A single step and jump was tens of meters, and he soon arrived in front of the Dali team blocking their way. Dali team stopped. Han Guangji looked at Ying Di, who was glaring angrily at them, and immediately smiled. An acquaintance, Ying Di, Pang Mao, and Tong Jiao. If I remember correctly, you guys should be called this, right? Speaking of which, you guys are still considered my seniors. Han Guangji walked to the front of Dali's team, his tone carrying a light-hearted color as he slightly raised his lower jaw to look at Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others, were the same batch of transcendents as the previous captain of the Inferno Demon team, Jean Huanping. He was selected by Dali to obtain the genetic modification up after Jean Huanping and the others were captured and lost by the Eastern Xia. Before obtaining the genetic modification, he was just an ordinary person. Transcendents like Jean Huanping and Ying Di were all existences that he needed to look up to, and now that he had obtained the genetic modification and fused the Thunderlight Falcon's genes, he had leapt to become a transcendent species able to rival the lower beast generals. On the contrary, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao and the others were left far behind him. A generation of newcomers filled his heart with complacency. Are we familiar with you? Hurry up and get out of Eastern Xia's territory. Ying Di's thick eyebrows stared coldly at Han Guangji, and he chided loudly and nonchalantly. A ray of unpleasant coldness flashed across Han Guangji's eyes, without waiting for him to get angry. Some other Dali transcendents beside him laughed coldly. Clasping their hands on their chests as they teasingly looked at Ying Di and provocatively said, If we don't leave, what can you do? Ridiculous. When did the unknown territory of the market realm become your eastern Xia's territory? Another Dali transcendent laughed. Tong Jiao's eyes narrowed slightly as he coldly drank. The area of the market realm that each country is responsible for was personally divided by the blue star consciousness. Do you want to question the blue star consciousness decision? Han Guangji's eyes stared, 
and his words were a bit of a put down. Of course we're not questioning Blue Star Consciousness decision. However, Blue Star Consciousness didn't say that we can't go explore the market realm area that other countries are responsible for. Blue Star Consciousness divided the area just to facilitate countries to explore the market realm, lest some countries don't think of themselves and go to mess with foreign beasts that can't be dealt with. Your Eastern Xia's strength isn't good. It hasn't completely taken down the market realm in such a long time. As neighbors, of course we have to come over and help out. This is also sharing the Blue Star Consciousness worries, Han Guangji said in a dignified manner. Tong Jiao held Blue Star Consciousness over him. Blue Star Consciousness was the mother of all Blue Star people. Everyone had to listen to their mother, so he didn't dare to question it, but it wasn't like he didn't have a way to deal with it. Each country had areas of the market realm that they were responsible for, but these areas were not the territories of each country. It was on the blue planet that territorial issues were broken up, let alone in the market realm. As long as he grasped the point of sharing the blue star consciousness's worries, developing the market realm, and enhancing humanity's battle power, he would not be afraid of the blue star consciousness blaming him crowning yourselves with so many reasons. In the end, it's not that you're not greedy enough and want to plunder our eastern Xia's resources. Tong Jiao's eyebrows contained fury, and he drank extremely shamelessly. Alas, I would have turned my heart to the bright moon. You, eastern Xia, have misunderstood us too deeply. However, I won't see eye to eye with you guys. If you're sensible, hurry up and get out of the way. Han Guangji laughed out loud. They were just greedy. So what? What could Dong Xia do to them? TSK? These people of Dali, their faces are still as ugly as ever. Wordlessly, a cloud drifted in and surfaced high in the sky. Qin Shi hid in the clouds and mist, taking in what was happening down below in an unobstructed view. When Han Guangji's predecessor, the leader of the Inferno team, Jin Huanping, infiltrated the market realm area in charge of Eastern Xia, he also looked down on Eastern Xia, as if Dali was the number one empire in the universe. As a result, this new group of Inferno team members were still the same. Proud arrogant, and arrogant, looking down on anyone with a little bit of strength. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the surrounding East Xiao warriors were all infuriated. Arrogant, it's not your turn to be arrogant on East Xiao's territory. Ying Di's anger flared as he stepped forward to stare at Han Guangji, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others, all followed suit, their muscles tensed and ready for battle. Qin Shi hovered in the clouds and mist, watching the scene with interest, not immediately making a move. He wanted to see how Wing Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, were going to respond to this matter. The great divine dragon could not factually do it himself. Within these few Dali transcendents, there was only one Han Guangji whose strength was okay. The others were just SOSO. Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, if they couldn't even deal with this kind of goods, it would be too much of a waste of his cultivation. Then let's see if you guys, can you block us? A disdainful sneer appeared on Han Guangji's face. Jin Changxiang, you go and weigh their strength. Han Guangji stood there in a high and cold manner, as if he didn't care to fight with Ying Di and the others, feeling that it was out of style, and looked over towards a dark inferno team member next to him, shaking his head, signaling for him to step in. Jin Changsheng hemmed and hawed and sneered, stretching out his hands, cupping his hand bones and craning his neck as he walked towards Ying Di in an unsympathetic manner. To deal with these guys, it really doesn't need you captain to make a move. Just let me do it. Jin Changsheng's eyes stared at Ying Di. A light golden flame rose from his body as he took a step towards Ying Di and rushed towards them, his speed getting faster and faster. He was fused with the genes of the beast General Inferno Light Tiger. As he ran, the flames on his body became more and more intense, even vaguely forming a beast that was covered in burning fire, shaped like a giant tiger with a fierce aura. Ying Di furrowed his brows and looked at Jin Changsheng, who was rushing towards them with a grave expression on his face. On the side, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others, wanted to make a move to help. Although Han Guangji and Jin Changxian looked arrogant and irritating, however, it was undeniable that they were indeed very strong. It was not the first time that Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and Pang Mao, had seen the transcendent power of the Yen Guanghu, when they had sneaked into the eastern Xia market realm region and were captured by Qin Shi, Kim Wanpiong, Park Yuki, and the other Dili transcendents were fused with the genes of the Yen Guang tiger. Every one of them had the battle power to independently resist a superior beast soldier. This Kim Changxian was no weaker than Kim Huangping. Just let me do it. Ying Di took a deep breath and reached out to stop them. This time was different from the past. Although they hadn't obtained genetic modification, they had undergone dragonization and mastered the secret methods of the dragon race, and their battle strength wasn't weaker than that of a top-grade beast soldier. If it was Han Guangji himself, Ying Di really didn't have the confidence to resist. But just one Jin Changxian, wanting to sweep through Eastern Xia, 
That would be too arrogant. Do you really think we have no one in Eastern Xia? Ying Di let out a fierce laugh. His sturdy body that was as strong as a bear slightly bent, and the whole person rushed out like a cannonball, ruthlessly colliding with Jin Changxiang, looking for death. Jin Changxiang laughed coldly, urging the flames of the Yan Guang tiger to coalesce into a ball, enveloping towards Ying Di, a waste of an arrow abandoned. Backward small country, also dares to fight him hard. He really doesn't know how to die. Facing the light golden flames that shrouded his head, Ying Di puffed out his chest, took a deep breath and exhaled. His muscles bulged up, and an extremely violent energy surged out of his body, transforming into a pitch black airflow, converging on his fist, and swung it forward. Like a raging storm, a dozen or so punches were swung out in an instant. The violent black airflow, driven by the fist, tore apart the light golden flames that enveloped it, just like gauze. And then, the remaining momentum was unabated as it rushed towards Jin Changxiang. Not bad. After the dragonization cultivation, this kind of power developed by Ying Di is very suitable for him. Xin Shi commented as he looked at the exploding Ying Di. Dragonization cultivation was an autonomous evolution by absorbing transcendent power. Although the genes were infected by dragon blood and would evolve towards the dragon race in the general direction. But what exactly it would evolve into? That was hard to say. Just the dragon race alone. If subdivided, there were fire dragons, gold dragons, water dragons, ice dragons, thunder dragons, wood dragons, and other differences. The types of creatures that evolved towards the dragon race were even more complicated. The dragon has nine sons, each different. Nine is actually a generalized term, talking about the thousands of different kinds of dragon descendants. Each one evolved and evolved a transcendent power that was uniquely their own. What Ing D had evolved was a high temperature airstream full of explosive attributes and extremely lethal. What? Jin Changxiang's eyes widened in shock. His flames were actually torn apart by Ying Di. This was a transcendent power from the Inferno Light Tiger. Not an ordinary flame that not only possessed high temperature, but also had attributes such as burning and bursting. Ordinary objects that were touched would immediately be burned to ashes. Weren't these transcendents from Eastern Xia not genetically modified? How could they possibly block his attack and still blast his flames apart? The eyes of Han Guangji and the other Inferno members in the distance also froze, startled by this scene. A transcendent from Eastern Xia has actually mastered transcendent power as well? Han Guangji spoke in a deep voice. And then, a look of sudden realization appeared on his face, with mockery in his eyes. He looked at Ying Di and said, I think I know the reason. Although East Xia was kicked out of the cooperation team by Shang Nong, they must have been unwilling to do so, and looked for other channels to purchase genetic modification technology to secretly cultivate transcendence. Ha, Dongxia talks against genetic modification, but their body is still very honest. But if that's the case, then there's no need to worry. The technology that East Xia purchased from Black Channels, where it's comparable to our genuine version. The other Inferno team members heard this and all felt that it made sense, and immediately put their hearts down. Shang Nong cooperated with various countries on genetic modification technology, but not everyone was qualified to enjoy genetic modification. Currently, the countries were still mainly using genetic modification applying it to the military, to enhance the strength of the warriors, and to facilitate better development of the ruins realm. This was difficult for those rich people with incredible power and wealth, and those who aspired to master transcendent power, trying to use it to improve their bodies and regain their youthful vigor and other purposes. They were trying to find ways to find channels, wanting to obtain genetic modification technology. When there is a market, there are channels. When the number of people in demand reached a certain level, and the benefits were large enough, some people were desperate enough to leak out the genetic modification technology and genetic modification fluid. Of course, these technologies and genetic modification liquids that were leaked out basically had no small flaws, and were even obsolete goods. Dong Xia, needless to say, was definitely using these trashy goods. How could they compare to the genuine technology they had spent a large amount of money on and purchased from Shang Nong? Jin Changxiang, who was facing Ying Di's stormy blows, also calmed down and thought of this layer. At once, his gaze towards Ying Di took on a lofty sense of superiority. I didn't expect that you guys have actually undergone genetic modification as well. However, what you are using is just an inferior version of a fake, trying to fight me. Ha ha ha, Jin Changxiang laughed out loud, once again urging the transcendent power of the Inferno Light Tiger, his body's light golden flames burning furiously as he killed towards Ying Di. A more intense battle erupted, facing Jin Changxiang who came charging in with a cold smile. Ying Di's response was very wild. He had always been nicknamed Stormfist in the Transcendent Base, meaning, he fought very wildly and roughly. His offense was the same as a raging storm, as if a monster was madly destroying. After practicing the method of dragon transformation and evolving a transcendent power that was uniquely his own, 
he was even more on this path, running straight all the way without looking back. The high temperature black airflow on his body filled up, like a raging fire, driving his sturdy and strong body, pressing towards Jin Changxiang, rapid and violent punches, a second swung dozens of times, in the air with a trail of residual shadow, toward Jin Changxiang's body of the various vitals bombarded over, Jin Changxiang urged the light golden flame to surround the surface of his body, a cold and cruel smile appeared on his dark face as he swung his fist to counterattack. After genetic modification, he possessed a combat strength comparable to that of a top-grade beast soldier, and his physical quality was far beyond that of an ordinary person. Even if he utilized cold weapons made from transcendent materials, he was able to use his physical body to resist them. It could be said that it was completely a humanoid beast, who would be afraid of competing in close combat. Although he didn't know what alien beast's Jin Zing Di was using, the transcendent power he had mastered after the transformation was still decent enough to fight against his light golden flames, but no matter what, an inferior product was an inferior product. The genes he used, from the inferior beast General Inferno Light Tiger, were not something that could be compared to any cat or dog. However, the result did not develop as Jin Changsheng thought. He thought that Ying Di was using an inferior version of genetic modification, and that he was bound to lose when facing himself, the genuine version. However, what Ying Di and the others had carried out was dragonization cultivation, it had nothing to do with genetic modification. Originally, Ying Di's combat power was actually still a little bit different from Jin Changsheng. Dragonization cultivation has more potential and a higher ceiling, but they have only been cultivating for a short time, and naturally, the improvement in strength is not as fast as directly fusing the genes of foreign beasts. However, Jin Changsheng was too proud, pride made people fall behind, especially when it came to fighting. A single slip of the tongue could cause the situation to reverse in an instant. Ying Di's battle power had similarly reached the level of a superior beast soldier, even if there was still a slight gap compared to him, but the gap was not so big that it was impossible to cross. Jin Changshan looked down on Ying Di, and with no one in sight, he thought he was winning, and faced Ying Di with a posture of teasing the prey. Ying Di's heart raged while realizing that this was a good opportunity, not giving Jin Changshan a chance to recognize himself, and frantically pounded. Instantly, Jin Changxiang was caught in the middle of Ying Di's furious attack, and the light golden flames on his body were torn apart layer by layer. By the time he realized that something was wrong and wanted to adjust his mindset to fight Ying Di seriously, it was already too late. Under Ying Di's furious attack, he was like a poor little grass in a storm, and could only be destroyed by the storm. Bang! Ying Di's casserole-sized fist, entrapped with bursting high-temperature airflow, broke through the protection of light golden flame in one fell swoop, ruthlessly smashed in Jin Changxiang's chest smashed him backwards flying out, unable to control himself in mid-air, gastric juice saliva spewed chaotically, fell on the ground like a dead dog, rolled his white eyes and arched his back, shrunk there twitching, and he couldn't get up in half a day, what, Han Guangji and the rest of the Inferno Demon team members eyes glazed over, disbelief showing on their faces, Ying Di's attack was too furious, the battle ended too quickly, before they could even react, Jin Changxiang was defeated, damn it, Seeing Jin Changxiang's miserable appearance like a dead dog, the many members of the Yen Demon team were shocked and angry. Some ran towards Jin Changxiang and helped him up, while the others rushed towards Ying Di in a murderous rage, wanting to avenge Jin Changxiang. Each one of them was transformed using the genes of the Inferno Light Tiger, and a light golden flame rose up on their bodies, as if there was a group of Inferno Light Tigers roaring and charging over. The aura was noisy and wild. On the side of the Eastern Xia team, the ordinary warriors around them who were responsible for operating the heavy heat weapons to assist them were all rushed back. What? You can't beat them in single combat, so you want a group fight? Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others had stern eyes, and they were naturally not willing to show weakness as they stepped forward, with the same powerful aura flowing out of their bodies, disliking them without fear. A great chaotic battle erupted. Han Guangji didn't make a move. Instead, he had a sullen face as he watched the others make their moves. He was the captain of the Inferno team, using the genetic modification of the intermediate beast General Thunderlight Falcon, and his battle power was comparable to that of a strong lower beast general. Facing this group of Eastern Xia transcendents who had been abandoned by the times and were lagging behind, it would be too humiliating if all of them needed him to personally deal with them. Only, the outcome of the battle failed to satisfy Han Guangji. The many members of the Inferno team had undergone the genetic modification of the Inferno Tiger, grasping some of the Inferno Tiger's transcendent power and one by one, their battle power was able to compare to that of a top-grade beast soldier. However, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the other Divine Dragon team members, their battle power was actually not much weaker than theirs. Moreover, the transcendent powers possessed in their bodies were even more diverse, 
The Inferno Demon team members wanted to avenge Jin Changxiong and charged over with murderous vigor, only to be blocked. This made them hold their anger in their hearts, but they had nowhere to vent it. Their emotions became even more agitated, and they fought at an even greater disadvantage. Watching this scene, Han Guangji's face was as gloomy as water. Damn, this group of people from Eastern Xia, from which channel did they buy the genetic modification technology and carry out a genetic modification that is actually no worse than the genuine version we purchased from Sacred Farmer? Han Guangji growled in a low voice, his narrow eyes incomparably beady. Logically speaking, it was only right that Dongxia, having been kicked out of the cooperation team of genetic modification technology by Saint Farmer, should have been completely abandoned by this era, reduced to the barbarians of the old era, and completely surpassed by Dali. However, right now, this group of transcendents from Eastern Xia's battle power was no weaker than Dali's transcendence. This caused the sense of superiority he had been maintaining to be strongly impacted. Finally, Han Guangji couldn't help himself. As the battle progressed, the conceited Inferno players failed to suppress Tong Jiao and Pang Mao with their absolute strength. Their emotions were agitated, and the battle was even more broken. After a while, they actually fell into the wind. If this continued, the Yen Devil team was afraid that they would be suppressed by Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others. Dali's Yen Devil team was actually being pressed by the East Xia people. It was really too humiliating. Han Guangji couldn't accept such an outcome. He stepped forward, and blazing electric light surged from his body, transforming into a thunderbolt that slashed towards Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others. The blazing electric light transformed into a power grid that enveloped the surrounding hundreds of meters. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others hastily urged the transcendent powers on their bodies to resist and retreated backward. The Inferno Demon team members who were suppressed by them also retreated back one by one with gray heads, their faces carrying a depressed, angry, and unwilling look as they looked towards Han Guangji, who had walked over, and stifled their grievances as they called out, Captain, let's, you guys back off. Han Guangji droned coldly, not even looking at them, staring at Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others with gloomy eyes. He wanted to personally crush this group of Eastern Xia people. Very well, you East Xia are really surprising. You've all been removed from the cooperation team by Saint Farmer. And you're actually still able to find a way to get a genetic modification. But, in front of us, your genetic modifications are all trash. I'll let you all open your eyes and see what the real genetic modification is. Han Guangji puffed out his chest and shrunk his belly, his gaze sweeping over Ying Di, Tong Jiao, Pang Mao, and the others with a lofty scrutiny. Intent on showing off his strength, he raised his right hand high toward the sky and shook it. Immediately, a burst of blazing electricity emerged from above him and converged on his right hand, forming what looked like a lightning lance. The destructive power drove the surrounding air to flow at a high speed, forming a raging hurricane that swept towards the surroundings. It's the transcendent power of the Thunder Lightning Falcon, harnessing lightning attacks that are not only powerful, but also very fast, within a distance of hundreds of meters. Once locked, it's basically impossible to escape. When the Inferno Demon team members behind Han Guangji saw this, their faces immediately showed excitement and envy. The power of lightning was an extremely powerful one among the various transcendent powers. Han Guangji, who had fused the Thunder Falcon's genes, was extremely powerful in battle, and one could hang them all. This group of Eastern Xia transcendents were dead. When Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others saw this, their faces immediately revealed a look of gravity. Very strong. Han Guangji was worthy of being the captain of the Inferno team, and his strength was much stronger than Jin Shangxiang's. This kind of power made it as if they were facing a real beast general. They didn't have the confidence to fight against it. Everyone be careful, Ying Di said in a deep voice, his muscles tensed up, ready for battle. Although they were no match for Han Guangji, it was impossible for them to just admit defeat and flee. Eastern Xia's territory would not allow others to spread their wildness, even if it required giving their lives to defend it. Just then, Xin Shi's voice rang in their ears. Leave this person to me. Xin Shi remained invisible in the clouds and mist, looking at Han Guangji who was pretending to be on the ground. It was no problem to leave miscellaneous soldiers like Jin Shangxiang to Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others to deal with. However, Han Guangji had fused the genes of a mid-level beast general and possessed a combat power comparable to that of a lower-level beast general. Not something they could deal with. Letting them deal with it again would be asking them to die. It's the captain. The captain has finally come. Ying Di and Tong Jiao's crowd, their faces were joyful. When Qin Shi arrived, then Han Guangji would not be enough to worry about. They had immense trust in Qin Shi's strength. Han Guangji didn't know that he was being targeted by a dragon. He held his lightning lance in his hand, and his eyes were like a hunter as he scanned over Ying Di and Tong Jiao's crowd, as if he was choosing the first target to deal with. 
A playful look appeared on his face. Fear it. Struggle. Eastern Xia's scum. In front of him, this group of Eastern Xia transcendents only had the chance to prostrate themselves on the ground and wail. However, he did not see a look of shock and panic on the faces of Tong Zhao and Ying Di's crowd. On the contrary, Tong Zhao, Ying Di, and the rest of them, had a relieved expression on their faces, as if they were disdainful of his flaunting threats. Even, there was a look of watching the show in their eyes. Han Guangji's complacent face instantly sank, becoming even uglier than it had been a moment ago. What kind of look was this? This group of Eastern Xia pigs, dead to the world, actually dared to face him with this stance. Not pretending to be a pussy filled his heart with depressed anger. Looking for death. Let's start with you first. Han Guangji's gloomy gaze swept a few times and locked onto Tong Jiao. Tong Jiao was the only female amongst the transcendents in Eastern Xia, so she was naturally more noticeable. It was assumed that amongst the transcendents of Eastern Xia, she was also a very popular one. One that was taken care of by the crowd. Letting this group of Dongxia pigs, watching the sister they usually doted on and took care of, wither away before their eyes, the expressions on their faces would definitely be interesting. The corners of Han Guangji's mouth pulled up, a perverted, sinister smile appearing on his face as he gripped the lightning lance in his right hand, aiming it at Tong Jiao and throwing it with vigor. The blazing electric light instantly transformed from his hand, into a flying lance that shot swiftly towards Tong Jiao. Tong Jiao's pretty face filled with Ying Qi revealed a trace of shock and his body couldn't help but shrink a little. Although he knew that Qin Shi was right next to him, he definitely wouldn't sit idly by. However, the speed of the lightning lance was too fast, and the electric light reflected in her eyes, giving her the illusion of death that there was no escape, and that she would be penetrated in the blink of an eye. The surrounding Inferno Demon team members all had vindictive cold smiles on their faces, their gazes following the lightning lance as they converged over, ready to enjoy the miserable end of Ying Di and Tong Zhao's crowd. Right at this moment, a golden lightning bolt fell in the air, clashing with the lightning lance at a much faster speed, cancelling out the lightning lance. Immediately afterward, boom, the loud roar of lightning striking through the air before it crushed towards the surroundings like a wheel. Who? Captain. If you were a little bit later, I thought I was going to die. Tong Jiao patted his chest and exhaled a mouthful of turbid air, his face showing an expression of life after a robbery, looking at Qin Shi who appeared on his shoulder, his face showing an expression of life after a robbery making a joke to ease his mood. The golden lightning just now was naturally sent by Qin Shi. He had long been prepared for support. Seeing Han Guangji's face full of malice and a disgusting smile, knowing that he had moved to kill, he immediately flew down and made a timely move to stop him. Don't worry, with me here, I won't let anything happen to you guys. Have some faith in me. Qin Shi opened his mouth and said, harnessing the clouds and perched on Tong Jiao's shoulders, his gaze cold as he looked at Han Guangji. Want to take Tong Jiao? Think he doesn't exist? He usually went on missions with Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the rest of them, all coiled on Tong Jiao's shoulders. Tong Jiao was his dragon mount. Han Guangji, he actually wanted to hurt his mount. Bold ah. At this moment, Han Guangji was a bit confused. He wanted to shoot Tong Jiao with his lightning lance and slowly abuse Ying Di and the others when the golden lightning that suddenly appeared caught him off guard. What happened? How did a bolt from the blue suddenly happen? and it was actually so coincidental that it blasted apart the lightning lance he had projected? The surrounding Inferno Demon players were also confused. Qin Shi had performed Tong Ying Diao miss to hide his figure, and only Ying Di and Tong Jiao were able to contact him through the blue net, so everyone couldn't see his existence. Even his breath couldn't be sensed. In the eyes of Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, the golden lightning just now was indeed a thunderbolt from the clear sky, and it wasn't that this group of Eastern Xia transcendents had used any secret means, nor was it that there were other people or exotic beasts targeting them. This group of East Xia people were so lucky that lightning actually happened to fall down and blocked a calamity for them? The Inferno team's crowd felt bad luck all of a sudden. Damn it! Han Guangji couldn't help but break into a rage. His face was darker and darker. Failing to pretend to be a bully and being obstructed even when he wanted to take on Tong Jiao caused the anger in his heart to skyrocket to the extreme. His lungs on the verge of exploding. Die, death to all of you. Han Guangji's face was livid as he waved his hands in the air, grasping wildly and condensing a lightning lance that he threw at Ying Di and Tong Jiao without a care in the world, venting his anger to the fullest. Today was really a bad day for everything. He had to vent and ruthlessly crush this group of Eastern Xia transcendents, otherwise his thoughts would not be able to get through. Instantly, countless lightning bolts traced brilliant traces in the air, raining light towards Ying Di and Tong Jiao's crowd. Just now, a lightning bolt fell down and blocked a calamity for you guys. I'd like to see how much more luck you guys have left to use? Is it hard to believe that there will be a second or third bolt of lightning to block the disaster for you guys? Jin Changxiang, supported by his team members, 
stared at Ying Di with spiteful eyes. He was beaten into a dead dog by Ying Di under his conceited carelessness, so it could be said that he had lost all his face and was only now getting his breath back. The hatred towards Ying Di in his heart could hardly be washed away by pouring out the waters of the five lakes. A cold smile appeared in Qin Shi's eyes. Mastering thunder and lightning. Very strong, isn't it? Qin Shi opened his mouth and once again spat out a lightning bolt, slashing towards Han Guangji. Controlling lightning, he could do it as well. Although he had only mastered the secret methods of the fire dragon and the golden dragon now, and his ability to master flames and metals had been further developed, his other abilities were increasing in power along with his strength. Even without mastering the relevant dragon secret techniques, it was enough to hang any creature below the same rank. Even some foreign beasts that were famous for their lightning control talent might not master lightning that was stronger than his dragon lightning. For example, the thunder lightning falcon, the source of the genes used for Han Guangji's genetic modification. Boom! Golden lightning reappeared, even more brilliant and dazzling than earlier, forming a grid that once again blocked the lightning lance projected by Han Guangji. The two different lightning forces collided in the air, erupting in a burst of brilliant light. The Inferno Demon team members all went numb especially Jin Changxiang who had just opened his mouth. He was just now taunting that Ying Di and the others could dodge the first day but not the fifteenth. Just now, there was a bolt of lightning that blocked Han Guangji's lightning lance. It was just Ying Di and the others being lucky. Could it be that their luck could continue to be this good all the time? As a result, just as the words were said, there was really another golden lightning bolt that appeared. It was too much of a slap in the face. Han Guangji's eyes widened as he stared incredulously at the golden grid that appeared in the air. No! This isn't normal lightning. What is it? Han Guangji shouted. As the captain of the Inferno team, he still had a bit of skill and saw that something was wrong. Thunderbolts in the clear sky were not an incomprehensible phenomenon. Thunderbolts were caused by electrical discharges. And as long as there were two clouds with dissimilar charges and an electrical neutralization occurred, there would be thunderbolts. So sometimes, there are strong convective clouds in a clear sky that are electrically neutralized, resulting in thunderbolts. Certain high-energy rays traveling through the atmosphere can also trigger discharges. The problem is that this is not high altitude. Moreover, the probability of thunderstorms is very low, and the discharges are rapid and short-lived. There was no reason for clear sky thunderbolts to occur one after another. It was even more unlikely to produce such grid-like lightning. The unusual situation caused Han Guangji to calm down slightly, his face showing vigilance. What is it? It's your dragon master. Xin Shi swung his dragon body leaving Tong Jiao's shoulders and soaring high into the sky, looking down at Han Guangji. With that, he opened his mouth and let out a vicious dragon roar. Ow dash! The loud and clear sound wave from the dragon clan, carrying the dragon's might, instantly descended. Just now, spewing out thunder and lightning was just to see Han Guangji's arrogance and thwart him. Now was the time to get real. The fierce dragon's roar swept indiscriminately against Han Guangji and the Yin Demon team behind him. The Dali team, Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, as well as the Dali team, all had terrified expressions on their faces. What was this thing? It was the first time they had enjoyed the true dragon mighty pressure. With Qin Shi's pressure, even a beast king, or even an earthly scourge or heavenly tribulation level foreign beast, might be affected. The mighty pressure of a foreign beast bloodline level was not limited by strength. It was only that Qin Shi was not strong enough to be able to shock a foreign beast that was stronger than him for a limited period of time. That was why Qin Shi used the dragon might as a weapon to create sneak attack opportunities most of the time. However, when his strength increased, the dragon might's deterrent effect on foreign beasts weaker than Qin Shi increased many times. The amount of time it was able to deter became much longer as well. If the difference in strength was too great, Qin Shi just used his dragon might to suppress them, making it impossible for them to resist and lead them to their deaths, which wasn't even a problem. This group of Inferno Devil players, naturally unable to resist Qin Shi's dragon might, whether it was their own genes or the fused fey beast genes, they were all in a frenzy of fear. Those ordinary Dali warriors were even scared shitless, rolling their eyes and fainting on the ground. This kind of aura, is it an upper level beast general? Or a beast king? Han Guangji's face was terrified and his body was cold. The thunder life falcon gene in his body was in a frenzy of fear, reminding him to hurry up and escape, the farther away the better. The thunder light falcon was a median beast general. How strong was an existence that could make the thunder light falcon's gene? subconsciously fearful like this? Even if it was an upper-level beast general or beast king, was it that terrifying? Han Guangji was skeptical in his heart, but an even more powerful existence. He didn't even dare to imagine. That was too desperate. How could there be such a powerful beast here? Where is it? Han Guangji held back the fear in his heart and raised his head to look around, trying to find any trace of Qin Shi. 
The most powerful foreign beasts in the market realm area that Dongxia and Dali were responsible for were only at the level of a medium beast general. So how could a foreign beast with such a terrifying aura suddenly appear? Could it be that foreign beasts from other places were passing through here? Han Guangji made a wild guess in his heart. The market realm area that each country is responsible for is actually connected, and is in the same market realm. It was only because the blue star took into account the strength of each country that it divided different areas for everyone, and countries with weak strengths were responsible for areas where the number of powerful fey beasts would be relatively small. However, fey beasts would be active, and if there were powerful fey beasts that happened to pass through here, it wasn't impossible. Soon, Han Guangji spotted the trace of this foreign beast. Wordlessly, high in the sky, a tumbling cloud appeared. Within it, a huge beast of enormous size was soaring, with golden lightning surrounding it. The giant beast was towering over him, casting shadows like a heavy mountain that pressed down on Han Guangji's heart, making him gasp for air. Hiss, it's a foreign beast, what a terrifying aura. Hurry and retreat. Ying Di and Tong Jiao's eyes widened as they cried out in a loud and urgent manner leading the Eastern Xia's team back towards the rear. If Han Guangji was still in the mood to observe, he would have realized that their mouths were screaming nervously, but each one of them had a smile on the corner of their mouths, and they didn't take this suddenly appearing giant beast to heart at all. This giant beast, naturally, was Qin Shi. He did not show his true body. Although the great divine dragon was domineering and majestic, he was still a child. Pretending to be a behemoth was much more oppressive. It was also possible to pour dirty water on the beast, Saving Dali from finding another excuse to target Eastern Xia, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, they, knowing that the giant beast is a disguise of Qin Shi, naturally will not be afraid. They screamed in terror and led the retreat of the team in a very pompous manner. Unfortunately, Han Guangji and the surrounding Inferno Devil team members were so dumbfounded by the dragon's might that they didn't even bother to pay attention to them. Tong Jiao also called out in a very punishing manner. This foreign beast also possesses the ability of thunder and lightning. It seems that it was attracted by Dali's Inferno team. Let's retreat and not be affected by them. Obviously, the fact that Han Guangji had just tried to take her on made her nagging, and she deliberately said this to disgust Han Guangji. The crowd of the Inferno Demon team was still shocked in their hearts, not knowing why such a terrifying beast had appeared. After hearing Tong Jiao's words, they immediately had a feeling of sudden realization. Han Guangji's lightning control ability was powerful and had a very long range of influence. This foreign beast, who didn't pay attention to anyone, specialized in finding Han Guangji's fault. As soon as Han Guangji attacked, the foreign beast spewed lightning to block it. It seemed to have truly been attracted to Han Guangji. For a time, they were all a little depressed in their hearts, wanting to vomit blood. The gazes they looked at Han Guangji couldn't help but take on a hint of resentment. If that was really the case, then it really was a case of being struck by lightning for pretending. Han Guangji's face was as gloomy as water when he heard Tong Jiao's heartbreaking words. He also felt as if he had been struck by lightning for pretending. But naturally, it was impossible for him to admit it. Don't listen to this group of eastern Xia pigs roaring. Retreat and sit ready to fight. Han Guangji let out a furious shout, waking up the crowd. With the fear of the dragon's might at the top of their heads, they scrambled back towards the back, wanting to escape. As for the Dali warriors fainting on the ground next to them, they didn't have time to care and could only let these warriors fend for themselves. Qin Shi's illusory behemoth was shrouded in thunderclouds, looking down at the crowd of the Inferno team. Seeing that they wanted to escape, Qin Shi once again opened his mouth and sprayed out a lightning bolt, and in the eyes of the Inferno Demon Team's crowd, it was the huge mountain-like beast in the sky, opening its abyssal, bloody mouth, its mouth swirling and coalescing, its thunderclouds rolling, transforming into a beam of thunder that blasted down through the sky and into the earth. Kill! Han Guangji's eyes widened in horror as he catalyzed the Thunder Falcon's transcendent power on his body and blasted over against the descending thunder. The other Inferno Demon Team members all followed suit urging their light golden flames to block. I fused the thunder like falcon's genes and mastered thunder and lightning. How can I die here? It's the same lightning. I don't believe that your lightning can be more powerful than thunder like falcon's transcendent power. Han Guangji's eyes stared at Qin Shi with death, and his mouth let out a frantic roar to bolster himself. Qin Shi nuzzled his mouth in disdain, but it was just fusing a little bit of the thunder like falcon's genes and possessing a battle power comparable to that of a lower level beast general. What was there to just fool around with? He had even reached the level of an upper beast general. Was he proud? Qin Shi puffed out his chest. The illusory behemoth. Its huge body trembled, carrying rolling thunderclouds that pressed towards the bottom. Han Guangji catalyzed the thunder falcon's transcendent power, and a streak of lightning struck out from his body, intertwining into a grid that rushed high into the sky. The surrounding inferno demon team members combined their efforts, their light golden flames linking together. 
turning into a sky-high beacon that went straight into the clouds. However, it was useless. The thunderclouds pressed down, and whatever power grids and flames, they were all crushed away. Not even the slightest symbolic block could be done. Xinxia's battle power nowadays had already reached the level of an upper beast general. Don't look at him compared to Han Guangji, as if he was only two notches stronger. Han Guangji's battle power was enough to rival that of a lower beast general. The difference in battle power between beast generals could be much greater than that of a beast soldier. A mid-level beast general was enough to crush dozens of lower-level beast generals. An upper-level beast general would have no problem sweeping through a group of middle-level beast generals. The higher the realm, the greater the gap between neighboring levels. Moreover, Qin Shi was a divine dragon, and among the beast generals, they were all at the top of the hierarchy. There really wasn't any pressure to crush this group of inferno devils. When the thunderclouds touched the ground, Han Guangji and his teammates, all of them, had been crushed to the point that they were prostrate on the ground and could only struggle in vain. However, Qin Shi didn't directly strike them down. He thought of a good idea. Didn't the Inferno team want to invade the area of the market realm that East Xia was responsible for and rob East Xia's resources? Then, he would do the same thing to them. Go to Dali's market realm region and take a stroll. Let's see what's good in Dali's market realm region. Inside the market realm region of Eastern Xia, the ores that contained gold energy were all absorbed by him. He needed to absorb energy of other attributes in order to continue growing. Maybe there would be a surprise in Dali's ruin realm region. With this thought in mind, Xinxia lowered his head to look down at the Inferno team's crowd lying on the ground and transmitted. Humans, do you know that you have offended me? Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, their faces showed despair. They didn't expect that the strength of this foreign beast that suddenly appeared was so terrifying that all of them who joined forces and blocked it with all their might were instantly crushed. The proud complacency of being selected to participate in the genetic modification, metamorphosing into a transcendent species and gaining great strength was crushed into pieces without mercy. They were ready for the entire army to be wiped out. Qin Shi's voice rang out, causing them to be incomparably stunned. And then, there was an even deeper creepiness. This foreign beast, it could actually speak? You, you can talk? Han Guangji lifted his head with difficulty, his gaze looking at Qin Shi in horror. Although the Fei beasts were transcendent species and their intelligence wasn't lower than that of humans, they didn't form a stable and orderly civilization like humans. In the course of the humans' dealings with the Fei beasts, there were also no Fei beasts found that could communicate. The fact that Qin Shi suddenly opened his mouth to speak was something that turned the worldview upside down for them. What's so strange about it? Do you think you humans are the only ones who can give birth to a civilization? Cut the crap. You guys haven't answered my question. Qin Shi didn't have the time to discuss this with them and once again issued a threat. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, on the contrary, were relieved. The fact that Fei beasts actually knew how to communicate was extremely frightening to humans. Humans faced the Fey beasts and simply did not have an advantage in terms of battle power. Even if a large number of transcendents had emerged now, the greatest advantage of humans still lay in the collaboration of civilizations. Once the Fey beasts also developed a civilization, it would be a huge disaster for humans. However, they were in no mood to think that long term. At least for the time being, a Fey beast that possessed a strong intelligence and was able to communicate would be good for them. Fey beasts were able to communicate, so there was something to talk about and they might be able to save a life. Your honor, we should be meeting for the first time. I wonder what offended you. Han Guangji opened his mouth to inquire. The surrounding Inferno Demon team members, along with Han Guangji, slumped on the ground, raised their heads, and looked at Qin Shi with apprehension. They were puzzled and aggrieved in their hearts about Qin Shi's claim of offense. It was clearly Qin Shi himself who suddenly ran out. They didn't know anything, and then they received a thunderous blast from Qin Shi. It was too unjust. You guys are too weak. Mastering such trashy lightning abilities and still dare to show off everywhere. You're really pulling me down. This is already a capital offense you know? With such a weak thunder and lightning ability. What if other foreign beasts see it and think that all of our thunder and lightning faculty foreign beasts are only this capable? What if they are underestimated by other foreign beasts? Qin Shi topped the behemoth's skin and mock without mercy. The inferno players, all of them broke their defenses. Damn it, this fey beast, was really attracted by Han Guangji. Han Guangji was furious with shame. If it was anyone else, he would still be able to retort. He had fused the genes of the Thunderlight Falcon. And even in a dominating country like Shangnong, compared to their transcendence, he could be considered an elite. As a result, he was actually degraded to nothing by Qin Shi like this. However, Qin Shi's lightning control ability was indeed stronger than him. He just couldn't refute it even if he wanted to. What do you want to do then? Since your excellency left us alive, you must have some other purpose. Han Guangji forced himself to endure the humiliation and asked. It's simple. 
I need compensation. Qin Shi looked down at Han Guangji and said rightfully, Compensation? Han Guangji froze for a moment. Your strength is too weak. How dare you show off in front of me, polluting my eyes. Shouldn't you give me some compensation? Qin Shi revealed a ferocious tone. Han Guangji's forehead veins jumped as he listened. Deceitful. It was. He was weak. To be so weak was a shame to the world. But was it necessary to keep emphasizing it? What compensation do you want? Han Guangji asked weakly. I need a lot of resources. What transcendent energy? Ores? Come what may. Tell me what good resources you have in Dali's territory and show me. Xin Shi slightly withdrew a bit of his dragon might, allowing Han Guangji and the rest of the group of Inferno Demon members to be able to stand up, forcing them to show him the way. Han Guangji's heart sank, leading the way for Qin Shi. Wasn't this inviting calamity to Dali? After the confrontation just now, he judged that Qin Shi was definitely an upper-level beast general even if he wasn't a beast king. A foreign beast of this level would require an army of hundreds of people equipped with all kinds of heavy and hot weapons bombardment to repel it. Nowadays, with countries occupying a large amount of market realm territory, there were more weapons that could be utilized in the market realm, and it wasn't as constrained as before. However, the terrain and environment of the market realm still restricted the use of modern weapons. There were no concrete roads in the market realm, specially equipped for transportation, and the transportation of these weapons alone was a major problem. For the most part, the fight against the beasts could still only rely on them. The transcendence. Introducing a superior beast general into Dali's market realm area. Wouldn't that be leading a wolf into the house? What? Are you guys unwilling? Seeing Han Guangji's hesitant face, Qin Shi once again let out a villainous cry, and the huge beast that was visualized even drove the thundercloud to probe low towards them. The massive head shrouded in the thunderclouds brought a terrifying sense of oppression to them. No, honorable fey beast, you've misunderstood. Han Guangji's pupils shrank, gulped, and hurriedly shouted, his mind frantically pondering what to do. Next to Jin Changxiang, seeing Ying Di and Tong Jiao who had retreated far away, his eyes revealed a color of indignation and resentment. Damn it, why should they be threatened by foreign beasts? These eastern Xia guys, who stayed with them just now, were not targeted by foreign beasts. Resentment and resentment gave rise to sinister thoughts in his heart. His eyes narrowed slightly, revealing a vicious smile as he called out. Your Excellency the Fey Beast, if you need transcendent resources, there are plenty of them inside the region of Eastern Xia, and it's even closer to here, we can take you to find them. Hearing this, Han Guangji was instantly enlightened, and shouted after him, That's right, Your Excellency the Fey Beast, there are abundant transcendent resources in the region of Eastern Xia, we came over this time because we want to seize the resources of Eastern Xia, they have much more resources than Dali. The other Inferno players beside them all scrambled to agree. A sinister smile appeared on their faces. The appearance of this foreign beast might not be a bad thing. If it was lured into Dali's region, it could definitely bring a huge surprise to Eastern Xia. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the other divine dragon members in the distance were furious when they heard their shouts. Damn it, they're actually trying to bring calamity to the east. These Dali dogs, I really want to kill them. Pang Mao and the other divine dragon team members all cursed with gloomy faces, itching to tear the Inferno Fiend team into pieces. Fortunately, the object of their woe is the captain. He he he, trying to kill someone with a borrowed knife. There's a good show to watch. Soon, a look of watching a good show appeared in their eyes. If it was any other foreign beast, it might have been really moved by Han Guangji and the others. But Qin Shi was the divine dragon of Eastern Xia. Letting Qin Shi go against Eastern Xia? This group of infernal devil players. Very thoughtful. Qin Shi was speechless in his heart as he looked at each of the inferno devil crew members who had a sinister smile on their faces as they tried to cause trouble. Stupid humans, just as Han Guangji and the others, were gloating over their plot, Qin Shi threw a pot of cold water towards them. He looked down at Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, slightly raising the dragon's might on his body, and said viciously, You humans are too despicable and cunning, do you think I will believe what you say? Han Guangji's body trembled a bit as he was pressurized by the suddenly raised dragon's might, and he hurriedly called out, Your honorable fey beast, everything we said is true, it's all true and we're doing it for your sake. Yes, how dare we deceive you. Eastern Xia has more resources. Going to Eastern Xia is the best choice. Going to Dali is just wasting your time. The other Inferno teams all spoke up as well, persuading with bitter words. The tone was that of sincerity and earnestness. If he didn't know that they were wreaking havoc and wanted to kill someone with a borrowed knife, Sheen sure almost believed it. This group of Dali's transcendents were quite good at doing things. Unfortunately, the great divine dragon was cavernous. Humans are too cunning. For your words, you need to listen to them the other way around. You want me to go to Eastern Xia, but I'm going to go to Dali. Do you have any opinions? 
Qin Shi was too lazy to listen to them engage in plotting and scheming, and said very forcefully, the dragon might on his body was even increasing. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others were dumbfounded when they heard this. One by one, their faces were as ugly as if they had eaten a dead rat. Damn it, this foreign beast was dead set in its ways. They had persuaded it for so long that their throats were on fire. And this foreign beast actually still wanted to go to Dali. What's so good about Dali? Can't they change it? Cut the crap and hurry up and lead the way. Or I'll eat you. Qin Shi urged in a vicious tone. Han Guangji and the others had no choice but to lead Qin Shi towards Dali's area with resentment in their hearts. They also didn't want to. Drawing an extremely harmful superior beast general to one's own country could be fully described as treason. But their own little lives were in Qin Shi's hands. The body and the country could not go both ways after all. Weighing the pros and cons, they felt that it was important to save their little lives first. Captain, are you really going to the Dali region? Ying Di and Tong Jiao, who had pulled a chat group exchange with Qin Shi on the Blue Network, asked with some concern. Yes, Captain. Don't look like they've really given in and are going to take you to the Dali region to look for resources, but I'm sure that they're bound to have marched in communication with the Dali military on the Blue Net, and may have already set up traps to deal with you. Pang Mao spoke in a deep voice. The Blue Net was a network that Blue Star Consciousness had developed using itself as a bridge, even in the Ruins realm. As long as they weren't too deep into the Ruins realm and were equipped with logins on their bodies, they would be able to log onto the network and keep in contact with others. Unless they destroyed the logins on Han Guangji and the others in the first place, they would still be able to keep in contact with Dali, just like they did with Kim Wanpyong, Park Yu Chi, and the others back then. But just now, Qin Shi didn't destroy the logins on them. Maybe they had already quietly transmitted what happened here. Back to Dahlia. Don't worry. Qin Shi returned with full of concern. I just want to let Dali know that a beast is about to go skulking around their territory. Dali has a bit of excess energy, and has something to find trouble in Eastern Xia, so I've got to go and help them vent their frustrations. He wasn't a fool, so naturally he wouldn't fail to consider this. The reason why he didn't destroy the logins on Han Guangji and the others in the first place was to deliberately put pressure on them. The fact that Dali was targeting Eastern Xia so much had long since made him very upset. He had just completed a new round of evolution, so it was just the right time to take Dali to try his hand. Will this be too risky? Tong Jiao was still a bit worried. Although the superior beast generals were powerful, they were only powerful in terms of individual force. If they encountered an army equipped with heavy heat weapons, missiles and nuclear weapons, there was still a risk of being wiped out. Although the countries were inside the market realm, due to the environmental terrain, it was not good to deploy all kinds of high-tech weapons. However, if they prepared in advance, they might not be able to set up traps that could threaten a beast general or even a beast king. The bases of various countries in the market realm basically had this level of equipment. If Dali knew that Qin Shi was going to their territory, it would definitely mobilize a large amount of force to target it. It's fine. If I can't beat them, I can still hide from them. Qin Shi confidently said back, if he were any other foreign beast, once he was caught in the encirclement of the human army, he might be helpless and could only take fire and wait for death. But he was a divine dragon. He was able to move the clouds and call the wind and rain. Just the ability to ride the clouds and become invisible is enough to make the Dali army blind. Not to mention, his overall combat strength reached the level of a beast general. However, if it came to defense, the beast king would only be able to bow down in front of him. His dragon scale defense was already strong. And now that he had awakened the golden dragon secret technique, his defense had risen drastically. Ordinary missiles might not be able to injure him. It was estimated that a nuclear missile would have to be used, and it would have to be a tactical grade nuclear missile that reached 100, 000 tons of TNT equivalent before it could threaten him. A low yield nuclear missile might not even be able to break through his dragon scale defense. Good. Then captain be careful. Report back in time if there is any situation. If anything really goes wrong, even if it sets off a big war, we will still go to meet you. Tong Zhao pondered and nodded. Qin Shi urged Han Guangji and the others towards Dali's area. Captain, are we just going to let this alien beast be at our mercy? In the Dali Blue Net chat group, Jin Changxiang asked in a resigned tone. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others guessed correctly that Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, on the surface, succumbed to Qin Shi's lechery and obeyed him. In reality, they had secretly built a Blue Bonnet chat group to communicate. At this moment, they were discussing how they were going to deal with Qin Shi. This foreign beast is too powerful. I estimate that it might be a superior beast general. We must find a way to lure it to the Dali army and use the army's power in order to deal with it. Han Guangji said back. Then let's lure it to the cold pool first. General and Shizhong happens to be leading the army. Preparing to hunt the ice snake. We can let it fight with the ice snake first. 
Then let General and Shi Zhong come out to reap the benefits, Jin Changxiang said. The Ice Serpent was a median beast general. It was also the only mid-level beast general in the Dali Market Realm area. Dali had almost finished occupying the Market Realm area it was responsible for, and the only place it hadn't been able to capture was the area where a few beast generals were located. Beside the beast generals, there were a large number of beast soldiers following their orders, so it wasn't that easy to deal with the beast generals. Even if Dali had already cultivated several transcendents that possessed the battle power of a lower level beast general, they could only fight against the beast generals in a one-on-one -on -one situation. If one really ran up to a beast general's territory to clamor and attempt to hunt the beast generals, that would be purely looking for death. In order to hunt these beast generals, Dali had made a lot of preparations, especially in the matter of dealing with the ice snake. A median beast general represented a huge benefit. Nowadays, along with the promotion of genetic modification technology, exotic beasts had also become an indispensable resource for humans, especially the genes of those powerful and rare exotic beasts. Each one of them was able to be sold at an astronomical price. Once she was able to hunt the ice snake, Dolly would be able to obtain the ice snake's genes, and at that time, she would be able to negotiate with Sacred Farmer to cultivate a transcendent with the ice snake's transcendent power. In order to be able to successfully hunt the ice snake, Dolly even deployed a low-yield nuclear missile. Among the country's research, nuclear missiles were strategic weapons that threatened the Beast King. Those super-specification nuclear missiles had a certain degree of deterrence even against Earth Scourge-level exotic beasts. The fact that Dolly had deployed a nuclear missile, even if it was only a few tens of thousands of tons of TNT equivalent, was enough to see the importance attached to this operation. Good. It's decided. I've already communicated with General and He'll send extra manpower to sit ready. If the operation goes well, we might even be able to harvest an extra gene of a foreign beast with the transcendent power of thunder and lightning. Han Guangji said with a burning gaze, the depths of his pupils revealing thick greed and desire. There was no threat to their lives for the time being, and they had actually hit their minds on Qin Shi. Qin Shi mastered the powerful power of lightning, and Han Guangji had fused the very genes of the Thunder Lightning Falcon, and was likewise a transcendent of the Thunder and Lightning Department. If he could obtain Qin Shi's genes, he would have a chance to fuse Qin Shi's genes and obtain the lightning power that Qin Shi had mastered. Han Guangji's heart was filled with fire. The strength of a transcendent who had been genetically modified was basically limited. Only by replacing their genes with stronger ones could they progress. This was also the reason why the genes of various rare and powerful exotic beasts were becoming more and more expensive on the blue planet today. An upper-level beast general's gene. Even for those elite transcendents inside a hegemonic country like Shang Nong, they all needed to queue up to have a chance to get it. If he could obtain Qin Shi's gene and incorporate it into himself, he would immediately be able to compare himself to the elite transcendents of Saint Farm. In today's world, one could definitely be at the top of the list of transcendents. Of course, one had to get Qin Shi's genes first. While nodding his head and respectfully leading Qin Shi, Han Guangji rushed towards the cold pool in the Dali market realm. While doing so, he kept urging the Dali military to hurry up and deploy more manpower, making sure to take down this superior beast general that had been delivered to the door. The Dali side attached great importance to this. This is our chance. A high-ranking member of Dali perked up. The superior beast general is indeed very strong, but with our military strength, we can completely hunt it down and kill it. Nowadays, foreign beasts are precious resources. The blue star consciousness divided the responsible market realm areas for each country. The original intention was to protect each country to avoid too many casualties and too heavy a burden for countries with insufficient strength. But now, it has instead become a hindrance to the progress of small countries. Genetic modification technology required foreign beast genes as resources and inside the market realm area that small countries were responsible for. There were too few powerful foreign beasts. The most powerful foreign beast in the market realm area that Dali was responsible for was only a median beast general ice serpent. It could be imagined that once they finished hunting the foreign beasts in their country's market realm area, they could only turn to the overlord countries for help as they progressed and cultivated stronger transcendence. This would further subject them to the constraints of the hegemony countries. Being able to hunt the genes of more powerful exotic beasts on their own without going through the overlord countries was a precious opportunity for them. Don't worry, I've already made preparations. This time, whether it's the Ice Serpent or that Thunderbolt system upper beast general, they will all be in our Dali's possession. And Shirzhong said with confidence, as the general of the Dali's combat department against the market realm, he had led several hunts for foreign beasts without fail. This time would be no exception. Soon, Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, Led Qin Shi to the vicinity of the cold pool. Your honorable Fei Beast, there is a cold pool in front of you, which is rich in extremely special resources, and it is one of the richest in resources within our Dali region. 
and it can definitely satisfy your needs. Han Guangji said as he pointed ahead, at a hidden valley covered by ancient trees in the sky, a conspiratorial color emerging in his eyes. Qin Shi was shrouded in thunderclouds and suspended high in the sky as he looked towards the valley. Huge spiritual power quickly enveloped the past. Soon, a cold smile appeared on his face. Han Guangji had not deceived him. The cold pool in front of him was indeed rich in resources. It was an extremely deep pool of water, surrounded by a frigid aura, with all sorts of flowers and plants with frost power attached to them growing. Out of place with the surrounding scene of lush forests and trees, it was as if a fragment from winter had been inserted hard into the middle of a hot summer. But Han Guangji didn't tell him. There was a median beast general ice snake lurking in the cold pool. Moreover, the resources were of the frost attribute, which was incompatible with the lightning attribute he had displayed, and even had a considerable restraint. Han Guangji was unsettled, wanting to kill someone with a borrowed knife, so that he could deal with the ice snake. At the same time, Qin Shi's spiritual power also saw the Dali army lurking near the cold pool. Obviously, Han Guangji had long been in contact with the Dali military and wanted to reap the benefits. Only, they had underestimated Qin Shi. It was unthinkable that Qin Shi was not some thunder and lightning alien beast, but a divine dragon. He had a variety of abilities. He even possessed a powerful spiritual power that unusual foreign beasts did not possess. The movement of the wind and grass within hundreds of meters around them could not be hidden from his perception at all. The Dali army's careful lurking appearance was unmistakable in his eyes. Qin Shi did not reveal Han Guangji's plot. Faced with Han Guangji's gaze filled with anticipation, itching to urge him to rush into the cold pool and make a big raid, Qin Shi smiled and said, Very well, you guys did a great job. I'm very satisfied. Now, you guys go in and help me get the resources inside. I'll be waiting outside. The anticipation in Han Guangji's eyes stagnated. A bit confused. This, Honorable Fei Lord. There are a lot of resources in the cold pool. We can't move them over. Wouldn't it be more convenient for you to enjoy them in person? Han Guangji said anxiously. He wanted to lure Qin Shi into the cold pool and start a conflict with the ice snake. If Qin Shi refused to go in, then wouldn't his plan be dead in the water? There wasn't even a chance for it to die prematurely. Jin Changxiang and the other Inferno Demon team members, who had also realized the problem, opened their mouths to advise. Yes, Your Excellency Fei. The environment inside the cold pool is even more beautiful. How can we not cultivate our feelings by going directly into the cold pool to enjoy the resources? If we were to slowly move the resources out, wouldn't it be a waste of your time? They had that bitter look on their faces, as if they were genuinely thinking about Qin Shi. It was a pity that they had moved the wrong person entirely. Qin Shi viciously shouted, The resources here are the compensation you gave me. If I still need to do it myself, can that be called compensation? That is the fruits of my labor that I obtained with my own hands. Is it even remotely related to your compensation? Refusing to even take out the resources for me. You guys have no sincerity at all. It really disappoints me. The dragon might that had originally been put away slowly surfaced once again. Qin fashioned an appearance of impatience, about to lash out in a violent rage. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others were yelled at to the point where their people were almost numb. Captain, will it learn of our calculations? An Inferno team member communicated with Han Guangji through the blue net contact. Han Guangji's heart thumped. After thinking carefully, he shook his head and said, It shouldn't be. This beast is temperamental. If it knew that we were counting on it, it would have already become furious, and wouldn't be able to waste so much time with us. Not to mention that this is our Dali's territory, and this is its first time here. So how could it possibly know what's going on inside the cold pool? That's right. I think it's just lazy. Obviously the big meal is in front of us but we actually have to serve it up and feed it. Another Inferno Demon member said indignantly. The others heard it and all felt that it made sense. Plants, this foreign beast was so lazy. Would it die if it took a few more steps inside the cold pool? Then what should we do now? Do we really have to enter the cold pool and help it take out the resources? Jin Changxiang asked. Han Guangji fell into silence. Their plan was to encourage Qin Shi to enter the cold pool to plunder the resources and erupt into conflict with the ice snake. First, they would use the sword to kill others and then fish for their own profit. As a result, the first step went terribly wrong. Qin Shi simply didn't fall for it. Facing Qin Shi's coercion, they were instantly caught in a dilemma. Qin Shi was an upper-level beast general. They couldn't beat him. The ice serpent was a medial beast general, which they likewise could not defeat. If they entered the cold pool and helped Qin Shi obtain resources, wouldn't they be sending them to their deaths? The key was that there were no resources that Qin Shi needed inside the cold pool. Han Guangji's intention was to kill with a borrowed knife and reap the benefits, but he didn't intend to help Qin Shi at all. When he chose to bring Qin Shi here, he also had the idea of restraining him with the help of the cold pool's geographical advantage. 
The giant beast that Qin Shi had manifested was a thunder and lightning system beast. Inside the cold pool was a scene of icy sky and snow. The frost-based transcendent power had a certain restraint on the lightning-based transcendent power. The resources inside the cold pool were only useful to the frost-type exotic beasts and did not help Qin Shi in any way. They just couldn't get the resources Qin Shi wanted even if they entered the cold pool. Captain, what should we do now? The Inferno Demon team member next to him said anxiously. Qin Shi was becoming more and more impatient, and the pressure released from his body was getting stronger and stronger. If this continued, he was afraid that Qin Shi would have a temper at some point and directly crush them to death. Han Guangji thought with an ugly face and gritted his teeth. Go, let's enter the cold pool. There was no way around it. One had to bow one's head when under the roof. Not to mention, Han Guangji's eyes flickered, his brain calculating madly. The plan went bankrupt, and instead of just giving up, he pondered over other methods. Qin Shi was not encouraged by them and was unwilling to enter the cold pool. Then they would do it themselves and lure the ice snake out. Let's see if Qin Shi could still sit still, since we are inside the cold pool and lure the ice snake out. When the time comes, seeing a more powerful fey beast, the ice snake's attention will definitely be on this thunderbolt fey beast. Han Guangji said towards his teammates, this is a good idea. With our strength, although we can't fight a mediate beast general, but if we just defend the ice snake and intentionally lure it out of the cold pool, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, Jin Changxiang said after calculating in his mind. Their group, led by Han Guangji, even if they briefly fought against a median beast general, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. Good, then let's do it. I've had enough of this foreign beast. It's just a fey beast, tugging like anything, talking so harshly. If this continues, even if it doesn't make a move to kill us, I'm going to be pissed off by it. The other Inferno Devil team members had summoned to yell. Qin Shi was talking hard again, sneering at them along the way, and snapping at them without moving. On the contrary, they were not as skilled as the dragon. So even if they could not hold their grievances in their hearts, they could only endure it. They were really fed up. Go! Han Guangji waved his hand and led his teammates into the cold pool. The cold pool included the surrounding valley. The cold pool was just the core of the entire valley. Because the frosty cold air in the valley was all overflowing from the cold pool, Dolly called the place by the cold pool. As soon as they entered the confines of the valley, the temperature immediately plummeted. A thick layer of frost appeared on the ground. The various plants in the valley were also very different from the outside world, wrapped in a layer of transparent material like ice crystals. Some of the plants were even composed of ice crystals, but they were not dead, but had the characteristics of life, which was extremely magical. Han Guangji and Jin Changsheng, among others, cautiously advanced towards the location of the cold pool. They had long ago mapped out the terrain inside the valley, knowing exactly where the ice snake was now. And they didn't realize that just as they were cautiously advancing, fighting to lure the ice snake out to fight Qin Shi, behind them, a cloud that was as light as smoke and difficult to detect with the naked eye quietly emerged, firmly following them. Qin Shi didn't wait outside. What was said about letting Han Guangji and the others enter the cold pool and carry resources for him was just a casual remark. This group of people were not strong and had a lot of bad water in their stomachs. Wanting to kill with a borrowed knife and reap the benefits of fishing, they would definitely not honestly carry resources for him when they entered the cold pool. At this point, Xin Shi could guess it with his toes. He knew that Han Guangji would definitely not be willing and wanted to lure the ice snake to fight him. How could he let Han Guangji succeed? He directly followed in stealthily. If Han Guangji really angered the ice snake, and later wanted to lure the ice snake out to fight him, and as a result, he couldn't find him. That scene, thinking about it was a bit expected. The frost energy here is also quite good. Just enough to balance my nutrition a bit. Qin Shi hid in the clouds and mist, surveying his surroundings. Frost-based transcendent power was a bit of a match for lightning-based transcendent power. Normally speaking, a thunder and lightning system fey beast could not absorb the frost attribute transcendent energy. But he wasn't an unusual fey beast. The frost energy here was a good complement to him. Especially the frosty aura coming from inside the cold pool. Qin Shi looked over towards the cold pool. Inside the cold pool, a giant python with a snow-white body was coiled under the water. Its eyes closed in deep sleep. This snow-white python was the mediate beast general ice snake. At the bottom of the cold pool where the ice serpent was coiled, a large amount of frost energy surged out and was absorbed into it. At the bottom of this cold pool, there is actually so much frost energy converging, if all of it is absorbed. It will be enough for me to awaken the secret techniques of the ice dragon lineage. Qin Shi pondered in his heart. He didn't act immediately, but pressed on, waiting for Han Guangji and the others to lure the ice snake away. Although he wasn't afraid of this ice snake, there was no need to help the Dahlias take the bullet. Just let this group of Dahlias enjoy the pleasure of fighting a median beast general. He only needed to be responsible for absorbing the frost energy inside the cold pool. 
Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others did not notice Qin Shi's presence. They cautiously approached the cold pool and approached to a certain distance. Han Guangji nodded towards Jin Changxiang and the rest of his teammates, and then, catalyzing the lightning transcendent power in his body, he reached out and condensed a lightning lance to project it towards the ice snake in the cold pool. At the same time, Jin Changxiang and the others also activated the transcendent power in their bodies, and a light golden flame rose up, instantly sweeping away the frosty aura near the cold pool. Whether it was lightning or flame, their attributes were incompatible with frost. The lightning lance was projected onto the cold pool and immediately exploded, transforming into zippy electric currents that collided with the frost energy contained within the cold pool. The intense high temperature generated by the light golden flame even boiled the cold water on the surface of the cold pool. The ice snake that was slumbering at the bottom of the cold pool was instantly awakened by the violent commotion. A pair of light blue, ice cold, frost like eyes opened and flowed with an eerie fury. Wow! A violent splash of water rose from the cold pool, and frosty air filled the air. The ice snake drilled out of the cold pool, and on its huge head, two icy blue triangular snake eyes looked toward Han Guangji and Jin Chunxiang's group with icy killing intent. A bone chilling coldness eroded towards them. Even if they had mastered lightning and flame transcendent powers, they all had the feeling of falling into an ice cellar. Run! Han Guangji's face changed wildly as he turned around and called out sharply, without needing him to remind them. Jin Changxiang and the others had already quickly turned their heads and fled along the original path towards the outside of the cold pool. Hiss! The ice snake spat out its scarlet snake letters. Its head flickered back and then jerked forward. The huge snake body hidden inside the cold pool all drilled out, sweeping up a burst of ice fog, chasing towards Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others. The huge body rushed across the ground. Along the way, a large number of ice crystal plants were mercilessly crushed and destroyed. Success! Hurry up and bring the ice snake to the front of the Thunderbolt alien beasts so they can fight. I can't wait to see them fight and then reap the benefits. The crowd of the Inferno Demon team fled frantically in front of them, each with an uncontrollable look of excitement on their faces. Feeling the powerful oppression brought about by the ice snake's pursuit behind them, there was no fear and panic in their hearts. But instead, their blood boiled a little, thinking that next, they would be able to fish and kill two beast generals, one of which was still an upper level beast general. They were all energized. Crooked Rigged, Qin Shi, who was invisible in the clouds, watched Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, running wildly away all the way with the fuming ice snake, and a happy smile appeared on his face. Not long after, outside the cold pool resounded Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, howling their hearts out, with eyes full of excitement. Han Guangji and Jin Changxiang, who had run all the way with the ice snake, wanting to use the knife to kill, so that Qin Shi and the ice snake could snipe at each other ran back to their original position and were directly stupefied. Where was the beast? Where was their thunder and lightning superior beast general? What happened? Such a big beast. Why is it gone? Han Guangji was in a hurry. He wanted to draw the ice snake into conflict with Qin Shi. As a result, he went out on a limb, and the ice snake was attracted. The other protagonist was gone. Honorable Fei, where are you? Han Guangji was anxious in his heart and raised his head towards the surroundings, shouting loudly, hoping to call Qin Shi out. The other Inferno Devil team members hurriedly followed along and shouted and searched, looking anxious, that is, hoping for the stars and the moon. They all could not wait to cry out directly to their parents. Just now, the Thunderbolt alien beast was clearly still there. Its size was so huge, just like a small mountain, and there was no place to hide around it. However, no matter how much they searched, they could not see the existence of the Thunderbolt Fey beast, only the ice snake behind them, its nearly 100 meter snake body bowing high like a high rise building. Layers of fine snake scales, glowing with a chilling light, and a pair of triangular snake eyes looking down at them icily. Han Guangji was chilled to the bone, feeling the world full of malice. On the other hand, Qin Shi had happily pounced into the cold pool. As soon as he entered the cold pool, a terrifyingly low temperature struck him, and the frost power made even Qin Shi feel a chill. The temperature inside the cold pool had already reached below zero, but the pool water did not freeze. Instead, it was in a liquid state just like water of normal temperature. Instead, the pool water churned, and when it came into contact with the water vapor in the air, it would freeze the water vapor into tiny ice crystals. This scene looked very magical. In the pool water, there was a large amount of frost energy. Under the transformation of the transcendent power, the subtle structure of these pool waters was not the same as normal water, but had formed another liquid substance. Qin Shi immersed himself in the pool water his body's dragon scales stretching and his mouth gulping. Instantly, a huge amount of frost energy converged towards him. 
It was as if his body had turned into a bottomless abyss that was receptive to all the frost energy that came its way. Even the golden body of the dragon turned into a frosty white color like that of an ice snake under the flood of frost energy. In response to this, Sheen sure already had experience. He knew that this was a sign that he was about to awaken the secret techniques of the ice dragon lineage. When he had absorbed nuclear energy in the Eastern Xia Transcendent Research Base and awakened the secret method of the fire dragon lineage, his body had also appeared to be fire dragonized. As expected, it was accompanied by a huge influx of frost energy. A wave of memories belonging to the ice dragon lineage surfaced in Xinxer's mind. Frost spit, freezing ray, ice mirror reflection. Xinxer skimmed through them slightly and felt that they were not bad. These ice dragon secret techniques, although their power was just about the same as the starburst spit and golden light chopping strike, they had different attributes and served different purposes, and could greatly enrich his means of attack. In addition, along with the absorption of the frost energy, Xinxer's strength was gradually rising towards the level of a beast king. In the outside world, Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, had already fought with the Ice Snake, the Thunder and Lightning Fei Beast, a thousand times called out. They had angered the Ice Serpent again, and without a foreign beast to block the gun, they could only top themselves. Bang! The Ice Snake lowered its head and opened its mouth to spit out a frost ray. Morbidly cold power condensed into a cold white beam in its mouth, shooting towards Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, where the beam of light passed through. The air stagnated and water mist condensed. It was as if a cool winter had descended, bringing a frozen mass extinction to everything. Thunderstorm, Han Guangji turned to face the ice serpent with a roar, urging the lightning energy in his body, and the blazing lightning transformed into a piercing spear, meeting the frost ray head on. Jin Changxiang and the other Inferno Demon team members also hurriedly urged their light golden flames to burn towards the ice snake from different directions. In terms of momentum, their attacks were even more exuberant. The heavenly thunder tickled the earth's fire, filled with the intimidating feeling of destruction and devastation. However, the huge gap in strength caused them to fall flat on their faces in front of the ice snake. The ice serpent's frost rays fell down with such force that they crushed the thunderbolt sent out by Han Guangji, and continued to fall down with little hindrance. The light golden flames of Jin Changxiang and the others were even annihilated by the cold frost energy in an extremely domineering manner. Ice and fire are mutually exclusive. Who grips who? It still depends on which side is stronger. The power of the ice snake undoubtedly crushed everyone on the inferno team. The frost rays fell, and instantly a thick layer of ice surfaced on the ground, and the surrounding forest trees were frozen, with white frost forming on their trunks, branches, and leaves. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others, relying on the transcendent power in their bodies, dodged away in time and were not hit head-on by the frost ray, but were not frozen. But the cold cold air that spread out still made their bodies unable to stop trembling. Even the transcendent powers in their bodies were extremely severely suppressed. Originally, the light golden flames they released were able to sweep tens of meters around them. Now, it was extremely difficult to even slightly leave their bodies a bit. Damn it, that thunderbolt fey beast, where the hell did it run off to? Jin Changxiang's face was gloomy as he dodged the ice snake's attack in a sorry state, an unwilling growl escaping his mouth. This time, it really was a stolen chicken. Not only did he fail to successfully divert the scourge to the east, allowing the ice snake to snipe at the thunderbolt fey beast. Instead, he had plunged himself into the threat of death. In his heart, he was filled with resentment towards Qin Shi. Captain, what should we do? At this rate, we're only afraid that we'll all be wiped out. An inferno member shouted anxiously. In Han Guangji's heart, one head was two sizes. He was similarly filled with resentment towards Qin Shi. This damned thunder and lightning foreign beast, didn't it say that it would wait for them outside? Not keeping its word. Hurry up and contact General Lin and ask him to send an army over. Han Guangji made an immediate decision. The Thunderbolt Fei had released their pigeon. There was no time to think about anything else now. Let's find a way to deal with the Ice Snake first. And Shi Zhong was lurking in the jungle not far away. He followed the arrangement he had discussed with Han Guangji, and was prepared to wait for the Ice Snake and Qin Shi to be defeated before going out to pick up the advantage. He didn't know about Han Guangji's failed plot and being stood up by Qin Shi. After all, the senses of the foreign beasts were too sharp. In order not to spook the snakes, they could only ambush them from a distance and couldn't see what was happening around the cold pool. Is that nuclear missile ready? And Shizhong asked towards a beloved soldier next to him. The soldier replied back. It's ready. As long as you give the order, it will be able to be launched at any time. Very good. Using nuclear missiles to deal with the ice snake is actually still a bit of a big deal. If we can blast two beast generals in one fell swoop, that would be the best use of our resources. And Shizhong nodded in satisfaction. This time, in order to successfully hunt the ice serpent, they had made sufficient preparations. 
and even the nuclear missile that was meant to deter the Beast King had brought one over. It was a tactical grade nuclear missile that could reach a power of 100. 000 tons of TNT equivalent. A nuclear missile of 100. 000 tons of TNT equivalent. Once exploded, could maximize its power in 0. 16 seconds, producing a fireball with a radius of 380 meters. It can burn and melt an area of 0. 32 square kilometers. And the super pressure shockwave will destroy all buildings within 3. 52 kilometers around the explosion point. And the radius of thermal radiation can reach 4. 61 kilometers. Not to mention, there were other impact destructive forces from nuclear radiation, and driving building debris. This was a terrifying weapon that would instantly destroy a beast king when it was hit head on, to use it against two beast generals, it was absolutely easy as hell. It was only in the market realm that they dared to use this weapon with very impressive killing power and pollution. On the blue planet, using nuclear missiles indiscriminately was a matter of risking universal condemnation. Just as Unshi Zhong was fantasizing in his mind about how he was going to be rewarded when he went back and became a hero of Dali for hunting the two major beast generals, Han Guangji suddenly contacted him through the blue net. Coming, and Shi Zhong's eyes lit up. He had discussed with Han Guangji that when it was time to make a move, Han Guangji would notify him. The opportunity to build a career had come. However, connecting the transmission, Han Guangji rang out words that instantly turned his fiery heart into a wow of coldness. General and there's been a change in the plan. That Thunderbolt Fade doesn't know what happened. It actually disappeared. We're now being chased by the Ice Serpent. Please lead the army over to support us immediately. Han Guangji anxiously called out. What? That Thunderbolt Fei has disappeared? What the hell is going on? And Shi Zhong was stunned for a moment and hurriedly asked after it. He was already on his side, rubbing his fists and preparing to hunt down two beast generals to add another glorious battle to his general career. As a result, Han Guangji told him that the targets had disappeared. What the hell? It's a pit. His achievements. His brilliant achievements. It's gone just like that? Don't ask. Hurry up and provide support. If we don't, we're going to be frozen to slag by the ice snake. Han Guangji roared, not in the mood to chat much with Ang Shi Zhong. Damn it, they were now, being chased by ice snakes, in the sky, a ray of frost fell down, hitting them so hard that they only had the strength to flee in a mess, each frost ray, even more, froze water vapor, casting a tall ice wall around them, hindering their movement, if this continued, they were trapped by the ice wall, and they were going to become living targets for the ice snakes, and Shi Zhong was actually still wheedling with him and asking questions. So angry that he wanted to hit someone. Good. I'll send someone over right away. And Shi Zhong's face was gloomy, realizing the urgency of the situation. He couldn't care about anything else and hurriedly gave the order, instructing the lurking troops to set off. At once, a tank drove out from the mountains and forests, and a team of nearly a thousand soldiers, carrying machine guns and rocket launchers, raced towards the location of the cold pool. Halfway through their journey, they had already seen the ice serpent that towered over them, as huge as a skyscraper. Looking at the behemoth in front of them, many of the Dali soldiers' legs were fighting, so scared that they were a little afraid to move. The hundred-meter-long giant snake, with a body as thick as a pillar, was covered in fine white scales, exuding a morose cold aura. It was really too astonishing. As for Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the other Inferno Demon team members, who were regarded by Dali as transcendents like the god of war, at this moment, under the bombardment of the ice snake, each one of them held their heads in their hands and scurried away, not to mention how lousy they were. Snipers ready, tank guns ready to fire, and Shi Zhong's eyes stared and hurriedly ordered his soldiers to move. At the same time, the team responsible for escorting the nuclear missiles was also fully prepared. A warplane carrying a nuclear missile hovered high in the sky, ready to drop it at any time to deal a fatal blow to the ice snake. Of course, if they wanted to launch the nuclear missile, they had to wait for Han Guangji. Jin Changxiang and the army to retreat to a far enough distance before they could do so, or else they would all be destroyed together. Damn it! And Shi Zhong's gaze was gloomy. In this situation, it was difficult to even think about utilizing nuclear missiles. Their original plan was to let Qin Shi and the Ice Snake fight each other, while they themselves withdrew far away, dropping the nuclear missiles at a safe distance from the explosion. However, now, Qin Shi had let them off the hook, causing them to have to tangle with the Ice Snake. The most powerful nuclear missiles prepared could not find a chance to be dropped at all. Now, it could only be topped off with other weapons first. Fortunately, they had only used the nuclear missiles as their bottom card, and the army that was sent this time around was equipped with all kinds of weapons that were already very sophisticated, and would normally be enough to deal with a median beast general. In an instant, countless artillery shells and bullets, flashing with fire, whistled and blasted towards the ice snake. 
Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, seeing that Enshurzhong had finally brought his men over to support them, were instantly energized, urging the transcendent power in their bodies to launch a counterattack towards the Ice Snake. Lightning, flames, madly surged towards the Ice Snake. The battle erupted with a bang. Inside the cold pool, Qin Shi, who was happily absorbing the frost energy, all felt the strong vibrations coming from the outside world. Well, it looks like the Dali army has gone up against the Ice Snake. Qin Shi was comfortably lying down inside the cold pool, absorbing the frost energy and slowly evolving. Sensing the ground rumbling and shaking, he immediately probed out his spiritual power to check, only to see that outside. The giant white snake roared in the air, sending out a ray of frost. The air was filled with smoke and artillery fire flew about. Fight! Fight to your heart's content. When you guys are done fighting, it'll be my turn to come out. Trying to fish for a win? Thumbs down. The only one qualified to be a fisherman is the great divine dragon. Sheen sure assumed the posture of watching a good show, comfortably absorbing the frost energy while enjoying the great battle between the Dali Inferno team and the army. And the ice snake. There was a sense of excitement of watching a sci-fi blockbuster. Boom! Cannon fire of various colors blasted over towards the ice serpent. Modern technological weapons were not as precise and flexible as the transcendent power attacks of the Fey, but their power was undeniably powerful. Like a mountain tank, each shell was enough to blast huge holes in solid mountains. For example, tungsten alloy armor-piercing shells, with a penetrating power of between 600 mm and 800 mm. Even if the alien beasts had sturdy bodies and amazing defenses, they would still be blown up to the point of blood and flesh. Under the bombardment of heavy thermal weapons, strong as the ice snake could not help but let out a hiss of pain, the ice snake had fine defensive scales on its body, and it could defend itself even against armor-piercing bullets. However, it could prevent one, but not the armor-piercing bullets that were shooting from all over the sky. It had to open its mouth and spit out a ray of frost, freezing the various projectiles that shot at it. The transcendent power of the frost system was still quite strong in restraining modernized heavy heat weapons. A cannonball was struck by the frost ray and the low temperature directly dumbed it down. However, Ice Snake was now facing an army of over a thousand people. Under Ensure Zhong's mobilization, a cannonball was bombarded over non-stop. Plus, there were also Han Guangji and Jin Changxiang attacking at close range. Its situation became precarious all of a sudden. Faced with this situation, the Ice Snake's two triangular eyes became more and more grim. It tilted its head and let out a series of long hisses. Not long after, a large number of foreign beasts appeared nearby rushing over at its call. Be careful. It's a foreign beast driven by the Ice Snake. Team 1 and Team 9. You are responsible for intercepting and blocking these foreign beasts. And Shurjong's face changed slightly, but he still commanded methodically. They had anticipated this situation. For every beast general, there would be a multitude of beast soldiers being driven beside them. Han Guangji and Jin Changxiang could shake the people and have Shurjong bring his army over to help. Ice Snake could naturally shake the beasts as well. They had long been prepared. Immediately, there were two squads, driving tanks and transporting artillery, charging towards the surrounding beast soldiers who had rushed to support them. It's useless. You'll die today. Han Guangji, along with Jin Changxiang and the others, surrounded the ice serpent at close range and attacked it, their mouths emitting hideous roars of rage. Although the plan had deviated, it didn't allow Qin Shi to snipe at the ice snake, but just dealing with the ice snake would be enough for their group. Han Guangji vented all of his stifled anger from being stood up by Qin Shi as well as his cynical sarcasm all the way to the ice snake. The ice snake was furious. Its huge body arched high in the air and danced violently, and the water vapor in the air around it was extracted and condensed into a large number of ice crystals, forming a storm of ice mist that rushed towards the Dali army. But all the trees, soil and rocks that were swept into it, were all ground into slag by the high-speed rotating ice fog. Some unlucky soldiers and tanks were swept in and flew directly into the air. When they fell down again, the people were gone and the armored tanks were turned into a pile of broken brass. Under the ice snake's fury, Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others also did not feel good. They fought with the ice snake in close quarters, and they took the brunt of the ice mist vortex that erupted from the ice snake. One of the Inferno Devil team members couldn't escape in time and was accidentally swept up in it, his face instantly showing an expression of despair. Without waiting for Han Guangji and the others to come forward to support him, the next moment he was swallowed up by the ice mist. And then, a burst of blood-colored ice and broken flesh and bones fell from the air. It was clear that he was already in dire straits. How tragic. Xin Shi slumped down in the cold pool and sked. This image reminded him of the plague of the wild python. However, the horror of the ice snake could be tens of hundreds of times better than the mad python. Dali's army of more than a thousand men, even if it was divided to deal with the beast soldiers summoned by the ice snake, 
There were still seven to eight hundred men harnessing all sorts of weapons to battle it, the place was truly under fire. As a result, there were still nearly a hundred soldiers who were injured by the frenzied ice serpent. This number of casualties continued to expand. Of course, the ice snake was by no means easy to bear. The snow white, fine scales on its body, under the constant bombardment of artillery fire, blood and flesh turned over, and hideous wounds surfaced. Scarlet blood flowed down from the wounds, looking at its appearance. It couldn't last much longer. The ice snake is finished, so it's my turn. Chin sure felt the frost energy inside the cold pool. Under his absorption, the frost energy inside the cold pool was about to be finished by him. It was estimated that by the time the ice snake was finished, he would almost be able to end this trip of evolution. Continue. Increase the firepower. It can't hold on much longer. Seeing that the ice snake's movements were gradually slowing down and showing signs of exhaustion, and Shu Zhong's spirit was lifted and he ordered his soldiers to increase their firepower for the bombardment. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang and the others were all a bit exhausted at this point as well. However, they still persisted and summoned up the strength in their bodies to charge towards the ice snake. Hiss, the shell bombardment, coupled with the interfering attacks of the transcendent power, made the ice snake's situation even more critical. The snake's body twisting crazily on the ground as it let out an agonizing and desperate hiss. Bang! In the end, the ice snake's huge body fell helplessly to the ground, stirring up a piece of ice slag. Phew! Finally finished this ice snake, a median beast general. It's still really hard to deal with, seeing that the ice snake finally couldn't hold on anymore. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, immediately revealed expressions of relief. They were aching all over and had almost no strength left in their bodies, and their situation wasn't much better than the ice snakes. And Shurzhong also sent his soldiers to carefully approach over, ready to pack up the loot. Although the casualties are a bit high, we finally managed to kill this median beast general and acquire the corpse of a median beast general, so this damage is still within the acceptable range. And Shurzhong looked at the huge body of the ice snake lying helplessly on the ground, and an uplifting light appeared in his eyes. This was a median beast general. It was the first time that Dali had hunted a median beast general. As the general in charge of this hunt, his name would surely remain in Dali's history and be celebrated for countless generations. It's a pity that that thunderbolt fay actually ran away. Otherwise we would have hunted two beast generals this time. Thinking of this, and Shurjong's face suddenly looked a little regretful. That thunderbolt fay beast, an upper level beast general, could be worth much more than the ice snake. Even for a hegemonic country like Shang Nong, there weren't many upper level beast generals that had been hunted down. Han Guangji and Jin Changxiang, panting, sat down on the same spot to rest up, and when they heard in Shurjong's words, their faces were also a bit ugly. This time, they were really screwed over by Qin Shi, having to clash head on with the ice snake. Inside the Inferno team, there were several people who had all suffered heavy injuries. The one who was the most miserable was directly swept in by the ice mist and was ground into ice slag. Damn it, don't let me run into that foreign beast again. Inside the Inferno team, a hot-tempered team member shouted angrily, slamming his fist hard on the ground. Just then, a light and lively voice rang out. Are you guys talking about me? A huge shadow was cast down from the sky. Unconsciously, there were thunderclouds converging in the air. Han Guangji and Jin Changsheng's pupils snapped open, and their hearts all seemed to stop beating for a moment. They looked up incredulously. They only saw a gigantic foreign beast, under the shroud of thunderclouds, slowly emerge high in the air. Looking down at them, their scalps instantly went numb. A wave of cool air surged out from their spine and headed straight for the sky. It was the Thunderbolt Fey Beast. How did this foreign beast appear again? The Inferno Demon team members who were just over there angrily clamoring for Qin Shi not to be touched by him again were even more eager to raise their hands and viciously slap themselves a few times. Damn it. Speak of the devil. The excitement on the faces of the surrounding Dali army, which was cheering for having knocked down the ice serpent, instantly disappeared and was replaced by endless panic and alarm. There was actually another foreign beast. And looking at the aura, it seemed to be even more powerful than the ice snake. In order to kill the ice snake, they had all spent an unknown amount of energy, and at this moment, they were all full of fatigue. Many of them were even colorful and had lost their strength. They didn't even have the strength to lift their laser guns. Another even more powerful alien beast would be a bolt from the blue for them. Qin Shi transformed into a thunder and lightning foreign beast and teasingly looked at Han Guangji and the others. Just now, after absorbing the frost energy from the cold pool, he left and quietly lurked nearby. It was just the right time to take advantage of the fact that this group of Dali transcendents and the army had knocked down the ice snake and were greatly relaxing in their excitement to give them a head start. Your honorable exalted beast, you didn't leave? Han Guangji swallowed hard, a smile worse than tears on his face, and asked apprehensively towards Qin Shi. 
Yeah, didn't we agree on compensation? You guys haven't even given me the compensation yet. How could I leave? People have to be trustworthy, and so do fey beasts. Do I look like the kind of fey beast that is not trustworthy? Well, surprised? Surprised? Are you guys touched that I'm so trustworthy? Xin sure said with a smile. Han Guangji's forehead veins jumped straight up. MMP in his heart. If it wasn't for the fact that he couldn't fight, he hated to die with Qin Shi on the spot. This pitiful foreign beast, letting him off the hook, still had the nerve to speak to him about integrity. However, people under the roof, had to bow their heads. At this moment, they had just experienced a great battle with the ice snake, and each of them was exhausted, with colors hanging from their bodies, and facing an upper level beast general, they could not even fight against it. Thus, he could only make false pretenses with Qin Shi hoping to make him spare their lives. Yes, your honorable fey beast, I'm very happy to see you again. We've already knocked down the fey beasts in the cold pool. The resources inside are at your disposal. We'll help you move them out right away, Han Guangji said with a humble face. At the same time, in the chat group of the Blue Net, there was a frantic discussion with Jin Changxiang and Shizhong and the others. What should we do now? How did this foreign beast suddenly appear again? We can't even fight against a superior beast general in our current state. Damn it, this thunderbolt fey beast, it's clearly treating us like monkeys. It must have known about the existence of the ice snake for a long time, and purposely asked us to attract the ice snake, and hid to the side to watch the show. We've all been tricked by him, a foreign beast actually has such a high level of intelligence. It's simply unheard of. Now is not the time to discuss this. First think of a way to survive from this fey beast. What's the solution? We are finished, a superior beast general. Even us in our complete state are no match for it. Not to mention that everyone is now covered in injuries and fatigue? Someone shouted in despair. No, there's still a chance. At this moment, Han Guangji sent a message. Our nuclear missiles haven't been used yet. It's a weapon that's enough to kill the beast king. Once it explodes, this superior beast will die for sure. But once the nuclear missile erupts, we will have to play through as well. This nuclear missile is powerful enough to cover the surrounding three. Two square kilometers in zero. Sixteen seconds. Is it hard to believe that we are going to die with this foreign beast? And Shizhong said in a deep voice, his eyes resigned. He had only just knocked down a medium beast general, adding a glorious stroke to his resume as a general, and had yet to enjoy the honor he deserved. To die like this, he couldn't rest in peace even as a ghost. This is indeed a difficult problem, but it's not without a solution. Not far ahead is the ice serpent's lair, the cold pool. We can totally find a way to hide inside the cold pool using the terrain of the cold pool to avoid the killing power of the nuclear missiles. Han Guangji quickly said, This alien beast has something for us. Wanting us to carry resources for it, we can use this excuse to hide inside the cold pool before letting the fighters drop the nuclear missiles. And Shizhong's eyes flickered for a moment. This was a good idea. Once the nuclear missiles erupted, within the killing range, the only way to be the safest was to hide underground. The cold pool, being the lair of the ice snake, was filled with transcendent power and it was even more effective in resisting the various types of radiation generated by the explosion of the nuclear missile. The cool environment inside could effectively slow down the high temperatures generated by nuclear explosions. Let's do it then. We don't have any other way to go anymore. The other Inferno members said one after another. Everyone unanimously agreed with this plan. It was just that while they wanted to continue to make false pretenses with Qin Shi, Qin Shi had already lost interest in playing along with them. No need. The inside of the cold pool goes to be full of ice. There are no resources that I need. Do you guys think that I don't know that? Qin Shi sneered. The Dali crowd was dumbfounded. They had only just discussed a plan when they were completely blocked by Qin Shi. Should they be so ruthless? You guys are so bold. How dare you deceive me? Qin Shi looked down at Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, and let out a vicious voice. I was so kind as to give you the opportunity to make amends. And yet you treat me like this, hurting my pure and kind heart. What do you think? What should I do with you? The huge dragon might, which descended along with Qin Shi's words, was like an invisible mountain pressing down on everyone's heart, causing them to almost all gasp for air. Your Excellency the Fei Beast. A misunderstanding. This is a misunderstanding. Han Guangji's face changed wildly as he hurriedly shouted out. We didn't know that the resources inside the cold pool were useless to you either. Please give us the chance to remedy the situation. He bowed towards Qin Shi. Yes, if you want resources, we can find a way to help you obtain them. If the resources here don't work, there are resources elsewhere. Please do give us the chance to apologize and make amends. And Shizhong stared at Qin Shi with his eyes deadpan and screamed frantically. He did not want to die. Is that so? Qin Shi's eyes flickered for a moment as he said. I'm not a demon after all. So let's do this. 
As long as you tell me what other places within the Dali region have resources, I won't send you to hell. Xin Shi's words caused Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and Shi Zhong and the others to feel as if they had been pardoned. What they were afraid of was Qin Shi not caring and laying his hands on them, facing a superior beast general. They could only wait for death. Since Qin Shi was willing to give a chance, it would be fine. However, just as they were breathing a sigh of relief, Qin Shi once again gave an operation that made them choke. He performed his ability to move clouds and create a mist, dividing Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and Shi Zhong, and the others. Frost energy, in fact, belonged to a variant of water attribute energy, so along with the absorbed frost energy, Qin Shi's water attribute ability was also becoming stronger. Nowadays, even if he created a large, dense fog that covered several miles of land, it would not be a problem. After separating the Dali crowd, Qin Shi's spiritual power probed out while he executed the golden dragon secret technique, and with a wave of his dragon's claw, a golden light flashed past, shattering all the blue bonnet logins on their bodies and severing the possibility of them secretly stringing together through the blue bonnet. Only then did he say, now, you can tell me about the distribution of Dali's other resources, don't try to deceive me, you've already hurt me once, if you dare to deceive me again, I will never let you go. The crowd of Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and in Shizhong were separated into separate sections, and with the ability to move through the clouds blocking them, they couldn't see the others at all. It was tantamount to being locked up in a separate interrogation room. Moreover, Qin Shi had actually precisely destroyed the blue bonnet logins on them. This caused a thump in their hearts, giving them a very bad feeling. However, right now, there was no way for them to retreat. In the face of Qin Shi's coercion, they could only harden their heads and spit out the information they knew one by one. They did not dare to conceal or deceive even half a bit. After all, without being able to communicate, they could not guarantee that the others would or would not spill out the true information. Thus they could only choose to tell the truth. It was hoped that this thunderbolt alien beast would be true to its word and let them off the hook. Qin Shi slightly organized the intelligence that each person had uttered and compared them to each other. Very good. These people are quite sensible. The information given is not mixed with water. With their information. I won't need to work hard to find the distribution of Dali's resources. A smile appeared on Qin Shi's face. He waved his claw and removed the mist. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and Shi Zhong, and the others were a little more at ease when they saw their familiar comrades around them surfacing and appearing once again. Raising their heads, they looked at Qin Shi anxiously. Your honorable Fei, we've told you all the information you wanted. Can you let us go now? Han Guangji asked stiffly. Of course, I'm a good dragon who keeps his word. And if I promise not to send you to hell, I won't send you to hell. Qin Shi lowered his head towards them, opened his mouth and let out a whine. A snow-white light surged up from his body. A burst of freezing light that seemed to come from the cold martial era shot out from his mouth, instantly sweeping away all the Dali transcendents and soldiers around him. Han Guangji's eyes revealed a look of horror. This guy, not keeping his word? Didn't he agree to let them off the hook for giving information? And, this alien beast, isn't it of the lightning system? How could it emit frost-based light? Han Guangji's heart was filled with countless doubts. However, right now, there was no time for him to carefully consider it. With his eyes glazed over, he fought to activate the transcendent power in his body, and a blazing bolt of lightning surfaced, charging towards the projected frost rays, wanting to fight to the death. Jin Changxiang and the other Inferno Demon team members also desperately pressed themselves, not caring about the fatigue and injuries on their bodies, urging their light golden flames to resist. They appeared to be lowering their voices, wanting Qin Shi to let them off the hook, but never let their guard down. They had long been prepared to fight Qin Shi with their backs to the wall. After all, Expecting a foreign beast to speak to them about compassion was not very reliable in any way. The truth was exactly the same. Xin Shi had no intention of letting them go at all. However, even if they fought to the death, it was still useless in the face of absolute strength. Xin Shi's frozen ray was a secret spell from the ice dragon lineage, a powerful spell of the dragon race. The power was at least ten times stronger than ice snake's frost ray. The frozen ray, with the aura of freezing everything, froze the wind and clouds and sealed off the earth. Han Guangji. Jin Changxiang and their resistance was crushed through without mercy. Wherever the freezing rays passed, the thunder and lightning were mute and the flames were extinguished. The frosty white twin lines fell to the ground, and the thick frozen layer spread out towards the surroundings as if it were broken. The surrounding Dali soldiers who were crying out and frantically fleeing were dabbed by the power of the freezing rays, and they couldn't even cry out in despair. The whole person was instantly frozen into an ice sculpture and solidified in place. The ice was spreading and spreading rapidly, sweeping away in a merciless manner. Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, 
and Shi Zhong and the others were also completely frozen in unwilling despair. Looking from the sky, it was as if an ice sculpture fortress had been erected on the ground. Amidst the grandeur, it was permeated with cruel despair. I'm not being unfaithful. I only said I wouldn't send you to hell, but I didn't say I wouldn't send you to heaven. Xinxiu looked at the Dali crowd that was frozen into ice sculptures and said righteously, this group of Dali people had long been on his death blacklist. Dragging them until now to send them to heaven was already merciful enough. The freezing ray mercilessly buried everyone. The surrounding area of several hundred meters was plunged into a chilling hell. Xinxiu showed his true body and fell down. The freeze ray is still quite useful. Directly freezing everyone is quick and easy, and this beautiful ice sculpture should be enough to surprise Dali. Xin Shi whispered to himself and flew over towards the corpse of the ice snake. The ice snake was a median beast general, and its corpse was of great value. Even if it was used as food, it could make up for a lot of energy loss. It's a pity that such a big ice snake is too troublesome and a bit too conspicuous if we have to move it back to the eastern Xia region, or else we could have moved it back and added some research material for Professor Tang and the others. Xin Shi said, Every Fei beast was good research material, whether it was to study the genes and abilities of the alien beasts, develop targeted attack weapons, or extract transcendental energy from them, etc. They were all of great use. Eastern Xia was now in a stage of rapid development, and there was a great demand for these resources. It was a pity that he was currently in Dali's region, and it was really not good to move such a large alien beast. In that case, it would be better to simply eat it. Xinxi landed on the corpse of the ice snake and extended his dragon claw to scratch at the ice snake's wounds that had been flipped over by the cannonballs, ripping off a piece of snake meat. Just then, the ice snake's huge body trembled violently. Eh? Xinxi was just about to spit fire and roast the snake meat when he sensed the movement of the ice snake's body and was startled for a moment. Spiritual energy swept over, and after taking a serious look, he was instantly delighted. The ice snake actually didn't die. It was still alive. Just now. It was exhausted by the close-range attacks of Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and the others, and the long-distance strikes of the artillery shells, and fell to the dust. However, it didn't die immediately, but instead lay on the ground pretending to be dead. Frost system beasts have a unique advantage in this aspect of pretending to be dead. Once they pretended to be dead, their metabolism was reduced to the lowest level, and without careful observation, no signs of life activity could be seen at all. Even Xinxiu did not realize that the ice snake was actually pretending to be dead for a while. It wasn't until he was preparing to roast the snake meat and tore a piece of meat down from the ice snake's wound that the ice snake stirred in pain. However, although the ice snake was playing dead, but it was also really exhausted and had lost its ability to resist, especially in front of Xinxiu, a superior beast general. The dragon might emanating from Xinxiu's body oppressed it even more strongly than the other superior beast generals. It lifted its head with difficulty and looked towards Xinxiu who had landed on its body, and its icy triangular eyes revealed emotions of fear, timidity and pleading for mercy. Xinxiu's body was only half a meter long, compared to the ice snake that was nearly a hundred meters long, it was just a bit too pocketable. However, it was this beast that was pocket-sized in its eyes that exuded an aura that it didn't dare to resist at all. This was an instinct that came from the depths of its bloodline. Dragons were divine beasts, and also the eldest of the scale insects, the evolutionary endpoint that countless scale insect-like creatures pursued. The dragon's aura had a greater deterrent effect on scale insect-like creatures than other creatures. Grasping the torn off snake meat in his hand, Xin Shi surveyed the ice snake's pleading eyes. Should I spare the life of this ice snake? A flurry of crimson flames surfaced on his dragon claw, enveloping the ice snake meat. Soon, a nuisance barbecue sound rang out. Seeing his own meat, being barbecued by Xin Shi, a thicker fear appeared in the ice snake's eyes struggling to hold up its head. It nodded furiously up and down towards Xinxiu, pleading uncontrollably. It was too terrifying, watching one's own flesh and blood, being slowly torn off and grilled by other foreign beasts, was too cruel to the snake. Xinxiu hadn't thought about whether or not to let the ice snake go. He threw the grilled snake meat into his mouth and decided to taste the flavor first. Yuck, it's not very tasty. Soon, Xinxiu frowned. The flavor of the ice snake meat was a far cry from what he had imagined. He had eaten the meat of quite a few snake-type exotic beasts, and the meat was very tasty and chewy. This ice snake's meat, the flavor was much worse. It was an ice attribute foreign beast, and its blood and flesh contained ice attribute energy inside. After colliding with the flames, it didn't inspire a more beautiful flavor, but instead destroyed the structure of the meat. As a snake, it actually looks so unpalatable. It's really a disgrace to the snake. Xinxiu threw away the snake meat in his hand, flew to the ice snake's head and unceremoniously rebuked, forget it, for the sake of the frost energy hair inside your lair, I'll spare your life, just now, he took advantage of the ice snake's battle with Han Guangji, 
Jin Changxiang, and the others, as well as the Dali army, and directly stole home, and the frost energy inside the cold pool was devoured by him, not to look at the face of the monk, look at the face of the Buddha, looking at the cold pool of frost energy, helped him awaken the ice dragon secret method, leaving the ice snake a life as compensation well, otherwise, stealing the ice snake's home and then killing it would be a bit undraconian, moreover, it would be difficult to carry the corpse of the ice snake back to eastern Xia, but a living ice snake, there is always no problem, it just so happens that he can let it swim back to Dongxia on its own, and in the future, it will be Dongxia's resident research fodder to help him guard Dongxia, Qin Shi thought in his mind, he had already thought of several plans to squeeze the ice snake, naturally, the ice snake did not know that Qin Shi was thinking about how to squeeze it with a black heart, hearing that Qin Shi was willing to let it go, the ice snake's ice cold triangular eyes suddenly revealed a humanized, grateful look after the robbery, hiss, it tilted its head and let out a long hiss, expressing its gratitude and submission to Qin Shi, in fact, speaking of which, it's also a good idea to take in some foreign beasts as minions, Dongxia's current development is still too slow, the speed of dragonization cultivation is not as fast as genetic modification, if we can have some foreign beasts to assist us, we can undoubtedly raise Dongxia's strength at a very high level, Qin Shi pondered in his heart, this idea, he had already had it a long time ago, it was only that his strength did not allow it before, the temperament of foreign beasts was untamed, even if he was a divine dragon and could crush them in terms of his bloodline, those foreign beasts would not be willing to submit if their strength was not enough, thus, those beast generals within the eastern Xia market realm area were basically barbecued after he hit his door, with some beast soldiers, there wasn't much of a problem in subjugating them, however, these soldiers were not something Qin Shi was too keen on, if he wanted to take in, he would at least have to take in a beast general, the ice serpent in front of him was the first beast he had subdued, however, this ice snake was only forced by circumstances, which made it submit to him, if the ice snake hadn't been injured by the combined efforts of the Inferno Fiend team and the Dali army, and only had the strength to breathe, it definitely wouldn't have been able to submit so easily, when it regained its strength, it would just be possible for it to rebel again, unfortunately, Inside the Dragon Clan's secret method I awakened, there is nothing about mental power control, otherwise it would be possible to directly control the Ice Serpent and put an end to the possibility of it having a rebel bone in its head, Qin Shi thought in his heart. The Dragon Clan's inheritance was diverse, and there was naturally no lack of various spiritual secret methods and secret methods for controlling and enslaving other creatures, it was only that these secret methods were too high-end, he hadn't grown to the point of awakening these secret methods yet. The various dragon secret methods that Qin Shi had currently awakened were all basic secret methods that had evolved in a certain direction, they were various methods of applying energy, there was no spiritual power involved in them, in fact, the mirage dragon lineage within the dragon race is very good at the application of spiritual power, able to create mirages with spiritual power, and the most powerful ability of the mirage dragon lineage is even able to turn reality upside down, constructing the real world with spiritual power, Qin Shi's gaze flickered, his ability to soar into the clouds was related to the ability of the mirage dragon vein, it was possible to create cloudy illusions and confuse one's senses, however, he currently, could only stay at the level of mesmerizing people, and was not yet able to utilize this ability to control other creatures, and in order to awaken the secret method of the mirage dragon lineage, it required a huge amount of spiritual power, this could be even harder to find than ordinary transcendent energy, however, it just so happens that I'm going to hit the rest of Dali. It's not like I didn't have a chance to temper the ice snake along the way. I believe that after strolling around Dolly, it should be enough to deter the ice snake from betraying it. Qin Shi looked down at the ice snake. As long as he was strong enough, even without mind control, he believed that the ice snake would not dare to betray him. Meanwhile, the Dolly officials were plunged into an earthquake like fear. The hunt for ice snake was crucial to Dolly. Dolly had been sending people to keep an eye on the progress of this matter. When the news of the Yen demon team and the army led by Eun Shi Zhong, all of which had been wiped out, was sent back, all of Dali's top brass were dumbfounded, what happened, why did the Yen devil team and general and Shi Zhong's army get wiped out, who can tell me why, in the Dali imperial city, in the chief's office, the Dali chief almost slammed the table to pieces, yelling frantically towards the officials who had rushed over at the news, at this moment, he had the feeling that the sky was about to fall, the previous inferno team had gone to find trouble with eastern Xia, and had been lost in the ruins realm, with no bone crumbs to be found, they had managed, with great difficulty and at great expense, to raise another inferno team, the new captain was still a transcendent who had used a mid-level beast general level genetic modification and possessed the battle power of a lower level beast general, Dali was counting on the new inferno team to clear the obstacles inside the market realm for them and lead Dali to rise, 
In the end, how long has it been? The Inferno team was actually wiped out again. Moreover, it had also taken in an army the size of a thousand men. We mobilized our scouting equipment to probe. And based on the scene, we surmise that the Inferno team and General and and the others should have perished under the attack of the Ice Serpent, which is far more powerful than our prediction. Another general from Dali said in a deep voice, when Han Guangji reported the situation, he only said that Qin Shi was a thunder and lightning exotic beast. Instead, the reconnaissance planes that Dali had sent to check out the situation had captured the sight of Han Guangji and Unxi Zhong's crowd, frozen in ice. This was clearly a frost-based ability. Therefore, they rightfully believed that it was the ice snake that froze Han Guangji and Unxi Zhong's crowd to death. How is that possible? We've double-checked that the ice serpent is only a mediate beast general, and it's impossible for a mediate beast general to be this powerful. Immediately, someone questioned it. Under normal circumstances, an army of several hundred people equipped with enough weapons would be perfectly capable of resisting a mid-level beast general. An army of a thousand people in size would be more than enough to deal with a median beast general. Or else, other than this reason, can you think of any other possibilities? The general who opened his mouth asked rhetorically. The only people left at the scene were Han Guangji and Unxi Zhong, who had been frozen into ice sculptures, which was clearly a frost-based transcendent power. Within Dali, other than the ice serpent, were there any other more powerful frost-based extraordinary beasts? All right, what's the point of arguing about this now? It is imperative to find out where the ice snake has gone. The fact that we didn't find the body of the ice snake at the scene means that the ice snake isn't dead. A median beast will be enraged by us. And now that it's lost track of it, once it retaliates against us, that kind of consequence, I don't think anyone would be willing to bear it. Another general stood out. His words caused everyone's faces to change wildly. Indeed, an angry and frenzied median alien beast, its retaliation would be extremely fatal to any country. Although it was said that an army of a few hundred people, equipped with enough weapons, would be able to resist the beast general. However, this was only a one-on-one, -on -one, ideal algorithm that set aside all external influences. In reality, because of the environment of the market realm, the beast soldiers, and other factors, it was very unrealistic to want to fight against beast generals with an army of just a few hundred people. A beast general often represented an army of foreign beasts. Nowadays, all countries were working feverishly to develop the market realm. At this time in Dali, if they were to be retaliated against by a median beast general leading an army of foreign beasts, it would be an extremely fatal thing. It would make them fall behind the other countries by a large margin. In an instant, the top management of Dali couldn't be bothered to grieve over the total annihilation of the Inferno team, and hurriedly sent out a message to inform the heads of the various bases in the Ruins realm to prepare their security defenses and be ready to fight against the retaliation of the Fey Beasts at any time. Their response was not wrong. Somewhere in the Dali market realm, Qin Shi was temporarily entrenched here with Ice Snake. The Ice Snake was lying on the ground, its serpentine body constantly squirming slightly as it repaired the injuries on its body. It had been attacked by Han Guangji, Jin Changxiang, and other Inferno Demon crew members, as well as being bombarded by artillery fire. And the injuries on its body were very serious. It was naturally impossible for Qin Shi to immediately take it to Dali's other resource lands to search for treasures. Instead, he first let it rest and recover its injuries before doing so. Although he treated the Ice Snake as a production team's donkey, it couldn't be squeezed like this. He still had a bit of a conscience. The life force of foreign beasts was strong. Two days later, the external wounds on the Ice Snake's body had basically recovered, and the wounds that had originally flipped open had begun to scar. It wasn't so easy to recover from the internal injuries. The injuries on its body were almost fatal, and if it wanted to return to its full strength, it would be impossible without 10 days and half a month of recuperation. As my little brother, actually being bullied by a human like this, it's really humiliating, go, big brother will take you to revenge. Shinshir stood on the Ice Snake's head waving his claws in a domineering manner and called out. Although the ice snake hadn't recovered to its full strength, it was already able to fight again. Chinshir didn't have the time to wait for it to recover completely. Seeing that the ice snake had rested enough and regained some strength, he immediately urged it and rushed towards the nearby resource land. Along the way, Chinshir realized that Dali's various bases in the market realm were in a state of panic. The soldiers inside were very tightly guarded, and the periphery even had tanks, cannons, and other kinds of heavy heat weapons on standby at all times. After the countries captured the market territory, they established quite a few bases, especially the places with sufficient resources were firmly guarded by armies. These armies had long since received notification from their superiors and were prepared to deal with the Ice Snake's retaliation. It seems that the deaths of the Inferno team and that General Watts's name have put Dolly on alert. Sheen sure muttered to himself. This was not something he was surprised about. 
Dali was at least a country. If it didn't even have this kind of responsiveness, it wouldn't have survived today. However, even if it was on guard, what was the point? Go, call all your men over and charge me. Chinshir plopped down on the ice snake's massive head, lifted his dragon claw and knocked on its head, and ordered nonchalantly. Since Dali had already reacted, he wasn't going to continue sneaking around and seizing resources. It was just a matter of directly dispatching beast soldiers and violently plundering. He wanted to see if Dali could hold back the onslaught of many beast soldiers. The ice snake's two triangular eyes gazed icily at the soldiers in Dali's base, spitting out snake letters and emitting hateful and agitated sounds from its mouth. As a median beast general, it was almost killed by a group of ordinary species battling to be bombarded with heavy heat weapons. This was a great shame for it. Chinshir's order was just what it wanted. The ice snake raised its head high, spat out scarlet snake letters, and let out a unique cry in all directions. Although the foreign beasts did not form a stable and orderly civilization and develop a language of communication like humans, however, there was also a unique way of communication. Under Ice Snake's urging, the numerous beast soldiers nearby rushed over. Flame pigs, blistering wolves, black water snakes, bloodthirsty lions, fong tigers, and so on, there were at least hundreds of beast soldiers. Ow! Roar! Hundreds of beast soldiers, roared one after another and their ferocious fury formed a rolling cloud of darkness that diffused towards the Dali base. Enemy attack, enemy attack, fey beasts are attacking, prepare to fight. In the Dali base area, the negative patrol soldiers' eyes glared as they hurriedly sounded the alarm. In the Dali base, everyone mobilized. It's the ice snake. Ice snake has really come to take revenge on us. Quickly, prepare the cannonballs. Sensing the frosty aura emanating from the ice snake, as well as the roars of the beasts rising and falling around them, a group of soldiers ran out from the base, mobilizing all kinds of tanks and rockets, and there were even fighters loading artillery shells that rose into the air, dropping ammo and bombardment from a high altitude. The battle instantly entered a white-hot state. Facing the attack of the beast army, the Dali military didn't dare to hesitate at all, and used the highest specification of firepower suppression from the very beginning. The beasts wouldn't talk to humans about tactics. Once they attacked, it was a very rough and direct charge, and the attack was fierce. The human army could only meet it head on. Boom, boom, boom. A shell fell from the base, from the sky, and exploded in the roaring group of alien beasts that rushed over. Around the base, earth and rocks tumbled, and a huge shockwave carrying high temperatures covered the vicinity with the explosion site as the center. In order to prevent the retaliation of the beasts, Dali had utilized the finest weaponry in all the bases, and all types of artillery shells were so powerful that being bombarded head on was no less than being attacked by a beast general at full force. Instantly, there were beast soldiers being blown up to the point of blood and flesh. However, the speed and alertness of the beasts were very fast, coupled with their very strong vitality. As long as they avoided the shells and were not bombarded head-on, it was not difficult to kill them. Therefore, even though they were facing the coverage of artillery fire, there were still quite a few fey beasts with red eyes that rushed to the front of the base. They even broke through the defense line and entered the base to wreak havoc. In particular, there was Ice Snake, a median beast general. Assisting, the transcendent power of the frost system was too much of a restraint against modernized hot weapons. As the frost rays swept by, many artillery shells were frozen and dumbfounded before they could explode. Therefore, even though the army in the Dali base kept changing weapons and mobilizing artillery shells to bombard, under the onslaught of the alien beast swarms, the situation was still very bleak. Report, a one base has been attacked by a swarm of foreign beasts, requesting for support, the head of the military in the base as early as the beginning of the battle, had already sent an urgent report towards the Dali military. When the top management of Dali received the news, they were all gloomy at once. A one base land, is a proven transcendent metal deposit? The transcendent metal inside, is a necessary resource for casting transcendent battle armor. There is no room for loss. The official in charge of transcendental research in Dali said urgently, although now, genetic modification technology was being implemented in a big way in the Blue Star countries. The countries had not given up other aspects of transcendent research. Transcendent Mecha was one of them. Bypassing the limitations of the transcendent species through mechas allowed ordinary people to harness powerful forces as well. In this regard, the Yangtai Empire, one of the five hegemonic countries, was the most developed. The mechs they had researched were already able to allow well-trained soldiers to compete with superior beast soldiers. The best mechs were even enough to rival beast generals. Only, the energy supply of the mechs was a big trouble. If the energy supply of the mechs could be solved, with the technological strength of the Yangtai Empire, even if they researched mechs strong enough to fight against the Beast King, it wouldn't be a problem. 
and the various special metal deposits in the market realm were essential materials for manufacturing various transcendent mechs. As a country, it was definitely impossible to put eggs in one basket. While Dali was cooperating with Shangnong, it was also cooperating with Yang Tai in terms of mecha. If these metal deposits were lost, it would be a huge blow to their mecha research. Immediately send the fighters from the nearest base to support them, the Dali leader decisively ordered. We've been warned in advance, and the strength of the guards everywhere is completely enough to resist the ice serpent and hold out for support from the nearby bases, a general said in a deep voice. This is actually a chance for us to take advantage of the opportunity to eradicate this ice serpent completely. Otherwise we won't be able to start our work of exploring the ruins realm if we keep being stared at by an extremely vindictive median beast general, another Dili official said. The ice snake was in the ruins realm, occupying a geographical advantage. If it was hiding with all its might and taking the time to give them cold knives, they really couldn't do anything about the ice snake. But since it had ventured out and attacked Dolly's base with such fanfare, they had caught it in the act. Then it would be dead. The surrounding Dolly officials all nodded in agreement. A foreign beast that was so harmful really couldn't be left unchecked. However, not waiting for them to finish their discussion, the bad news came. A one base fell. Dolly's response was indeed timely, and the various defense equipment was also in place. Even if they were to deal with the attack of a group of alien beasts led by a median beast general, they were still able to block it down and survive until the support from the other bases. However, they had missed Qin Shi's presence by a thousand calculations. The military force in the A1 base area was enough to counteract an alien beast swarm led by a median beast general, but if they added an upper level beast general, it would be hard to say. Seeing that the Fei beast swarm was blocked by the Dali army, and it was difficult to attack the base area for a while, Qin Shi directly struck out. He stood on the head of the ice snake and opened his mouth to gulp out a freezing ray. Shinshir's freezing ray was much more powerful than the ice snake's frost ray. The frost white ray landed on the ground like a beam of light cutting through, but all the Dali soldiers that were touched by the ray were all instantly frozen. The weapons of various colors in operation were frozen to a halt. Many of the soldiers did not have time to show their expressions of surprise, fear, and despair, and they were frozen into ice sculptures before they could even react to what was happening. The ice snake under Shinshir's feet, Seeing this scene, showed shock and horror in its triangular eyes. It was a frost system exotic beast, yet the power of the frost it emitted was actually no match for Chinshur, a dragon that had learned everything. The specialty was defeated by the synthesis. It even felt that if it was shot by a freezing ray, it would be frozen, worthy of being the boss. In the ice snake's heart, some of the small thoughts that arose due to the recovery of its strength suddenly fell silent once again. Fey beasts were unruly in nature and were hard to be tamed. However, there was one thing that recognized strength. Shinshir was only a small dot in its eyes, but the strength of this little dot made it only look at its back. Deterred by Shinshir's strength, it could only put away the arrogance in its heart. Shinshir didn't bother too much. Casually spitting out a few freezing rays and clearing some of the stragglers in front of him, he immediately urged the beast soldiers around him to increase their attacks. With his help, the beast swarm quickly broke through the Dali soldier's defense line and rushed into the base to wreak havoc. Shinshir, on the other hand, flashed like a bolt of lightning and arrived at the location of the mineral deposit in the base area. A large metal deposit surfaced in front of his eyes. Dolly attached great importance to this metal deposit, and was stepping up its efforts to mine it, piling up a large amount of raw ores next to it that hadn't yet had time to be transported away. Now, all of them were cheap to Chin sure. Not bad, even though it's a metal deposit. All the metallic transcendent power contained here is quite a lot. It can strengthen my mastery of the golden dragon secret method. Chinshir looked at the large amount of raw metal or piled up in front of him and opened his mouth wide to inhale. Instantly, the metallic transcendent power contained in the raw metal ores escaped and were swallowed into his body. And with the loss of the transcendent power, these metal deposits instantly turned into ordinary metals, their value greatly reduced. In fact, Chinshir could still refine these ordinary metals and extract the metallic energy, turning them into scraps. Only this was a bit time consuming and laborious. He was in a hurry to catch up now, and his time was precious so he couldn't waste it on this. After thinking about it, Shinshir decided that it would be better to leave a mouthful of soup for Dolly. Being a dragon should be conscientious. Shinshir swallowed the soup in one gulp, and after absorbing the transcendental energy in this deposit, he immediately rushed to the next scene without stopping. While the military force mobilized by Dolly is still not very strong, within the range that he and Ice Snake can cope with, he has to hurry up and plunder as many resources as possible. Otherwise, when Dolly gets really manic and mobilizes stronger weapons, or even nuclear weapons to bombard, he'll just have to run away. When Chinshir rode the ice snake and ran far away, the support from Dolly's other bases only came late. When the news was sent back, it caused an uproar. 
The top management of Dali were all numb. They had just discussed to send a large army to get rid of Ice Snake. The metal deposits in the A1 base must be preserved. As a result, the A1 base fell. Moreover, the supporting soldiers entered the mining area in the A1 base area to check it out and found that it had been severely damaged. The metal ores that contained extraordinary power inside seemed to have all turned into ordinary iron ore. In one fell swoop, it had gone from a rare treasure to a broken iron. This loss was too tragic. Damned foreign beasts, how could this happen? The A1 base has fallen too quickly. Are those armies eating their words? Wait, why would the Fey beasts go and destroy the mineral deposits? If they were just trying to get back at us, destroying the base would have been fine. There's no need to even destroy the mineral deposits? The Dali executives were shocked and furious, and when they came back to their senses, their hearts were filled with doubts. If Ice Snake was determined to retaliate against them, whether it was killing people or destroying the buildings and equipment in the base, they could understand. To specifically go and destroy the mineral deposits was a bit strange. Could it be that the foreign beasts could still know that the mineral deposits were important to them? Deliberately destroying the mineral deposits to combat them? Moreover, from the scene that was transmitted back, the destruction of the A1 base by this group of foreign beasts was extremely targeted. It seemed to be specifically running towards the metal deposits. This filled their hearts with doubt. But soon, they didn't have time to think about it in detail. Report, the Ice Serpent is leading a group of alien beasts towards the nearby D3 base, where there is also a mining area. The scouting team transmitted new information. What? Immediately mobilize the fighters and support them at fire speed. At all costs, this ice snake must be killed. When the Dali leader heard this, his eyes glared and he bellowed loudly and furiously as he slammed the table. The warplanes supporting the A1 base immediately turned towards the D3 base. This time, Dali's support was much faster. Shinsha rode the ice snake and was attacking the D3 base, and before he could take the place, a dozen fighter planes flew over. As soon as they flew over, they immediately launched an attack with all sorts of shells being projected down for no money. Instantly, explosions resounded through the sky. The beast soldiers summoned by the ice snake were killed in the blink of an eye. Moreover, facing the air control of the fighter planes, it was difficult for the beast group to dodge and could only take a beating. Fighters are rather a nuisance. Shinshir stood on the ice serpent's head and looked towards the dolly fighters high in the sky. Inside the market realm, sending out fighter jets was actually a very dangerous thing. Fighter jets flying over high in the sky would easily attract the attention of avian beasts. Even some stealthy planes would find it difficult to escape the perceptions of the ferocious birds. A single upper beast soldier level ferocious bird could destroy pieces of fighter planes. Avian alien beasts, whose true battle power might not necessarily be stronger than those on land, were instead more difficult for humans to deal with. However, there weren't any powerful avian alien beasts within the Dali's market realm region. Thus they could go on a rampage and send their war machines to dominate the high altitudes and bombard the alien beast swarms. However, to me, it's just a small matter. Shinshir naturally wouldn't sit back and watch the alien beast swarm being bombarded. Although these weren't his men, he didn't even feel any pain if they died cleanly. However, he still had to rely on these beast soldiers to help capture Dolly's base and plunder resources. If the beast soldiers died out, he would have to do it himself, making it even more troublesome. Shinshu rose up in the air and performed Tong Yunji Mist, turning into a cloud that floated high up in the sky, before opening his mouth and spitting out Dragon Thunder, slashing towards the warplanes that were bombarding the alien beast group. At once, high above the sky, thunder and lightning flashed. A streak of golden lightning, connected into a network shrouded towards the combat aircraft. Combat airplanes generally had lightning protection measures, such as inert gas protection systems. In the face of ordinary lightning, it could effectively prevent the airframe from being damaged by lightning. But Qin Shi's dragon lightning, a transcendent power, was no ordinary lightning. The war machine's lightning protection system was rendered useless under Qin Shi's lightning. The destructive thunder that carried out his will hit the warplanes so hard that they shattered the hatch covers directly. One by one, the warplanes fell down from the air with thick smoke. They even directly exploded in the air, turning into a brilliant firework. After doing all this, Shinshir flew back to the ice serpent's head and continued to spit out freezing rays to help the surrounding beast soldiers attack the base. Without the help of the fighters, the D3 base also quickly fell. Shinshir did as he had done and went in to devour all the transcendent energy contained in the metallic resources inside the D3 base area. He had long devoured a large amount of golden transcendent energy. And having awakened the golden dragon secret method, he absorbed the golden energy very quickly. The gold energy in the mine was devoured by him in a few moments. And then, quickly rushed to the next one. When the news traveled back to Dali, the executives were all about to explode. Two bases fell in a row. Since Dali had explored the ruins realm, it was the first time that there had been such a large number of casualties. 
This matter even alarmed the other surrounding countries. There were spies present in every country. Plus, Dali's market realm area was neighboring quite a few countries, and the area that everyone was responsible for wasn't very large, and it was hard not to be monitored by other countries when such a violent battle occurred. For a time, the neighboring countries were alarmed and sent a large number of reconnaissance planes into the Dali region to investigate. As Dali's neighbor and mortal enemy, Dongxia naturally received the news in the first instance. Dali's base in the market realm has actually been overrun by foreign beasts? That said, didn't they already capture the area of the market realm they were responsible for and suppress a large number of foreign beasts? How is it that they were suddenly counterattacked by the foreign beasts? Why do I get the feeling that there's a divine dragon's handiwork here? It can't be the divine dragon that's messing things up, right? In the eastern Xia base, Lu Yong Zhao, Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and many of the heads of the various districts were sitting in the unification center discussing. The first time they obtained the news, the eastern Xia crowd thought of Qin Shi. Qin Shi happened to enter Dali's region. For Dali to explode this kind of thing at this time, it would be hard to say that it had nothing to do with Qin Shi at all. It would be hard for them to believe it. However, the news coming from Dali's side says that they were attacked by a median beast general ice serpent. So it seems to have nothing to do with the divine dragon? It's the same whether it has anything to do with it or not. Now that Dali is already a place of wrongdoing, it's very unsafe for the divine dragon to stay there. Lu Yangzhao's face was serious as he ordered in a deep voice. I'll contact the divine dragon immediately to inquire about the exact situation. You guys hurry up and mobilize to get ready to receive the divine dragon. With such heavy losses, Dali would definitely be angered and might use nuclear weapons. Qin Shi was currently unable to resist nuclear weapons. If Qin Shi was really up to something, they had to find a way to receive it. Good. Ying Di, Tong Jiao, and the others, knowing the seriousness of the matter, immediately nodded and left to deploy the operation. Lu Yong Zhao, on the other hand, contacted Qin Shi through the blue net and asked for a detailed message. Ah, military governor, I'm busy, what's the matter? Qin Shi was riding the ice snake, excitedly attacking another dolly base, when he received Lu Yong Zhao's contact request and smoothly clicked on it. He had been wearing the blue bonnet login that Dong Xia had specially prepared for him, except that he rarely contacted Lu Yong Zhao and the others if he had nothing to do. Lu Yongzhao was silent for a moment and said, So the thing over there in Dali, was it really you who messed it up? That's right. Why? Qin Shi returned. Lu Yongzhao took a deep breath and reminded, We received news. Now that Dali has shaken the country, they are afraid that they will send out nuclear weapons to deal with you regardless of the cost. Your situation is very dangerous right now. It's better to rush back to Dongxia as soon as possible. The fall of two consecutive bases, thousands of soldiers killed and the destruction of two precious mineral deposits was enough to make Dali's top brass so heartbroken that they couldn't breathe. Plus, now that the news had gotten out, there was no telling how many countries were looking at Dali's jokes. Dali executives, nerves are on the verge of collapsing madness, although seeing Dali defeated, Lu Yongzhao heart is very cool. In the past, Dali did not have something to provoke East Xia, and now finally kicked the iron plate. However, it would be dangerous for Qin Shi to continue staying in Dali's region. Compared to watching Dali's hilarity, it was still Qin Shi's safety that was more important. Well, it's more or less what I predicted. Okay, I'll go back immediately after taking out this base. Qin Shi rode on the ice serpent's head, his eyes flickering as he looked at the Dali's base in front of him. He listened to the advice very well. Lu Yangzhou's words made sense. The Dali executives were about to go crazy now. It was a dangerous thing for him, a normal dragon, to stay with a bunch of crazy people. However, having all come here, not devouring the resources in this base in front of him always felt like losing a billion dollars. Attack, not down this base, and you guys can take a vacation. Qin Shi raised his dragon claw and knocked the ice snake's head, running around so many places in a row, sparring with the army's artillery. The ice serpent and the beast soldiers it summoned were all a bit overwhelmed. One by one, they looked as if they had been drained. Working continuously, a machine would smoke, let alone a body of flesh and blood. After finishing off this base, Everyone could disperse. The ice serpent's spirit lifted and once again raised its head, hissing, urging the beast soldiers under it to attack. Meanwhile, Dali officials, numerous Dali officials were enraged. Damn foreign beasts, they are just too arrogant. We can't continue like this. The surrounding countries are now looking at us as a joke. If we can't wipe out this group of fey beasts as soon as possible, we, Dali, will be reduced to the laughing stock of the whole world. I apply for the use of nuclear weapons to destroy this group of alien beasts. One by one, Dali officials, successively spoke out. Now that things had gotten so big, countless people were watching Dali's hilarity. It was no longer just a matter of Dali's losses, it was also a matter of a country's dignity. 
As a country, Dali was attacked by a few alien beasts and suffered such heavy losses, not wiping them out and redeeming their dignity would be too great a blow to their prestige. Seconded. 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 After some discussion, the proposal was unanimously approved. Dozens of the latest model fighter jets carrying nuclear missiles flew towards the market realm. The highest general of the Dali military department personally commanded this group of fighters through the blue net, making sure to completely eliminate this group of alien beasts. Retreat. Everyone retreat. Let this group of alien beasts come in and wait for support. In the Dali base, the person in charge received the notification from the military and immediately commanded the soldiers in the base to retreat, not to fight head-on with the group of alien beasts. The support from the military will arrive soon. This group of foreign beasts can't be arrogant for long. Let's first build up our strength, wait for the support to arrive, and then strike once again to besiege this group of foreign beasts. The person in charge of the base and the soldiers, exiting the base, stood in the distance and stared angrily at the alien beasts attacking in. As warriors, they lost the territory they were guarding. It was indeed a great shame. Chin Shur urged the ice snake and entered the base area. Seeing that the soldiers in the base area did not put up any resistance and abandoned the defense of the place, his eyes could not help but shrink. It seems that Dali is going to make a big move soon. We have to speed up and run after absorbing the energy. Chin Shur pondered in his mind. The perverse behavior of the Dali soldiers caused him to feel a hint of urgency in his heart. He entered the mining area, lapped up most of the transcendent energy contained in the mineral resources, and without stopping, immediately called on Ice Snake to run away. Not long after Chin Shur ran away, Dali's fighter group arrived. A sound of wings swirling and stirring the air rang out. The lead alien beast is heading in that direction. Seeing the arrival of the fighter group's support, the person in charge of the base immediately became agitated, and had long since been unable to hold back his indignation towards the fey beasts, contacting Dali's highest general to report the situation. Just now, Chin Shur and the Ice Snake had left quickly, and they had not received orders and did not dare to chase after them. However, they had already secretly dispatched scouting planes to track them. The Dali Supreme General's eyes were stern, and he immediately commanded the group of fighter jets to chase after Chin Shur and Ice Snake in the direction they had fled. Chin Shur had long ago told Ice Snake to let the group of alien beasts spread out and flee, interfering with the judgment of the Dali side. However, the Ice Snake's size was too big, and even if Chin Shur performed Tang Yun Diao Mist to create clouds and mist to help it become invisible, its huge body would still leave behind obvious traces as it passed through the mountains and forests. Thus, after escaping for some time, Chin Shur and the Ice Snake were still discovered by the Dali military. It's the Ice Snake. Traces of the Ice Snake have been found. The fighter pilot immediately reported the situation. Very well. Missile launch. The highest general of Dali. Seeing this scene through the blue net, immediately ordered the attack. Boom. Boom. Instantly, several airborne cruise missiles were launched, accurately rushing towards where Chin Shur and Ice Snake were. The airborne cruise missiles had a precise striking ability that was not limited by weather or time and were able to pass through mountains, forests, tunnels, and other obstacles. Chin Shur and Ice Snake were hiding in the mountains and forests, covered by patches of giant trees, and there was no way for them to avoid these airborne cruise missiles. The cruise missiles exploded less than 60 meters away from Chin Shur and Ice Snake. A single firework exploded in the forest, carrying a terrifying high temperature and blasting power, crushing the nearby trees and rocks into dust. The violent shockwave blasted away the clouds created by Chin Shur. His and Ice Snake's figures surfaced in the eyes of the fighter pilot. This group of people from Dali, coming for real, they even sent out such powerful fighters. Chin Shur drilled out of the smoke and dust, looked up at the fighter jets hovering high in the sky, and couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. An angry hissing sound emanated from the Ice Snake's mouth on the side. The strike range of the airborne cruise missile was very precise, but it wasn't actually very powerful. Its main purpose was to strike against high-value targets such as enemy command headquarters, radars, oil depots, and power stations. Therefore, although the explosion just now was ferocious, it didn't cause Ice Snake or Chin Shur to suffer too much of a shock, just a bit of a gray head. However, whether they were injured or not was one thing. Being attacked was definitely annoying. Go! Chin Shur didn't bother with these fighters, once again creating a dense fog that covered a few miles. He brought Ice Snake and ran towards the eastern Xiao region. It wasn't difficult to deal with these few fighters, but these few fighters were obviously just an appetizer. There were even more terrifying weapons behind them. The dragon race's sense of crisis told him that if he didn't hurry and run, something even more terrifying would happen next. A thick white fog that dissipated and filled the air, spreading for miles and miles. Under the shroud of the thick fog, the fighter once again lost track of Chin Shur and the ice snake. Taking off clouds and driving fog was one of the natural abilities of the dragon race, 
creating a thick fog that possessed the function of stealth and hiding, and could also provide defense to a certain extent. Even electromagnetic scanning and infrared detection would be useless in the mist. The fighter jets circling high in the sky could only roughly determine the range of Qinshu and Ice Snake's location, and could no longer accurately lock onto them. Why is there suddenly such a heavy fog? Isn't the Ice Serpent a frost-type beast? The information didn't say that it knows this kind of tactic. At the Dali official command headquarters, the Dali Supreme General's face became very gloomy when he saw that the figure of the Ice Serpent was lost in the detection device. From the beginning to the end, they had not detected Qin Shi's presence, thinking that Ice Snake was the one who started it all. The fall of several of Dali's bases was all an act of retaliation by Ice Snake. Send out a wide-range missile bombardment for me to disperse this mist. The Ice Snake must be killed. Not only is our prestige of Dali at stake, but it will also affect Dali's position on the Blue Planet. Dali's highest general roared. No matter what, Ice Snake must die. Otherwise, Dali would definitely lose face. For a country to be forced to this extent by a median beast general, it would be a disgrace to say it out loud. Boom, boom, boom. The fighter group received the order and immediately launched a missile bombardment at all costs, dispersing the clouds and fog, trying to force out Chinshur and the Ice Snake. This method consumed a lot, but it had to be said that it did work. The cloud created by Qin sure had a very wide coverage, but it was also easily dispersed by the explosions and impact. Under the bombardment of a large number of missiles, the heavy clouds were torn apart, and the huge body of the ice snake was revealed from time to time. As soon as the fighters at high altitude saw the ice snake, they immediately chased after it. Qin sure rode on top of the ice serpent's head, looking at the fighters high in the sky without any panic, and continued to create clouds and fog. To him, creating clouds wasn't something difficult especially after having just devoured a large amount of transcendent energy. Performing a cloud in mist was just the same as moving around after a meal to aid in digestion. With a wave of the dragon's claw, a large area of clouds came out, filling the sky and covering miles of mountains and forests. Fighter groups need to drop a large number of missiles to tear apart such a wide range of clouds. He would like to see how many missiles Dali can consume. Moreover, between chasing and fleeing, he and Ice Snake were already close to the East Xia's market area. At this time, at the borderline of the Eastern Xia market area, Ying Di, Tong Jiao and the others, personally led the team, leading thousands of soldiers to be fully loaded and ready to receive Qin Shi at any time. In the sky, there were similarly weaponized fighter jets circling. As long as they entered the Eastern Xia region, they would be safe. General, the front is about to enter the region of Eastern Xia, do we still need to continue the pursuit? The commander-in-chief of the fighter group reported the situation towards Dali's highest general, Hun. The Dali Supreme General's gaze sank. After thinking about it, he gritted his teeth and said, Continue, we can't let the Ice Snake leave. This was the market realm. It wasn't on the Blue Planet. And the division of the regions of the countries wasn't that strict. On the Blue Planet, countries were still often provoking border battles, let alone in the market realm. Today, no matter what, he had to slaughter this Ice Snake. However, not long after his order was given, the fighter group received a warning from the East Xia side. East Xia's territory is ahead. Dali fleet, please hurry up and leave. Otherwise we will regard your behavior as aggression against East Xia and launch a counterattack. The East Xia's fighter group circled, slowly approaching towards the Dali fighter group, and issued a stern warning. At the same time, Qin Shi had already ridden Ice Snake and entered the area of Eastern Xia with the help of the cover of clouds. Qin Shi had long ago instructed the Ice Snake to not harm the soldiers of East Xia. The East Xia side, also knowing that the Ice Snake was Qin Shi's newly accepted little brother, made way for them and allowed them to escape from into the East Xia region. And then, the army rallied and the fighters circled, blocking the front of Dali's fighter group. Damn, this group of East Xia pigs, what are they doing here to make a scene? At Dali's command headquarters, Dali's highest general saw this and was so angry that he almost smashed the monitor screen in front of him. Contact the person in charge of Dali for me. I want to talk to them. The Dali supreme general roared angrily. Soon. He connected with Lu Yongzhao, the highest general of Dali. The counterpart was the military governor of Eastern Xia, and it was Lu Yongzhao who was personally commanding this pickup operation. Lu Yongzhao, what do you mean by this? Dali's highest general, Han Junping, immediately roared and growled at Lu Yongzhao as soon as he got through the connection. Han Junping, I still have to ask what you guys mean. Invading our Eastern Xia's region three times, are you trying to provoke a national war? Lu Yongzhao didn't spare him and disliked him nonchalantly. We're chasing and killing foreign beasts. Don't tell me you're not clear about this. Han Junping angrily questioned. Hurry up and get out of the way of your army and don't block us from dealing with the foreign beasts. If we let the ice snake escape, can you afford to take the responsibility? He slapped the table and shouted his rebuke. 
Lu Yongja was almost told to laugh. Hunting down the ice snake is your dolly's business. What's it got to do with us? Are you teasing me? You are incapable yourselves. You were humiliated by a foreign beast that captured your base. And you still have the nerve to tell us that you are responsible? Lu Yongjiao couldn't help but snicker. The thick flavor of mockery was about to pounce down the blue net in front of Han Junping. When Han Junping heard this, his face turned red with shame, anxiety and anger. Fei beasts are the enemies of mankind. We are protecting the blue star and sharing the blue star's consciousness. Are you East Xia stopping us? Do you want to conspire with the Fei beasts? Han Junping spoke vehemently, immediately snapping a big hat onto Dongxia's head, standing on the moral high ground to harshly condemn. These words were a bit of a heartbreaker. It was close to explicitly accusing Dongxia of being a human traitor. Han Junping, watch your wording. Beware of me suing you for slander. Lu Yongjiao snapped. You blocked us from chasing the ice snake and let go of a foreign beast that is extremely harmful to humans. This is an ironclad matter. If you don't get out of the way, I'll go to Blue Star Awareness and sue. Let's see how you're going to handle yourselves. Han Junping threatened. Lu Yongjiao heard this and was instantly happy. Good guy. Moving long. What a drop. Blue Star consciousness has only one son. You Dolly? Their Dongxia wasn't born of Blue Star? Go ah. Uh, go ahead and sue. Anyway, if you dare to cross the eastern Xia border, we will dare to open fire. Don't say anything. Lu Yongjiao didn't need Han Junping's set of words and disliked him very hard. And then he didn't give Han Junping a chance to open his mouth and directly hung up the communication. Really think he is scared? Dongxia guards its own territory. This is the Blue Star consciousness personally divided for each country. Is to sue to the Blue Star consciousness, is also Dongxia accounted for. As for the matter between Qin Shi and Ice Snake, it's not good to realize that Qin Shi is a native Blue Star dragon. As the only transcendental species on the Blue Star, or a divine beast, in the eyes of the Blue Star consciousness, Dali has no Qin Shi is important is still a matter of opinion. Lu Yongjiao even suspected that Qin Shi is the crown prince of the Blue Star consciousness. Everyone else has to take a back seat. Ice Snake is Qin Shi's new little brother. The conflict between Qin Shi, Ice Snake, and Dali was, in the eyes of Blue Star consciousness, at best, a small fight between their own children. As long as it didn't go too far, the Blue Star consciousness wouldn't bother with such things. Bang! Han Junping was so angry that he slammed his fist on the table. Dong Xia, bullying people too much. He couldn't wait to have the fighter group directly drop nuclear missiles. However, this thought he only dared to give it a whirl in his mind, not even daring to think about it much. Don't look at Dali frequently provoked Dong Xia, but most of them are just mouth. Occasionally a little friction. Absolutely do not dare to take the lead in firing to start a war. Whoever makes the first move is at a disadvantage, especially in today's era, the era of Blue Star consciousness manifestation. Blue Star Mom is watching from the sky. It's too late for everyone to listen to mom. Competition between countries. Small frictions. The blue star consciousness is not going to bother. But if they dared to start a civil war that spilled out of their brains, blue star mom would probably be the first to get them killed. General. What should we do now? The pilot of the Dali fighter group asked towards Han Junping. They had been hovering at the borderline of the eastern Xia region for so long that they couldn't even see the shadow of the ice snake. Damn. That was close. I should have known we should have projected the nuclear missiles earlier. This group of East Xia people, they're really in the way. An official in Dali roared angrily. Nuclear missiles were not like ordinary missiles, where various preparatory steps needed to be carried out for the launch. After all, it was powerful and harmful. Moreover, Dali was not a big country after all, and possessed a limited number of nuclear weapons. So if the specific location of the ice snake was not locked, the error in the range of delivery was too large, and it was difficult to ensure the complete annihilation of the ice snake. When the time comes, if it doesn't kill the ice snake, it will instead cause a huge waste. Therefore, the Dali command had been nervously calculating the location of the ice snakes, wanting to ensure that this nuclear strike would be able to eliminate them. As a result, the calculations went on and on, but they had missed the fact that the ice snake would actually escape to East Xia's territory. Actually, this may not be a bad thing. At this time, a wise Dali official spoke up. The ice snake was chased by our siege and hated humans to the bone. Leading a group of foreign beasts to attack our base is the best proof. Now that the ice snake has entered East Xia, the one who should have a headache is East Xia. That's right. This group of pig brains from Eastern Xia, bent on seeing our jokes and blocking us from pursuing the ice serpent, but didn't consider that they're indulging the tiger and leading the wolf into the house. When the ice serpent recovers and makes a big mess in Eastern Xia's territory, I'd like to see what kind of face this group of people from Eastern Xia will have. Someone else chimed in. When the Dali chief and the other officials heard this, their ugly faces eased a little. This was a reasonable thing to say. When the time comes, 
we can also give them a good show of blocking, so that Dongxia can also feel what we're feeling right now, a Dali official said in relief. It was as if they could already see the sight of East Xia being attacked by the ice serpent leading a swarm of foreign beasts, with smoke everywhere and heavy casualties. Retreat! Han Junping took a deep breath and unwillingly ordered towards the group of fighters. Dongxia had to go against them, and trying to cross the Dongxia army and chase after the ice snake was out of the question. He could only hope that everyone's guesses were right, and that after the ice snake entered the East Xia region, it would make East Xia suffer and repent for what it had done today. It's finally safe. Xin Shi rode the ice serpent and arrived in one of the East Xia's bases. After occupying the market realm, Dong Xia had also established large and small bases all over the place. It's a foreign beast. Heavens, what a terrifying fey beast. Is this a beast general? Seeing the ice serpent, hundreds of meters in length, snaking its way in and exuding a cold and penetrating winter-like aura all over its body, the guard soldiers in the bases immediately exclaimed in alarm, as if they were on the verge of an enemy. Don't worry, this is our own foreign beast. You guys keep guarding. Lu Yong Zhao, who had received the news long ago, walked out from the base area in his military uniform and explained towards the crowd of soldiers who raised their machine guns as if they were on guard. Everyone's pupils shrunk, and a strong look of shock appeared in their eyes. Own beasts? When did Dong Xia actually take in such a powerful foreign beast? This was a record-breaking matter. The countries on the blue planet had yet to hear of any country that had taken in an alien beast. Even now, with countries promoting genetic modification technology, Humanity had already stepped into the era of transcendent species. The most powerful individual power was even enough to rival the beast king. It was possible to crush numerous fey beasts, but this kind of transcendental species, which was achieved by fusing the genes of foreign beasts, still belongs to the low-grade goods in the eyes of foreign beasts. To put it bluntly, it is a bastard. They are still looked down upon by the beasts. Among the beasts, the bloodline hierarchy is very strict. A beast general often can drive dozens of hundreds of beast soldiers but it's just driving. It was an extremely difficult thing to make those beast soldiers submit and make them follow orders regardless of the danger. The beast soldiers would be compelled by force and be driven by the beast general. However, if they encountered something that was enough to threaten their own lives, they would most likely disobey the orders of the beast general. Ordinary beast soldiers were so unruly, let alone beast generals. If one wanted to make a foreign beast submit, they had to crush the other party in terms of strength, bloodline and beast charisma in order to do so genetically modified transcendence. Even their bloodline was crippled, and they had only obtained part of the transcendent power of the fey beasts. So naturally, it was even more impossible to subjugate the fey beasts. The fey beasts with untamed temperament would not yield to humans at all. Their own country had actually subdued such a powerful beast without a word. The shock in the hearts of these soldiers could be imagined. Not to mention them, even Lu Yongzhao was a bit excited. When Qin Shi traveled to the Dali region, he not only took away Dali's numerous transcendent resources, but also subdued a median beast General Ice Snake. When he learned of this news, his heartbeat accelerated in shock and excitement for a long time. A living beast general, not to mention how its strength could help Dongxia. In terms of research alone, it possessed massive value. Fey beasts were not divine dragons. The status of a divine dragon was placed there, and it possessed even more uniqueness. The professors and experts of the transcendent research base of Eastern Xia, every time they want to use discarded dragon blood in molted dragon scales as materials, they have to depend on Qin Shi's mood. They served him with kind words. Only when Qin Shi was in a good mood was he willing to show some discarded dragon blood from his hands. Cooperating with Professor Tang, they did some tests. If it's a foreign beast, then there's no need to worry about it. It could be built without worry. The ice snake held its head high as it looked at Lu Yongzhao, who was walking towards it with an excited face. And for some reason, it always felt that there was an aura about this guy that gave it a nasty chill. Obviously an ordinary species. How could it give me such a strange feeling? The ice snake flashed its triangular eyes and couldn't help but mutter in its heart. Its intelligence was not weaker than humans. It was just that alien beasts seldom communicated with each other, and were relatively more innocent than humans, worthy of being brother dragon's retainer. Ice snake thought in his heart. Xin Shi told ice snake that the humans in eastern Xia were his shoveling officers. Ice snake used the memories it had inherited, as well as its worldview to think, and rightfully treated Dongxia as Xin Shi's henchman. It was normal for a divine dragon's henchman to be a bit special, and as a median beast general, its status was definitely higher than these ordinary species. In the future, it would be Dongxia's number two foreign beast. In eastern Xia, under a dragon, 10,000 people were superior. Thinking about it like this, there was actually no harm in being Qin Shi's subordinate. Ice Snake pondered. Along the way, Qin Shi had helped attack the Dali base from time to time, and the strength he had displayed made the Ice Snake unable to rebel at all. 
the dragon might was even more of a natural suppression from the depths of its bloodline. Now, it had found itself another reason to submit to Qin Shi. Lu Yongjia led the ice snake and Qin Shi to the secret place inside the base, and only after holding back the other soldiers around him did Qin Shi withdraw his invisibility and jump down from the ice snake's head. Divine dragon, you really took too much of a risk this time. Almost Dali and the others were about to use a nuclear missile attack. Lu Yongjiao said as he looked at Qin Shi, with some fear in his heart. If Dali had used nuclear missiles, Qin Shi would have been seriously injured even if he didn't die. Who knew that Dali was actually so playful that it was about to fire a nuclear bomb at the drop of a hat? Qin Shi spat out. He was actually a little nervous in his heart. It wasn't true that he was able to absorb nuclear energy, and the defense capability of his dragon scales was stronger than even the Beast King. However, the destructive power generated by the instantaneous frontal outburst of a nuclear missile was something he was unable to resist right now. Fortunately, this time, it was always a surprise. I devoured the transcendent resources of several mining areas in Dali. Their transcendent research is bound to be dealt a severe blow, and they shouldn't have the leisure to go up against us again next, Xin Shi said. When Lu Yongjiao heard this, a smile appeared on his face and said, This time, Dali is considered to be disgraced to the extent of losing face having several bases captured by the alien beasts on their own territory. Where would they still have the face to confront us? It is estimated that they will have to walk around us when they come across us. Dolly had gotten on Saint Nong's thigh, sold her dignity to Saint Nong as a little brother, and gained Saint Nong's strong support, and was arrogant during this time. Team Inferno had made a name for itself throughout the Blue Star. Now, Team Inferno was gone again. This matter alone was enough to make them hurt so much that they couldn't breathe. Moreover, nowadays, the focus of each country was on developing the market realm, and the fall of several bases had caused Dali to lose a large amount of resources, which was a serious blow to their transcendent research, economy, diplomacy, and all other aspects. If Dali dared to be unaware of death again and come to provoke Eastern Xia, it would only be a self-inflicted humiliation. By the way, during this period of time, there have also been quite a few changes in the international arena. News has come from the Blue Star Consciousness that he will open up a wider range of ruins realms for exploration by all countries, one of which is to solve the demand for transcendent resources from all countries, avoiding countries from being caught up in the internal friction of the ruins realm scramble, and the second one is to alleviate the pressure on the void passage between blocking in those ruins realms with a relatively high level of danger. After pleasantly mocking Dali, Lu Yongjiao talked about another matter. During this period of time, it wasn't just between Dali and Eastern Xia that a conflict broke out in the market realm region. Among the other countries, there were also similar things happening. Along with the promotion of genetic modification technology, the demand for transcendent resources in each country was rapidly increasing. However, in the market realm regions that each country was responsible for, the resources were limited. Those hegemonic countries were fine. The market realm areas they were divided into were large, with a large number of beast generals and beast kings surviving in them. And so far, they hadn't all been captured. It was estimated that they could still explore for a long time. As for the other small countries, the area that they were divided into was not very large. For example, the market realm area that Dongxia and Dali had been divided into was only a total of a thousand miles in circumference. The resources that everyone explored were simply not enough. Many countries then hit the neighboring countries. Big wars didn't break out, but small conflicts occurred almost every day. If this continued, sooner or later, a major war would break out. In order to alleviate the pressure of its own blockade of the Void Passage, as well as to divert the conflicts between countries grabbing resources, the Blue Star Consciousness intended to open up some of the market realms with a relatively small degree of danger again. And this time, the Blue Star Consciousness didn't divide the regions for the countries anymore. For the newly opened market realms, all countries could send people in to explore. Whichever country was competent would naturally be able to obtain more resources. When Xin Shi heard this, he couldn't help but raise an eyebrow and said, the new ruins realm is actually open to all countries, so it should be even more dangerous. Has Blue Star Consciousness given any more detailed information? Lu Yongjiao nodded and said, Yes, Lu Yongjiao said in a deep voice, The Blue Star Consciousness has summoned all the countries that the new ruins realm will be even more dangerous inside, and that there are even Earth Scourge level foreign beasts present. When Xin Shi heard this, he couldn't help but say, There are Earth Scourge level foreign beasts inside the new ruins realm. So aren't the countries sending their people in to send them to their deaths? The Earth Bane level foreign beasts, surpassing the king level, in the calculations of the various countries, their strength was no longer something that could be dealt with by mankind's current weapons. Even if they were to be hit head-on by a large yield nuclear missile, they were estimated to suffer a few injuries at most. The reason why the foreign beasts above the king level were called earthly disasters and heavenly disasters, 
It was because foreign beasts at this level were completely unstoppable to humans like natural disasters. In front of this level of foreign beasts, humans could only struggle to survive. Lu Yongjiao explained, Inside the new ruins realm, although there are earth scourge grade foreign beasts present, there aren't many of them, so as long as humans don't mess with them, not much should happen. Humans were really too weak in front of earth bane level foreign beasts. To say that they were mole crickets would be an exaggeration. Blue star consciousness naturally wouldn't let humans go to their deaths, and had long considered this. There weren't many earth scourge level foreign beasts in the new market realm it had opened. There were only two or three of them. As long as humans didn't make a fool of themselves and run into the territory of an earth scourge level foreign beast, they would basically be fine. Even if they unintentionally strayed into the territory of an earth scourge level foreign beast, as long as they were careful, the earth scourge level foreign beasts might not pay attention to a tiny ant like a human. Moreover, Blue Star Consciousness said that inside the new market realm, there are ruins of extraterrestrial civilizations, which might possess other ways to master transcendent power. Lu Yangjia's tone was permeated with undisguised excitement. This was the point that most concerned the countries. Qin Shi was once again startled in his heart. The market realm was a combination of various inter-universe planetary wrecks, alien spaces, and civilization ruins. The existence of extraterrestrial civilizations within it was something that everyone had known for a long time. However, so far, everyone had only come into contact with alien beasts. Unexpectedly, this time, the Blue Star Consciousness would open up the market realm where the ruins of extraterritorial civilizations existed for everyone. Nowadays, on the Blue Star, not to mention the method of dragonization that was secretly implemented by Dong Xia, the only method that could explicitly allow ordinary people to master transcendent power was the genetic modification technology. Because of this one technology, Sacred Farmer had been in the limelight for a while. The technical service fees they collected alone earned them until their hands went numb. On the Blue Bonnet's country ranking, their ranking was even rising, leaving other countries behind. Whichever country could master a new method of mastering transcendent power and have the dominant power, it would definitely be able to occupy a position in the world today. It seems that the next competition will be fierce. Sheen Shur's eyes flickered. Previously, all the countries, basically, only acted within the area of the market realm that they were responsible for. And in the new market realm, the countries on the blue planet were going to compete together. This was undoubtedly a new challenge for the countries, but no country would give up this opportunity. Eastern Xia was also actively preparing its personnel. Although Eastern Xia already possessed the method of dragonization, no one could have too many methods to master transcendent power. Not to mention that the ruins of the extraterrestrial civilization might also contain the technology of the extraterrestrial civilization. This happened to be something that Dong Xia lacked. Very well, I have my eye on it. Qin Shi waved his dragon claw. Although he didn't know if there were any extraterrestrial civilization ruins inside the new market realm, but he was bound to get it. Since that's the case, then I'll lead the team from Eastern Xia to go in and explore. Qin Shi said in an imperative manner. The main reason was that East Xia really didn't have any people that could be sent out at the moment. The strongest ones were him and the ice snake that he had just taken in. Shenlong what level of strength are you at now? Lu Yongjiao asked. In terms of defense, it should be stronger than the average beast king. In terms of battle power, it hasn't reached the level of a beast king yet. But if I encounter a beast king, with the various abilities I've mastered, I won't be afraid of it that is. Qin Shi said after thinking about it. He had absorbed the frost energy in Dali and awakened the ice dragon secret technique. Originally, he wanted to break through to the beast king realm along the way. But unfortunately, it was still that much short. As for the transcendent energies contained in those deposits in Dali's base, most of them were golden energies, and he had awakened the golden dragon secret technique a long time ago. These energies, which could help him enhance the power of the golden dragon secret technique he had mastered, could not give him a boost in growth. Shin Shur estimated that he would have to absorb one or two other attribute energies before he could break through the level of a beast general and evolve into a beast king. It's just as well that I can look inside the new market realm for other attributes of transcendent energy. Shin Shur said, the matter of Dali could be repeated. He couldn't run to other countries' market realms to plunder resources and offend all of them. There was no need to make a mistake when there was no grievance or enmity. Divine Dragon you have absorbed the three attributes of flame, metal and frost transcendent power now. You can already extract and transform transcendent power from ordinary energy substances. Do you want us to help you collect other energies? Lu Yangjia's eyes twitched when he heard this. If Qin Shi could evolve to the level of a beast king, then they would definitely have an absolute advantage in the new market realm. According to East Xia's intelligence, currently, even Sacred Farmer had not produced a transcendent who could fight against a beast king alone. Transcendents that were genetically modified and wanted to progress could only replace their genes. But replacing genes was a dangerous thing. And in one step, 
An ordinary person's physique would not be able to withstand a too powerful Fey beast gene. The more powerful the Fey genes used, the greater the failure rate of genetic modification. As a result, even though Shang Nong and other hegemonic countries had spent a huge amount of money to obtain the genes of a beast king, they still hadn't produced a transcendent comparable to a beast king. Of course, it couldn't be ruled out that they had hidden the information, but even if Shang Nong and other hegemony countries hid transcendence comparable to a beast king, they definitely couldn't compare to Qin Shi who had evolved into a beast king, and the new market realm was even more dangerous. It was difficult for human armies to enter, and there was no way for everyone to enjoy the aid of various modern high-tech weapons. If they wanted to obtain resources and seize the ruins of the extraterrestrial civilization, they could only rely on the manpower sent in by various countries, just like when they first started exploring the market realm. If Qin Shi evolved into a beast king, he would definitely be able to sweep away the transcendentals sent in by various countries. No need. Qin Shi shook his head with a lack of interest. Although he could extract transcendent power from ordinary matter and energy, it was too troublesome. It was too inefficient. A diligent divine dragon wouldn't do something like this with half the effort. I'd better go inside the market realm and see if there's any readily available transcendental energy. As for the competition with transcendentalists from other countries, you don't need to worry about it. Without the aid of modern technological weapons, that's my home turf. Sheen Shir's eyes blossomed with a brilliant light, and he said confidently, he who had already grown up was not the weak, pathetic and helpless young dragon that could only beg for adoption. Nowadays, he was already able to gradually utilize the powerful advantages of the dragon race. He had too many ways to crush the transcendence of various countries. Dragons were divine beasts, and they were all creatures that stood at the apex amongst the other worldly beasts. Previously, Sheen Shir had just crossed over and was still a young dragon, unable to survive on his own before he chose to cooperate with Dong Xia. And now, he had grown up. Although according to the standards of the dragon race, he could still only be considered a young dragon, he already had the strength to survive on his own. More than that, he was able to utilize the powerful advantages of the dragon race when facing other creatures. For example, utilizing bloodline pressure to control a large number of low-grade foreign beasts. Entering the market realm for him was like a dragon entering the sea. Unless those hegemonic countries sent a large number of troops into the new market realm, otherwise Qin Shi would be almost as good inside the market realm. Not to mention crunching and killing indiscriminately. If he couldn't even fight a group of genetically modified wholesale transcendents, he would be a divine dragon in vain. Of course, having said that, it was impossible for Qin Shi to enter the new market realm alone. How well are we implementing the method of dragonization now? Qin Shi asked. Professor Tang and the others, have already extracted the reagent that can infect ordinary people with dragon blood? We have selected some warriors for cultivation, and now we only have to carry out the cultivation of the dragon clan's secret method, Lu Yongzhao said. In addition, we researched, analyzed, and simplified the dragon clan's secret method that Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and the others learned, to see if we can compile a secret method from it that can be cultivated without your help, but it's still in the experimental stage so we can't see any concrete effects for now. The most troublesome point of Dong Xia's method of dragonization was that after experiencing the dragon blood infection, there was still a need to let Qin Shi go and help, driving the cellular energy in everyone's body to absorb the transcendent power. Qin Shi didn't have so much patience, over and over again, repeating this kind of dull and boring work. Dong Xia had specially set up a transcendent secret method research department, specializing in this aspect. Through the research of Tong Zhao, Ying Di, etc., who had successfully metamorphosed into transcendent mortal species and mastered the dragon clan's secret methods, to see if they could sort out secret methods suitable for ordinary people. The secret method of the dragon race, to put it bluntly, was to resonate with the transcendent power through a unique breathing rhythm, thus guiding the transcendent energy in the void into the body. However, this rhythm was very complex, with many different frequencies. Some of the frequencies were beyond the range of what humans were capable of, and even Tong Zhao, Ying Di, and the others didn't fully grasp the rhythm of the Thai dragon's spitting breath. They could only withstand a portion of the Thai long spitting breath's rhythm, choosing the portion they could withstand to learn, even adapting in turn, evolving rhythms that were more suitable for the human body structure to be able to cultivate. After all, humans and the dragon race were different creatures. It was naturally impossible for the secret methods of the dragon race to be completely applicable to humans. It was only that this work was complicated, and there hadn't been much progress for the time being. Since that's the case, it's better to continue to let Tong Jiao and the others enter the new market realm with me. Their current strength is already strong enough to be compared to the genetically modified transcendentals of some small countries, and inside the new market realm, they might even be able to make greater progress. Xin Shi said. Lu Yongzhao nodded. 
he naturally had no objections. At the same time, the other countries on the Blue Star were all urgently stopping meetings to discuss the matter of sending transcendence into the new ruins realm. This initiative of the Blue Star consciousness has eased the conflicts between the countries and brought us new opportunities. We must obtain the technology of the extraterrestrial civilization. Extraterrestrial civilization. Other ways to master transcendent power. If we can get hold of it, our country, immediately, will be able to leap up and be on par with those hegemonic countries. The future is the era of the transcendent. Although science and technology may not be able to launch the stage, but certainly have to step back, to give way to the transcendent. Who can master the powerful transcendent power? Who will guide the future of the blue star? The top brass of each country. All of them were on fire in their hearts. Young Thai Empire. With the opening of the new ruins realm, Sheng Nong occupies a great advantage. Their genetic modification technology is the most top-notch, and they have cultivated a lot of powerful transcendence. Once they get their hands on the extraterrestrial civilization's method of mastering transcendent power again, we are going to be completely suppressed by Shang Nong. The method for extraterrestrial civilizations to master transcendent power absolutely cannot fall into Saint Farmer's hands. It's time to take out our Young Thai Empire's bottom card. Although genetic modification can allow a person to metamorphose into a transcendent species and master transcendent power, the flaws are also very large. The mechs we have researched have no problems in this area. The only flaw is the supply of energy. As long as they can replenish their energy in time, any ordinary person can harness a mech and blast through a beast king. Let Yang Yi's mecha go out and tell the world that in this world, there are more ways to master transcendent power than just genetic modification, and that technological research still holds great promise. One of the five hegemonic countries, the AOU Empire, genetic modification is indeed very strong, but we humans, the most powerful place lies in science and technology, lies in creation. What's the point of remodeling ourselves to be inhuman and beastly? As long as there's enough firepower, paradise I'll step on it to show God. It's time to send out our intelligent machine battle group, with the intelligent light brain as the core, controlling numerous micro-robots carrying large lethal bombs. Even if we encountered a group of alien beasts we can sweep through, the ruins of the extraterrestrial civilization can only fall into the hands of our AOU empire. The AOU empire, like the Yang Tai empire, was a dominant country known for its technological research. The technological strength was very advanced. However, the direction of their research was different from that of the Yang Tai empire. The AOU Empire researched intelligent robots. Humans were too weak in front of the alien beasts. If an ordinary person was touched by a foreign beast, they would be seriously injured or die. But robots were different. The AOU Empire had already developed micro-robots that could carry large lethal bombs, capable of wholesale mass production. Through the remote control of the intelligent light brain, the robots were allowed to fight against the alien beasts. Even an ordinary person would be able to kill hundreds or thousands of alien beasts without much effort. The other hegemonic countries, too, each had their own cards. The appearance of the new ruins realm made them decide to take out their bottom cards. And at the same time, it also told the countries that they were still hegemonic countries after all. The promotion of the genetic modification technology made Sacred Farmer come out on top. As the same overlord country, it was time for them to show off their muscles. Only Dolly was in a sad state. The Inferno team's destruction once again made it impossible for them to gather the personnel to enter the new ruins realm to explore for a while. Originally, they had thought that after the Ice Snake entered the region of Eastern Xia, it would be able to wreak havoc in Eastern Xia, so that they could see the fun and lose their anger. As a result, after the Ice Snake entered the region of Eastern Xia, it actually laid down its flag. Dolly Senior Heart, Incomparable Stifling, Saved a Belly of Evil Fire has no place to vent. In order to explore the new ruins realm, they can only put together some money from the East and the West, and purchased a batch of genetic modification liquid from Sacred Farmer once again. Hoping to strive to cultivate a new batch of transcendence before the new ruins realm opened up, they had been messed up too badly by Qin Shi this time. If they didn't get replenished, from the new market realm, they would definitely be left behind by the other countries and be reduced to the bottom of the list on the blue planet. At the cost of dumping their families, they had to pile up a few transcendents. All the countries were preparing nervously. Along with the passage of time, the day of the opening of the new market realm finally arrived. On this day, the voice of the Blue Star Consciousness resounded in the minds of all intelligent creatures across the globe. The new market realm spatial channel will soon be opened, and will border the Blue Star along the coast of the Antarctic continent. All Blue Star's subjects, those with transcendent power, can go to the new market realm to obtain resources, and their personal gains will be protected by the Blue Net's unified registration. This news, instantly shocked the world. The Antarctic continent is a relatively desolate and barren continent on the Blue Star. And the new market realm is more dangerous than the previously open market realm. 
with more and more powerful beasts inside. Setting the spatial passage, bordering the new market realm, in the Antarctic continent would avoid causing too much of an impact elsewhere. This was something that everyone could understand. However, Blue Star Consciousness actually promised that all those who had mastered transcendent power could travel to the market realm to obtain resources, and would also protect the resources they obtained from other people's encroachment. This made people surprised. It seems like the Blue Star Consciousness is under a lot of pressure. Otherwise it wouldn't have made such a decision. Along with the promotion of genetic modification technology, most of the transcendents in each country today were warriors in the military, and transcendents originally cultivated by each country. However, outside of the countries, there were also some large-scale forces, certain tycoons, bigwigs, and even the lucky ones who had obtained genetic modification and mastered transcendent powers. Only, compared to the transcendents that had been cultivated by the countries, these ordinary transcendents would definitely be relatively weaker. Blue Star Consciousness had to mobilize even these people to go to the new ruins realm to fight against the alien beasts, so it could be imagined how much pressure he was bearing. This is reasonable. After all, the Blue Star Consciousness has to independently block off the spatial passageways between it and the other market realms, block the invasion of those heavenly calamity level alien beasts, and also distract itself from forming the blue net, so it's inevitable that there will be times when it's more than it can handle. Another elder said. The Blue Star Consciousness had told everyone long ago that he could only do his best to block the spatial passage between him and the other market realms, how long it would last was unknown. It was probably because they had also seen that the promotion of genetic modification had caused the human battle power to increase quite a bit, which was why they decided to open up new market realms so that they could relieve the pressure on them and delay them for a while longer. It's useless to think more about this kind of thing. We still need to consider how we can obtain more resources and get more ways to master transcendent power inside the new market realm. Only then can we further enhance our strength and share more pressure for the Blue Star Consciousness, Chinshir said in a deep voice. He was also in a meeting, discussing more with everyone, about exploring the new ruins realm. Divine Dragon is right. We can't do anything about those more powerful ruins realm spatial passages, just do what we need to do. This topic was too heavy. The more it was discussed, it would only make everyone's mood more depressing. For this operation, let me, Ice Snake, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. Go to the new ruins to see the situation first, while the others and Ice Snake stay behind to guard the original ruins first, to prevent those foreign beasts inside from making a mess, and then consider letting them move in together after they have probed clearly what the situation is in the new ruins. Sheen sure said, there were still a lot of foreign beasts surviving in the market realm territories that Dong Xia had already occupied. They had established numerous bases in the market realms, and could mobilize large armies to suppress the foreign beasts. However, they had not driven the foreign beasts inside to extinction. The foreign beasts were likewise rich resources. If the foreign beasts in the market realm were all exterminated, where would they go to find the various research materials in the future? Doing so would be extremely destructive to the ecology of the market realm. However, the beasts were unruly in nature and were very hostile to humans. In the past, it was only with Qin Shi sitting in the town, Tong Jiao, Ying Di and other transcendents patrolling everywhere that they could be deterred. Once Qin Shi led Tong Jiao, Ying Di and the others to a new market realm. Without enough deterrence, these beasts might riot. Thus, someone had to stay behind to be responsible for deterring these foreign beasts. The many elders discussed amongst themselves and nodded. Then it's decided. We'll continue with other aspects of research as well. If there's any need, you guys can contact us through the blue net, and we'll be ready to support as fast as we can. Nowadays, there was less and less help that East Summer could provide to Chinshir. They couldn't do much to help with the new ruins realm so they could only do their best to provide backup. There's no time to lose. We'll set off tomorrow and head to the Antarctic continent. Sheen sure nodded. The next day, he took Ice Snake, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao on a battleship to the Antarctic continent. Actually, it would be faster to take a special airplane, but Ice Snake's size was just too big to be transported well. And even if they traveled to the Antarctic continent by battleship, Sheen sure would have to apply the Tong Yun mist to it to hide its figure lest it be discovered by people from other countries. After all, right now, between humans and Fei, it was still a hostile relationship. Once Dongxia's relationship with Qin Shi and the Ice Snake was discovered, it would not be easy to explain. No matter how it was explained, it would easily attract a great deal of attention. And right now, the Eastern Xia still needed to keep a low profile. The Eastern Xia warship, carrying Qin Shi, Ice Snake, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao broke the waves all the way to the Antarctic continent. At the same time, all the countries on the Blue Planet had also dispatched their own battle fleets to the Antarctic continent. When Qin Shi and the others arrived at the South Pole continent, 
Near the place where the South Pole continent bordered the new market realm, it was already filled with battleships and warplanes from various countries. This place was a coast. As far as the eye could see, there was a black mass of battleships, and above the Antarctic continent, one could see that the place where the Antarctic continent bordered the new ruins realm presented an extremely magical sight. It was as if an opening had been torn open in the void, and the soil of the market realm and the land of the South Pole continent were coming into contact with each other, gradually splicing together. The entire spatial channel was still expanding at a speed visible to the naked eye. Through the spatial passage, one could see that inside the market realm, it was a vast and mysterious forest, with violent beast roars and ferocious bird calls coming from it. Even without seeing the shadows of these foreign beasts and ferocious birds, just the heavy fury revealed in the sounds made many people's hearts and souls tremble. From time to time, there were also some weak foreign beasts that rushed out from the market realm and entered the boundaries of the Antarctic continent. It was only that the South Pole continent's environment was so cold that it was no match for the market realm side. It didn't take long for these foreign beasts to rush over before they all returned to the market realm. However, the Blue Star's space was overlapping with the market realm. The environment of the Antarctic continent was influenced by the market realm and was undergoing a slow but firm change. Once the two completely bordered and merged, the environment of the Antarctic continent would definitely become suitable for foreign beasts to live in. It seems like the fusion of the Blue Star with the market realm is already an inevitable thing. In the future, perhaps the South Pole continent will turn into a paradise for foreign beasts to live in. Humph, Blue Star is human territory. As long as we develop fast enough, even if the market realm connects with Blue Star, we can still dominate. The executives of the various countries on the battleships and warplanes were all communicating privately. Some were worried, while others were ambitious. Let's go. Let's go down. Sheen sure rode on top of the ice snake's head, his body enveloped in clouds, and shouted towards Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. The eastern Xiao warships gradually approached the coast of the Antarctic continent, and they disembarked, arriving in front of the spatial passage where the Antarctic continent bordered the market realm. Transcendents from various countries had also converged one after another. At a rough glance, there were at least thousands of transcendents. This number, compared to the huge population on the Blue Planet, was actually not a lot. However, less than half a year had passed since the promotion of the genetic modification technology, and already so many transcendents had sprung up. This speed, in fact, was already very fast. Among them, the transcendents from the hegemonic countries such as Shang Nong, Yangtai Empire, and AOU Empire accounted for at least half of the number. It was the rest that were the transcendents from the various medium and small countries and it was obvious to see the disparity in the levels of the transcendents from each country. Sheen sure stayed on the ice serpent's head, his eyes sweeping over towards the transcendents in all directions, almost visible to the naked eye. The transcendents of the overlord country were basically at the level of beast generals. There were even several of them, and the aura exuding from their bodies was no better than the ice serpents. It was also unknown what kind of exotic beast genes they had used. One must know that the more powerful the genes used for transformation, the greater the possibility of failure and genetic modification, once it failed, was almost equivalent to death. Even if it succeeded, the process was bound to be incomparably tragic. Genetically modified transcendentals could only inherit part of the transcendent power of a foreign beast. Inheriting a portion of the transcendent power, the aura on their body would be enough to rival that of a median beast general ice serpent. The genes used were inevitably from certain powerful upper beast generals or even beast kings, worthy of being the hegemony kingdom. What a great deal! Even cultivating transcendence of this level, Pang Mao gulped at the side and whispered, I'm certain that there are bound to be even more powerful transcendence that haven't appeared within these hegemony countries, Tong Jiao said in a deep voice, her heroic face filled with gravity, her judgment was based on a very simple truth, there was no country that would completely reveal its bottom card, all of them, Eastern Xia, still had secret weapons like Qin Shi and Ice Snake, those hegemonic countries were all so slippery, how could they possibly show their bottom cards to the fullest? It's none of our business. Anyway, once we enter the market realm, that's my home turf. Sheen sure said indifferently. These hegemonic kingdoms were no longer hiding their undercards, but at the end of the day, they would only be transcendents at the lower beast king level. More likely, they would be transcendents at the upper beast general level. He would be able to sweep it with a single dragon. Once he entered the market realm, he could still find a way to drive other exotic beasts to help in the battle. No one could compete with him in the market realm this time. It's still important to pay attention. After all, who knows what's going on inside the new Ruin Realm? Their strength is not comparable to you, Captain. But if they are determined to find faults and cause trouble, they might cause interference to our actions. Tong Zhao reminded. Xin Shi nodded. This was somewhat reasonable. At this moment, 
The transcendents from various countries converged in front of the spatial passageway, exchanging words and discussing. Instead of entering inside the ruin realm at the first opportunity, everyone communicated with each other and even looked for cooperation. Especially some of the countries with weaker transcendentals were looking for alliances. Blue Star Consciousness had said that the new ruins were richer in resources, and that there might be extraterrestrial civilizations, but they were more dangerous than the ruins that had been divided up for each country. Although everyone was eager to have a big harvest, they were not overwhelmed by the benefits. In the face of a menacing and unknown environment, it was obvious that cooperation and alliance was more favorable. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, a voice rang out. Qin Shi turned his head to look, only to see a group of five people walking towards them not far away. A tall red-haired woman at the head of the group, with the excitement of old friends meeting on her face, walked quickly towards Tong Jiao and Ying Di. Li Na, Tong Jiao had the same smile on his face as he walked towards the red-haired woman, and the two of them hugged fiercely. It's the transcendents from the Erisher kingdom. They are Li Na, Xiao Guan, Fu Sueki, Xin Zhao, and Wu Xingxiong. Ying Di introduced them through the blue net towards Qin Shi. The Erisher kingdom was a friendly neighbor of East Xia. East Xia was bordered by the sea to the east and had countries bordering it on all sides. Apart from bad neighbors like Dali, there were naturally countries with good relations. Erisher country was the country with the strongest relationship with East Xia. The two countries often have friendship alliance. Tong Jiao, Ying Di and Li Na and other people, but also know each other for many years of good friends. Li Na separated from Tong Jiao and looked over towards Ying Di and Pang Mao, wondering, this time, East Xia only sent you three to explore the market realm? Xin Shi and Ice Snake were in a state of invisibility, so she couldn't see them. It can't be helped. Eastern Xia doesn't have the genetic modification technology authorized by Shang Nong. The number of transcendents is small, and their strength is not comparable to other countries, so they can only send us over to make up the numbers. Tong Jiao shrugged his shoulders in a self-deprecating manner. It wasn't true, but it wasn't a lie either. It was true that Eastern Xia hadn't been authorized by sacred farmer's technology. There was also a gap between their strength and those transcendents who had undergone beast general level genetic modifications. Moreover, in this exploration of the new ruins realm, the real protagonist of Dongxia was Qin Shi, and they had only come over to play a supporting role. Li Na and Xiao Guan, Fu Sueki, Xin Zhao, and Wu Xingxiang who came behind them had a look of realization on their faces as they looked at Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Ma with pity. It was true that Dongxia was a bit miserable, because of Dali's underhandedness. It was kicked out of the cooperation team of genetic modification technology by Xing Nong. However, the aura on Tong Jiao and Ying Di and Pang Ma wasn't weak, not much worse than them. This caused them to be secretly surprised in their hearts. They didn't know where Dong Xia had gotten the genetic modification technology and medicines from, and had trained Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Ma to this level. Several of them, except for Li Na, the others had only fused the genes of the lower beast generals, and possessed the level of battle power of the upper beast soldiers. And judging from their aura, they were at the same level as Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. Nowadays, Blue Star explicitly only had genetic modification technology that could help everyone master transcendent power. They took it for granted that Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao had also undergone genetic modification. Since that's the case, why don't we form an alliance? Or we can take care of each other inside the market realm? Li Na's eye sparkled as she proposed. The new ruins realm was unpredictable and now everyone was actively looking for someone to cooperate with. Originally, Li Na and the others had come over just to say hello to Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, with no intention of forming an alliance and cooperating. After all, it was one thing for everyone to be on good terms, but now that they were representing their country and entering a new market realm to explore, they definitely had to think on the country's side, and to make alliances, they were also looking for people with equal strength or stronger strength to make alliances with. Looking for alliances with people whose strength was too poor would only drag one's leg. Unexpectedly, the strength of Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao was unexpected. This was even better. It just so happened that everyone was familiar with each other and the difference in strength was not too great, making them the best people to work with. As for where Dong Xia got the genetic modification technology from, it didn't matter. It was just a matter of paying a price, cooperating privately with Saint Farmer or purchasing the relevant technology and medicines from other countries. After all, there were other countries that had researched genetic modification technology after Saint Farmer. Although it wasn't as good as Saint Farmer, it could still allow people to master transcendent powers. Xiao Guan, Fu Sueki, Xin Zhao, and Wu Xingxian looked over towards Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, had a thoughtful look on their faces. In reality, 
They were asking Qin Shi in the blue net. Qin Shi was the true leader of this operation, and the matter of cooperation naturally required his nod. Promise them. Qin Shi thought for a moment and said, After entering the ruins realm, I will probably act alone with Ice Snake, and it will be safer for you guys to cooperate with them. Acting together with Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao would be a bit of a constraint for today's Qin Shi instead. Acting separately would give him more room to maneuver. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao nodded. Good. Tong Jiao nodded towards Li Na. Let's go. Let's go find the others and see if anyone else is willing to team up. Li Na took Tong Jiao's arm, entering a new market realm to explore. The more people in a group, the better naturally. At this moment, the transcendents from the other countries were also exchanging and climbing around, looking for suitable candidates to form a team. In no time, they had invited over a dozen more transcendents. The countries that these transcendents were from were basically the ones with better relations. Suddenly, a few transcendents walked over. When they saw Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, a look of resentment appeared on their faces. Aren't these the transcendents from Eastern Xia? They walked over and called out in a nonchalant tone. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao turned their heads to look over and instantly couldn't help but frown. They didn't recognize these transcendents. However, looking at their clothing, it was obvious that they were of Dali's style. Transcendents from Dali? Ying Di raised an eyebrow. That's right. One of the leaders among these transcendents said in a cold voice, What an enemy. They were the transcendents that Dali had urgently cultivated during this period of time. The leader who opened his mouth was named Jing Kunlin, the new Inferno captain. Dali had a long-standing grudge against Eastern Xia, and had recently almost fought over the matter of the Fey Beasts. When he saw Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, Jing Kunlin couldn't help but run over and shout a few words. Indeed, it's a narrow road between enemies. Your Dali's transcendence, who died one after another, actually grew back so quickly. It's not easy, Pang Mao said mockingly. Jing Kunlin, along with the few Dali transcendents behind him, had only used the genetic modification of the lower beast general level because of the time urgency, and their strength was similar to theirs. It was far worse than the first two infernals. When enemies met, Pang Mao naturally wouldn't be polite and words could be said however unpleasant. Seek death. Jing Kunlin heard this and instantly became furious. Unable to resist stepping forward and wanting to hit someone, Pang Mao's words were really too much of a poke in the gut. It was said that hitting someone without hitting their face, he was not only hitting their face, but also specializing in picking the scars on other people's faces to rub salt in. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, naturally will not show weakness, and stand up to block up. If you want to fight, who is afraid of who? Qin Shi, who was invisible at the side, looked at these few people who brought transcendence, and was somewhat speechless in his heart. Dali's people, are they all so unforgiving? The Inferno team had died in two batches, and actually dared to come to provoke Eastern Xia. The ice snake under his feet was even gulping scarlet snake letters, his triangular eyes gazing icily at Jing Kunlin's several people, his body exuding a fierce aura. It was a Dali transcendent. It and the Dali were the true enemies. If it wasn't for Dali trying to hunt it, causing it to be heavily injured and having to submit to Qin Shi. The current it, might still be sleeping well inside the cold pool. Seeing the dolly, the ice snake couldn't stop its killing intent from boiling up in its heart. Stop. Just as the conflict was about to break out, Li Na quickly rushed out and blocked between them, looking at Jing Kumlin with a sullen face. Drinking. Transcendence of dolly. Exploring the new ruins realm is the requirement of the blue star consciousness. Our enemy should be the foreign beasts inside the ruins realm. Are you guys here specifically to engage in infighting? Jing Kunlin's face changed slightly and hurriedly denied. Of course not. Don't talk nonsense. Wouldn't we be so devoid of the big picture? These words were too serious to be recognized. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao also regained their composure and stopped. For everyone to fight before they had even entered the new ruins realm. Whether they were in the right or not, it was a matter with bad repercussions. If this left a bad impression in the mind of the blue star consciousness, it would be a great injustice. Seeing that everyone had calmed down, Li Na then looked at Jing Kunlin and continued, What is it that you all came here for? If there's something wrong, you might as well say it. And if there's nothing wrong, we'll all go our separate ways to save any further conflict. Jing Kunlin narrowed his eyes and looked at Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao with hatred. Suddenly, he smiled grimly, soothing his face towards Li Na and the surrounding transcendents from other countries and said, Aren't you guys looking for someone to cooperate with? I have good news here. The transcendents of Shang Nong are planning to form a transcendent alliance. Do you guys want to join? Are you telling the truth? The eyes of a transcendent from a small country next to him lit up as he hurriedly opened his mouth to inquire. Transcendents from other countries also looked towards Jing Kunlin, 
a look of surprise in their eyes. As the first country to complete the research on genetic modification technology, and as one of the hegemonic countries of the world, Shang Nong's strength was beyond doubt. There were even transcendents comparable to median beast generals. Their team of transcendents was one of the objects that the transcendents of the various small countries most wanted to cooperate with. If they could cooperate with Saint Farmer's transcendents, it would be tantamount to embracing a golden thigh. It was only that Saint Farm was an overlord country, and their transcendents were high-minded and proud. So they didn't cooperate with just anyone. Saint Nun's transcendents were very discerning, and they didn't even bother to look at transcendents that weren't strong enough, let alone cooperate with them. These transcendents from small countries knew their own strengths well and knew that it was impossible for the Shang Nong transcendents to look at them. So they didn't go and make a fool of themselves. Unexpectedly, they would hear such news from Jing Kunlin's mouth. It was really too unexpected. Everyone's hearts were instantly dumbfounded. Facing the crowd's expectant gazes, a smug smile appeared on Jing Kunlin's face. Of course it's true, but there are conditions if you want to join Saint Farmer's Alliance. Jing Kunlin looked at Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao with an impish gaze and said, As you all know, the Holy Nong has a bad relationship with the Eastern Xia, so if you want to join the alliance formed by the Holy Nong, you will have to clear your relationship with the Eastern Xia, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. Their faces suddenly changed. Their chests rose and fell as they glared angrily at Jing Kunlin. Jing Kunlin's words were just too vicious. This was an attempt to turn the Eastern Xia transcendents against each other. When the transcendents of the various countries heard these words, their faces also changed slightly, and they couldn't help but look over towards Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. With a hesitant look in their eyes, they had only just reached cooperation with Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao. It was somewhat unethical to abandon them so soon. Wait, did the transcendents of Sacred Nong say that they had to draw a line in the sand with Eastern Xia in order to join their alliance? This can't be you guys foxing around, right? At this moment, Li Na spoke up in righteousness and looked skeptically at Jing Kunlin. There was no eternal conflict between countries and countries. Li Na, who was an Erisher transcendent, had heard about the matter between Dong Xia and Shang Nong, and it seemed that it was Dali who was secretly making trouble which led to Shang Nong rejecting the cooperation with Dong Xia regarding genetic modification technology. But it was only this one cooperation that was rejected. Between Shang Nong and Dong Xia, there were still other trade cooperation, and it was not like water and fire. Jing Kunlin's words seemed very suspicious. When the others heard this, they all looked towards Jing Kunlin, and there was a skeptical look of exploration in their eyes. Jing Kunlin's heart thumped and he frowned at Li Na, his eyes somewhat annoyed. It was true that Shang Nong hadn't released such words, he was just pulling the tiger's skin to pull the banner. He had wanted to use the situation to stomp on Dongxia for a bit, to export the bad anger in his heart. Unexpectedly, he was exposed by Li Na so quickly, it made him a little embarrassed for a while. At this time, a tall blonde man walked over from the distance without slanting his eyes. There were other transcendents in the surroundings who greeted him, but he ignored them all, looking as if he regarded everyone as nothing. What arrogance! Hey, he's a transcendent from Saint Farm. Carrying the transcendent power of the Thunder Softshell Turtle, and his strength can be comparable to that of a Median Beast General. So of course he's looking down on those of us who come from small countries. Beside him, there were transcendentals who were ignored by him, making indignant, jealous noises. The blonde-haired man took everyone's murmurings into his ears, and the corner of his mouth curved into a disdainful arc. Weak, lowly people could only talk behind their backs in discontent. He didn't even have the interest in hitching a ride. Communicating with this group of lowly fellows would only waste his time. Mr. James. Lena saw the blonde man approaching and stepped forward to greet him. And you are? The blonde man's eyes lit up slightly and he stopped. Looking towards Lena. Lena was a tall redhead with a Rashikid's combat uniform, which clung to her skin and outlined her proud figure nicely. The others he had no interest in hitting on. But this beauty, it was still possible to pay a little attention. Lena introduced herself. Hello Mr. James. I'm Lena a transcendent from the Erisher kingdom. Oh, what can I do for you? James casually replied back as he admiringly sized up Lena. Lena frowned slightly and quickly regained her composure as she said, It's like this, just now, Mr. Jing Kunlin, a transcendent from Dali, said that your sacred gnome wants to form a transcendent alliance, but it needs to clear its relationship with the transcendents of Eastern Xia in order to take part in it. I would like to ask if there's such a thing? Damn. Jing Kunlin's face changed when he saw Li Na asking for the truth towards James. The matter of him foxing around was small, but if he provoked James' displeasure, it would be troublesome. Dali had relied on submitting to Saint Farmer as a little brother to gain Saint Farmer's strong support in genetic modification technology. With the destruction of two consecutive Inferno teams, in order to train up their group of transcendents, 
Dolly even owed a large amount of debt to Saint Farmer. In front of Saint Farm's transcendence, they couldn't raise their heads at all. There was only flattery. Before coming to the Antarctic continent, Dolly's top management had instructed them that they must properly flatter Saint Nun's transcendentals, hold on to this thigh, and not cause Saint Nun's transcendence to be unhappy. James, on the other hand, was the leader of this team of transcendents from Saint Farm. James frowned slightly and looked over towards Jing Kunlun. It was true that Shang Nong had the intention of establishing an alliance of transcendents, but it didn't say that they wanted to exclude the transcendents of Eastern Xia. When Jing Kunlun saw James gaze, his waist looked like it had been bent, a look of panic appeared on his face, and he hurriedly trotted over with a slightly hunched back, wanting to explain. When James saw this, how could he not understand what was going on? In his heart, he was instantly a little unsettled. Jing Kunlun actually dared to fox and borrow their might to open his mouth indiscriminately. However, when James' eyes swept over Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, his frown deepened. These few East Xia transcendents had actually metamorphosed into transcendent species and grasped transcendent powers as well? Wasn't Eastern Xia refused cooperation by Shang Nong? Where did they get the genetic modification technology and genetic potions? When East Xia was kicked out of the cooperation team for the genetic modification technology by Saint Farmer, by all rights, it should have been abandoned by the wave of the times. They, Saint Farmers, were this wave of the times? Now, this small country that had been abandoned by Saint Farmer actually did not fall, but instead caught up with this wave. This made James very unhappy in his heart. The country that had been abandoned by Saint Farmer not only did not fall behind because of this, but instead developed in a colorful manner, and was even more prosperous than Dali, which had been vigorously supported by them. This was undoubtedly a bit of a slap in the face. Thinking of this, James coldly glanced at Tong Zhao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, and spoke towards Li Na, that's right, we do have such an intention. As for Eastern Xia, they have always been disgusted with genetic modification. I feel that we don't have the same concepts as Eastern Xia, and there will be friction in cooperating. Since this is the case, it would be better to simply not cooperate. Li Na's face changed slightly and she couldn't help but frown. She could be certain that Jing Kunlun's words just now were definitely a fox's attempt at falsehood. The change in James' face in the first place was a proof of that. But why would he help Jing Kunlun round up his lies? Jing Kunlun was about to explain when he was overjoyed at his words, although he didn't know why James would help him. But this was undoubtedly a good opportunity to strike Dongxia. You guys see, I didn't lie, right? Jing Kunlun straightened his waist and flung himself up again. What are you guys still hesitating for? These few people from East Xia are so weak that entering the market realm is to send them to their deaths. So aren't you guys getting yourselves a couple of mop-ups by cooperating with them? Joining Shang Nong's alliance is the smart move. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, their faces became even more ugly. Sacred farmers' transcendents have very proud hearts. Xin Shi plopped down on the ice serpent's head, his dragon claws gently tapping, and couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. James' posture was too arrogant. A look that treated Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, as ants that could be crushed with his hands, it made him very irritated. Was Saint Farmer great? The genetic modification technology that he had researched was nothing more than an inferior method of mastering transcendent power, fusing the genes of foreign beasts, contaminating his own bloodline, and blocking future potential in exchange for momentary combat power. He also had the nerve to flaunt his power here? Truly speaking, the future potential of Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao could be much greater than James. Should I make a move and swallow him? The ice serpent and its voice towards Qin Shi a pair of triangular eyes staring at James. During this period of time, it had already learned the human language and could communicate with Qin Shi. There is no hurry. Qin Shi looked at James and raised his dragon claw to gently knock the ice snake's head. Even if he wanted to swallow James to take out his anger, he couldn't do it at this time. James suddenly had a vicious chill in his heart. His body inexplicably trembled. The sense of crisis brought about by the thunder softshell turtle gene should have allowed him to detect the malice from the ice snake. However, this was the instinct of the thunder softshell turtle gene, a subconscious sense, and he did not detect the presence of the ice snake. Hearing Qin Shi's words, the ice snake withdrew its killing intent, and he was even more unable to detect it. Strange, why did he suddenly shiver? James was puzzled in his heart, oblivious to the fact that he had just passed through the gates of death. The faces of the transcendents from the various countries struggled once more when they heard Jing Kunlun's words. Soon, someone showed an apologetic look towards Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, and walked towards Jing Kunlun and the others. Jing Kunlun was right. Exploring into the ruins realm was not a child's playground, and they had to ensure their own interests and safety. Although their country had a good relationship with Eastern Xia, 
This kind of matter that involved the interests of the country and their own safety could not be tied up by such a small amount of friendship alone. In the end, only Li Na, Xiao Guan, Fu Sueki, Xin Zhao, He Xiong, and a few other transcendents from countries that were not on friendly terms with Shang Nong stayed behind. Seeing this, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao were annoyed in their hearts. Everyone's choices made them feel uncomfortable, but they were able to understand. It was just that Jing Kunlin's smug, teasing expression made people very irritated. Jing Kunlin looked over towards Li Na and said, Transcendence of the Arashur Kingdom, don't you want to join Saint Farmer's Alliance? James had a confident and charming smile on his face as he invited towards Li Na, M.S. Li, you are different from the transcendence of Eastern Xia. I would welcome your participation. Sorry, I'll reconsider. Li Na smiled apologetically at James without being condescending. James couldn't help but frown. Although Lina didn't say it explicitly, rejecting his invitation to his face had undoubtedly shown a refusal. This made him blush a little. He had only personally opened his mouth to invite Li Na because he saw that Li Na was quite sexy looking. He didn't expect Li Na to give him so little face. Then think about it. Just don't regret your decision. James put away his smile and coldly replied back. A bunch of idiots. Such a good opportunity actually not cherishing it. Jing Kunlin stood beside James with his head bowed low, looking at Li Na and the transcendence from several other small countries around him with a sneer on his face. The opportunity to climb into friendship with the overlord nation's transcendentals wasn't rare, especially when James personally opened his mouth to invite them. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that James was slightly more sexually interested in Li Na. As long as Lina agreed to James' invitation and followed the trend, she could easily embrace the golden leg of Saint Farmer. Such an opportunity. Other people couldn't even beg for it. They, Dolly, had all spent an unknown amount of money to get them hooked up with the transcendent of Saint Farm. Lina actually refused. It really fulfills the saying. Big boobs and no brain. Let's go. James said towards Jing Kunlin and the others, not even looking at Lina again, and left straight away. Lina didn't bother keeping an expression of neither joy nor anger on her face. Li Na, if it's because you're concerned about us, you don't have to. Tong Jiao turned his head to look at Lina. Being belittled by James was certainly upsetting to them, but they weren't as angry as everyone thought, and the expressions on their faces were just for show. Possessing Qin Shi, the divine dragon, as a base card, they didn't look at the transcendent alliance of the holy farmer. It was just this secret that they couldn't explicitly say to Li Na. If Li Na was concerned about their feelings and missed out on cooperating with Shang Nong, it would instead make them feel bad in their hearts. Li Na shook her head and said, I do have a few considerations for you guys, but not all of them. Cooperating with Saint Farmer is not necessarily a good thing in the first place. Cooperation is only feasible if both parties are equal in status. The difference in strength between us and the transcendence of Shang Nong is too great. To cooperate with them, is it cooperation, or are we reduced to being their pawns? A self-deprecating look appeared on Lena's face. That's right, and that James is too arrogant, and is also unkind to you, Sister Na. It's really disgusting. Xin Zhuo yelled indignantly from the side. She was a female transcendent like Lena and usually admired Lena. James had just sized up Lena with an aggressive gaze, pressing on with no thought of hiding it, treating the others around her as nothing, causing her to hold her anger in her heart. If Lena had agreed to James' invitation to join Saint Farm's League of Transcendents, there was no telling how she would have been treated. Tong Jiao sniffed, slightly relieved, and joked, James is indeed too arrogant, but that's also because you, Li Na, have a good figure and are too attractive. That's for sure. Sister Na is the goddess of our Arashur kingdom. Xianjua said with a face of honor as she wrapped her arms around Li Na, just like a little fangirl. Of course, Sister Tong Jiao, you're also very beautiful. Beside them, there were female transcendents from other countries. Who came over to climb over and boasted about each other, washing away quite a bit of the depression brought about by James. Qin Shi looked over towards Li Na. Speaking of which, it was hard to say who was prettier between Tong Jiao and Li Na in terms of looks. However, Tong Jiao was the Ying Chi type, full of the lively and valiant flavor of youth. Li Na, on the other hand, was more voluptuous, and with her short red hair, she had a different flavor that was more appealing to the eye. And, Qin Shi visually compared. In terms of heart pattern, Tong Jiao was also slightly weaker than Li Na. Well, the people from Shang Nong have already left. Next we should also plan how we're going to act. Since we're cooperating, there should always be a leader. What ideas can everyone say? After a while, Li Na opened her mouth and said towards everyone. They began to discuss the matter of the leader of the cooperative team and how they were going to act inside the new market realm. Without a doubt, Li Na, who was the strongest, was unanimously elected by the crowd to become the leader of the cooperative team. Xin Shi. On the other hand, left first with Ice Snake, 
Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao were originally just sent by Dong Xia to assist Qin Shi, and at the same time, they were also fronts to cover up his existence. He was to join Ice Snake and act separately from Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao. Qin Shi and Ice Snake entered inside the market realm first. Coming inside the market realm, the environment was immediately different. A rich transcendent energy greeted them. Qin Shi instantly felt energized. The ice snake under his feet also greedily raised its head and breathed violently in the air, its eyes revealing an intoxicated look. It didn't know the method of cultivation and evolution. It all relied on its bloodline talent, automatically absorbing all sorts of transcendent energies to grow up. It clearly felt that the environment here was much better than the original market realm it stayed in. What a dense transcendent energy. It doesn't even need to be able to be channeled. It's no worse than the energy drawn by my usual cultivation of the Thai dragon spitting breath. Qin Shi couldn't help but marvel. At the same time, his heart became even more vigilant. True dragons could not be raised in pool water. The higher the energy degree of an environment, the more likely it was that extremely powerful foreign beasts existed. No wonder Blue Star Consciousness said that inside this new ruins realm, there might be earth bane level exotic beasts. I'm afraid that only a ruins realm with such a high concentration of energy would be able to support the survival of earth bane level exotic beasts. Sheen sure thought in his heart. He rode the ice snake forward for some distance, and the forest in front of him gradually shifted towards a rolling mountainous terrain. There were patches of large mountains ahead, one towering into the clouds. Huge waterfalls hung down from between the mountain walls, water spilling out chaotically. In the distance, there were even huge ferocious birds with wings like clouds sweeping by, and ferocious beast roars rang out. The entire environment was filled with a savage and ancient atmosphere. I can smell the scent of treasure. There are a lot of good things here. Jean Shi's eyes lit up. The phoenix did not fall without a treasure. True dragons weren't much worse. As a divine dragon, Jean Shi had a unique sense for all kinds of heavenly treasures. It was only that when he was on the blue star, there was nothing around that could be called a treasure, resulting in this talent of his being buried. And now, the environment of this market realm was too favorable giving birth to many things that counted as treasures to him. It had finally inspired the dragon race's treasure-seeking ability in him. Sheen sure urged the ice snake and rushed towards a mountain peak he sensed ahead. The ice snake's heart was also filled with vigor. The cold pool where it was originally located was considered a feng shui treasure within the Dali market realm area. But compared to the current environment of this market realm, it was too shabby. It also wanted to find more treasures and enrich its body. The peak of the mountain towered high, straight into the clouds. The ice snake's size of more than a hundred meters even looked incomparably small as it traversed through the forest. What's that? Suddenly, the ice snake looked over towards a few strange plants that grew on the mountain wall not far away and shone brightly. These were a few plants that resembled a sylphid orchid but had nothing to do with the orchid grass on the blue planet, with a faint sylphid blue color all over their bodies, and surrounded by a faint mist. Whatever it is, it's a treasure anyway, let's put it away first. Sheen sure could tell at a glance that the mist that surrounded these plants was transcendent energy that had almost coalesced into substance. It was evident that these few plants were extraordinary. The ice snake had already swiftly lunged towards these few plants, opening its mouth to bite. Right at this moment, Sheen sure on the ice snake's head let out a fierce roar and rose up into the air, his body flickering with golden light as he operated the golden dragon mysterious technique and slammed over towards the left side. Kaching! A breaking sound rang out. A blood-colored rattan that had charged down from the mountain wall like lightning was broken by Qin Shi's impact. The broken blood-colored rattan landed on the ground, and even twisted violently as if it were a living creature, emitting a wailing sound as if the creature was injured. This scene caused Qin Shi to be startled for a moment. The ice snake was even more creeped out. The bloody vines appeared too stealthily, too quickly, suddenly attacked and arrived. It did not even half notice. Whoosh! On the mountain wall, more blood-colored vines danced in the air interweaving into a huge net of blood-colored vines, shrouding towards Ice Snake and Qin Shi. A stream of dark red gas with the fishy smell of grass and trees filled out along with the dancing of the rattan canes, making Ice Snake dizzy and feel like fainting and vomiting. Qin Shi inhaled a mouthful of the dark red gas and his body went into a trance. The large network of blood-colored vines that enveloped him was even more like a giant beast's maw, exuding an intense aura that was no less than that of a mediate beast general. Hmm, poisonous? Qin Shi was somewhat startled. He did not have time to think about it carefully and immediately operated the ice dragon secret technique, opening his mouth to brush out a freezing ray. The powerful ice ceiling force collided with the large network of blood-colored vines, and instantly, frost filled the air, freezing the large network of blood-colored vines. The surrounding mountain walls were covered with a thick layer of ice. Only the location of a few peculiar plants were carefully watched out for by Qin Shi, avoiding the attack and only receiving a slight ripple of frost breath. The ice snake's body flopped limply on the ground 
shaking its head for a while before gradually coming to its senses, raising its head again and looking at the blood-colored vines that had been frozen up, shocked and angry. What the hell is this? It can actually release poison? It was a median beast general, but it was actually almost put down by a few vines. It was really a bit humiliating. It seems to be some kind of mutated plant. Qin Shi also felt surprised. He hadn't detected any abnormality in these vines just now either. It was just that when the blood-colored vines launched their attack, they intercepted it at a faster speed. Mainly, he really didn't expect that plants could actually mutate and possess such amazing aggressiveness. This bloody vine, it seems to be guarding these few plants, using them as bait to hunt. Xin Shi flew up and probed his spiritual power to spread towards the blood-colored roots, and found the skeletons of some creatures in the mountain wall. They were entangled by the dense roots, and the flesh and blood on their bodies had long since disappeared. This world is a bit dangerous. Even the plants have become sperm. Chinsher muttered and went forward to pull out a few ghostly blue plants. And then, he logged into the blue net and opened the warehouse, only to see a spatial fluctuation emerge. The ghostly blue plants instantly disappeared. And in Chinsher's blue bonnet personal space, the column of the warehouse, a picture of the ghostly blue plants appeared. This was the safeguard that the blue star consciousness had set up for everyone. The blue star consciousness couldn't interfere too much with the situation inside the ruins realm and could only allow humans to help explore the ruins realm. But in other aspects, it gave what help it could. The blue bonnet warehouse was one of them. As long as the transcendentalists who wore the blue bonnet lander, they could all log on to the blue bonnet and receive the spatial power transmitted by the blue star consciousness and upload the prey and treasures they acquired uniformly to the storage space that the blue star consciousness had specially opened up. There were also various items that could be taken from the storage space when needed. Of course, this was not free. One needed to pay blue bonnet points as a reward. Although it's a unified storage space, not counting an individual's private storage magic treasure, it's still a bit of that. Chin sure muttered, entering the ruins realm to explore. How the various harvests were to be disposed of was a big trouble for everyone. It would undoubtedly be a waste of time if one had to send back to Blue Star as soon as they hunted for foreign beasts and found precious resources. This initiative of Blue Star consciousness solved this problem very well. In fact, by logging into the Blue Net, one could also enjoy assistance in other areas. For example, letting the Blue Star consciousness analyze its own abilities to see what it needed to do to better improve. Only, these analyses required sufficient information for reference. And on the Blue Star, the number of transcendents was still too small. Most of them were still only beast soldier level. There wasn't enough data. And the Blue Star consciousness could only help analyze beast soldier level transcendence for the time being. This aspect of assistance was of no great use to beast general level transcendence. It would have to accumulate enough data to help them. It would be even more useless to Qin Shi. As for some other aids, such as identifying materials, they weren't of much use at the moment due to the lack of information. Only when the countries explored the market realm deeply enough and provided enough knowledge for the Blue Star consciousness would these auxiliary roles shine. After receiving the ghostly blue plant into the blue bonnet warehouse, Qin Shi thought about it and put away the frozen blood vine as well. The blood vines were not as spiritual as the ghostly blue plants. However, it had an animal-like aggressiveness, and its strength was not weak. So it was obviously an extremely special plant with high research value. It might even be more valuable than the ghost blue plant. Anyway, first put it away. After doing so, Qin Shi and the ice snake continued to climb towards the mountain peak. At the same time, the transcendents from the various countries on the Antarctic continent also entered the ruined realm one after another and started exploring. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, followed Li Na and the others arriving in the ruin realm. Having just entered the market realm, they were all surprised. The concentration of energy inside the ruin realm was simply too astonishing. They had all evolved into transcendent species and could sense the presence of transcendent energy. Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao had even practiced the Dragon Clan's secret method and were able to gulp transcendent energy to evolve. On the blue planet, they needed to be deliberately guided in order to absorb transcendent energy. Whereas here, none of them needed to run their gong methods. They were able to absorb a small amount of transcendental energy simply by breathing normally. It was as if they had arrived at the immortal holy land all of a sudden. The dense energy environment here alone was a huge surprise. Even if there were no other gains, as long as they stayed here and lived for a period of time, their strengths would improve amazingly. Of course, this was just a thought. It was impossible for them to do nothing but stay here and absorb energy. Be careful. With such a favorable environment here, the foreign beasts that survive are only extraordinary not comparable to those market realms that our country is divided into. Li Na opened her mouth to remind the crowd. Everyone nodded with solemn faces. They chose a direction and first released a bunch of miniature machine insects used for detection. 
probing clearly that there was no danger ahead before advancing carefully. After walking for a short while, there were other transcendents catching up behind them. It was Shang Nong's transcendent alliance. They chose just the same direction as Li Na and Tong Zhao's group. The person in the lead was none other than James. Jing Kunlin and the other transcendents from Dali surrounded them like a pack of pugs, with pleasing expressions on their faces. Seeing Li Na and Tong Zhao's crowd, James immediately frowned. It's the transcendents from Eastern Xia and the Arishur Kingdom. A nearby transcendent spoke up, recognizing Li Na and Tong Zhao. Not long ago, Li Na had rejected James' invitation, and Jing Kunlin had deliberately spread the news, wanting everyone to know that the transcendents from the Eastern Xia and Arishur countries had offended James. As a result, these transcendents had specifically gone to find out information about Tong Zhao, Li Na, and the others, which was how they were able to recognize them. Li Na, Tong Jiao and their group also saw them. Many of the surrounding transcendents were a bit nervous. Shang Nong's transcendent alliance was too strong, with hundreds of people alone. As for them, the transcendents of several small countries combined were only about two dozen. The strongest, Li Na, had only reached the level of a lower beast general. The two were simply not on the same level. Everyone was a competitor. And inside the ruins realm, it was really hard to say what would happen without the laws of the outside world binding them. As the weaker party, they couldn't help but feel some apprehension in their hearts. James' brows stretched out, not paying any more special attention to Lina. He had only looked at Lina's good looks before and moved his heart a little. Since Lina did not know how to reject him, then forget it. It wasn't like he lacked women. A transcendent with a noble status like him. What kind of beautiful women could he not get if he wanted them? As long as he let the word out, there were hot beauties that were willing to climb into his bed. Li Na wasn't particularly outstanding among the beauties he had seen. It was just that beautiful and powerful looking beauties were relatively rare. It was Li Na's loss that Li Na turned down his invitation. James led the group and continued to walk ahead. Soon, they caught up with Li Na's group. Li Na, Tong Jiao, and the others, didn't dare to walk too fast for fear of encountering danger. The team of transcendents led by James, with a large number of people and a large number of powerful people, did not have any concerns in this regard. They had confidence in their strength and walked all the way without any fear at all. The speed of their actions was several times that of Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others. Moreover, seeing Li Na, Tong Jiao, and the others ahead, they didn't look like they were slowing down at all. Jing Kunlin, who was following James, even opened his mouth and shouted at some distance, The guys in front, get out of my way, don't block the road. Li Na frowned. The others in the team were also a bit indignant. Although they were slow, they were indeed somewhat in the way. But Jing Kunlin's commanding tone and stance was just too off-putting. There were short-tempered transcendents who immediately wanted to open their mouths to chide back. Let's get out of the way. Li Na raised her hand and waved it towards the back, stopping the crowd from trying to retort and chide, and said towards everyone, Sister Na? Someone called out indignantly, eyes defiant. Li Na said quickly in a low voice, They're outnumbered. Just give way. There's no need for us to start a conflict with them over such a trivial matter. Everyone heard this, and only then did they reluctantly back away towards the side. Shang Nong's alliance of transcendents walked past them in a condescending manner. Jing Kunlin and a few Dali transcendents even deliberately turned their heads towards them, with sneering smiles on their faces. Their appearance was so beaten up. Ying Di, Pang Mao, and the others, could not wait to smash their fists over. However, they knew that Li Na was right. Their strength was no match for Shang Nong's transcendent alliance. And if they started a conflict here, the ones who would suffer would only be them. So they could only forcefully suppress this anger. However, when everyone passed through the forest and came under a mountain peak, Jing Kunlin made an even more excessive request. Just after entering the market realm, it was a vast forest. However, in everyone's insect detectors, there was nothing to explore inside the forest. Instead, after exiting the forest, the mountain peaks in front of them were filled with extremely dense transcendent energy. It gave off an extraordinary feeling. It was as if it was a legendary feng shui treasure. Everyone was a transcendent species and had a unique sense for transcendent energy, and could detect the difference above the mountain peak. It was feared that there were extraordinary resources on this mountain peak. However, the market realm, whether it was a forest or a mountain peak, didn't have any passages and straight paths for everyone to climb. The mountain path in front of them was already the most suitable climbing path that everyone could find. Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others naturally wanted to climb from here as well. Who knows? Jing Kunlin and the others who were walking in front of them suddenly turned their heads towards them and arrogantly shouted, We'll take this direction. You'd better go somewhere else. On what grounds? Immediately, some transcendents in the ranks of the Eastern Xia and Arishur countries shouted out in defiance. Previously, when they gave way to this group of people, although Jing Kunlin had a bad attitude, 
It was just a small matter, so they could endure it. And now, Jing Kunlin actually wanted them to climb the mountain in a different place. This was excessive. If this could be tolerated, what couldn't be tolerated? On what basis? On the basis that we are better than you. You bunch of trash. You're all so slow to catch up. If you encounter a beast, I'm afraid you'll only be sent to your deaths. If you go in this direction, you won't be able to get any goodies. I'm just thinking of you guys. I don't want you to make a trip for nothing. Jing Kunlin said proudly and arrogantly. Someone from the side picked up. Or is it that you guys want to follow us to pick up advantages? As soon as these words came out, the other transcendents in the Sacred Farmer Alliance all looked over with unkind eyes. Lina furrowed her brows and said in a deep voice, This is the only road up the mountain. If we don't go from here, how are we going to get there? As for the discovery of resources and treasures, if we find them, everyone will just rely on their own means. The argument of picking up bargains is simply nonsense. That's right. This is the market realm. It's not your country's territory. So why not let us go? Xiao Guan, Fu Sweki, Xin Zhao, He Xingxiang and the others all shouted indignantly, each according to their own means? Ha ha ha, it's simply laughable. Just you guys, you're also worthy of telling us that we'll fight each according to our own means. Are you worthy? Jing Kunlin looked over towards the nearby Sacred Farmer Alliance Transcendence and sneered and laughed. Everyone followed suit and laughed. The gazes towards Li Na were filled with playfulness and mockery. Li Na's group, with the exception of Li Na, were all beast soldier level transcendents, and their numbers were still pitifully small. Whereas in their alliance team, there were no less than 30 lower beast general level transcendents at the same level as Li Na alone. There were several mid-level beast general level transcendents, with them each according to their own means. Those words, they were really too presumptuous. In the face of this group of people's naked, undisguised mockery, Li Na, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, Pang Mao, Xiao Guan, Fu Sweki, Xin Zhao, He Xiong, and the rest of them, their faces were furious. It was too much of a bully. However, they couldn't really say anything to refute it. The difference in strength between them and the Sacred Farmer Alliance was indeed too great. All right, we'll take up this mountain road. You guys go to the other direction to take a look. What you want to do is your business. In any case, this direction does not work for you. James coldly looked over, condescendingly looking down on Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others. A cold voice came out of his mouth. As if it was a heavenly god ruling, it was decisive and his tone was filled with an unquestionable attitude. This kind of eye-catching stance made Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others very unhappy. Marred, on what grounds, truly speaking, this direction was still their earliest choice. It was the group of people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance that arrived later. Now, they actually wanted to turn the tables and drive them away. It was too much. Even Li Na, who had always been more focused on the big picture, was annoyed in her heart. Jing Kunlin was picking fights again and again on the strength of holding onto the holy farmer's thigh. Once, they could tolerate it. But to continue to tolerate such repeated targeting, their team's heart was going to be crushed. Moreover, this was the peak of the market realm that hadn't been cleared by humans and there weren't any molded mountain passes around it. The mountain road in front of them was considered to be a more suitable path for hiking. The other directions were basically overgrown with barren grass, intertwined with vines and ancient trees, and the terrain was intricate. Leaving this direction, where would they find another suitable mountain climbing path? Li Na stepped forward, wanting to argue her case. At this time, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao received a transmission from Qin Shi. Tong Jiao's eyes changed slightly, raised his head, Gave James and the transcendence around him a strange look, stepped forward and pulled the sleeve of Li Na, who was preparing to fight James, and whispered, Sister Na, forget about it, let's just change to another place, and let's give this place to them. Li Na turned her head to look at Tong Zhao, and couldn't help but frown, puzzled, reason? Obviously Tong Zhao just now, was even more furious than her, itching to fight with Jing Kunlin and the others, but now he actually turned around and advised her to give up. This made Li Na very strange. Believe me for once. Specific reason. Leave first. Tong Jiao looked at Li Na with firm eyes and whispered. Li Na frowned once again, becoming more and more puzzled. However, seeing Tong Jiao's firm gaze, she thought for a moment and still nodded. She believed that Tong Jiao wouldn't do this for nothing. There must be a reason for her to do so. Moreover, looking at Jane's attitude, even if she argued her case, I'm afraid it wouldn't be of much use. In that case, it would be better to leave for the time being. The big deal was to wait for the group from Saint Farm to leave before returning. Let's go. Li Na turned around and said towards Xiao Guan, Fu Sweki, Xin Zhao, He Xingxiang, and the other transcendents from the other small countries. Although everyone was also puzzled, they were still willing to listen to Li Na's command since she was elected to be the leader. 
and suppressed their anger as they turned to leave. Ha, count yourselves wise. Seeing this, the smile on Jing Kunlin's face became even more smug. A bunch of weaklings who also presumed to compete with us. When we asked them to join our alliance, they were unwilling, and now they can only roll away in disgrace. The other transcendents of the Sacred Farmer Alliance all let out playful jeers at the backs of Li Na, Tong Jiao, and the others as they left. Let's go. Let's move on, James said with a cold gaze, not bothering to look at the departing Li Na, Tong Jiao, and the others. He had a haughty look from start to finish, not putting Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others in his eyes at all. A group of ignorant ants that dared to disobey their sacred farmer was just a group of ants that dared to disobey, so they would be crushed with their hands. However, this group of mole crickets were still considered sensible and didn't dirty his hands. On the other side, Li Na, who had left the mountain road, led the group in another direction. After walking for some distance, the group stopped. Li Na looked over towards Tong Jiao and asked, Now, can you tell us the reason why you want us to give in and leave? Aside from Ming Di and Pang Mao, everyone else looked over towards Tong Jiao. They were also puzzled in their hearts as to why Tong Jiao wanted them to hold back against the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance. Although it was true that they were not as strong as the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance, but they wouldn't be afraid of anything either. If they really wanted to make a scene here, the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance wouldn't be able to take any advantage. This was a market realm, and there was no telling what kind of foreign beasts existed around here. In the event that they attracted the attention of certain powerful beasts, everyone would not be able to take it in their stride. Tong Jiao pulled out a little white mouse with golden eyes from his backpack and said, This little white mouse is named by Jean. It is our East Xia's transcendent research achievement. It possesses the ability to detect treasures, as well as the ability to tend to good fortune and avoid misfortune. Just now, Bai Jin detected that there is a huge menace in front of the mountain peaks. That's why I'm suggesting that we all leave first. White Gold was precisely one of the batch of dragon beasts that were first infected by Qin Shi's dragon blood, and it was still the only dragon beast within that batch that had evolved a unique ability. It was also the first dragon beast to learn Qin Shi's dragon clan Tai Long Spitting Breath. Qin Shi was very attached to this little white mouse and would tease it from time to time. After Professor Tang's research and cultivation during this period of time, as well as Qin Shi's care, the treasure-seeking ability on the white gold had been further developed. It was able to explore the location of many kinds of rare mineral deposits, and it also had a certain perception of the existence of other treasures. It was able to discover many treasures that ordinary transcendents could not perceive. To enter a new market realm to explore, Tong Zhao and the others naturally wouldn't miss this treasure-hunting machine. Everyone looked towards the little white mouse in Tong Zhao's hand, and a strong surprise appeared in their eyes. This little white mouse, is it really this amazing? Xi Enjua couldn't help but ask, somewhat disbelieving. Of course, how could I lie to you all? A smile appeared on Tong Jiao's face. In reality, the white gold only had the ability to hunt for treasure. The ability to avoid harm was something that Tong Jiao had made up. The reason why Tong Jiao told everyone to hold back and retreat was because he had just received a transmission from Qin Shi. Qin Shi had acted with Ice Snake in the front and encountered quite a few difficult dangers. He had passed this information over through the blue net so that Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, would be able to step into fewer potholes. And just now, it was mentioned within the message that Qin Shi passed on that there would be some fierce dangers ahead as they climbed along this mountain path. There was a forest of mutated plants, and the mutated plants inside were so strong that even Qin Shi and the ice snake had wasted a lot of effort to break free. Therefore, the gaze that Tong Jiao had just looked at James would seem so bizarre. Of course, the real reason, Tong Jiao is impossible to say out, can only take the platinum to put off a little. If you guys don't believe me, you can let some insect scouts follow up and take a look. In a short while, there will definitely be a change in front. Tong Zhao chestily said. Good. Then send a few flower mosquito scouts to follow up and take a look. Li Na said after some thought. It wasn't that she doubted Tong Zhao. However, now that everyone was a team, she needed to be responsible for her teammates and definitely couldn't just listen to Tong Zhao's side of the story. This was not conducive to teamwork. Moreover, if it was really like what Tong Zhao said, she was eager to see what kind of expression this group of condescending Sacred Farmer Alliance transcendents would have later on, being driven away. She could have accumulated quite a bit of resentment in her heart. At the same time, through the encounter of the Sacred Farmer Alliance transcendents, she could also see what danger she needed to be wary of inside this ruin's realm. It could be called killing multiple birds with one stone. Xiao Guan, who was responsible for scouting next to him, immediately released several flower mosquito scouts. The tiny scouts shaped like mosquitoes disappeared with a buzz and flew over in the direction James and his group were in. On the other side, James and his group climbed towards the mountain in a furious manner. This mountain road, said to be a road, was actually just a little bit better than the rest, 
and there were still tons of bushes and trees blocking the way in front of them. James they directly exerted transcendent power to clear the obstacles, encountered shrubs and bushes that blocked the road, directly a burst of blazing fire, wind blades bombarded up, extremely strong and overbearing, simply do not care whether it will make too much noise. Of course, they weren't really stupid and arrogant. Rather, through the scouting machines that were released, they hadn't found any overly powerful foreign beasts in the vicinity, which was why their tactics were so drastic. I always feel that this mountain is a bit different. It seems to be more appealing than other places. Strange, how come after climbing up, the surrounding alien beasts are getting less and less instead? Among the sacred farmer alliance transcendence, someone muttered in confusion. The transcendent energy on this mountain peak was denser than any other place, and the attraction for transcendent species was also greater than other places. Logically, a feng shui treasure like this should have a large number of powerful extraordinary beasts entrenched in it, and what they saw along the way was obviously a bit abnormal. Who cares? Let's go up the mountain first. Our scouting machines, the strongest foreign beasts we have detected in the surrounding area are only at the level of a medium beast general. I think this should be the highest level of the foreign beasts in the vicinity. With so many of us, there's more than one transcendent at the level of medium beast generals, so we're not afraid of them even if we encounter foreign beasts. Someone said with full concern, just a few hundred ordinary soldiers, if equipped with sufficiently refined weapons, could be a threat to a beast general. They were hundreds of transcendents equivalent to an army of fey beasts. Even if they encountered a beast king, they would be able to fight it off. No matter how bizarre this mountain peak was, could it still threaten so many of their transcendents? The crowd beside them nodded in agreement. The large number of people and their collective strength made them much bolder. However, just as they were discussing, the grass and trees around them gradually produced changes that they hadn't noticed. Inside the shrubs and bushes, there was a vine entwined on it that actually twisted like a living thing, traveling through the forest and surrounding them, intertwining into a huge vine hunting net. Occasionally some of the vines were cut by the transcendents with their wind blades, and scarlet liquid flowed out from them, as if some kind of animal had been injured. Naturally, this scene could not be hidden from the many transcendents. However, they went up the mountain to check it out and found that the sap of these vines was just the color of fresh blood, and without any other changes happening, they ignored it as some kind of special plant, oblivious to the fact that a tightly woven net was taking shape around them. Whoosh! After a long time, all of a sudden, a burst of sharp object friction and air-breaking sounds resounded around the sacred farmer alliance transcendence. A vine like a giant python danced about, pulling up in the air and winding toward them at great speed. Moreover, while traveling and winding around, a piece of jagged leaves quickly grew on the vines, and two by two, they were shaped like a hideous mouthpiece covered with sharp teeth. The sudden attack caught them off guard. Some transcendents couldn't even react in time before they were entangled in the vines and bundled into a ball in the blink of an eye. What is it? Watch out. The transcendence of the Sacred Farmer Alliance reacted and immediately made counterattacks, taking out the daggers and sabers they carried on their bodies and activating their transcendent powers in an attempt to destroy the vines. However, there were too many vines, a mess full and alive. After being chopped off and burned, more vines immediately replenished. Moreover, the attack of the vines became more and more frantic, and the mouthpiece like saw blades sliced through their bodies, sharper than knives. They were wearing special combat suits that were able to withstand the attacks of the alien beasts to a certain extent, and after evolving into a transcendent species themselves, their defense ability was also greatly improved. As a result, on their bodies, even their combat uniforms with skin and flesh were torn open by the sharp saw blades with a bloody wound. Scarlet blood flowed out and spilled onto the saw leaves, making these vines become even more crazy. It was as if a bloodthirsty demonic snake was dancing around in the air, in the blink of an eye. Several transcendents were seriously injured and on the verge of death. They were too unlucky to step right on the vines and were closest to them, not even having the time to react and dodge. Damn it! James was at the front. Naturally he was also attacked by the vines. His face was very ugly. He was not injured. Though, as a transcendent at the median beast general level, although these vines were difficult to deal with, they were not hard to defeat him. On his body, a blue arc of electricity shot out, shattering all of the vines that came crashing in. What James used for his genetic modification was the genes of a Beast King Thunder Soft Shell Turtle. The Thunder Soft Shell Turtle, a median Beast King, grasped an extremely terrifying lightning-based transcendent power that could shatter patches of mountains and forests with a single strike. And with a single strike, a thundercloud filled the air and enveloped a range of hundreds of meters. Within the range covered by the thundercloud, even tanks and armored vehicles would be shattered into scrap metal. Saint Gnome had also spent a great deal of money to fetch the blood of the Thunder Soft Shell Turtle extracting the genes of the turtle from it, and had yet to actually kill the turtle. Originally, 
The genes of a median beast king were able to cultivate a transcendent at the level of a lower beast king. No more. It could also cultivate an upper beast general level transcendent. It was only that the beast king's genes were simply too powerful, far exceeding the tolerance limits of the average transcendence body. So Shun Nong had specially suppressed some of the power of the thunder soft shell turtle genes, and James had only gained the transcendent power of a mid-ranked beast general level. But even so, his strength was extremely powerful amongst a group of mid-level beast general level transcendents. The thunder soft shell turtle ability was unleashed, and blue lightning bolts carried terrifying heat and shock as they pounded towards the surroundings. A vine twined over and when it encountered the blue lightning, it was instantly struck into pieces. Scarlet liquid flew about and was vaporized into mist by the blue lightning. The other transcendents in the surroundings also made their moves. Lightning, flames, wind blades, metal mastery, and other transcendent powers were released to counter the attacks of these vines. However, it was a pity that it had little effect. Thus at this moment, it was as if the surrounding woods had transformed into plant ogres and attacked them. At a glance, the shadows were all filled with chaotic dancing ogre vines. How terrifying. What exactly are these things? Can plants actually metamorphose into transcendent species as well? Li Na, Tong Jiao and the others, through the flower mosquito scout, saw the scene that happened to the sacred farmer alliance transcendentals, and were instantly very surprised. All along, there had been an endless variety of exotic beasts inside the market realm, and many of them shared certain similarities with the animals on the blue star. Everyone had gotten used to the fact that exotic beasts were transcendent animals. As for plants, there hadn't been any discovery of such things as transcendent plants. Unexpectedly, this shocking situation appeared before their eyes. The vines around the sacred farmer alliance transcendent beasts were actually like foreign beasts, possessing powerful attacking abilities and able to hunt as if they were foreign beasts. On our blue star, there are also plants with hunting abilities such as cannibalistic flowers and cannibalistic vines. In fact, inside the market realm, the appearance of this kind of transcendent mortal plant is not something that can't be understood. A transcendent said in a deep voice from the side. When the various countries explored the market realms that each country had been divided into, they had also done some training specifically for the transcendent plants that were likely to appear. It was only that no transcendent plants had appeared inside the market realms that the countries had divided into. The problem is, on this mountain peak, there are no other powerful exotic beasts to be seen. Could it be that the entire mountain peak? is filled with transcendent plants? Tong Jiao said in a deep voice. These words immediately caused everyone's faces to turn heavy, realizing that it was not good. Indeed, just now, everyone had realized that the situation on this mountain peak was somewhat abnormal. In theory, this mountain peak was so dense with transcendent energy that it was a feng shui treasure, and it should have been strongly welcomed by the foreign beasts. As a result, on the mountain peak, the number of foreign beasts was very sparse. Compared to the market realm areas that each country was divided into, the number of foreign beasts was even more sparse, because they were new to the area. Everyone just kept this doubt in the back of their minds for the time being and didn't look deeper. Thinking back at this moment, it was very likely that the scarcity of the number of foreign beasts on the mountain peaks was due to the existence of these transcendent plants. It's hard to say whether the appearance of transcendent plants is a blessing or a curse. Let's take a look first. Anyway, there are people from Sacred Farmer who will trip the thunder for us. If the situation is not right, we'll withdraw for the time being. Li Na looked at the video transmitted back from the flower mosquito scout and said with a serious face. Everyone nodded, and there was some gloating in their hearts. It was fortunate that the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance were overbearing and drove them away, or else they would be the ones facing the attack of the cannibalistic vines right now. Ha ha, aren't Ding Kunlin, James and the others very capable? Then let them scout out the situation for us up front. I wonder what kind of expression they'll have on their faces if they realize that they've blocked the disaster for us. Everyone couldn't help but heave a smile. At the same time, somewhere on the mountain peak, Sheen Shur and Ice Snake, hidden away, were watching the good show of the Sacred Farmer Alliance Transcendence from the sidelines. Sheen Shur summoned with Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao, and naturally, from them, he learned about their recent encounters and the movements of the Sacred Farmer Alliance. They had traveled all the way and encountered quite a few transcendent plants. Many transcendent mortal plants were difficult to deal with and could not be killed by fighting them. Even with Qin Shi and Ice Snake's strength, they were somewhat impatient after being entangled for a long time. Learning that the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance happened to be heading towards the mountain, Qin Shi had a bright idea, thinking that he couldn't give free work for nothing and scout the way ahead. So he performed his ability to fly on clouds and mist and hid with Ice Snake. He intended to let the people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance trip the mine in the front, and they followed behind to see what the situation was. The people from the Sacred Farmer Alliance didn't know that they were being watched from the sidelines by a few old slips, facing the attack of the cannibal vines. 
they could only use their best efforts to fight against it. After fighting the man-eating vines for a while, they found a surprise. A Saint Farmer Alliance transcendent waved his hand and ripped off a vine that was twisting over, only to see a strange red crystal fall from the ripped off vine. What is this thing? Curious in his heart, he picked up the red crystal and carefully examined it, only to see that the red crystal was overflowing with a strange transcendent power. Moreover, it was very attractive, because he was too close, he breathed in, and there were actually threads of red gas flowing out from inside the red crystal, which was sucked into his body, and then, a majestic life energy exploded inside him, the wounds on his body that were torn open by the saw leaves from the vines he had just tangled with actually healed at a speed visible to the naked eye, this, is such a powerful life energy, he couldn't help but shout in surprise, this scene, which fell in the eyes of the nearby transcendentals, instantly drew a gasp of amazement, Although transcendent mortals had stronger life energy and some minor injuries would heal quickly, they also needed a certain amount of time. Recovering in the blink of an eye like this was simply incredible. It was like having an immortal body. At the same time, elsewhere, there were transcendents who had encountered a similar situation. Everyone's eyes lit up. They realized that these red crystals were bound to be some extremely precious transcendent crystals. What a treasure. Inside these man-eating vines, they actually contain something so precious. We're going to be rich. This stuff can actually enhance our cellular activity, allowing our body's recovery ability to greatly increase and even improve our physical quality. The transcendents who were lucky enough to obtain the red crystals were so excited that they couldn't help themselves after absorbing the energy that escaped from the red crystals. They were transcendents who had undergone genetic modification. And normally, unless the fused genes were replaced, their battle power would basically be fixed and it would be difficult to have a significant increase. This was because genetic modification was operating on the genes. It certainly allowed them to fuse the genes of powerful exotic beasts and master transcendent power, but it also caused damage to the original genes, making the spliced genes lose their evolutionary potential. As a result, these red crystals were able to awaken the activity of their cells. It was truly incredible. Based on this alone, the value of these red crystals was incalculable. What's more, the energy of the red crystals could also help them quickly recover from their injuries. This was tantamount to turning them into undefeatable powerhouses. Instantly, these transcendents looked at the maniacal and demonic cannibal vines around them, and their gazes all changed. Just now, they were suddenly attacked by the cannibal vines, and their hearts were shocked and angry, especially those transcendents who were caught off guard and were entangled by the cannibal vines and had wounds cut into their bodies were even more enraged. Right now, their gazes were all filled with fire. Even those transcendents who were injured were the same. As they looked at the vines swarming around them, they were no longer looking at a bunch of attacking mutant plants, but rather treasures delivered to their door. The expression on James' face also changed from the shocked anger at the beginning to thick surprise. The gaze that looked at the cannibal vines was filled with greed. Transcendent plants that can actually harbor this kind of treasure. Its value is only greater than all those resources that we have developed inside the delineated market realm area. James looked over towards the surrounding transcendents from other countries, a faintly undetectable chagrin appearing in his eyes. If they had known that they would find such precious treasures, they shouldn't have made an alliance with the people of these countries, and how much better it would be to keep these red crystals all to themselves. These crystals, capable of helping one to quickly recover from injuries and enhance the quality of the human body, showed an efficacy that was too astonishing. It was definitely a strategic resource. Moreover, the killing power exhibited by the surrounding cannibal vines was not so strong that they could not fight against them. It was mainly just difficult to deal with. It was completely possible to eradicate them by spending a little bit of money. Now, for nothing, they had to share so many precious red crystals with the transcendents of other countries. James was upset in his heart. However, since the alliance had already been established, although within the Sacred Farmer Alliance, Sacred Farmer's transcendents were the most numerous and strongest. However, the other countries' transcendents united were also a force to be reckoned with, and he couldn't turn his back on them. Luckily, our Saint Farm's transcendents are the strongest and there are still a lot of them, so the red crystals that can be harvested will definitely be the most. James reassured himself in his heart. Moreover, he kept a heart. Everyone make a move. Eradicate these man-eating vines and collect the red crystals. This is our alliance's booty. And when the battle is over, we'll distribute it according to how everyone handled it. James shouted. At that time, it wasn't up to him to decide how to distribute it according to the labor. They could completely intercept most of the red crystals and casually leak a little out, letting the other country's transcendents fight it out themselves. This kind of conspiracy, Saint Farmer's people had long been familiar with it. When the transcendents from the various countries heard this, they immediately sensed the trap, and one of them couldn't help but frown. 
they definitely preferred whoever got the red crystals to whoever got them over a unified distribution, especially the few transcendents who had already gotten the red crystals. Not every vine had red crystals inside. In fact, the production rate of red crystals was still very low. So far, there were less than 10 red crystals found in total. It could be completely said that there were too many monks and not enough gruel. James' so-called unified distribution was harming their interests. However, before they could object, one by one, the Saint Farm's transcendence cooperated with James, releasing the transcendent power in their bodies, seemingly blasting towards the vines that danced wildly around them. But in reality, they were also deterring and suppressing them. Hundreds of Saint Farm transcendents, with their auras in full force, pressurized their faces wildly, unable to open their mouths to retort at all. By the time they caught their breath and wanted to open their mouths, a moment had already passed. Not offering a rebuttal in the first place was tantamount to acquiescing to James' proposal. Everyone knew that James was doing this on purpose, wanting to create an established fact, and their faces were unimpressed. However, the strength of the Saint Farm transcendence was too strong, and no one was willing to lead the protest. Plus there were other Saint Farm diehards, so after everyone looked at each other in disbelief, they could only accept this fact helplessly. James didn't bother to pay attention to everyone's ugly faces, and led the Saint Farm transcendence, rushing towards the cannibal vines. Blue electric arc shot wildly and chaotically from his body, striking a vine and turning it into charcoal and dropping it to the ground. At the same time, some transcendents went forward to check if there were blood-colored crystals present in these vines. Although the production rate of blood-colored crystals was not high, the number of vines around them was high enough, and under the great sweep, it still allowed them to harvest another dozen or so. Ha ha, we're getting rich. The transcendent from Sacred Farmer, holding the blood-colored crystals, shouted in exhilaration. On the other side, Sheenshur also had an excited and uplifted expression on his face. Ha ha, we're going to be rich, big ice. Set off. The harvest season is here. The discovery of the red crystals was also an unexpected joy to Sheenshur. He had tangled with the ice snake and several batches of transcendent plants without seeing the red crystals. It wasn't because they were unlucky and not strong enough. Rather, it was because he and Ice Snake hadn't done much tangling with the surrounding transcendent plants. Unlike the Saint Farmer's Alliance transcendents, who were too many in number, they broke out into a big battle with the transcendent plants and paid a small price to each other. That was why the red crystals could be found. But it's alright. Everyone was a child of Mother Blue Star. A family. Saint Farmer's discovery was his discovery. Sheenshur brought the ice snake and quietly approached the vine bush. A cloud of mist created by the prancing clouds enveloped his body. From the outside world, it appeared to be nothing more than a puff of unremarkable mist drifting through the woods. No one knew that a divine dragon and median beast general were hidden inside. These blood-colored crystals are good stuff, filled with rich wood attribute transcendent power, just enough to be used to cobble together the energy of another attribute needed for revolution in my body. Sheenshur's eyes shone as he stared at James and the others who were battling the man-eating vines and he composed himself to wait patiently. Judging from his previous experience with Ice Snake, these man-eating vines had yet to bring out their true abilities. All man-eating vines could be traced back to a mother plant. That mother plant of man-eating vines would definitely give birth to more precious blood-colored crystals. Of course, it would also be more difficult to deal with. This kind of difficult character should just be left to the Sacred Farmer Alliance Transcendence to deal with. Anyway, they were so domineering that they shouldn't mind fighting the man-eating vine matrix. James, Jing Kunlin, and their group fought hard against the man-eating vines. Under the lure of the blood-colored crystals, they erupted with dozens of times the fighting enthusiasm. And after paying the price of a group of casualties, they finally managed to wipe out the large network of man-eating vines that had enveloped them. The blood-colored crystals harvested by everyone added up to a full 50. Many of the transcendents who were injured and happened to get their hands on the blood-colored crystals simply did not want to hand them over to James for uniform distribution, and simply absorbed the energy of the blood-colored crystals directly using it to repair their injuries and enhance their strength. Turning the blood color crystals over to James and the others might just be a meatbag that would never return. It would be better to absorb it directly. Although this was possibly the most wasteful use of the scarlet crystals, it was better than not being able to gain any benefits at all when the time came. When James saw this, his face became a bit ugly, and he was about to open his mouth to rebuke everyone to hand over the scarlet crystals. Ru! The ground suddenly produced a strong vibration, a crack like a spider's web spreading in all directions, the soil and fallen leaves rustling and shaking. And then, nine huge vines as thick as the trunk of a tree hugged by two people, carrying the moist soil, rushed up from the ground and flew in the air. It was as if the nine heavenly wooden wild dragons were roaring and roaring. With that, it lashed towards James and the others at once. The long whip swung with extreme speed. The air was whipped to make a roar like a bomb explosion. 
Watch out! James' eyes glazed over, and he only had time to shout out words of warning as he fought to mobilize the thunder softshell turtle power on his body to meet the lightning-like drawn wooden vines. The power of the thunder softshell turtle, transformed into blue lightning, looked beautiful and as clear as the sky, but inside it was extremely violent. The lightning collided with the wooden vines in the air, instantly generating a violent shocking explosion. A burst of rolling smoke accompanied by a powerful shocking airwave, expanding in all directions. James was pushed back several steps by this force, almost unable to stand on his feet. And to his horror, after a hasty collision with his thunder soft-shelled turtle power, the wooden vine was only blasted to lift up slightly towards the sky for a distance, drawing an arc in the air and lashing down again. His thunder soft-shelled turtle power, which had reached the level of a medium beast general, only burned a layer of faint scorch marks on the surface of the wooden vine and did not even do enough damage to it. Moreover, the scorch marks on it that had been scorched out by the thunder softshell turtle's power were still rapidly recovering when the wooden vine was drawn down. The scorch marks fell like scars, and in the blink of an eye, they were restored as before. The force of the wood vines that were drawn down was even more ferocious than earlier, stirring up the air and bringing up wildly soaring winds. The wooden vines covered with spikes and saw leaves, under the high-speed movement, simply had a kind of momentum that wanted to smash all obstacles in front of them and was invincible. James' face changed wildly, and he had to once again activate the power of the thunder soft shell turtle to meet it, continuously slashing the wooden vines with blue lightning. Even he, a transcendent at the level of a median beast general, was instantly plunged into a bitter battle, not to mention the others. The other eight wooden vines, lashed out in eight different directions. There were a few beast soldier level transcendents who were unlucky enough to be hit by the wooden vines, and their entire body was like a gyroscope being jerked away spinning and shooting towards the distance, ruthlessly smashing into the trunks of the trees next to them, knocking down several trees before coming to a stop. The combat uniform on his body was torn and tattered by the impact of the whip, and he didn't know how many bones in his body had been broken, rolling his eyes and spitting blood from his mouth. It looked like he couldn't survive. This was the first time that the Sacred Farmer Alliance Transcendence had died. Just now, although many of them had been unexpectedly entangled by the cannibal vines and bundled into a ball, they were still able to struggle. With the rescue of the other transcendents beside them, they only suffered some injuries and were in a sorry state, and there were no cases of death. And now, when these nine thick wooden vines appeared, they directly smoked several transcendents to death. James was instantly shocked and furious. Hey, these man-eating vines are not to be messed with. The ice snake spat out scarlet snake letters, and together with Chinshur, they hid in the woods not far from the sacred farmer alliance, watching their battle with the man-eating vines and laughing straight away. It's the man-eating vine mother. This man-eating vine mother, the attack power of each wooden vine, I'm afraid it can only be comparable to that of a mediate beast general. This next nine wooden vines dancing around, is equal to nine mediate beast generals who have gone crazy from killing or striking out. This group of people is in danger. Chinshur hid in the clouds and mist, lying on the ice serpent's head, looking at the sacred farming alliance transcendents who were fighting hard, shaking his head and sighing, shedding a sympathetic tear for them. However, the number of Saint Farmer Alliance Transcendents was high, and among them, there were nearly a hundred Transcendents at the lower Beast General level alone, together with James and other mid-level Beast General level Transcendents. The man-eating Vine Mother could only present a momentary show of power, and the end result was definitely going to be uprooted. Damn it, these nine wooden vines should be the mother bodies of those man-eating vines just now. Let's all make a move together and cut them all off. Inside the mother body of the man-eating vines, there must be better blood-colored crystals. James struck out and fought against the wooden vines that were pumping towards him, while shouting towards the other transcendents of Shang Nong. There were frenzied flames burning in his eyes, and his tone changed from shocked anger to greed. James' gaze was fiery as he looked at the mother of all man-eating vines. The few transcendents who had just been smoked to death were from other small countries, and although their deaths made James angry, it wasn't too much to say that he was sad. It wasn't like they were saint farmers anyway, it was just that his own men were killed, which made him lose face a little. But more important than anger, it was still more important to sever the man-eating vine mother and obtain the blood-colored crystals. The man-eating vines just now all contained blood-colored crystals that possessed amazing efficacy. The man-eating vine mother body was even thicker and stronger. There was no reason why it wouldn't contain blood-colored crystals. Moreover, the efficacy of the blood-colored crystals contained would definitely be stronger than the blood-colored crystals in the cannibal vines. If they could get their hands on it, then the deaths of these transcendents would be nothing. Exchanging their lives for the blood-colored crystals of the man-eating vine's mother body was worth every penny. The surrounding sacred farmer transcendents also showed a strong greed in their eyes. They rushed up towards the wooden vines, casting various abilities to attack furiously. 
Each wooden vine was equivalent to a mid-level beast general, and they could even cooperate with each other to erupt with a power comparable to that of an upper-level beast general. However, the number of transcendents in the Holy Farmer Alliance was too high, and when they joined forces, they were able to resist against a beast king, the mother body of cannibal vines, facing the frenzied saint farmer transcendence, quickly fell into a disadvantage after initially gaining the upper hand. For every wooden vine, there were dozens of transcendents under siege. Many of these transcendents mastered the flame power that was also specialized in restraining wood attribute transcendent powers, using fire to overcome wood. The burning caused the wood vine saw leaves to crackle and snap, and a piece of hair scorched and curled and fell. Layers of scorch marks also appeared on the thick wooden vines. Although the wood vine possessed a strong self-healing ability, the injuries on it were rapidly repairing, but the attacks it faced were simply too many and too violent. The speed of repair could not catch up with the speed of destruction. Soon, the nine wooden vines were burst. Nine crystals that were the size of a fist and shone with a magnificent scarlet light flew out from them. It's red crystals. The saint farmer transcended rejoiced at the sight. These nine red crystals, which were the size of an adult's fist, were more than ten times larger than the red crystals they had just obtained from the cannibal vines, one topped the dozen or so red crystals from earlier. Moreover, it gave off a strong and tantalizing fragrance. It was the scent of life, and one couldn't help but be intoxicated by it. It can be imagined that the effectiveness of these nine red crystals is bound to be many times stronger than those small crystals. Immediately, some people jumped up, wanting to pick up the red crystals that flew out. Good stuff, this is mine. Seeing this, Sheen sure who was hiding on the side, waved his dragon claw and unleashed his wind control ability. A stream of air was condensed and under his control. It was like an invisible big hand grasping at the red crystals. The big air hand grabbed in the air, directly fishing the nine red crystals into his hand, shrinking back towards Qin Shi's location. James and a few Xingnong transcendents who were out to collect the red crystals froze for a moment when they saw that the red crystals, which were all close to being in their hands, actually flew away upwards out of thin air. Come back. They shouted explosively and jumped up again, reaching out to grab it. However, the large hand of airflow manipulated by Qin Shi was even faster than them, grabbing the red crystal and running away. It disappeared in a whoosh. Now, how could the transcendence of the sacred farmer not realize that someone was robbing their peaches? How could a proper crystal fly away by itself? They rushed towards the place where the red crystal flew away. However, Qin Shi had long since activated his cloud riding ability, wrapping the red crystal in clouds and falling into hiding. They pounced on it. Damn it. What in the world is it that dares to rob the treasure from us? James and the others shook with rage. It was with great difficulty that they had severed the wooden vine, only to have the results taken away by someone else. After spending most of the day's effort, it turned out to be a graft for someone else. James' lungs were about to explode with anger. On the side of the transcendents from other countries, when they saw the nine fist-sized red crystals fly away, they all felt very sorry in their hearts. Each of these red crystals, when placed in the outside world, were definitely treasures that could be sold for billions, even tens of billions of points. It was just lost to them, causing them to deplore it. However, seeing the Saint Farmer Transcendent's furious appearance, they felt a great sense of relief in their hearts. Just now, the transcendents of these countries had also wanted to go and deal with Wooden Vine and snatch the red crystals, only to be deliberately sidelined by Shang Nong's transcendence. Now, seeing Shang Nong's transcendence, the basket hit the water and nothing was gained. They naturally felt painfully happy. On the other side, Li Na, Xiao Guan, Fu Sueki, Xin Zhao, He Xiang and the others who were watching the scene through the flower mosquito scout were taken aback. These transcendent plants are actually capable of breeding such precious treasures. What was that all about just now? What was that thing that snatched food from the mouth of sacred farmers transcendentals? They exclaimed in astonishment. Seeing the red crystals, their hearts were also on fire, itching to go over and fight for it. Anyone with a discerning eye could see how precious the red crystals were. However, seeing how powerful the man-eating vine mother was, they weren't tempted to lose their heads by the benefits in front of them. But instead, they kept their heads and stayed where they were, watching from the sidelines, wanting to see how the sacred farmer alliance transcendentals resolved the man-eating vine mother. What kind of means did these transcendent plants have? This way, if they encountered transcendent plants, they would also have some experience in targeting them. Since the vines around them were able to grow things like red crystals, then with the mountains here and so many plants, there might be other more valuable treasures. There was no need to have to compete with the Sacred Farmer Alliance Transcendence. It was just that even as they watched from the sidelines, none of them could see what had happened when those nine fist-sized red crystals flew away just now. Under the observation of the Flower Mosquito Scout, there were no traces of other countries' transcendence found in the surroundings. 
nor were there any powerful transcendent beasts present. The disappearance of those nine red crystals seemed extremely bizarre. It seems that above this mountain peak, there are still dangers that we don't understand that exist. Everyone must be careful. Li Na reminded in a deep voice towards her teammates behind her. Everyone nodded in response. That scene just now indeed seemed very bizarre. Only Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao had some strange looks in their eyes. They were aware that Qin Shi was with the ice snake, hiding nearby. Naturally, they recognized that the flying away of those nine red crystals was Qin Shi's handiwork. At this moment, James and the others were storming around. Li Na said towards Tong Jiao and the others, Let's go. Let's also look elsewhere to see if there are any other transcendent plants that can find the treasure of Snoopy-like red crystals. Qin Shi in the bushes, looked at the nine red crystals that came into his hands, felt the rich would attribute energy emanating from them, and smiled from ear to ear. It's true that I didn't find a place where I stepped through the iron shoes, but I didn't have to work hard to get it. With these nine crystals containing what attribute energy, I can evolve once again. If Qin Shi wanted to evolve into a beast king, he needed to absorb enough transcendent energy of at least five different attributes. Currently, he had only absorbed transcendent energy of three attributes, namely flame, metal, and frost. There were still two attributes of energy missing before he could evolve into a beast king. These red crystals, which contained a huge amount of what attribute energy, were a timely rain for him. The ice snake tilted its head and looked blearily at the nine red crystals floating in front of Qin Shi, and couldn't help but leave a halo in its mouth. Greedy, pity it, a median beast general, sitting in a cold pool, once occupying the area within the Dali Market Realm region and dominating the area, so happy, only now did it realize how insular it was, completely a frog in the bottom of a well, it turned out that there were such coveted transcendent plants in the world besides the ice crystal plants in the cold pool, the nine fist sized red crystals exuded an aura that made it salivate, its triangular snake eyes were no longer cold, and like a puppy begging for food, it looked at Qin Shi with longing in its eyes, Qin Shi pretended not to see its pleasing eyes and waved his dragon claw to collect the red crystal. Let's go. Find a place first. I'm going to absorb the wood attribute energy for a while. And when my divine skill is accomplished, then I'll help you find a few crystals for your addiction as well. Qin Shi raised his dragon claw and knocked the ice snake's head. He was a good dragon and wouldn't mistreat his little brother. However, the wood attribute red crystals, which contained the energy he needed. He definitely needed to eat a full meal first. This new market realm was filled with crises everywhere. There were so many transcendent plants in just this mountain peak. There were some transcendent plants that he had a headache when he encountered them. There must be even greater dangers present. If he could enhance his strength a little more, their next move would be safer as well. Sheen sure urged the ice snake and swam in another direction, leaving behind the hysterical and furious Saint Farmer transcendent. They found a place where there were no transcendent plants and made a cave in the mountain to burrow in and hide. Qin Shi arranged a layer of clouds outside the cave for concealment, although the clouds and mist that were arranged would gradually dissipate without his energy to maintain it. However, as long as there were no people or foreign beasts specifically attacking it, maintaining it for two or three days would not be a problem. Two or three days in the world was enough for him to make a breakthrough. Of course, for safety's sake, the ice snake was sent to block the entrance of the cave, using its huge body as a barrier. If there were really any ungrateful foreign beasts or transcendentals to break in, with Ice Snake's strength, it would be enough to handle it for a while. Qin Shi came to the depths of the cave and placed nine fist-sized red crystals underneath his body as his dragon body coiled up. The nine crystals, which looked as fascinating as diamonds, had a very peculiar structure inside, which seemed to have veins similar to wooden fibers, and was like a liquid that could be gently shaken. From time to time, there was also scarlet red mist escaping from it, but it didn't dissipate, but flowed around the crystals, making the whole crystal look beautiful. Sheen sure held the red crystal all the way up, and with a slight breath, he was able to inhale the scarlet gas into his body. The scarlet mist, which looked even more vivid than blood, did not have a trace of sweet and fishy flavor, but only a faint fragrance like grass. Inhaling it into the body, it traveled around along the lungs, making one feel refreshed, and every cell in the body was active as if it had been in a drought for a long time. Worthy of being a wood attribute energy crystal, capable of enhancing cellular activity and accelerating cellular repairability. Just such a simple absorption has such efficacy. Sheen Shi could not help but marvel in his heart. For treasures like this, directly swallowing them is basically the most wasteful use. If it could be researched and developed, it could completely magnify its value out 10 or 100 times. However, Sheen Shi didn't have the time to research and develop it right now, so he could only use this usage with the lowest utilization rate. Sheen Shi slightly moved his torso, his body scales opened and closed, and there were golden blades flashing through, slicing through all nine fist-sized red crystals. Instantly, 
Scarlet liquid flowed out from inside the crystals, and under Qin Shi's mental power control, it floated in front of his eyes, and was sucked into his stomach in one gulp with his mouth open. The scarlet liquid flowed into his body along his two, and in the blink of an eye, there was a cold sensation that expanded to all parts of his body, which then quickly transformed into warmth. Huge life energy exploded within his body, causing the cells and scales all over his body to tremble slightly along with it. During this process, the scales on his body, all of them appeared to shed and be reborn. There were old scales falling off and new lustrous scales growing out. His musculoskeletal bones were rapidly changing. The divine dragon bloodline in his body seemed to have been completely awakened. For a moment, Sheen sure seemed to have returned inside an eggshell, wrapped in warm power. It also seemed to have turned into a seed, rapidly sprouting and growing into a heavenly tree. The color of his body was also changing, gradually turning from gold to cyan. The slender dragon body was growing slowly, like a vine in spring and a banyan tree in summer, growing to nearly two meters. The fork-like dragon horns that were as beautiful as jade seemed to turn into a pale green color, holding up the ancient trees of the world. The pale green scales opened and closed regularly, as if they were clouds that enveloped the entire spring, dark but not obscure, filled with a kind of thunderous tremor, universal rainfall, to offer the world a baptism of life and majesty. After absorbing the majestic what attribute energy contained in the red crystals, Xin Shi finally evolved again and awakened the secret method of the green dragon lineage. The ice snake whose body was curled up and blocking the cave entrance could not help but tremble violently when it felt the green dragon's pressure emanating from Qin Shi's body. Ancient books recorded, the noblest of the gods of heaven is none more noble than the green dragon. The green dragon, whose color is green, represents the east, symbolizing A.B. and spring, and is both a symbol of life, as well as being in charge of wind clouds, and weather. Even among the branches of the dragon race, the green dragon lineage was an extremely honorable lineage. The ice serpent was nothing more than a medium beast general, and when it felt Qin Shi's body, the mighty pressure from the ancient green dragon, it was naturally terrified, and its body went all soft. If it wasn't for the fact that it had followed Qin Shi for so long and had long familiarized itself with the divine dragon's aura on Qin Shi's body, it might have been so frightened that it would have fainted straight away. Finally, I have awakened another evolutionary direction of the dragon race, as well as the secret method of the green dragon lineage. Not bad, worthy of being called the head of the four elephants. The green dragon is indeed very powerful. Sheen sure felt the changes in his body, as well as the awakened green dragon secret method, and couldn't help but be delighted. The green dragon then grasped the power of thunder and lightning along with the wind and clouds, and awakening the secret method of the green dragon lineage allowed him to enhance his thunder and lightning along with his ability to soar into the clouds and fog by a lot. Most importantly, the green dragon was a symbol of life, representing the evolution of life. Having awakened the green dragon secret method, not only had his life force increased a lot, he had also mastered the ability to assist in the evolution of life. Chapter 101 Needle Willow Mecca All nine red crystals had been sucked dry and turned into a pile of white powder. Sheen sure stretched his body, and his pale green body rose up in the air, like a submerged dragon rising to the abyss in early spring. The power of the green dragon flowed through his body unifying the power of the fire dragon, ice dragon, and golden dragon to form an endless cycle. The colors of red, blue, gold, and green surfaced on his body, changing back and forth. After a long time, the color of his body only returned to its original golden color. It was just that the majesty was even stronger. Adding another dragon power, the current me, although I haven't evolved into a beast king yet, should be enough to rival a true beast king, Sheen sure pondered in his heart. With each awakening of a dragon race power, his strength would skyrocket exponentially. Congratulations big brother. The ice snake crawled over to congratulate him in a very dogged manner, gulping its snake letters and its triangular snake eyes that were so enthusiastic. You did a good job. Go, continue to go out and search to see if there are any other treasures around. Sheen sure jumped on the ice snake's head, patted its head and waved his hand to remove the cloud that covered the outside of the cave. At the same time, he logged onto the blue net and contacted Tong Zhao. Ying Di, and Peng Mao to see if there was any news coming from them. At this look, Qin Shi couldn't help but be surprised for a moment. At this moment, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao, were not in the chat group, and it was impossible for them to keep an eye on the Blue Bonnet's chat group at all times. They just left messages in there, as well as some of the things that had happened inside the Ruins realm recently. It took three days for Qin Shi to absorb the energy of the Red Crystal and awaken the Green Dragon secret technique. During these three days, the secret of the transcendent plants on the mountain peak was gradually known by the transcendents from various countries. In particular, the transcendent mortal plants, being able to nurture the essence of grass and trees, had caused a sensation. 
The so-called essence of grass and wood was something similar to the red crystals of cannibalistic vines, which contained a strong life energy. Because it possessed powerful life energy that could enhance one's cellular activity, repair speed, and improve one's physical quality. Everyone called it the essence of grass and wood. Transcendents from various countries rushed towards the peak. Even some of the original transcendents who weren't exploring in this direction had turned around and rushed over. The effects of the essence of grass and wood were simply too heaven-defying. There were some transcendents who had been attacked by transcendent plants and suffered fatal injuries, and when they were lucky enough to obtain the essence of grasses and trees, they all quickly recovered and struggled back from death's door. These essences of grass and trees could simply be said to be divine medicines that were able to produce death and flesh and bones. Their preciousness needs no elaboration. After the transcendentalists from various countries learned about the efficacy of the essence of grass and wood, all of them were red-eyed and wanted to pocket all the essence of grass and wood. Nowadays, every place on the mountain has been occupied by transcendents from various countries. Over the past three days, almost every moment, a battle broke out between transcendents and transcendent plants. Boom! While he was contemplating, another loud boom sounded in the distance. Shinsha rose up in the air and looked from afar, only to see that on a mountain wall, amongst the lush ancient trees, a transcendent plant with an emerald jade-like body, shaped like a willow tree but with roots of needles and thorns was waving its roiling branches and fighting a group of transcendents. Let's go. Let's go over and take a look. Maybe someone has helped us lay down the essence of grass and trees again. It's just time to go over and take it. Shinsha blinked his dragon eyes and said towards Ice Snake. The ice snake hissed twice, twisted its huge body, parted the forest in the ice side, and swiftly swam over in the direction where the sounds of battle came from. It's Shang Nong's people, and the Yang Tai Empire's transcendence. Qin Shi quickly recognized the transcendence who attacked Needle Willow. It was clearly Saint Farmer's group, who he had robbed of the red crystals, as well as the transcendence from the Yang Tai Empire, James and the others, who had managed to sever the man-eating vine mother and obtain the red crystals, were furious that Qin Shi had plucked the peach halfway. Unfortunately, they didn't even know who had snatched the red crystal. There could only be impotent rage. In these three days, they turned their grief and anger into strength, searching for transcendent plants all over the mountain peaks, wanting to obtain the essence of grass and trees. Unfortunately, the harvests were few and far between. Not all transcendent mortal plants were capable of breeding the essence of grass and wood. Moreover, most of the transcendent plants that produced the essence of grass and wood were only a small piece. Far from the nine red crystals that were as big as a fist, this made them more and more upset the more they thought about it. Fortunately, they finally found another powerful transcendent mortal plant. During this period of time, everyone fought with transcendent plants and gradually figured out a certain pattern. The more powerful a transcendent mortal plant was, the more likely it was that it would give birth to a powerful essence of grass. Although this possibility was not 100%, and there were some powerful transcendent mortal plants that might not have birthed a single bit of grass and wood essence. The overall trend was like this. This needle willow in front of me, with thousands of branches dancing about. Each branch, more terrifying than an electrified steel whip, had a stronger fighting strength than the mother cannibal vine. If it wasn't unable to move, it would only be comparable to an upper-level beast general. Inside its body, if it had birthed the essence of grass and wood, it would definitely be stronger than that of the man-eating vine mother body. The robbery of the red crystals had left James and the other Saint Farmer transcendents with a grudge to this day. Finally discovering a transcendent plant that was stronger than the man-eater vine matrix, they all perked up and were determined to get the needle willow. However, there was an unforeseen circumstance in the sky. Before they could rejoice for long, people from the Yang Tai Empire similarly approached them. The mountain peak was large, but when the transcendents from various countries swarmed over, it became a bit narrow. Everyone was destined to raise their heads and see each other, especially the transcendents from the five dominant countries. They were the most numerous, the strongest, and had the fiercest competition with each other. Saint Farmer Transcendence, facing transcendence from other countries, could stand tall and be filled with a sense of superiority. However, when facing the Yang Tai Empire Transcendence, who were also from the hegemony country, they could only keep a dark face. At this moment, they split into two teams and attacked towards the Needle Willow from different directions, silently and with mutual vigilance. Once the Needle Willow was annihilated and a grass spirit appeared, that was when the two teams tore their faces off. The Yangtai Empire actually even managed to pull off this kind of contraption. Qin Shi looked over towards the Yangtai Empire's transcendence and was attracted by the mechs they were wearing. Currently on the Blue Planet, genetic modification technology was explicitly the only way for humans to master transcendent power. However, the countries had not given up on other aspects of research. The five hegemonic countries all had their own bottom cards. The Yangtai Empire's bottom card was Mecha. They had always wanted to create mechs like those in sci-fi movies 
where ordinary people could wear them and instantly become heroes. However, while the mechs were easy to build, the energy problem was difficult to solve. To make the mechs run and have enough firepower, they needed huge amounts of energy. In sci-fi movies, miniature nuclear reactors are generally used to satisfy the energy needed to run the mechs. However, at present, mankind was unable to produce a micro-nuclear reactor that was portable and stable enough to be used in a mech. The mecha program's research was in an energy dilemma. They had apparently utilized other methods to meet the energy needs of the mecha. Chapter 102 Siege The mechs were quite impressive in terms of power as a weapon specifically researched by a hegemonic country. The transcendentals of the Young Thai Empire, wearing their mechas and matching the transcendent power in their bodies, raised their hands and threw their feet, blasting out attacks that were enough to rival those of the upper-level beast generals. It made even Chin Sher look sideways. Needle willow thousands of willows waving. Each one is like a steel whip that rips through the sky, pumping white waves in the void, like a thousand armies attacking and killing, so that the transcendentalists who rushed up for a while will be defeated, and can only take the wheel war to slowly consume. Among the sacred farmer transcendents, only a few mid-level beast general level transcendents, such as James, were able to withstand the thousands of needle willow steel whips and engage in a tangle with the needle willow. However, they only dared to fight the needle willow outside the range of the needle willow steel whip slashes not daring to get too close to the needle willow. Otherwise, once they were entangled by the many needle willow steel whips, with their strength, it was likely that they wouldn't even be able to break free. On the other hand, the leader of the Young Thai Empire's transcendence, wearing a mecha, had rushed into the range of the needles and willows whips, fighting with the needles and willows, and not falling behind in the slightest. On the contrary, every now and then, he was able to tear down one or two needle willow steel whips, causing great damage to needle willow. Needle Willow Steel Whip smashed against him, colliding violently with the mech, and could only make the sound of metal banging, leaving a slight white mark on it. In an instant, the mech automatically repaired itself and erased the white mark. It was said to be invulnerable to swords and spears. This scene made James on the opposite side extremely fearful. Originally, James was still a bit high and mighty when he encountered the Young Thai Empire's transcendence. After all, the genetic modification technology was the first to be proposed and promoted by Saint Nong. The Young Thai Empire had also obtained Saint Nong's technology before they were able to research a genetic modification technology that was uniquely theirs. However, they had conducted their research on the basis of Saint Nong. The technology that was researched was always a bit inferior to Saint Nong's. The genetically modified transcendents that were cultivated from this were naturally a bit weaker than Saint Farmer's as well. However, it was unexpected that the Young Thai Empire had actually researched a mecha that could be put into use behind Saint Nong's back. The leader of the Young Thai Empire's transcendence was quite a bit weaker than James in terms of his own battle power. However, after wearing the mech and obtaining the assistance of the mech, he instead surpassed James by a large margin. At the very least, James would never dare to use his body to harden his body to receive the whip of the Needle Willow Steel Whip. However, not everyone within the Young Thai Empire's transcendent mortals wore a mecha. It seems that the Young Thai Empire doesn't make many mecha, although they are powerful. They need further research and manufacturing if they want to popularize them. Otherwise they could have equipped every transcendent with a mecha and directly swept away the transcendents of other countries. Qin Shi pondered in his mind. Boom. The sounds of the fierce battle were still resounding. This needle willow was extremely powerful. Its steel whip swung and shattered all the attacks sent out by the Shang Nong transcendents and Yang Tai Empire transcendents. Among them, there were also several needle willow steel whips that were able to stretch and retract freely. And their attack range could reach more than a hundred meters around. During the battle, there were also transcendents who were accidentally hit by the needle willow steel whips. The spikes on the steel whips pierced into them, tearing them to the point where they were drenched in blood, their skin and flesh flipped open, and they flew out screaming miserably. However, being unable to move was the biggest flaw of transcendent plants. There was always a limit to their attack range. A long defense would be lost. Facing the continuous attacks of many transcendents, the needle willow quickly fell into atrophy. The dance of the needle willow steel whip was not as powerful as it had been earlier. It was like a person who had engaged in a long period of strenuous exercise and was too tired to lift his strength. This needle willow doesn't have any strength left. Everyone put in more effort to cut it down. James rejoiced at the sight and called out towards the surrounding Xing Nong transcendents. The transcendents of the Young Thai Empire all had their spirits lifted as well, and their attacks became more and more intense. At the same time, they were all wary of each other ready to make a move to grab the essence of grass and wood and block the other side from grabbing it. For a while, the atmosphere became even more tense. Sheen sure knocked the ice snake's head and commanded, prepare to make your move. Don't say that I'm mistreating my little brother. If you can snatch the spirit of grass and wood this time, you'll definitely have a share of the soup. No one can have too much of a good thing. 
Although he had already awakened the power of the green dragon, the essence of grass and wood was very powerful and could enhance the activity of the cells. If he directly devoured the essence of grass and wood and used it to awaken the power of the green dragon, he definitely didn't utilize the best efficacy of the essence of grass and wood, but there was no way around it. It was the only thing he had come across so far that contained what attribute transcendent energy. He could only eat it first. The ice snake nodded, a salivating look in its eyes. It's a rump coming down. It could feel the benefits of the essence of grass and wood to it. Among the foreign beasts, if they wanted to evolve, they basically relied on devouring various heavenly treasures or the flesh and blood of other foreign beasts. However, this primitive way, the utilization rate of various heavenly materials and earthly treasures, and the blood and flesh of foreign beasts was very low. Unless one was lucky enough to obtain those heavenly materials and earthly treasures that were helpful in the evolution of life, it was very difficult to elevate one's realm by simply relying on eating. The ice snake occupied a cold pool in the Dolly Market realm area, and was considered a small landlord. The conditions were much better than the other Mediate Beast Generals. However, it was still only a Mediate Beast General and had not broken through to become an Upper Beast General. And the essence of grass and wood was obviously something that was extremely beneficial to the evolution of life. If it was able to devour enough grass and tree essences, it might be able to break through the bottleneck and become an Upper Beast General. Boom! Near the Needle Willow, energies of various colors exploded. Light flames erupted, and lightning flashed and thunder roared, as if the end had come. Seeing that the needle willow was finally going to be unable to support itself, the transcendentals of the sacred farmer and young Thai empires attacked more and more fiercely. All sorts of transcendent attacks blasted past without any money. In particular, James and the leader of the young Thai empire's transcendence rushed to the front. On James' body, a blue electric light flowed out, colliding with needle willow's steel whip. With each impact, one of Needle Willow's steel whips would be burnt to a crisp, causing damage to it. There were even more intense electric currents that passed through the steel whips and bombarded the Needle Willow's tree body. Each blast of electric current caused the Needle Willow to tremble violently, as if it was letting out a silent wail of pain. On the other side, the leader of the Young Thai Empire's transcendence was also riding his mech and charging at the Needle Willow. With the assistance of his mech, he was not afraid of being entangled by the Needle Willow's steel whip, and he fought with the Needle Willow at close range wanting to get close to the needle willow before James, and gain an advantage. At that time, when the essence of grass and trees nurtured by the needle willow was exposed, he would be able to obtain it before James did. Naturally, James was unwilling to let him get the jump on him, fully activating the thunder soft shell turtle power in his body, sparing the risk of being entangled in the steel whip, wanting to fight with him to get the jump on him. Under their joint frenzied attack, needle willow became even more precarious. Finally, bang! The Needle Willow couldn't take it anymore and was blown up by the many Transcendence joining forces. A crystal glittering with a dazzling green aura flew out from the Needle Willow's exploded trunk. Chapter 103, Grab and Run. Whoosh. James and the leader of the Young Thai Empire's Transcendence simultaneously lunged towards the heart of the Needle Willow. It was like a tiger pouncing on a tiger. This essence of grass and wood is mine. Get lost. James catalyzed blue lightning and slashed towards the leader of the Young Thai Empire's Transcendentals. The eyes of the Young Thai Empire's Transcendentals turned cold as they activated their mech's attack device, and gun barrels emerged from their arms, spraying lasers at James. Blue lightning and lasers collided in the air, erupting in a shocking roar. At the same time, Saint Farm's Transcendence and Young Thai Empire's Transcendence also erupted into battle. They had always been wary of each other. When they attacked the Needle Willow together, they were on guard against each other, fearing that the other party would lay a black hand on them. They were also prepared to stop the other party from fighting for the essence of grass and wood. However, compared to them, Sheen Shur and the Ice Snake moved faster. Sheen Shur, as he did, used his ability to control the wind to control the air to form a large transparent hand and fished it towards the heart of the Needle Willow Tree. The power of the Green Dragon, which was able to control wind and clouds and thunder, allowed him to control the air even more comfortably. With a wave of the dragon's claw, the air exploded noiselessly, pushing the Needle Willow Tree heart towards his direction. There was even a cloud that was quickly generated and wrapped around the needle willow tree heart. That was the ability of the clouds and mist to conceal one's movements. Sheenshire used it to cover the needle willow tree heart. This change instantly aroused the vigilance of James and the Young Thai Empire Transcendence. It's the guy who snatched the essence of grass and wood from the mother of cannibal vines last time. The familiar scene quickly reminded James of the incident a few days ago when the cannibal vine matrix's essence of grass and wood was snatched away. The fact that the essence of grass and wood of the man-eating ivy matrix had been snatched away halfway through the day was a pain in his heart. When he thought about it to this day, he would gnash his teeth, itching to pull out the guy who picked their peach halfway and torture him with all his might. 
This scene in front of him was so similar to the scene at that time when the essence of grass and wood from the mother body of the man-eating vine disappeared. Which Mingxi, someone is going to pick their peaches halfway. Pull out that guy first before we fight. James looked in the direction where the needle willow tree heart had flown away and called out towards the young Thai Empire transcendence through gritted teeth. Good. Wu Mingxi immediately replied back, putting away the attack device on his mech and immediately rushing towards the place where the needle willow tree heart disappeared. At the same time, his hands stretched out with holes emerging from his palms, spewing out a large stream of scorching hot air towards the front. This was an attack that he had developed with his own transcendent power, in conjunction with his mecha, combining the transcendent power with the mecha. A palm swipe could form a shockwave of hot gas with strong vibrations. What Wu Mingxi had fused was the genes of the wind Wing tiger. The wind Wing tiger was a beast king that possessed the ability to control the wind element, capable of stirring up the wind and flying through the air. Extremely difficult to deal with. After fusing the genes of the wind Wing tiger, although Wu Mingxi was not able to use the wind element to condense wind wings and fly in the air like the wind Wing tiger, his speed and agility far exceeded that of other mid-level beast generals. Moreover, he was extremely sensitive to the flow of air and the like. The needle willow tree heart was wrapped in clouds and disappeared, but its high-speed movement in the air triggered an air tremor. He was keenly aware of the vibration, surmised where the needle willow tree heart was located, and realized that something had obscured the needle willow tree heart, making it impossible for them to see it. Thus, he executed an attack that interfered with airflow on a wide scale, blasting towards the trajectory where the needle willow tree heart was likely to move. Eh? Sheen sure let out a cry of surprise. The clouds and mist he had imposed on the needle willow tree heart were actually dispersed by the searingly hot airflow, causing the concealed needle willow tree heart to resurface. The clouds created by the Tang Yunwei possess transcendent power, capable of interfering with the exploration of various lasers and rays, and both magnetic fields were able to influence it to a certain extent. However, if it was subjected to a frontal attack, the clouds would easily dissipate. After all, the proper use of cloud driving fog is to use to hurry, concealment, weakening attacks etc. are just some incidental functions. Ordinary transcendent powers would have a hard time discovering the clouds created by Tongyun driving mist, and it would be even more difficult to interfere with them. However, Waminxi happened to have mastered the power of the wind attribute and was able to detect the flow of the air, causing Qinxiu's plan of trying to silently grab the needle willow tree heart and run to fall through. It's the needle willow tree heart. Sure enough, someone is nearby. Come out for me. Seeing the resurfaced needle willow tree heart, James eyes lit up while he shouted angrily. His eyes were sharp as he glanced over towards the surroundings, wanting to find this guy who wanted to pick a peach halfway. Behind them, the transcendence of the Young Thai Empire and Shang Nong had also temporarily put down their fights and rushed over towards this place. Big brother, what should we do now? The ice snake spat out its snake letters and asked towards Qin Shi somewhat nervously. One moment it was still cheering for Qin Shi to have snatched the needle willow tree heart. Who knew that the next moment, they would reveal themselves. Although it was a medial beast general, its strength was considered one of the best among this group of transcendents. But the number of people on the opposite side was simply too many. There were three to four hundred of them combined. Plus, there were several transcendents at the level of median beast general. It was impossible to top it. What are you afraid of? Just fight if you're found out. Your big brother's divine power is beginning to mature. Have some faith in me. Shinshir knocked the ice snake's head and yelled with his head held high, looking invincible. And then, with a wave of his dragon claw, he controlled the air to wrap the needle willow and flew over in his direction. Although the cloud shrouding the needle willow tree heart was washed away, the needle willow tree heart was still smoothly taken into his hands. At the same time, the ice serpent opened its bloody mouth and spewed out a thick frost ray towards James, Wu Mingxi, and the others who chased after him. Frost energy condensed and launched from its mouth, forming a cold white icicle in the air, spreading towards James, Wu Mingxi and the others becoming an obstacle towering in front of their eyes. Just as the ice snake was raging, and was about to continue to pounce forward to fight with them, Qinshir once again knocked its head and called out, You're stupid, there are so many people on the opposite side. If you don't hurry to run when you have the thing in your hands, you're still staying to fight with them. Big brother, didn't you say that your divine power is new and you're fighting them? Ice snake raised his head and said in a jar. Qinshir rolled his eyes. The opposite side is crowded. Not talking about martial arts. Let's tighten the wind and pull the call. He had awakened the power of the four dragon races. Facing the beast king also dared to arm wrestle yes. But the opposite side of the crowd ah. It was estimated that if the beast king came, he would be piled up to death. His aim was to snatch the needle willow tree heart. It's not like he had a head of steel and had to fight them hard. Hurry up and run. Sheen sure urged. The ice snake hurriedly turned its head. And with a twist of its huge serpent body, 
It drilled into the nearby woods like a white lightning bolt and quickly went away. Damn it! It's a foreign beast. We can't let them escape. James, Wu Mingxi, and the others saw Qin Shi with the ice snake, and were instantly enraged. They thought that there were transcendents from other countries hiding on the side to reap the benefits, but they didn't realize that it was actually fey beasts. This made it even more unacceptable to them. Bang! They blasted the icicles blocking the front and angrily chased after Qin Shi and the ice snake. Chapter 104, Stabbing the Hornet's Nest. Bang! Ka! The mountain peak was thick with trees and vines. Qin Shi and Ice Snake, along with James and Wu Mingxi, chased and fled among the bushes, crashing into the branches and leaves, and the sound shook the sky. A giant tree that stood in their way was knocked down without mercy. From time to time, there were also flashes of light triggered by various colors of transcendent power, bursting into a roar among the trees. Electric sparks mixed with smoke and dust rushed upwards. Bang! The ice serpent turned its head and sprayed frost rays. Frost rays were actually no stronger than other transcendent powers such as flames and lightning in terms of power. However, freezing the surrounding water vapor could form a wall of ice for defense and blocking. The ice snake spat out a frost ray from time to time, fending off the pursuit of the Saint Farmer and Young Thai Empire transcendents behind it, leaving them helpless for a while. Shinshir also cooperated by hitting a few waves of attacks. However, in order not to reveal his presence, he cast the power of the ice dragon. Mixing an ice snake's frost rays with frozen rays, he triggered an even more intense ice ceiling power. He was still shrouded in a cloud of mist and stealth, interfering with the enemy's judgment. Qin Shi was now at the level of an upper beast general, awakening the power of the four dragon races, and could even fight a beast king when he met one, so the attacks he sent out were naturally powerful. Every time he spat out freezing rays, several transcendents from the Shang Nong and Yang Tai empires were hit and instantly turned into statues. However, the number of transcendents from the Shang Nong and Yang Tai empires was simply too many. Hundreds of transcendents came forward and attacked together. Transcendent powers of various colors blasted towards Qin Shi and the ice snake like a mountain torrent. There was no tactical skill in their attacks. They were just hard smashes. A single slap could not be achieved. But the crowd gathered wood and the flame was high. The power of hundreds of transcendents bursting out together was simply devastating. It directly swept away everything in front of them. Qin Shi and ice snake could only avoid them. What's wrong with this group of people? Isn't it just a tree heart? As for chasing over with such a need to fight and kill, there are transcendent plants all over the mountains here. Can't they go and look for any more transcendent plants elsewhere and have to waste time on us? Qin Shi rode on the ice snake's head, turning his head to spit out freezing rays from time to time. His mouth couldn't help but spit out the words. If it wasn't for the fact that we were all Mother Blue Star's children, not wanting to fight in the same room, he now flew up to deliver a divine dragon swing, and couldn't beat these guys. His current strength, in terms of attack output are not yet comparable to so many transcendents joining forces, but the defense was strong and definitely not something this group of transcendents could break. Plus, the newly awakened power of the green dragon, which was the master of vitality and specialized in repairing injuries, made him bloody and needy. Consuming all of them would be able to consume this group to death. As for why he didn't stop, hmm, there's movement over there, it's people from Shang Nong and Yang Tai Empire, they seem to be chasing a foreign beast. What a rich grass aura. What is that thing? Chase it. The mountain peak was just this big. And the transcendents from each country occupied a certain amount of space. Qin Shi and the ice snake were running around on the mountain peak. And soon attracted the attention of the transcendents from other countries. When they noticed the rich life force emanating from the heart of the needle willow tree in Qin Shi's hand, their eyes immediately lit up and they all followed after him. For a while, Qin Shi and the ice snake were like they had stirred up a hornet's nest. An unknown number of transcendents surged towards them from all directions. Cam. Qin Shi looked over with a face of obscurity towards the Shang Nong and Yang Tai Empire transcendents who were in hot pursuit behind him. The faces of the Shang Nong and Yang Tai Empire's transcendentals were also unpleasant. Instead of chasing after Qin Shi and the Ice Snake, they had attracted more competitors. Seeing that there were so many more contenders for the Needle Willow Tree Heart, which was originally only a competition between the two of them, they then hated Qin Shi and the Ice Snake even more. What a big essence of grass and wood. This thing is bigger than all the essences of grass and wood we've found combined. It's rich. Hurry up and do it. We can't let this foreign beast go. The transcendents from various countries who had heard the news were all excited when they saw the heart of the needle willow tree on top of the ice snake's head, emitting a greenish blue light. The needle willow was huge. And although the essence of grass and tree that was birthed was small compared to its size, it was still 20 to 30 centimeters the size of a faceplate. It was the first time everyone had seen such a large essence of grass and wood. Xin Shi had to help deal with the pursuing Shang Nong and Yang Tai Empire transcendents, and there was no way to distract him from hiding the existence of the Needle Willow Tree Heart. Moreover, 
The life energy emanating from the needle willow tree heart was so strong that it was difficult to completely cover it up with the clouds he created with his tongue in dual mist. Seeing such a large piece of grass and wood essence, the transcendents from various countries were all like chicken blood, wailing and rushing up to Qin Shi and the ice snake, hitting them head on, facing the siege of so many transcendents. Qin Shi had no way to hide anymore. Boom! He revolved the power of the fire dragon. The golden scales on his body quickly turned slightly crimson. A dazzling firelight filled his body and he opened his mouth to shoot out a starburst spit. The huge dragon flame was compressed in his mouth, forming a beam of light and firing it out. Just like a huge sword that split mountains, wherever it passed, grass and trees turned into ashes. The surrounding transcendents who excitedly rushed over were touched by the power emitted by the starburst spit and instantly flew out backwards at a speed faster than when they rushed over. The defensive combat suits they were wearing were all incinerated by the dragon flame, and their blood was about to evaporate. Each and every one of them had shocked faces and were spitting out blood. This scene poured cold water on quite a few transcendents who wanted to rush up and take advantage of the chaos to grab the needle willow tree heart, especially those transcendents who only had beast soldier level battle power. The transcendents who rushed to the front were generally stronger, basically having the strength of a beast general. As a result, they were all sent flying by a beam of light, instantly receiving heavy damage. If they rushed up and were hit by the beam, wouldn't they have to explode on the spot? In particular, the Taiku dragon might that accompanied Qin Shi's power and emanated from him caused the many transcendents to battle, almost unable to stand still. What? What kind of foreign beast is that? What a terrifying attack. The Shang Nong and Yang Tai Empire transcendents who caught up behind them were all startled by Qin Shi's outburst. None of them had realized Qin Shi's existence. It was not until this time that they realized that on the ice snake, there was actually another foreign beast lying on its back. It was only this foreign beast that was shrouded in fiery flames making it impossible to see exactly what it looked like. However, the power it displayed was simply too astonishing. This beam of light spewed out, and its power was not weaker than any beast king they had ever seen. Could it be that the other foreign beast on the ice snake was a beast king? How else could it make the ice snake willingly be ridden on its head? And the attack was still so powerful? Also, how did this level of pressure feel stronger than many beast kings? Everyone was stunned for a moment. Chapter 105 Unexpectedly Coming to Help Get the Hell Out of My Way Qin Shi didn't have time to waste with these people. Standing at the head of the ice serpent, raising his head high, his body shrouded in blazing flames stretched out, his two golden traced pupils emitting majestic golden light, looking ahead through the flames, and opening his mouth, he once again spat out a starburst ray, the golden red beam of light pierced towards the front, the transcendentals in front of them all changed wildly in color, busily dodging to the side, not daring to face the starburst spits blast, just now. Everyone had seen the power of the starburst spit. It was the attack of a lower beast king, and it was nothing more than that. Most of those blocking the way were lower beast general level transcendents. Although they were wearing combat suits and possessed a certain amount of defense, but if they were really to be blasted with a frontal shot, there was no guarantee that they would have to explode in place and directly ascend to the heavens. Seeing this, the faces of the transcendents from Saint Farmer and Young Tai Empire changed. James gritted his teeth and said, Chase. Although Qin Shi's performance was amazing, it was possible that it was a beast king, but with so many of them, even if it was a beast king, they would still dare to go up to the tiger's whiskers. Twice, the essence of grass and wood had been snatched away by these two beasts. It would not be a gentleman to not report this revenge. Let's go after them. We can't let them get away. Wu Mingxi similarly shouted towards the Young Tai Empire's transcendence and chased after Qin Shi and the ice snake first. Seeing this, the other surrounding transcendents also followed with inexplicable eyes. Anyway, with Shang Nong and the Yang Tai Empire's people backing them up, they could fish in troubled waters. Maybe they would be lucky enough to snatch the needle willow tree heart. Everyone chased and fled along the way. Soon, Xin Shi and the ice snake dashed through the grass and trees in front of them and were about to leave the mountain peak. Just then, buzzing, there was a dance. The sound produced by something moving at high speed coming from the surroundings. Soon, a robot drilled out from the nearby bushes and surrounded towards Qin Shi and Ice Snake. What is it? Qin Shi froze slightly. Immediately afterward, a sense of danger surfaced in his heart. Not good. Roar. Sensing that it was not good, Qin Shi immediately opened his mouth and let out a roar. And violent divine dragon sound waves rushed in all directions, punching away the robots that surrounded him. However, there were still a few robots that violently accelerated close to Qin Shi and the Ice Snake before the sound wave rushed over and then suddenly burst open. Violent flames exploded from the robot's bodies, accompanied by a terrifying shockwave that fiercely blasted onto the ice snake. Hiss. The ice snake couldn't help but raise its head and let out a hiss of pain. It's actually a small bomb with nuclear radiation. Qin Shi was slightly surprised. On these robots, 
They were all clearly loaded with miniature self-detonation settings. Once they self-detonated, they could almost explode with a power comparable to a miniature nuclear bomb. This point of might was not much of a problem for him. Nowadays, although he still didn't dare to say that he could face a tactical nuclear bomb directly, but unless he was directly hit by a nuclear bomb, he should have no problem escaping. The robot's self-explosion couldn't even break through the Watch Dragon scale defense on his body. However, while he wasn't afraid, Ice Snake couldn't stand it. The Ice Snake didn't have such a perverted dragon scale defense as Chin Shur's that it was able to withstand even a nuclear explosion for a moment or two. It was only a Mediate Beast General. Inside a Mediate Beast General, it was not considered a powerful jewel. The robot's self-detonation immediately blew up all the scales on its body, and blood directly soared out. And this, was still just the self-detonation of one robot. The surrounding robots, densely packed, added up to hundreds. If all of them exploded, if they all blew themselves up, the power would make one scalp numb just thinking about it. Even Sheen sure was not willing to face it. Although the robot's self-detonation couldn't hurt him, but it hurts. If these robots swarmed around and all blew themselves up, they would definitely blow him to bits. Which country's lackluster contraption came up with this? Sheen sure couldn't help but curse angrily in his heart. Ha ha ha, will nonchalantly accept these two foreign beasts and the essence of grass and wood. Just after cursing, a group of transcendents rushed out, led by a big man who looked at Qin Shi and the ice snake with a winning expression. Transcendents of the AOU Empire, the transcendents from various countries chased after them, and when they saw this group of people, their gazes immediately sank. The Saint Farmer transcendentals were even more obscure. This group of newly appeared transcendents were clearly none other than the transcendents of one of the five dominating countries of the Blue Planet the AOU Empire. Damn it. James clenched his hands tightly and cursed in a low, angry voice with a gloomy face. Encountering a transcendent from the Yangtai Empire had already made him furious. Now there was such a strong competitor. His lungs were about to explode with anger. In particular, the means that the transcendentals from the AOU Empire had executed had made James jealous. The AOU Empire has actually researched this attacking Mike robot, and it's still so powerful that it's no less than the attack of an upper-level beast general. James frowned as he stared at the robots surrounding Chin Shur and Ice Snake, his pupils contracting. He saw the scene of the robots blowing themselves up just now. Although the miniature robots needed to blow themselves up and were expendable weapons, but the power was realistically strong. Even they didn't dare to be surrounded by robots. First, there was the Yangtai Empire's Mecha, followed by the AOU Empire's Mike Robots. These two major technological products, although they couldn't help ordinary people evolve into transcendent species, their power wasn't weaker than genetic modification technology in the slightest. James completely put away the pride in his heart that arose from the fact that Saint Farmer was the first to research genetic modification technology, and his face was so ugly. Of course, the one with the ugliest face should be Chin Sure. It was not easy to be on the verge of breaking out and leaving the mountain peak, but a team of Overlord Nation's transcendents actually appeared again. The situation had gotten even worse. Among the transcendents, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao were also there. They followed Li Na and stood at a relatively distant position to watch. The others weren't clear about Qin Shi and Ice Snake's background, but could they not understand? Seeing Qin Shi and Ice Snake surrounded by everyone, Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Pang Mao's hearts couldn't help but clench. Captain, how is your situation now? Do you need our help? Tong Jiao hurriedly asked in the Blue Bonnet chat group. No, you guys just take care of yourselves. I have a way to leave. Qin Shi returned, although the situation was rather dire right now. It wasn't like he couldn't break out of the encirclement if he really wanted to go out on a limb. If he really wanted to push him, the big deal was to open a peerless. It was just that he might need to pay a little price, and the surrounding transcendents would suffer. Everyone's a blue star mom's kid. Against the transcendentalists of Dali and Xingnong, Xin sure is ruthless. The palace fight, the death of a person blue star mother should be able to understand. But if the transcendentalists of other countries are also slaughtered, too many people died. Blue Star Mom will probably not be happy. He is considering whether to come with a big wave. Exterminating a few people was within Blue Star Mother's range of acceptance. Roar. Just then, a beast roar sounded in the distance. Several alien beasts ran over from afar, spewing flames, frost, and lightning from their bodies, rushing away the robots and transcendents that were blocking the area around Qin Shi and the Ice Snake. There were also voices ringing in Qin Shi's ears. Brother don't be afraid. We're here to help you. Chapter 106, Clues to the Ruins of Extraterrestrial Civilization. Ha! Huh? Chin Shi was a bit confused as he looked at the several foreign beasts that suddenly appeared. When did he have relatives in the ruins realm? These few foreign beasts. One was a large black bull with a huge body size, more than three meters tall and resembling an iron tower. 
One was a fox with snow white fur that seemed to be covered in frost. The last one looks like a tiger, but a bit like a leopard. Covered in black and red markings, can't say what race. Sheen sure did not recognize any of these three beasts, nor did he detect the dragon race's aura from them. No matter which way one looked at it, they were not even remotely related to him. Suddenly running over to recognize his relatives made Sheen sure puzzled. However, the opportunity could not be lost. Although he didn't know why these alien beasts suddenly came out to help them, but the surrounding robots and transcendents were all rushed away by them. Sheen sure immediately brought the ice snake and rushed towards the three alien beasts that appeared. Not good. Quickly stop them. Seeing this, the transcendents in the back immediately shouted in a loud and urgent voice. The big man from the AOU Empire immediately controlled the robots around him and chased after Chin Shur and the Ice Snake. These robots were small in size and swift and nimble, not much slower than the Ice Snake. James and the others also rushed out, exerting their respective transcendent powers and launching attacks towards Chin Shur and the Ice Snake. Moo, the tower-like big black cow let out a roar, its pitch black hair, shaking like a bush, and the violent sound wave formed a ripple of air visible to the naked eye, blasting towards the pursuing transcendents as well as the robots. The snow white fox shook its fluffy tail, and a burst of cool water vapor filled the air, sweeping over after the sound wave of the big black bull. When a transcendent attack came into contact with the cool water vapor, it was like cement falling into the sea, quickly dissolving away. This scene made James and other transcendentals from various countries, their pupils could not help but shrink, and their hearts were greatly afraid. Beast General These three foreign beasts were all clearly upper-level beast generals. Moreover, they worked together very well. And when the two fey beasts made their move, the transcendent power released produced an exponential increase in effect. The attacks sent out by so many of their transcendentals were actually digested into nothing. Sheen sure was a bit surprised in his heart. These three fey beasts did not seem to be quite the same as the fey beasts he had encountered before. Exactly where they were different, he couldn't say for a moment. It just felt strange. Leave first. Sheen sure transmitted his voice towards the ice snake, telling it to follow the big black bull, the snow fox and the fire tiger to leave. With the help of these three superior beast generals, they quickly shook off the pursuing transcendents and made their way away. James, Wu Mingxi, and the others were furious and gnashing their teeth, but there was nothing they could do. They could only watch Qin Shi and Ice Snake run away with the needle willow heart. After running for some distance, until no one continued to catch up behind them, Qin Shi and Ice Snake stopped. Qin Shi looked over towards the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger, his heart on alert and asked, who are you guys and why are you helping us? Although he was aided by these three foreign beasts, however, he did not know the details of these three foreign beasts and was skeptical of their purpose. When Qin Shi communicated with them, he didn't use words to communicate either, but rather used mental fluctuations to pass on information. Through mental fluctuations, one could feel what the other party wanted to express. The big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger, on the contrary, did not see any outsiders at all and did not care about Qin Shi's vigilance. The big black bull said in an urn, seeing that you are looking for the essence of grass and trees here, you should have come out from the holy land as well. We are all family. It's only right to help. That's right. This group of upright apes came out of nowhere and actually seized our woods. It's too detestable. Didn't anyone tell you that this group of upright apes are dangerous and should not be contacted rashly? How dare you come here to search for the essence of grass and wood? It's fortunate that we came over to check out the situation and stepped in to help, or else you would have been finished. Snow Fox and Fire Tiger followed. Holy Land? Sheen Shur's pupils shrunk slightly. The foreign beasts inside the market realm. Did they form a unique civilization? Wait. He finally realized where the wrongness he felt just now came from. Sheen Shur gazed at the big black bull, Snow Fox and Fire Tiger carefully. Not only were they more intelligent compared to the other foreign beasts, but the transcendent attacks they executed were not as crude as the other foreign beasts. It was somewhat similar to the difference between a professional and a non-professional. Just like him, he had mastered some kind of unique secret method, and his development and application of transcendent power was far superior to other foreign beasts. Compared to the other fey beasts, the great black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger were like humans who had evolved a civilization. The other beasts were savages who were still in the era of drinking blood. If that was the case, then the dangers inside this ruin's realm would be even more terrifying than imagined. I'm afraid. Sheen Shur's mind flashed as he continued to open his mouth to inquire. He needed more detailed information to understand what exactly was going on in this market realm. You're right. We came here from the Holy Land. We're all native fey beasts. But no one has mentioned to us that we can't come here to look for the essence of grass and trees. What's going on? Sheen Shur blinked his eyes and opened his mouth at the big black ox. These three fey beasts, although intelligent and strong, 
did not have much socialization experience. Jean Sher casually asked a few questions, and they told everything they knew as if they were pouring beans out of a bamboo tube. It was too good to fool. It gave him a guilty feeling that he was deceiving a child. The ice snake on the side was dumbfounded. Big brother was actually lying? How could it be like this? Where was the sincerity between beast and beast? Obviously, he was still a child as well. Jean Sher was a bit despondent. These three fey beasts were too frank and honest. Not even a little bit of defense against the dragons, making him feel very unfulfilled. However, Jean Sher finally realized what the so-called Holy Land was all about. The Holy Land in the mouths of the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger was actually the ruins of the extraterrestrial civilization that Blue Star Consciousness had spoken of. The foreign beasts here had not developed a unique civilization. It was only that they had obtained the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization, and thus would be a bit more intelligent than the other foreign beasts. However, in reality, although the foreign beasts here possessed a certain civilization, they were still in a state of individualism and did not form a stable society. Only certain foreign beasts with no conflict in their habits would embrace into a group. The big black cow, snow fox, and fire tiger, were from the ruins of the extraterritorial civilization, the holy land in their mouths, a certain group of foreign beasts that hugged the group. The great black bull wasn't a bull, it was just a pronoun given to it during the Qin dynasty. Its original body was a black latticework, the fire tiger's original body. On the other hand, was a mythical animal. The snow fox would really be a transcendent fox. These exotic beasts were the offspring of pets that the extraterrestrial civilization had once kept in bread. The extraterrestrial civilization didn't know what happened, and only these foreign beasts survived and inherited the extraterrestrial civilization's legacy. Chapter 107 Records of the Extraterrestrial Civilization It was truly a step in the right direction, but it took no effort at all to get it. Jean Sher's eyes sparkled and his heart was filled with surprise. He had come to this ruin's realm, and aside from searching for the resources needed for evolution, another goal was the legacy of the extraterrestrial civilization. Unexpectedly, he hadn't even started searching for it yet, and the clues of the extra-dimensional civilization were automatically delivered to his door. It felt so good to get something without working for it. By the way, what's up with that mountain peak? Sheen sure asked towards the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger. Wood mountain. The big black bull glanced towards the peak behind and said, that's our garden, specially used to produce grass and wood essences. It's not even harvest season yet, and it's being spoiled by this group of upright apes. It's really infuriating. That's right, this group of upright apes don't know where they came from. They resemble the guys on the murals in the Holy Land. The elders are all worried, but they aren't as scary as the elders said. They seem to be very weak, eh? I feel like a light touch can kill them. Snow Fox and Fire Tiger followed. The transcendence of the various countries looked a lot like the creatures of the Holy Land the once extraterrestrial civilization. This made the elders among the foreign beasts scornful. The elders of the fey beasts wondered if it was the once dominant of the holy land that had returned. Being at this level of concern, the elders of the foreign beasts did not make the first move. Instead, they intended to probe for information before doing so. After listening to this, Sheen sure could not help but sweat for the transcendence of the various countries. Fortunately, the creatures of the extraterrestrial civilization were humanoid creatures. Otherwise, the transcendence of various countries would have suffered. The Great Black Bull, Snow Fox, and Fire Tiger were all superior beast generals. Listening to their tone, inside the ruins of the extraterritorial civilization, there must be a beast king. Although the transcendence from various countries possessed the ability to resist beast kings, however, there might be more than one beast king in the extraterrestrial civilization ruins. At least there was no shortage of beast generals. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been possible to send three superior beast generals over to spy on the news. The transcendence of the various countries would definitely not be able to fight the alien beasts here. Let's hurry back. Jean sure said towards the great black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger. He was becoming more and more curious about the extraterrestrial civilization ruins. As for the matter of his identity, he wasn't afraid of being exposed. According to the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger, the foreign beasts here, Although they had obtained the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization, were each on their own, and not all the foreign beasts had enough civilized intelligence, the contempt chain within the foreign beasts was serious. For those foreign beasts that didn't have enough civilized intelligence, the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger, didn't even treat them as their own kind. He could completely disguise himself as a civilized foreign beast that came from somewhere else. Well, we do need to go back and convey the message. You guys come with us. The big black bull said towards Qin Shi. It was so large that the snow fox and fire tiger jumped directly onto its back and were carried by it as it ran away. 
Qingxia rode on top of the ice snake's head and followed behind. All the way over the mountains, after about half a day, a huge plain area appeared in Qingxia's eyes. On the plains, there were uniquely styled building complexes standing. It was a succession of palaces, brilliant and splendid. That's the holy land there, but we can't enter the core of the holy land. Everyone is living in the outer regions. The great black ox carried the snow fox and fire tiger and introduced towards Qingxia in a jarring voice. Arriving at the place where the fey beasts lived, the corner of Qingxia's mouth could not help but twitch. The fey beasts lived on the outskirts of the palace complex. Only, these palace buildings were obviously not built for the fey beasts. The size of the space didn't even match the size of the fey beasts. Moreover, the living habits of the foreign beasts were also different from the creatures of the extra-dimensional civilization. Some large-sized beasts actually directly destroyed all the beautiful buildings inside the palace building and directly used the entire building floor as a nest to live in. It was really too much of a waste. Lattice 2. Fox 3. Mythical Great. You guys are back. An elephant as tall as a three-story building, similar to a small mountain. Walked out. Saw the great black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger, and greeted them. At the same time, it looked somewhat strangely at Ice Snake and Chinshur. Chinshur's eyes slightly condensed. Beast King. This giant elephant was clearly a beast king. It appeared to have a calm and warm breath, but it carried a natural oppressive force. A strong sense of threat rose in even Chinshur's heart. This giant elephant was very strong, and he was afraid that he was no match. The ice snake's body almost went soft when it felt the aura from the giant elephant. It was the first time it had seen a beast king. The beast king's pressure was different from the dragon might on Chinshur. Dragon might was bloodline pressure, whereas the beast king's might was a difference in strength. Elder Elephant. This is Qin Shi. This is Big Ice. They will also come out from the Holy Land. We went to Wood Mountain to explore the situation and saw them being attacked by that group of upright apes. So it's just the right time to help them out and bring them back. Big Black Bull introduced towards the giant elephant. Elder Elephant's gaze fell on Qin Shi and Ice Snake. Looking back and forth, it was clearly much smarter than the Big Black Bull, Snow Fox, and Fire Tiger, and wasn't that easy to fool. Hello Elder Elephant. Qin Shi appeared in his true form collected the dragon might on his body, and greeted Elder Elephant. Dragon Race. Elder Elephant had wanted to interrogate Qin Shi and the Ice Snake, but when he saw Qin Shi's revealed true body, he was taken aback. And then, a look of respect appeared in his eyes. It's actually a little friend of the Dragon Race. The Holy Land actually still has descendants of the Dragon Race in it. It's really too much of a surprise to me. Elder Elephant looked at Qin Shi and marveled. Qin Shi curiously said, Was there a Dragon Race in the Holy Land before? This was the first time he had heard clues about the dragon race. Divine dragons could not be seen or heard, and the dragon race was really too rare. This, should be there. The ancient books of the Holy Land recorded that there used to be a dragon race existing in the Holy Land, and they were the model of our foreign beasts, highly sought after by countless foreign beasts, and were on par with the masters of the Holy Land. The elephant elder shook his head and said, his huge head swinging in a circle of wild wind, the ancient books of the Holy Land, can I take a look? Qin Shi sniffed, becoming more and more curious about this extraterrestrial civilization. Of course, Qin Shi's identity as a dragon clan member caused Elder Elephant's attitude to change drastically, and he was very friendly. The ancient books of the Holy Land are recorded on the stone pillars in the central square of the palace. Lattice 2, Fox 3, Mythical Big, you guys take Qin Shi over there. Elder Elephant said towards Great Black Bull, Snow Fox, and Fire Tiger. Yes, Elder Elephant, the Great Black Ox. Snow Fox, and Fire Tiger nodded and led Qin Shi and the Ice Snake through several palace buildings to the square of the palace complex. It was a huge square. Twelve stone pillars stood in the plaza, and on each of them, densely engraved extraterrestrial civilization characters were carved all over. In front of them was the core building of the palace complex. Only the doors of the palace complex's core building were tightly closed. According to the Big Black Bull, Snow Fox, and Fire Tiger, the core building of the palace complex could not be opened by the foreign beasts either. The inheritance of the extra-dimensional civilization that they had obtained was only some knowledge of the civilization's language and culture. As for the inheritance of the core of the extra-dimensional civilization, the foreign beasts did not obtain it. Qin Shi came to the stone pillar in the middle of the square. He raised his head and looked at the records of the extra-dimensional civilization. Chapter 108, Sacred Sect, Holy Sect, Void Turbulence. Qin Shi looked at the record above the stone pillar. He didn't recognize the words of the extraterrestrial civilization. But with the big black bull, snow fox, and fire tiger acting as translators on the side, he soon gained some understanding of the origins of this extraterrestrial civilization. According to the records on the stone pillars, 
This extraterrestrial civilization was once a transcendent civilization on a certain living planet that dominated the world. They had developed extremely powerfully in both technology and transcendent cultivation. In the holy sect, there had even once been an everlasting species, ordinary species, transcendent species, avatar species, eternal life species, indeed, life evolution, transcendent species is far from the end. Seeing what was recorded on the stone pillars, about the division of the transcendent realm, Xin Shi was surprised and at the same time, felt somewhat taken for granted. The countries of the blue planet divided life into transcendent and ordinary species according to whether or not they had mastered transcendent power. Those who could freely convert various energies were the transcendent species, the avatar species, on the other hand, could master certain laws. These were clearly more powerful beings than the transcendent species. The everlasting seed was even higher than the avatar seed. And as for what abilities it possessed, there was no record on the stone pillars. The ones that Blue Star had come into contact with so far were only transcendent species, not even avatar species. The extraterrestrial civilization named Holy Zone had encountered the Void Turbulence, which was the devouring of the Ruin Realm, and the whole of it was caught inside the Ruin Realm. However, the Sacred Sect's strongest people were too much stronger than the Blue Star countries, and instead of being trapped in the Ruin Realm, they advanced towards the depths of the Ruin Realm, wanting to take control of the entire Ruin Realm in turn, led by the strongest person of the Sacred Sect. They left this ruins realm as a whole and traveled far towards other spaces. The ruins of this market realm were nothing more than a place abandoned by the sacred sect. However, even an abandoned place had left behind quite a few good things. Qin Shi raised his head and looked towards the palaces in front of the square. These still sealed palaces housed the sacred sect civilization inheritance backups. Not only were there transcendent cultivation methods, there were also various powerful technologies. And in order to obtain these civilization inheritances, one had to be from another civilization that had developed to a certain degree. The market realm is lost. The future is unpredictable. The inheritance here is taken as a piece of incense left behind by the holy sect. Those who come later, with the ability to take as much as they want, look forward to meeting each other in the future. This was the last paragraph engraved on the stone pillar. It's still really spontaneous. Sheen sure couldn't help but sigh with emotion. This was the self-confidence of a powerful civilization in the universe. Its own civilization's inheritance not worrying about being learned by others, and even hoping that those who came after it would be able to catch up with its own pace. Of course, the difficulty of wanting to obtain the inheritance of this civilization was not small, just a civilization that needed to be developed to a certain degree. There was no telling how many people were stuck. The surrounding foreign beasts had obtained the inheritance of the sacred sex language, culture, and other aspects. They were, in fact, the most likely to obtain the inheritance. As long as they were able to unite and form an orderly civilization, developing a certain degree of civilization based on the sacred sex language and culture, the sacred sex inheritance would open up to them. Unfortunately, the foreign beasts were of different races, making it difficult for them to unite. They had so far only used the language and culture of the holy sect as a tool for communication, with no intention of further developing their civilization. It was a waste of the good intentions left behind by the sacred sex powerhouses. Haven't you guys ever thought of opening these palaces, obtaining the true inheritance of the sacred sect, and going after the footsteps of the sacred sect powerhouses? Sheen sure couldn't help but ask towards the big black bull. Yes, the big black bull shook its head and buzzed, but we don't meet the requirements of the holy land. Inside the holy land, there were transcendent cultivation methods, which had an unimaginable attraction to any creature. The pursuit of greater power and a longer lifespan was the instinct of life. The foreign beasts naturally wanted to advance to a more powerful realm as well. However, their level of civilization did not reach the requirements of the sacred sect. Even if there were some races that wanted to develop their civilization and obtain their inheritance, they would be obstructed by other fey beasts. After a while, everyone gradually quenched this heart. The intelligence of foreign beasts was not inferior to humans. It's just that the number of foreign beasts of the same race is too small compared to humans. Wanting to develop a civilization that belonged exclusively to a certain race of beasts was already very difficult. There are also other beasts interfering and destroying everything. Today just invented some tool. Tomorrow there will be a flaming lion running over. A big fire to burn you clean. How can this be developed? Unless the beasts are united, there is a possibility of success. But the fey races were different, hostile to each other. Even in a food chain relationship, when the sacred sect powerhouse was around, under the sacred sect powerhouse's rule, Everyone was still able to coexist in slight harmony. Once the saint sect strongman left, the foreign beasts that gained their freedom almost didn't beat each other's brains out. To get them to unite and develop a civilization was simply harder than climbing up to heaven. Fine. Chin sure heard this and felt a bit speechless. 
Although humans had differences in stances and killed each other badly, but at least in terms of racial stance, it was relatively consistent. Unable to maintain a consistent stance and lacking sufficient numbers, it was indeed a bit unlikely to develop a certain degree of civilization. But this was a good thing for the countries of the Blue Star. If it wasn't for the foreign beasts being unable to develop a certain degree of civilization, the inheritance of the holy sect wouldn't have been their turn. It seemed that the inheritance of the sacred sect was going to fall into the hands of the Blue Star humans. With the power of the sacred sect, if the inheritance of the sacred sect was obtained, Blue Star's level of civilization would inevitably take a huge leap forward. This would be of great help to Blue Star in fending off the invasion of other market realm creatures. Jean Sher logged on to the Blue Network and uploaded this message. Anyone who explored in the market realm and made certain discoveries could be uploaded to the Blue Net to gain points. For something like the inheritance of an extraterrestrial civilization, the first person to discover it would definitely be able to obtain the most generous rewards. Sure enough, the Blue Star consciousness was startled. My child, you have discovered the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization. Very good. This civilization is several levels higher than ours. If we can obtain the inheritance of this civilization, we will be able to have the power to fight against the heavenly calamity level alien beasts. You are the first to discover the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization. As a reward, I will do my best to give you help. From now on, you have the highest level of void teleportation privileges, and you can draft manpower from the blue planet at any time to participate in the acquisition and decipherment of the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization. Furthermore, in order to obtain the inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization as soon as possible, I will pass on this message to others, so that all countries can participate in the development as well, and they will pay you a certain amount of points according to the harvest and give you a portion of the proceeds of future research results proportionally. The Blue Star Consciousness skimmed through the message uploaded by Qin Shi and quickly became excited. Blue Star Consciousness was originally a combination of humanistic spirit and planetary consciousness, and his strength was inseparable from the degree of development of the planetary civilization. Once the countries of the Blue Star received the inheritance of this extraterrestrial civilization, his power would also rise. Chapter 109, Fully Cooperating with the Divine Dragon's Actions Sheen Shur had no objection to this. The Blue Star Consciousness had long said that if the countries made any significant discoveries in the Ruins Realm, they should share them with all of humanity. After all, he was looking at things from the perspective of the entire Blue Star, of all life. As long as the competition between countries was not too out of the ordinary, he did not pay attention to it. What's more, the Blue Star Consciousness wasn't gratuitously publicizing his news to the nations. Once the countries gained something inside the sacred sect ruins and researched something good in the future, he had a share of the profits. Soon after, the higher-ups and transcendents of the countries received the news passed on by the Blue Star Consciousness. At once, everyone was abuzz. There actually really is an inheritance from an extra-dimensional civilization inside the market realm. Ha ha, it's really great. Such a powerful extra-dimensional civilization will definitely allow our country's strength to soar. Damn it. Finding information about an extraterrestrial civilization is a huge feat. And it's actually been taken by someone else first. The legacy of the extraterrestrial civilization must fall into our sacred farmer's hands. Only we can maximize the development of the extraterrestrial civilization. The transcendents from the various countries on Wood Mountain were all at once bloodthirsty, itching to immediately rush to the sacred ruins and obtain the inheritance of the extra-dimensional civilization. However, the next message delivered by Blue Star Consciousness poured a bucket of cold water on them. Beast King, and there's more than one. There are actually so many powerful beasts in the extra-dimensional civilization inheritance site. The excited fervor in everyone's heart slowly cooled down. The Great Black Bull. The giant elephant and them were just one of the groups formed by the many descendants of the previous foreign beasts that bred in the Holy Land. The former foreign beasts of the Holy Land, reproduced until now, due to their different habits and hearts, were divided into many groups, like the big black cow, snow fox, fire tiger, they are in the beasts group, relatively is considered mild point, like some blood owls, fire-eating beasts, in sparrow, etc. The character is more cruel and violent beasts, the group is extremely bloody with a very strong aggressiveness. Any group of foreign beasts would be a great challenge for everyone. With so many fey groups, the transcendence of the various countries were no match at all. In fact, if it wasn't for the foreign beasts treating the transcendence from various countries as the descendants of the Holy Land sovereigns, they had misgivings and didn't make the first move to hunt and kill them, but only dispatched the foreign beasts over to probe the situation. The transcendence from various countries had already suffered heavy casualties. How to cross over these foreign beasts and obtain the inheritance of the extra-dimensional civilization had become a difficult problem in front of everyone for a while. However, this would be no problem for Qin Shi. 
The identity of the divine dragon allowed the giant elephant and the other foreign beasts in the group that the big black ox, the snow fox, and the fire tiger were part of, to quickly accept him. Shinshir took the opportunity to propose to the giant elephant that there was a way to obtain the inheritance of the sacred sect. HM, you have a way to obtain the holy sect's inheritance? The giant elephant was taken aback. That's right, truth be told. I'm from outside the domain, and I know that group of upright apes. Our ancestors should have a little relationship with the sacred sect, and are following the sacred sect's old path, and are caught inside the ruins realm. So with our relationship with the sacred sect, we should be able to obtain the sacred sect's inheritance. Shinshir blinked his watery sparkling eyes and said without even frowning. Anyway, the sacred sex masters, the creatures of the extraterrestrial civilization, were also humanoid creatures, and actually shared a not so small degree of similarity with humans. There was nothing wrong with saying that the blue star humans, were related to the holy sect. The sacred sect was careless, caught in the void turbulence, and was swept into the ruins realm. Blue star was the same, that was actually a big broken leak and anyone with a little bit of intelligence would be skeptical. However, this group of foreign beasts was, in a way, just too simple. It had no experience of the perils of the human heart. When Chu Xing said this, the giant elephants actually really believed it. They had already suspected if the transcendence of the various countries were related to the previous masters of the sacred sect. Xin Shi's words were undoubtedly a strong corroboration. This was a divine dragon. Ancient records showed that the divine dragon of the holy sect, the object of worship of countless extraordinary beasts, was sublime and holy, a symbol of light. How could a divine dragon lie? So it is. The holy sex inheritance has been dusty for so many years, and it's finally going to see the light of day? That's wonderful. Around the giant elephant, the other beast kings were connecting their ears and discussing, each one of them happy. If they could obtain the inheritance of the sacred sect, it would be of great benefit to them as well. The surrounding beast groups were all thinking of obtaining the holy sex inheritance and ruling the surrounding territory as the orthodox successor. Only, no one had ever gotten their way. Now, their chance had arrived. Then what are you waiting for? Hurry up and call that group of upright apes over. We'll go to the core palace area right away and obtain the inheritance. Immediately, a huge lattice front and sides and out. It was the elder of the great black bull, and a beast king whose strength was no weaker than that of a giant elephant. This kind of beast, with its ox-like shape and tiger stripes on its back, possessed the terrifying power to set off floods. Accompanied by the lattice alloy beast king's voice, Sheen should have felt that the air around him was rippling like a flood, and it was as if the water vapor in the air had been summoned by some kind of summons to swarm in and converge into a torrent that washed over and drowned the mountains and rivers. Right, there's no time to lose. If the blood owl, fire eater beast, and Ian Sparrow know about this, they'll definitely come to cause trouble again. We need to hurry up and get the sacred sex inheritance in our hands before they realize it. Another beast king beside him called out. Fey beasts were more straightforward in their actions, without any flowery ideas, and did whatever came to mind. Chu Xing naturally wouldn't object. He passed the message through the blue net and told Tong Jiao, Ying Di, and Peng Mao to prepare to come over. At the same time, he also related to Liu Yongzhao and Professor Tang on the blue planet telling them to hurry up and organize talents with relevant experience to prepare for the development of the extraterrestrial civilization inheritance. The Blue Star Consciousness had given him the highest void legend authority to transmit talents from the Blue Star to help develop the extraterrestrial civilization inheritance, so of course he had to make good use of it. The inheritance of the extraterrestrial civilization encompassed all sorts of aspects, culture, food, customs, technology, etc., and it was difficult to take it down with just a few people. What? So it's you, Divine Dragon, who discovered the extraterrestrial civilization inheritance. Liu Yongzhao received Qin Shi's news and was so surprised that he directly stood up from his chair, so excited that he almost wanted to dance in place. He was even more bloodthirsty when he learned that Qin Shi had obtained the authorization given by the Blue Star Consciousness to be able to teleport people from the Blue Star to help. All right, I'll immediately report to the elders and organize manpower. Liu Yongzhao knew the priority of the matter. And after briefly understanding Qin Shi's current situation, he immediately contacted the elders. Many elders were informed of this news, and like Liu Yongzhao, they were so excited that their blood boiled, and some were even so happy that they almost fainted. From now on, everyone put down any other work in their hands and fully cooperate with the Divine Dragon's actions, the Grand Elder decisively ordered.